I've survived a total of 1,000 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. What started as a 100 days adventure turned into a whole series just because of how much we all loved this mod pack. It keeps the game in its original form while adding so many new mobs, biomes, structures, and much more. All the original videos from the series are still up if you want to watch them, and that's how you can watch them in the highest quality. But there are so many, which is why I decided to combine them all into one video. That way you guys can watch or listen to this as you go about your day, work, or sleep. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. That way you can join me the next time I go on a new adventure. But anyways, without further ado everybody, enjoy as I survive 1000 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. I'm gonna try to survive 100 days in Better Minecraft. Better Minecraft is a mod pack that adds tons of new features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. It adds new mobs, better caving, better dimensions, and so much more. In this video, I plan on building an awesome home using new features from the mod pack, doing a lot of adventuring and exploring, and just trying to stay alive because I'm on hardcore mode and I only have one life. I am very excited to show you this adventure, so grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 100 days in better Minecraft. Starting out on day one, I spawned on an island completely surrounded by water. It was really beautiful, and I wasn't alone. I heard seals. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> you know what? I think I need to make a zoo. I might, I might make a zoo when I make my house and just try to get as many different animals as I can and make an, an aquarium. So they like, look at it. It's so cute. I chopped some wood down and it was a new type of wood called rainbow eucalyptus, which looked really cool. I made basic tools and also took a look at the book in my inventory, which ended up being a quest book that gave me different missions to go on and I'd be able to go on those later on. After that, I chopped a whole rainbow eucalyptus tree down because I didn't want to leave any anything floating in the sky that would really annoy me and then I made some more friends geese hello <laughs> oh man I just I just love animals too much yeah I want to make a full like is it called a sanctuary like a safe place for animals I don't want it to be a zoo actually I want it to be a sanctuary where they can be safe oh look at you oh. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I then made a boat and headed out in hopes of finding land, and I found a glowing squid along the way, which was just so cool, and then found this house, which was strangely empty on the inside, but when I went to the attic, it had wool in it, so I was able to make a bed, and I slept off my first night. So, day two. I left the house and found a jellyfish in the water, which I did not get near, and then found a bird's nest that gave me some duck eggs. These nests actually have a lot of bird types, and I could collect them later on to add to my sanctuary. Not too far from the house that I found earlier, I found an area that I wanted to set up in, so I cleared out a lot of trees in the area, and I started building the outline of my base. Night came around, so I went to bed, and with the beginning of day three, I planted my tree saplings, and while those grew, searched for food because I was basically starving and I was still on this vegetarian diet even though I would never go on one in real life. I mean, come, I, I couldn't do that. I ended up finding some carrots and I set up a little farm for those in front of my house and I was searching for some more crops when I ran into these funny little guys. Oh, some owls, hi. You eat onion? No, you don't like onion. Okay, that's unfortunate. Onion's pretty good. Raccoons, hey. Like onion? Oh, you, you picked it up, ha! <laughs> yeah, you want more? Here. I gain absolutely no benefit. After that, I wanted to start getting some ores, so I went looking for a cave, and I found this huge generated cave from the Caves and Cliffs update, which was just amazing to look at. This generation makes it a lot more fun to mine. Seriously, it is a huge, huge difference. Oh! I eventually found diamonds, or 
Rather, I should say a diamond because the diamond vein only had one ore. Who wants to find that? Who wants to find one diamond? Anyways, to my luck, I found another vein pretty soon and I got seven more diamonds from it. I made a diamond pickaxe and for some reason, I thought that I would easily find more diamonds. So I just made a helmet with the, with the diamonds that I had left. I have no idea why I thought that that would be okay. But after a long time of mining into the next day, I found this crazy cave generation. What? Oh my god. What is this? Oh my eyes. What is this? Oh my god. This is crazy. Oh, diamonds. Nice. Oh, another diamond. A lot of diamonds. Was that was that nine, ten? Was that ten or nine? It was ten. I think it's time to head back. I think that that time has come. I returned to the surface and I was met with the sunrise when I returned home. I made some tools with all the diamonds I had gotten and I made some pants as well, leaving me with just enough items for an enchanting table. I noticed that I actually got a potato from a zombie I had defeated earlier as well, so I planted and bone mealed that and my farm was slowly starting to grow. I had to hunt some fish to get food while my farm grew out and while hunting, I was approached by a friend. Oh. Who are you? Goblin trader. Efficiency six? Unbreaking four? Wow. My friend, one apple for one emerald? Wow, you are, um, you are cool. All right, I'm good on food now. I'm good. I'm not going to have any more issues. On the next day, I started cutting down the eucalyptus trees that I had grown, which all merged into this one huge tree. And yeah, they gave me enough wood to last for a while. After that, I went exploring and found these wayposts that said 300 blocks and pointed to the right. I followed the top one and it led me here. I think this is the thing that the, the sign was pointing to. I hear bad guys. Oh, yes, I see bad guys. Ow. Ow. Wow. Oh, you almost killed me in one hit. Okay, I'm out of there. Fortunately, fortunately, I survived. But that was really close. That was too close for comfort. I continued adventuring into the next day and I found this spider cave that I was thinking of entering, but then cave spiders showed up and I left immediately. And I found out about something pretty cool. Oh, look at that F5. Oh, that's way better. I can just fully do anything I want on this F5. And I can look all around. Better Minecraft rocks. That's what I'm talking about. I then found this strange hole thing and I got an achievement saying jump, but when I went to the bottom of it, nothing happened. There was probably something else I needed to do and I decided I would return to here later on. I then found this battle tower, which was actually pretty easy to adventure through. It just had a few spawners and I found an Aether Dragon Egg in one of the chests. Yeah, you heard that right. I could grow my own pet dragon and all I had to do was place this egg down. I could not wait. In the meantime though, I finished adventuring through the battle tower and at the top of it, I found gold blocks and this waystone, which lets you teleport to other waystones that you have discovered. So I picked it up and I kept it to place at my home and that way I could teleport to anywhere I wanted, all from my house. I also found a village and here something very special happened. Oh, there's a waystone, that's good. Oh, we got villager guardians. You guys are fighting? Oh, what's going on? Oh, they're fighting off the alligator. <laughs> Look at them. They're all decked out. Wait, where was that cat? Hey, cat, I have fish. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, best friends forever. Ah, oh, what's your name? Get out of the way, Verda. Lucy, that's your name, Lucy. She's Lucy. It's my cat Lucy. Aw. Look at the eyes. It's one blue eye, one yellow eye. So cute. <laughs> and so I had a new pet, Lucy, which uh, it was just a good moment for me. I slowly transported her over the waters 
and brought her home with me. I placed down the waystone that I got and named my home Eleanor. I made some golden carrots as my new food source. My vegetarian diet was now looking good. And I made a fenced area for the dragon egg, which I placed down in the center, right clicked and waited for it to grow. On the next day, I collected some sand, mined for cobble. And when I returned home to smell everything, the dragon had grown. Oh. He hatched. Look at you. Oh, I need to tame him quick. Eat up, eat up, buddy. Eat it, eat it all. Grow. I'm gonna need to keep an eye on him, but he's gonna keep growing, and then uh, I need a saddle to put on him, and I can fly him. I didn't name him yet, and I was kind of hoping to have some help with that from you guys. You probably have some cool dragon names, so I'd like to hear those. But anyways, I used the name tag that I had to officially name Lucy. I got to building on the next day and I used glass and stone bricks for the walls, oak planks for the second floor. I also found out about these chandeliers which were perfect for the ceiling. I outlined the flooring of my base with stone bricks, made some finishing touches, and for the time being I was happy with the progress I had been making on my base so I went mining again. I found this boss underground called the Pharaoh's Rotnaut. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I wasn't ready to fight him yet but I would return at a later time. I also found a mine shaft and looted that for a while. And by the end of the mining trip, I returned home with diamonds, obsidian, amethyst, name tags, and just a lot of stuff. I went out exploring again because I wanted to find a saddle for my dragon. And I found these two pirate ships and I tried to defeat the pirates, but it was pretty difficult. They kept knocking me back into the water and I didn't want to risk anything too much. So for the time being, I retreated and decided I would return later. While searching for more things out in the water, I found a much smaller pirate ship and thought that it would be easier to take down. So I slowly made my way through the archers who ended up just standing still and I was able to defeat all of them. The chests that they were protecting were actually loaded with stuff and I got some great enchanted gear and resources. I wanted to go to the bottom area of the boat but I just about died doing so so I left. I left happy with the loot that I had gotten. I found a village which had a waystone so I could teleport to home from there if I wanted to and I also found these mysterious plants and these can actually take you to a new dimension but that that is for an adventure that you'll see in one of my next videos. I ended up making a backpack while adventuring which gave me three extra rows of space and then I found this desert woodland mansion and this was a very dangerous place to adventure into. I fought an evoker and managed to defeat him so I got a totem on dying but these illagers were very strong and could easily two shot me if I wasn't careful. I fought them for a while longer, but I soon decided to leave the dungeon because it just was not worth the risk. And in the nighttime, a blood moon occurred, which I couldn't sleep through, and I had flashbacks. I had very bad flashbacks to my previous experiences with Blood Moon, so I placed down the waystone that I had and teleported back home. I set up a level 30 enchanting table and luckily got fortune 3 on my pickaxe as my first enchantment and then efficiency 4 as my second. I combined the two pickaxes that I had and I made a fairly decent diamond pickaxe. I then placed the saddle that I had gotten onto my dragon, which we still need a name for, and tested out his flying skills. Oh yeah, look at that. Woo. Oh, that's so nice. Oh man. All right. I could fly now. It was, it was just awesome. The next thing I wanted to do is get a full set of diamond armor and stock up on ores. So I put my fortune three pickaxe to use and mined away. I managed to return home with 12 diamonds and an inventory full of ores. I made a diamond shield, and with that, I figured it was a good time to adventure into the nether. So I took everything I needed and headed in. Oh boy. Oh, well, there's a spawner here already. I mean, that's actually not bad because it's basically right in my base. They're gonna keep spawning unless I break the spawner, aren't they? Um. All right, there we go. That's blocked off for now. What are you? Whoa, teleports. Are you friendly or not? Well, it looks like he's friendly. You're looking strong, my friend. And this looks crazy. It is insane. Oh, what's down there? What are you guys? 
Is that redstone? It is. Brimstone? This is seriously so chaotic. Oh, another fortress. Let's go. And this biome. Does this grow in the tree? Is that how this works? Now, how do I get there? Boom. Play spawner. Ow. Oh, this is called the wildfire. Oh man, there's a lot of damage. Got one. Got two. Can I trap them in here like this? Can that work? Oh. 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 Oh no. No, 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 no. That's like a super blaze. Wow. Oh man. That is so difficult. Oh man. It's blocking everything? Got it. And everything it dropped burned. Oh my god. Okay, I got it. I'm going back home. This has been too crazy. Return of Jimmy. It's a new Jimmy. <laughs> it's a new Jimmy. Yes, 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 yes. Get me out of here. Get me out. Get me out. Get me out. <laughs> God. Oh my god, that took so long. It took so long to get back. Oh my god. That nether trip was quite an experience and it felt good to be back home at last. I enchanted my diamond legs and got protection three on breaking three on them and then went out to mine for some cobblestone and diamonds. I mined into the next day and then being happy with the amount of ores I got, returned home and with that done, I wanted to start working on my base some more. I played around with the design for a bit and I ended up using regular oak planks for my flooring and ceiling and then I used stone bricks for the walls of my second floor. After completing most of my house, I was pretty happy with the result. I mean, it wasn't the best build in the world, but you know what? I was proud and I was I was happy to have a home. Next, I decided I would work on some other cool things. I had collected a few of these mystery eggs from Bird's Nest and I wanted to discover what they were. I found out that I had to make something called an egg analyzer, put the eggs inside, and then the analyzer basically decrypted the mystery eggs. The awesome thing was that this gave me the ability to spawn a lot of different birds around my base. After that, I wanted to go on adventure some more. I returned to the pirate ships that I had found earlier and shot at the pirates from a range while on my dragon. My dragon got completely out of control while I was looting though. Oh my god, what's my dragon doing? I'm back! What is my dragon doing? Oh no. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop going crazy. Please stop. Stop! He's out of control. Stop! 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 Oh man. Okay, I'm putting you back on land. I don't trust this guy at all. Time out for you, bud. I got some enchanted iron gear from the chest there, and then I went on to the next ship, which was actually controlled by skeletons. These guys didn't do a lot of damage, so I was able to get on board and defeat them fairly easily. I looted their chests and then continued my adventure into the next day, where I found an underground village, this huge mushroom thing, and finally, I found a boss named Baraco, and this is when something bad happened. Baraco the Sun Chief. Oh, I hate these guys, you know? I've seen like some stuff about them. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? Oh my God! No, 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 no. How difficult is this guy? Cause I kinda wanna kill him right now. Oh my. Oh my God, dragon, stop, stop. Dra I can't control the dragon, dude. My dragon is just gonna die because of himself. What? What? No, 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 no. My dragon's gonna die. Stop. Oh my god, are you kidding me? No. No, you did not just do that. That's it. This is war. This is war. Oh my god. Oh my god. Never mind. Get away, get away. Oh my god, he killed my dragon. He's healing. And he's healing. No, no. 
How am I supposed to how am I supposed to defeat him? Okay, I'm leaving. Wow. Killed my dragon, man. The Sun Chief had destroyed my dragon, and I was just really sad. I returned home having completely failed, but there's no way I was just going to leave it at that. I needed to get my revenge on Barako. So now it was time to get as powerful as I could get. I had a new dragon egg that I placed down and I decided that I would name this dragon whatever the name of the first dragon was going to be. I think that would be at least a decent way of kind of remembering the dragon that we lost. Next, I wanted to create some fishing gear because first of all, I needed to feed my dragon. And second of all, you can get some really overpowered stuff from fishing. I fished for a while and I didn't get lucky with anything yet, but I did get fish and I fed those to my dragon to tame it. Now, I just needed to wait for him to grow. I enchanted my diamond chest plate and got protection for him breaking three on it, which was perfect. And then I headed back into the nether so I could mine quartz to quickly level up. I managed to get the levels that I needed and I got a sharpness four sword, a power four book, a bow with flame on it, and a protection four helmet. After that, I combined some of the books that I had gotten with my gear. And now I was really well geared. I couldn't hunt down Barako yet though because because my dragon still needed to grow. So in the meantime, I decided I would do a little bit of base work. What I wanted to do is set up a kind of aquarium by digging a path from my base to the pond, build a glass dome and have fish around it floating in the water while the glass dome would be dry. But while doing that, I quickly realized that it would be difficult to do without sponges since otherwise I would have to go through the very painful process of individually eliminating each water source so i decided that i would work on the aquarium later on instead i looked in my quest book and i decided i would adventure into this place called the deeper dark oh whoa oh look at that i can just hit this and it teleports me <laughs> oh my god what is this Oh my god, this has the warden. Do I hear the warden walking? What do I hear? I ended up leaving pretty soon because I was not ready for whatever was down there. And I actually lost all of my levels when I entered this place, but I do gain them back when I relog later on. Next up, I began working on a little teleportation hub using the quartz that I had gathered. I was planning to go to a lot more dimensions in the future than just the nether and the end, so I figured that it would be very fitting to have a whole structure where I could place all of the portals. I got a pretty good framework done, and soon enough, my dragon was fully grown, which meant that it was time to go back to the Sun Chief. I was actually able to teleport with the waypoint while on my dragon, which saved me a lot more time. And after a bit of traveling, I made it to Barako's village. Dragon, I need you to sit down and chill out because I don't want you to die. Let's go, power five bow. Take that. I'm doing a lot of damage. Oh my god, I'm doing a lot of damage. Oh. Oh. Alright. These guys... Okay, I can't attack him while these guys are doing stuff. I think. Ow. Take that. You killed my dragon. Oh, that was so easy, you noob. You... <laughs> you noob. Get... Look at that. That's the head of a loser. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I might want to put it on. Soul Visage. That's a cool name. Never breaks. Equip, then right-click with a Barakoa mask to spawn followers. Right-click a follower to return it to its mask. Woo! Waka waka waka! Okay, if I right-click this, boom, he's my follower. Kill that guy, follower. Kill him. He's not a part of our tribe. Kill him. Kill him. What are you doing? They're, they're, they're agree- What? Yeah, that's enough. You poisoned me! Apologize. Apo- You're going in timeout. I dominated the boss and it felt good to get revenge. I checked my quest book and I had another mission in it that was to defeat the Ferris Rotnot boss, which I had actually seen early on when mining. I had a lot of momentum, so I headed back into the mines where I found him and with two enchanted golden carrots held very tightly, I approached the Ferris Rot Knot. There it is. I don't know what to expect, but... <laughs> oh, man.
Can't hit him. Whoa. Get him. Ow. I'm eating my enchanted golden carrot. A, a, are you kidding me? I need him to do the forward attack. He did the forward attack. Oh my god. Oh, I did so much damage. Forward attack, come on. Oh! Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Poor Goblin Trader. Oh! Yes? What? Yes, come on. Oh, I did it. It took me two enchanted golden carrots, but I did it. Rot Helm, never breaks. Axe of a thousand metals. Right click to attack in a large arc. Shift right click to slam the ground and create a shockwave. Oh. Boom. Look at that. I don't know if I'll be using that, but man, I will add that to my collection. What's my reward for that? A nether star? Yeah, that's that's nice. I got a nether star for doing that. With the ferris rot knot down, I wanted to take a break from all of this boss hunting and work on my base for a bit. I wanted to set up a storage and I needed item frames for it. So I went out and searched for leather and uh, I had to hunt some cows and horses. And I mean, I felt kind of bad, but at the same time, I didn't feel bad because I needed leather. While exploring, I also found this villager called the Gatekeeper, and he offered a blue journal as a trade. And this journal was a guide on how to access new dimensions, which would definitely come in handy later on. By the next day, I had collected enough leather to make some item frames, and I upgraded them to glass item frames. Slowly but surely, I organized items into separate chests and and while it took a while, it was really worth it. Now I could easily distinguish which items should go where, and while I would still like to build a bigger storage system in the future, this would definitely do for now. With good progress made on my storage, I decided I would get some wool, make some beds, and go mining for netherite. I'm not sure why I wanted to do this so early, but I wanted to take this as a chance to get quartz and levels at the same time, so it was a win-win. I mined for a while, and I got no netherite, but at least I got a lot of quartz and levels, so it wasn't too bad. After that, I ended up getting lost in a mine shaft for two days, and it was a nightmare. But thankfully, thankfully, I got back home. I enchanted some gear with all of the levels that I had gotten, and I was out of beds, but I did want to continue mining for netherite and quartz, so I went to the ships that I looted earlier, and I collected all of the wool from their sails. I mined for netherite all the way through to day 51, and I actually did get some pieces of netherite along the way this time. When I returned from my mining trip, I wanted to use the netherite and upgrade my gear, but I realized that without mending, it was not a good idea to use netherite gear yet since I just wouldn't be able to repair it. I would use the netherite later on. For now though, I wanted to start putting all of the quartz that I was getting to use, so I resumed working on my teleportation hub. I finished this nice design of slabs and stairs all around the base of it, and then I used these chiseled blocks which made the building look like a Greek temple or something, and I really liked it, you know? I really want to go to Greece someday. If you've been there, you're lucky. But anyways, I fully built up the walls, filled in the ceiling, and then added stairs all along the top of the temple as well, which fit really nicely. And I felt really proud of myself with this build. This is looking good. Look at this. this is, I'm actually really proud of this. I feel like a Greek god and it feels good. Next, I wanted to build a greenhouse for my crops. I'm, I'm becoming a real farmer. So I started cutting down a lot of trees to clear out space for the structure and to get a lot of wood. After chopping down a lot of trees, my ax was just about broken and I didn't have any more diamonds to repair it. So I had to take a break to go mining and mining with fortune three, 
makes a world of a difference. I got so many diamonds. I ended the trip with 44, even though I only stripped mine for like five minutes. It was crazy. I repaired my ax and with Lucy alongside me, continued lumberjacking until I was happy with the amount of space I had cleared out. With that, I wanted to start flattening out the hill next to my house so that I could build the greenhouse on an even surface. But I didn't have efficiency four on my shovel yet, so it would be really slow. Because of that, I decided that I would go out adventuring to get some levels and at the same time discover some more of the world. While I was flying, I ran into the ships again, so I took the chance to stock up on more wool and then I found a desert temple and while there, I found out that because of an enchantment that I got on my boots called Aerial Affinity, I could break blocks when jumping just as fast as standing still, and it's just crazy fast. I also found a village, another ship, and then I started following an underground dungeon map, and this, this was a bad decision. I followed this map through day 58 to day 59 to day 60, where I, where I actually found something pretty cool on this day. I found a water dragon egg, but you know what? That X on the map did not move one pixel and I had had it. I had traveled for more than 15,000 blocks looking for this dungeon and I had no success at all. I decided I would just quit and return home. So I looted one last battle tower and I actually ended up getting infinity from it, which made this trip not so much of a waste after all. After that, I returned home, placed down the water dragon egg that I had gotten so it would start growing, got efficiency four on my shovel when enchanting it, and put the infinity book that I had gotten on my bow and renamed it Legolas in honor of the one and only. After that, I wanted to complete my mission of hunting down a hidden dungeon. So I grabbed a different map that I had, and this time I successfully followed it. At first I was confused and I thought that there would be a treasure chest, but then I realized that it was literally just a hidden dungeon, so I mined down and there it was. But to be honest, it was a big letdown. It did not have any good loot, so I got out of there and I returned home to finally continue my work on my greenhouse. I started shoveling the hill next to my house and with efficiency four, it was really fast. I continued working on clearing out everything into the next day and got the area flattened out really nicely. After that, I started building out the foundation of the greenhouse and I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to put the glass yet, so I filled in the walls with spruce planks for the time being. By the following day, my water dragon actually hatched, so I quickly fished up some food and fed it so that it would be tamed and after that, I started filling in the walls of the greenhouse with glass. Then I started working on the roof and the greenhouse was really shaping up. After that, I worked on the entrances and added some additional detail. And then I laid out the farmland, which ended up being a really nice and even design. I planted all of the crops that I had and boom, my greenhouse was completed and actually turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would. After that, I removed the old farm that I had to clear up space and made a new pen for my dragons. I would actually like to build a full dragon monastery, but for now, these pens were good enough. I also named my water dragon Draphis, and with a lot of base work done, I wanted to continue getting stronger. So I went mining for netherite and levels again, and while mining, I found this little guy who gave me a sweet deal on netherite. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! nice. I mean, it's not even that big of a difference, but hey, it's kind of nice. I, I like you. You're, you're a good guy. When I returned home, this little bird was waiting on my doorstep and I fed it some seeds, which actually ended up taming it. While in my inventory, I also noticed that my chest plate was just about broken and definitely would have broken if I wouldn't have ran out of beds, which caused me to stop mining. I repaired it, but then I also needed to repair my pickaxe because it was just about as broken. So I mined for some levels and I ended up just enchanting a new pickaxe with efficiency four for the time being. Overall, I was very well geared. I had a full set of protection four, a sharpness four sword, and a power five infinity bow. I was ready to go into the end and fight the ender dragon. I grabbed my eyes of ender and started looking for the stronghold. I searched for quite a while and my search continued for a couple of days before I successfully found 
the Stronghold. It ended up being a much larger version than the regular Stronghold, and it was kind of confusing to navigate around. I, I got pretty lost for a while, and there were actually a lot of different rooms that I explored. Honestly, I was starting to give up hope on finding the actual portal because of how long it was taking, but after another day, I finally found the portal room. I only had eight eyes by the time I got there, and there were none placed down on the portal, so I ended up having to go back home and go into the nether to farm up some more blaze rods. I got a good amount, and I got back home and made the eyes of ender that I needed, and after that, I flew back over to where I found the stronghold, placed down all of the eyes of ender I had to activate the portal, and after that, it was time to fight the ender dragon. That is an intense end. But let's go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Ender Dragon, you are going down, my friend. Hello, Enderman. Hello, hello. I was throwing bombs at me, man. Come on. I looked at an Enderman. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hit it. Yes. Go. Oh, let's go. That's it. I got them all. Take that. that work? No. Oh. What? Oh my. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what, what was that? Okay, I'm not using the bed. The beds are not the strategy. My bow is going to run out of durability. Take it. Oh. Oh. Woo! How much experience am I gonna get? Yes, yes. I defeated the Ender Dragon and now I was free to explore the new end and hopefully find some end cities and other cool structures. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Oh no, what is that? Is that a bad thing? Okay, die because I don't trust you. They're scaring me. What if they knock me off? Why do I hear some Oh my God, that, that Enderman's angry at me. Got a new tree type. This is really cool. This is really, really, really cool. Oh, I don't think that these things are nice. You're dangerous, aren't you? Yeah. Capsid. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. That's insane. Some uh, dungeon here or something? Oh, wow. Wow, that's a very good hoe. Okay. Oh, music disc 11. Nope. Oh. Can be used to locate an end city? What? This is incredible, I did not know. It's showing me where the end city is. Wow, look at that. Oh, there we go. End city. Wait, there's a, a way bigger end city over there than that one. So I'm gonna go over there. Let's check it out. Oh boy. Yeah, here we go. All right. Break that. Shulker boxes. Oh, nice, nice. Inner chest. Two swords. Uh, unbreaking three. I mean, that's decent. This, uh, you know what? I do need an inner chest. Oh, I don't get the inner chest. I uh, forgot about that. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. Oh my god. I just, I quit. I quit. You know what? Just make me levitate all the way. What? The, what is this, man? Like, I hate these shulker boxes. That looks so beautiful. Like, look at all of that. Look at that. Just, you know what? I didn't admire this. I haven't been admiring this. This looks awesome. Okay, really? I stopped to admire that. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? You followed me? Die. Die. Oh my God. I'm done. I'm done. I'm actually done. I'm being bullied. I'm, I'm being bullied. This is not okay. Spawner. Got you. Totem of Void Undying. Put this totem in your main slash offhand to prevent dying if you fall in the void. Oh, wait, I just picked Oh, an unbreaking three mending elytra? I, <laughs> I, I accidentally picked that up and it was, oh, wait, this was all worth it. Wait, this was the best thing ever. Oh, this feels so good. Wait, let me, let me through here. So weird. Oh, wow. 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 I don't know how to use an elytra. Like, I've never used this before. I'm not going to lie. I've actually based... I've basically never used an elytra. Is it a bad time to be honest about that? Or... Because that's kind of just the truth. Woo! Is that a new... Missed to jump kilobyte. Okay. Oh! 
Efficiency four, mending, unbreaking three. I'll take it. That's uh, it's actually perfect. And a dragon egg. That's a dra another dragon mount. Oh, this is some good stuff. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Efficiency five, unbreaking three, mending, silk touch. Are you kidding me? Unbreaking three, protection four, helmet. Protection four, unbreaking three. Protection three, mending, unbreaking three. The end trip was very successful and also very new. All of the new biomes and mobs and structures just made it into a crazy adventure. I returned home to my little bird, Lucy, my farm and my home in general, and it felt great. I started building up a little trophy room for all of my past adventures and my future ones, and it wasn't perfect or anything yet, but it was a little start. Next, I placed my end dragon egg that I had gotten from looting, and I used my levels on a lot of enchanting and a lot of repairs, and then this happened. Oh my god, wait, has this turned into an ice dragon? No way. This might have turned into an ice dragon because it's snowing. Oh man, I kind of wanted the end, end dragon, but you know what? You know what? I like the ice dragon too. That's cool. The end dragon had turned to a snow dragon, which actually, you know, you know what? It's pretty cool. I wasn't sure how to feel about it at first, but now, now that I think about it, it's really cool. I then finally upgraded some of my gear to netherite, my pickaxe, chest plate, and actually my bow as well, which was really cool. After that, I remembered that I had left my dragon Drafis where I found the stronghold. I had to go get him and I also wanted to set a waystone up at the portal, so I made some fireworks and used them with the elytra. I made it to where the stronghold was, placed down the waystone, got on Drafis and got back home with them. Now that I was home, I wanted to work on the aquarium that I had been wanting to make for a long time. Very conveniently, there was a goblin trader in the stronghold and he sold sponges. So I got some of those and I also put respiration three on my helmet and then I got to work on building a glass dome. I didn't have an exact plan, so I kind of just went off a of feeling, but I didn't really end up liking the first shape that I got. so. I redid it with a smoother shape in mind and it came out a lot better. With the glass dome finished, I sponged up the inside of it to take out all the water and after that it was completely dry on the inside. I then went into the nether to mine some glowstone because I had a great idea. I placed glowstone all along my pond and it made it so that I could see everything underwater when I was in the glass dome. To add to the design of the dome itself, I also used the amazing amethyst blocks for the flooring and I outlined the floor with glow. Stone. I also made the ceiling of the dome stick out by one which gave it a more circular shape and I was finished with making the first part of my aquarium. Now I wanted to build something very useful to every world, an enderman farm. I ended up working on this from day 86 all the way to day 95. I had to collect a lot of materials, head down to Y level one in the end and build out 200 blocks from the end island. After that, I built up multiple layers, set up an endermite to bait the enderman and my enderman farm worked really well. Now I had an amazing source of experience in my world and not to mention the enderman farm looked really, really nice. I was really happy with it. I returned to the overworld and an idea popped into my head of the next structure that I wanted to make. I wanted to make a giant lava beam going all the way up to sky limit so that I could easily locate my base from far away. I built a lot and mined a lot of sand for a couple of days and by nighttime of day 98 I placed a lava bucket at the top of the beam and watched it as it slowly came down. While I was waiting for it to finish I also named the ice dragon that I had to frost which was a very soothing name and as I always what? do I jammed out to some music what? discs. Soon enough, the lava rod was finished and it was exactly what the base needed. As day 100 approached, I went on one final ride on my dragon frost. Frost, what do you think? Another 100 days? There's a lot more to do. There's so much more to do here. Day 100. What? Really? Really, zombie? Day 100. Day 100, Lucy. Oh, look. Lucy's sleeping next to me. Surviving 200 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. For those of you who didn't see the first 100 days yet, Better Minecraft is a mod pack that adds tons of new features to Minecraft and still stays really similar to the original game. In the first 100 days, I tamed dragons, fought new bosses, and did a lot of adventuring. In these next 100 days, I build an insane storage room, enter new dimensions, approach danger, 
dangerous monsters, and much more. Along the way, I come very close to dying multiple times, so you'll want to stick around to the end. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do was name our Aether Dragon. And from the comments on the first 100 days video, Nathaniel was the most requested name, which means gift from heaven in Greek, and it was suggested by Siphon. So really cool name, thank you for that suggestion. With our Aether Dragon named, I wanted to get back into the swing of things. I headed into the end because I left an Ender Dragon head and End Dragon egg behind, and these are both very valuable. On the next day, I placed down the Dragon egg, and I think it's cool to keep a tradition of all of you naming the dragons with me so let me know what names you think are cool and we will name the dragon in the next video with all of this dragon stuff in mind i wanted to build a dragon monastery and by that i just mean a nice shelter for all of my dragons i went out searching for the type of wood i wanted to use and the end ended up having some really cool wood styles but i ended up going with this wood called aspen because it looked really nice and fit well with the rest of my builds i began clearing out an area for the dragon monastery and there were a lot of trees to chop down. By the end of the day, the ender dragon had grown, so I fished up some food and fed it so that it would be tamed and then went to sleep. Because I had been doing fishing every now and then, I had the idea to build a little fishing dock right in front of my house, and it was a really simple build, but you know what? I liked it. After that, I got back to clearing out an area for my monastery, and I got a good amount of space cleared out. I then started building the outline of the shelter, and I played around with using some new stone types at first, but then I just decided I would stick with using wood because it looked a lot better. I continued working on the outline of the monastery and it was really coming together. Then I started working on the roof and at first I wanted to use wood for it, but I didn't really like that because it would make the inside really dark. So instead I made glass slabs, which is a really cool feature. And I started using those to create the roof. I also quickly went back to the Enderman farm to repair some stuff. And I use this farm a lot actually, so I am really glad I made it in the first 100 days. I finished the glass roof and I wanted to let my dragon stand and walk around in the dragon monastery, but unfortunately, whenever I made them stand, they would follow me around, so I had to keep them sitting. I took one final look at the dragon shelter from a distance and it's a really simple build, but I think it turned out pretty good. With the monastery completed, I wanted to go adventuring. So I checked my quest book and I had had two more missions to complete in the overworld. Defend a village from a raid and defeat the Frost Maw. The Frost Maw would give me a really cool hammer if I would defeat it, so I wanted to go fight it. I got on my Ender Dragon and flew off in search of a snow biome, and while searching, I ended up finding a village and got sidetracked because I wanted to get a villager to trade mending books. So I tried to do that for a bit, but I accidentally ended up hitting a villager while I was doing that and the guards started attacking me. So I decided I would get the mending trade later on. I ended up searching for a snow biome for a couple of days and finally found one on day 110. And after flying around for a bit, I encountered the Frost Maw. Frost Maw, there he is. All right, let's go. Okay, my shots aren't hitting him. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. This is bad. Ow. Can I not shoot him? I can't shoot him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Ow. Oh, no. Oh, no. My helmet's gonna break. No! Oh! Wow! That was so close. Hammer from the Far Lands. Spawns Evoker Fang. Whoa, what is this? The new hammer that I got was really good. And it literally spawned Evoker Fangs whenever I hit mobs. And the Ice Crystal could freeze mobs too, which was really cool. When I was flying back home, I found this house that ended up having netherite in the attic, which was a really nice find. I returned home and it turned out that I was not able to enchant the hammer that I got with sharpness. So 
I ended up just putting it in my trophy room along with the ice crystal. My next mission was to get a villager with a mending trade and I actually got one really fast. Next, I needed to get emeralds and I had a strategy on how to get a lot of them. I actually got this idea from a comment on the first 100 days, but basically goblin traders trade one emerald for one apple and villagers sell four apples for one emerald. So I can just infinitely quadruple my emeralds by using these two trades. With the emeralds gathered, I headed to the villager with the mending trade, got four mending books and put mending on my armor. So now all of my armor had mending. With mending on my gear, I wanted to upgrade it to full netherite. I mined for ancient debris for a couple of days and managed to get eight pieces, which was just enough to upgrade my leggings and boots. I was now confident in taking on the mission of defending a village from a raid. It took me a bit of searching before I found a village with an outpost next to it. It literally took me a full day of camping the outpost to get a leader to spawn, but when he did, I jumped on the opportunity to start a raid. Yes! Okay, where are they coming from? Oh, here we go, here we go. What? Are the, the baby creepers? You're spawning baby creepers? Oh, no, you don't do that. Ah! You... I need to sleep quick. Oh! Oh! Wow, these mobs are crazy looking. Okay, I'm not getting close to that thing. One more, one more. Where's the bell when I need it, man? Raid defeat? I couldn't find the raiders, man. No! I actually kept running into the issue of not being able to find the final raiders after that, so I ended up having to return home and leave that mission alone for the time being. Instead, I decided that I would try to defeat the warden by going into the deeper dark. Also, just as a quick side note, my levels disappear whenever I enter the deeper dark and I only get them back if I refresh my game. So just so you know that. Okay, I don't like the looks of this at all. I don't know what these things do. Skulk sensor, skulk crystal. These crystals are pretty cool. I'll take some of them with me. Brick blocks so fast here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I see the zombies. Skulk zombie, come on. Okay, I gotcha. There's a warden. That's a warden right there. Okay, diamonds. Wow, there are a lot of diamonds here. That's for sure. Is it worth the risk? I don't know, but there are a lot of diamonds. Look at all of that. Two, three veins, like back to back. Diamonds. Oh, so many diamonds. So many diamonds. So happy. I'm so happy. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, the warden fell in a hole. Hey, warden buddy. Fell in a hole, huh? Oh yeah, how does that feel? How does that feel, huh? Yeah, yeah, just stay down there. I'm just gonna shoot at you, man. Oh, yes, I did it. Warden down. To be honest, I know that that could have gone very wrong. What did I get? Music disc, Lin Fox, Warden Apparition. What else did I get? Warden Horn. I stuck around in the deeper dark and mined for a bit longer, and I returned home with over a stack of diamonds and gold. At this point, my storage started to get really full and messy, and I needed to get it figured out. Better Minecraft has a mod called Tom Simple Storage, and it makes storage really simple. So that's what I wanted to use. First thing I did is cleared out a bunch of space in the basement because I wanted to make sure that I could fit a lot of chests here. And then I just filled in the roof and walls and floor all with different blocks trying to get a good combination going. I then connected the soon to be storage room to my aquarium with a glass tunnel. And after that made some little touch ups across the room and it turned out a lot better than I actually hoped for. With the room created, I was ready to start setting up the actual storage. I placed down an inventory connector and a crafting terminal, and this is essentially the place where you can access all of your storage from. Now that I had that place down, I needed a bunch of chests to hook up to the storage. So I made a lot of chests and started placing them down. I also used these storage drawers, which you're probably familiar with if you saw my zombie engineer video. You basically put one item type in them and they can store an infinite amount of it. With a little bit of storage setup, I wanted to test out the system. So I made inventory cables and connected them to an inventory connector and inventory proxy and after setting all that up, I actually managed to get it to work and now this let me access all of the chests in the room from this one block. After that, I had to go out and collect wood so I could make more chests and I found this little guy while doing so. Wait, is that? Oh, hey, welcome. Welcome to my little sanctuary area. Woohoo! 
Hey, buddy. Next, I wanted to use purple glass in the storage room. So I collected purple flowers, made a bunch of purple glass, and placed it in front of the chest. And I really like how it looks. I then started building the other side of the storage, and I was able to finish it after a couple days work. After that, I finished transporting everything into the storage room, cleared up my main floor, and with that, my storage room was completely finished and I could get or craft anything I wanted all from my one storage block. I also added elevators to my base, which made it really easy to switch between levels. And I made a cool change to my trophy room and made it so that it showcased the bosses I defeated and the items they gave me underneath. With extra space in my living room, I decided I would create an auto smelter so that I could just put ores and other items in a chest and they would come out on the other side all smelted up. I also took a look at the storage room from the outside and it looked really nice because it was all see-through. After that I wanted to finally make my base more of a sanctuary like I said I would. So I chopped down a bunch of trees and I used the wood to create a border in the water and this ensured that my animals would be protected from danger. I took a look at the border from the sky and it felt nice to have a little protected pond. I had done a lot of base work so I wanted to do something more combat related and upgrade my netherite gear. I wanted to get featherite armor because with a full set it gives you double jump and water and lava walking. All that it required was a netherite ingot and feathers to be crafted so it was pretty easy. I collected a lot of wool, went mining for ancient debris, and while mining I actually found out that going to the nether is a great way of getting coal in this pack because it spawns in huge veins. By the end of the mining trip I got enough netherite to upgrade to a featherite chest plate. I wanted to complete my set but before then I felt like I should do some adventuring because I had just been building and mining for quite a bit. So I set out to search for wither skeletons and try to get closer to summoning the wither. While searching, I looted a chest that gave me a nether dragon egg, which I was really excited about. And this will be the dragon we name in the next video. After more searching, I realized how rare wither skeletons are and that I should probably have looting three if I want to hunt for wither heads. So I returned home and headed to my enderman farm. I enchanted swords and books for quite a while, but I had absolutely no luck in getting looting 3 and I ran out of books. This wasn't exactly a bad thing though because it motivated me to go and start a cow farm and I think that it was about time that I started one anyways. I flew around looking for cows for a while and I ended up finding them in the village where I found Lucy. I also found out that I could actually pick up the cows and carry them home which made things a lot easier. I got both cows home and now I needed to clear out an area to set up the farm, but I wanted to do it with haste too, so it would be a lot more efficient. Because of that, my next goal was to get a beacon. Right away, I went to the deeper dark because I knew it has a bunch of diamonds and gold. I went around safely mining away, but I realized that while this place was great for diamonds and gold, it wasn't the best for beacons since I could just use iron and there was no iron in the deeper dark. So with that said, I decided to return to the overworld and mine normally instead, and I was able to get ores way faster. I mined for a few days, got enough ores for the beacon, and returned to start smelting all of them. I made two more auto smelters so that the smelting would go faster, and in the meantime, I started clearing out the area for the cow farm. I cleared out all of the dirt, and then I accidentally didn't record for a bit, but I gave a live tour of everything that I did. It is now day 160, and uh, yeah. Oops, guys, I did mining off camera. No, uh, <laughs> I accidentally did not record, but I will give you guys an update on what happened, a live update. So I used all of the ores that I'd mined up to make the beacon. Fortunately, I had enough ores to do it, so that's good. Then I went over here, I cleared out this whole mountain. Like there was a huge mountain here, right? I cleared it all out, so that's all gone. After I did that, I took out stone on the ground and changed it to grass. And then I added fences all around here to put the cows and sheep in so that they can, you know, run around and be free and live a happy life. With everything set up, I needed to get the cows in the fenced in area and I was able to find the first one right away, but the second one ran off somewhere and it ended up taking me a whole day of searching for it to finally gather it. I also added a little pond to the farm to give it some detail and I plan to add hay bales and other details in the future. Maybe all of you have some suggestions. I spent day 163 just repairing my tools and after that, I decided I wanted to go on an adventure and go into the ever bright dimension to see something new. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh boy. 
Oh, there it is. This is... This is really cool. What trees are these? It seems this tool doesn't work as well here. Oh, it's the same as the between lands when I went there. Starlet. Ah! Ah! I was trying to screenshot the coordinates. Are you friendly? That looks like a friendly thing. Hi. Oh, what is that? Oh, look at this thing. What is this? Ah! Oh, okay. I can't go there, I guess. I went underground, did some mining in the dimension, and got a full set of this stuff called Pyrope, and I was pretty happy with the progress I made. So I decided that I would go back home and continue my adventures in Everbright later on. Now that I was back home, I wanted to get a sheep farm going in addition to my cow farm. So I went out searching again, and while searching, I found a very dangerous building. Let's check this out. Oh, this might have been a bad idea. I can't see anything. Oh, I think this was a bad idea. I'm, I'm so laggy. I can't see a thing. Okay. Come here. Die. Yes, I got a totem. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Wow, that was so close. That was so close. I flew right on out of there. And really soon after, actually, I found sheep, which I was really happy about. Sheep! Woo! <laughs> found you finally yes yes and so i started on the journey of getting the sheep back home i tried getting the second sheep home on a dragon and it actually got on the dragon's back but the dragon just wouldn't follow me so i had to carry the sheep home again with all of this traveling i was using a lot of fireworks and i ran out of gunpowder i was low on other mob drops as well so the next thing I wanted to do was build a mob farm. I started gathering the materials I needed into shulker boxes, and I needed a lot of building blocks, so I mined deep slate for a while, which was really easy to mine, and got a full shulker box of it. I also collected more specific items like bamboo and string, and by the end of all of my gathering, I had three shulker boxes full of everything I needed for the mob farm. I teleported around waystones until I found a desert, and started by building the storage system. Then I began building the first layer of the mob farm which was just a huge square i then built circular layers with dispensers and observers until i finished 10 of them and after that i built the final layer of the farm which was a very wide square made out of slabs i then made a redstone clock on the top added campfires to the bottom water to the first layer and put water buckets into all of the dispensers and after that i made an afk room up in the sky and my mob farm was completed i afk'd a bit to test the farm out after after that and it worked pretty decently. I now had access to all the gunpowder I needed for fireworks, but I still needed a good way to get paper, so I wanted to make an actual sugarcane farm. I somehow lost all of my buckets, so before starting the farm, I had to go mining for iron. Everything was going normal at first, but then this happened. Whoa, what is that? Whoa, what are you? Whoa, can I tame this? Oh, <gasps> get away. I need to find out what this is. Okay, I need cave roots. Hi, buddy. Oh, did I tame you? Are you gonna follow me around? Here, 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 eat some more. I don't know if I've tamed it. Can I pick it up? I can't pick it up. Okay, we need to get you out of here. We're on a mission. Follow me, buddy. All right, let's go. Oh, you are a turtle. You are definitely a turtle, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, this is such a cool turtle. Wow, you're so cool. You are so cool. Oh, I can't wait. We're gonna be great friends. Cage, please work. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, I can do tour toys. I, I, I did it. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You know what? Maybe I can put him in the trophy room. Right? There we go. There we go, buddy. Oh, he's so awesome. Oh my god. But this beauty of an animal right here. We need a name, and I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, so it's up to all of you, okay? You pick the name, everyone, all right? I wish I knew about these cages sooner. I could have 
use that on the cows and sheep, but I'm glad that I found out about them now. It's so useful. On the next day, I began leveling out an area for the sugarcane farm. Once I finished leveling it out, I started playing around with the design and I went for a simplistic build that has sugarcane in the middle on every layer. I figured that three layers would be a good amount to start with, so I finished the outline for that and then I made sure that everything was lit up with glowstone. After that, I placed water all along the top on both sides of the farm and the build started to really come together. The final thing I did is add glass everywhere and after some touch-ups the sugarcane farm was finished. Now that I had my supply of fireworks all figured out I wanted to complete my featherite armor set. I actually enchanted shears with efficiency 4 unbreaking 3 and it was worth it because I was able to get wool much faster than I normally would. I made sure to get a lot of wool and returned home but when I did Nathaniel was not there. I managed to find him pretty quickly after at the mob farm but I have got to be careful. Nathaniel is our dragon and I gotta keep him safe. I got him home and after that went mining for ancient debris. After four days of mining, I returned home with 26 pieces of netherite scrap and I spent the rest of the day just repairing all of my gear. I was able to make six netherite ingots and I thought I was ready to make the featherite gear but it turned out that I didn't have any feathers so unfortunately I had to go out and hunt some birds. I returned home, made three featherite ingots and also a blazerite ingot. I put the featherite ingots on all of my armor and tested tested out its perks. Oh wow, look at that. I can just walk right on water. That's really nice. Oh, look at that double jump. It combos with the elytra really well. <laughs> After that, I also made a blazerite sword, which does extra damage, so this would come in handy as well. Now, I was decked out, so I wanted to adventure into the abyss dimension, but when I tried, I couldn't make the portal, and it turned out that I needed to defeat a boss called the Void Worm. So, that became my next mission. To get the item needed to summon the boss, I needed to capture these flies, place them in the nether, which caused them to turn into some dis disgusting insects like I don't even want to talk about it. I then had to place an item inside of this block called the capsid and it transformed into a mysterious worm which was the bait that I needed. With that I went to fight the void worm. I threw a mysterious worm into the void and seconds later the void worm spawned and this thing was very scary looking. I started shooting at it right away and the boss ended up being pretty easy so I was able to take it down quickly. I collected the rewards from the quest and created a portal to the abyss dimension. I entered the portal and this dimension looked nothing like I've ever seen before. I found a new zombie type, a new ore called fire diamonds, and a mob called an abyss guard. As I was about to leave the abyss, a mob started chasing me too and it was immune to arrows, so I got right out of there. I tried out lava walking and then went into the nether looking for a bigger nether fortress, but I ended up finding this huge Piglin Castle instead, and this thing is insane. As I was entering a new room, I ended up getting jumped by a gang of piglins. I luckily got out, but I easily could have died there. So I learned my lesson and I decided I would only return once I had better gear. I didn't do much on day 199, but on day 200, I decided I would go back into the abyss because I wanted to keep adventuring. I mined my way up to the surface and there is a lot to explore in this dimension. I ended up finding an NPC by the name of Jackson and he offered me a quest of giving him a ring for a reward. So I took the quest and I also ended up taking a couple more. One was to find a frost world and the other was to find an item called the abyss melon. I plan to complete all of the quests, but by now day 200 was coming to an end. So I had to quickly return home. With that, I went to bed and woke up to day 201. The adventures of 300 days await us. So I'm really excited for that. In this video, I survived 300 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. If you don't know what Better Minecraft is yet, it's a mod pack that adds a lot of features to Minecraft and still stays really similar to the original game. In the past 200 days, I tamed an army of dragons, defeated new bosses, and did much more. In these next 100 days, I explore the abyss dimension, build a massive new home, and do a lot of adventuring. This video is filled with new dimensions, new dungeons, and much more. So without further ado, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy the video.
All right, so day 201. The first thing I wanted to do is continue our adventures in the abyss and upgrade my gear. Before going in, I brewed up some night vision potions and then entered the abyss. Oh, that's a lot better. Woo, look at that. I can see everything now, yes. <laughs> that's way better. Oh man, ooh, what is this? New ore, abyss diamond. I can make a full set of armor with this. Is it better than netherite? It's slightly worse than netherite, it looks like. I continued mining ores for a bit, and I also quickly returned home to grab the abyss guidebook, which was fully locked for me at first. And what I ended up having to do is create this translation letter, and that made it so I could use the book. I continued mining after that and found unknown gems, which are exactly what I needed to upgrade my armor, but they're very rare. So even though I mined for a while longer, I did not find many at all. After all of that mining, I decided that I would come up to the surface, take a break from mining and adventure for a bit. Whoa, Maramis, hello Wanderer. Since five years, I'm searching a magical crystal, the unknown gem. Can you help me find one of them? It will be worth it. I will give you a valuable sword for it. It is unique and very rare. Oh, I have unknown gems, right? Yeah. All right. Give me a sword then. I'll find one for you. Oh, abyss fire sword. That's cool. Thank you, Miramis. That's really cool. That thing looks crazy. Oh, yeah. I can't upgrade it. Hey, that's cool though. Thanks for showing me the unknown gem. This helped a lot. Hope you like the sword I gave you. Hey, Wanderer, I have a question for you. The sword I gave you is made out of fire diamonds. Can you find? Yeah, I think she wants fire diamonds, right? Here. Oh, Totem of Undying? Thank you. Off to the next quest I go. Oh, here we got... Oh, it's her again. Oh, Marcus. Hey, Marcus. Hey. Oh. Ow. Ow. Marcus, I really need another fire ingot for my sword. If you can find one, I'll reward you with a powerful chest plate. How do I get nether fire? A netherite and a fire diamond? Wow. Well, okay, I'll get that to you, friend. I'll get that to you. Whoa. Whoa, phantom. Hey. Wow. Phantom soul. Phantom essence. Phantom ingot. Oh, I can make a phantom ingot with that. I ran into some titan bones and phantoms after that, and they both give items for the next tier of armor, so they would come in handy later on. I met this guy called Stefan as well, and he talked about two gods called the Roka and Nosage. It was kind of difficult to read, but basically he wanted me to find pages from monoliths, and I think that that would contribute to me summoning bosses in the future. I returned home because I needed to fix my pickaxes and make some more night vision potions, and then I went back into the abyss because I was determined to get enough unknown gems for a full set of unknown gear. I mined away, and while I was mining, I actually found some hidden treasure. Oh, what is this? Abyss melon. Yes, I was looking for this. Nice. There are more chests here. Okay. More abyss melons. Unknown gem. Ultra abyss diamond. What is that? Wow. Okay. While mining, I also found a boss meter for this crystal golem. I don't know if it's a boss or just a mob, but I tried to dig up and find it somewhere and I had no luck. I returned home and I was able to make some pieces of unknown gear. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's sick. That almost does more damage than my sharpness five sword. Oh, it gives me speed when I put this on. Oh, yeah, that's so awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I didn't have enough to make a full set of gear just yet, so I mined around at a low Y level until I had enough gems to complete the rest of my set. Look at that new set. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. Now I just got to get it enchanted and I'm looking good. I put the gear on an armor stand for the time being and now my goal was to get this new gear enchanted. Before doing anything else, I farmed up 65 levels and I put mending on my fortune pickaxe because I needed a way to repair it after all of that mining. Then I decided I would start a big project. I wanted to build a huge new building where I could put a villager trading hall for mending and other items, automatic farms, and just anything I wanted. Basically, just a new home. I moved my beacon, got a bunch of spruce wood, and by the way, I've seen the comments saying that you can crouch to chop down trees in one hit in better Minecraft, but I actually removed that feature from the mod pack because I think it's a bit too overpowered. Anyways, after chopping down wood, I leveled out the area where I wanted to build and then started clearing out all of the vegetation in the area. And while doing so, I made a little friend. Oh, what are you? <laughs> what are you? So, 
Slab fish. Oh, look at you. It can carry like inventory. I need to find out what you do. Okay, it can, you can carry chests. Hey, where'd you go? Oh, right there. Hey, take that. Oh, there we go. I finished clearing out all the vegetation and I started building the outline of this structure. It turned out to be pretty big. I made a little front door design and I used this blue cobblestone I got from the Everbright dimension, which matched really nicely with the spruce. I also added some more layers to the outline and the base was looking really promising. I headed over to the end to enchant my unknown axe since I was chopping a lot of wood down and the enchants on this gear are upgraded because I ended up getting efficiency five as the enchantment. On the next day, I started working a bit on getting the ingredients to make some better food because this burger from the Farmer's Delight mod gives you 6.5 saturation whenever you eat it, which is a really good amount. I actually found some onion and rice in a shipwreck and adding those to my farm actually got me pretty close to being able to make the better food. I got back to working on the new base after that and I spent a whole night chopping trees again. The next thing that I wanted to get was flowers because my idea was to make the building have of a rainbow glass design and for that I needed to get a lot of each color dye. Once I did that I went out and collected a lot of sand and I basically just mined it for the whole day. And after that I started to try and figure out a good layout for the glass. I think I managed to land on a really good starter design. After that I filled in one of the spots with blue stained glass and I thought it turned out really well. I added purple glass and red glass after that. I then realized that placing red next to blue was not the correct order of the rainbow so I replaced placed it with green glass and it looked like it was actually supposed to. In the following days, I added the rest of the colors in the design and the glass was looking nice. I was really, really happy with it. Now, the building already looked really good, but I figured it would be a good idea to add some details to it just to give it some character and make it interesting. First, I just added a simple line going through the middle of the building and that looked really nice. And then seeing that the middle part of the building looked kind of empty, I figured that I would try to create a design there and I kind of landed on making an oval design that it took me some time to get figured out but I ended up with a really nice looking shape and I actually removed the wood and glass on the inside so I could use this to enter and exit the building on both floors which I think is a really useful addition. I started mirroring the design on the other side and I wasn't the best at figuring this out. While I was working on this I also ran out of food and figured it would be a good time to make the better food I wanted to so I bone mealed a bunch of of crops and I had to make a cooking pot to make rice in then put it into bowls and after managing all of the ingredients I was able to make some steak and potatoes and this stuff gives six saturation which is really good the only strange thing about it was that this stuff stacks in 16s instead of 64s but you know what it was way better than normal food so I was okay with it I finally managed to finish the mirroring and with that done I chopped down wood again and then started working on the roof and my axe was just about to break so I headed over to the end and I enchanted a new one and then I completed the roof and also added a nice little design to the top of it. Now the building was really dark on the inside so I headed into the nether for a quick glowstone mining trip. And while there I found another really cool turtle. <gasps> it's another turtle! Hey, I can add you to my animal sanctuary. Please get in the cage. Oh man, how do I tame you? Oh, you're not gonna fall on me, are you? You can eat it though. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so unfortunately I wasn't able to bring the turtle home, but I think it was happy in the nether anyways. I got as much glowstone as I could, and when I returned home, I started placing all of the glowstone that I had, and I ran out, so I had to go back to the nether to mine glowstone for a couple more days. Once I was done with that, I finished an outline of glowstone, and this wasn't the final layout, but it was a good start for lighting up the building. After that, I wanted to get more of the blue cobblestone that I used for flooring, so I enchanted I planted a pyro pickaxe, which is specifically good in the Everbright dimension, and I headed over there to mine up some cobble. After that, I laid out the pathway, and I think you'd agree with me when I say it looks pretty cool. Next, I wanted to hide the glowstone around the room because, I mean, this stuff looks really intense. So I ended up using wool carpet, which actually looked really nice. The building uh, was now starting to remind me of Pokemon a bit. Anyways, the building was almost done now and I wanted to get the villagers moved in. I wanted to build a railway from a village to my house. So the first thing I did is go mining for iron. I got enough to make a good amount of rails and I was ready to start setting up the railway. Now, to be honest, I've never used rails or transported villagers. 
So things do not go exactly as planned, but hey, you live and you learn, so it's all good. I started building the railway and I accidentally used activator rails instead of powered rails. And uh, that messes me up as you will see because that is the wrong rail. I continued setting up the railway into the next day and I successfully got it built all the way into my base. After that, I went through and I placed redstone torches to power the activator <laughs> rails. And on the next day, I began trying to transport the villagers. Okay, just let me just push that right over to you. Hop in. Up in, uh-huh. Let's go. Me and you, buddy. Oh, we're stuck, aren't we? Oh, we are stuck. Okay, come on. Let's go. Okay. Come on. Oh. 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 Wait. What? Brianna, get in. How do I get you? Yes. No. I know it's not the smartest. Oh, my God. No. You didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. Nothing happened. Why did I use my sword to break the bow? I'm so, I don't know why I used the sword to break the bow. That was, uh, okay. Well, okay, goblin trader. I actually want the goblin trader. Okay, goblin trader, get in the minecart. Okay, the villager got in. Yes. No, what, what, what? Oh my God, I made activator rails, not powered rails. No. I went down to mine some gold for powered rails and replaced all of the activator rails by the next day. After that, I tried out the railway again and I couldn't get the villager over a hill, so I needed more powered rails. I got the villager to move a bit further down by pushing him, but I ran into more stops again where I needed powered rails and I didn't have enough gold to make any more, so I decided that I would commit to getting a lot of ores and just spend a chunk of time on mining. I set up a haste to beacon and I mined for a very long time. And while mining, I found a pretty interesting creature. Whoa, what is this? <gasps> hey, another turtle. Wait, what is this thing? Is this not a turtle? It's spinning around like crazy. I don't know if I should, what I should do with it. Where'd you go? Where'd it go? No, I have literally no clue where it went. That was so strange. I have no idea what it was, or what it was doing. I also found another turtle underground and I would have liked to bring it back home, but I didn't have any cages on me and I was really locked into completing the railway. So I just left it alone. I returned home by day 249 with a massive amount of ores, more than a double chest. And I started smelting everything up. On the next day, I fixed up the railway with powered rails and I was able to get a villager to my house. After that, I set up some lighting on the roof and it looked really amazing. I was really, really, happy with how it turned out after that i went back to the village to transport the rest of the villagers but uh it it did not go well at all all right bye okay there we go <laughs> okay we did it there we go all right who do we got here floy floy hey floy hey floy buddy floy 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 here's a boat here's literally about floy there we go perfect ow no boy Flo uh he died from one hit of the suffocation Oh my god, I killed two villagers. Oh man, it's, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I have no comment at all. Okay, wait, there are more up here, I think, right? Please tell me there are more up here. Yeah, there are absolutely no villagers up here. Yeah, I did a bad, I did an oopsie. I did an oopsie. No! No! Oh! No, 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 no. No, that just, that did not just happen. Oh my God. I just, I just killed the whole village. I just, I literally just killed the whole village. I just killed the whole village. Why didn't they go up? I swear I fixed it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I forgot about this hill. I forgot about it. I never fixed it. Oh my God. This is so bad sad look at least i got one villager okay it's not that bad i know it seems bad but it's not that bad of a situation yeah that's just it's hilarious but, but you know i'll be more prepared in the future so it's all right with all that happened I figured I would just settle with one villager for the time being and I got to finishing up on the base. I made a little hut for the villager Verda to stay in and I added an extra row of glowstone on each side. Next, I wanted to finally get mending books, but before that I needed more emeralds, so I wanted to get an apple trade. What I found out though, is that you cannot reset a villager's trades after they have become an apprentice rank 
and I did not know that before. So the one villager that I did manage to get to my house was now useless. It's all right though, because I was able to just teleport to another village at least and find a villager there. And after a while of refreshing trades, I was able to get the mending book trade. Mending, woohoo, yeah. I started looking for an apple trade after that and I didn't end up getting a new villager to trade me apples, but I just found a villager that I traded with a while ago and did the apple trade with him. When I returned to the goblin traders in the end though, their apple trade was unavailable. So I went out to try and find new ones and finding them is purely luck because they just randomly spawn and start following you around. So I didn't end up finding any. Instead, I figured I would try some different strategies for getting emeralds and see if goblin traders would spawn at the same time. First, I tried mining in a mountain biome with a haste to beacon to see if I could get any emeralds like that. I started trying to AFK for bones in my mob farm so that I could get tons of crops and trade it to farmers, but that wasn't really successful either because my mob farm was pretty broken. Finally, I went to the nether to get bone blocks, which was actually way more efficient than using my mob farm. And I was able to get tons of bone meal from doing this. While I was looking for bone blocks though, some completely unexpected fortune came my way. This guy just spawned right next to me. How many can I do? I probably can't do that many because it's too good. Okay, 24 emeralds worth. That's still pretty crazy. I could try netherrack for emeralds as well. I can do that real quick. Things got better though. Things got better because after I mined netherrack and gave it to the goblin, I got another idea, which was to head down to the ancient debris mine and find goblin traders there because I had encountered a lot of them while mining. Sure enough, I found four of these guys down there and I traded with all of them. I came home with more than two stacks of emeralds and in total, I had almost four stacks. So I was now definitely ready to complete the mending book trade. I was able to get nine mending books in total and with them collected, I was finally ready to enchant and equip my unknown year. So I headed into the end and I started enchanting. I got an insane enchantment on my sword. I mean, this is definitely better than vanilla enchanting. They, they've definitely upgraded it. And by day 266, I finished enchanting a perfect set of gear. Now I was finally done with all of the hard work I'd been doing in the previous days and I wanted to go adventuring. And let me tell you all, you are all in for a treat. There were a lot of places I could adventure to, but the first place I wanted to go to was the Piglin Castle that I saw in the 200 day video. Piglin Castle. All right, gold block. Oh yeah, and I have an enchantment called Acquisition now that makes it so that whatever I mine just instantly goes into my inventory. Oh, how did that? Oh my, they're breaking blocks. Oh no, this is like the zombie apocalypse again. Music disc, Lena Rain, Pig Step. Let me play it. Oh, I feel like James Bond. I feel like Pigs Bond. Oh. What, 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 what? I will take that with me. What we got in this barrel? Ooh, 418 Strad. Well, if we're, since we're jamming out, I mean, might as well play this one too. Uh-huh, I like it. Oh, I like it. Gold blocks, a lot of gold blocks. All right, gimme, gimme. Iron blocks as well, nice. And redstone blocks, nice. <gasps> ah. Oh, oh, ah, ah, it was a trap. I don't know how I didn't notice that spawner before, but wait, okay, wait, I just noticed netherite. Hold on, <laughs> uh, well, I just noticed netherite. Is there anything up here? There's just a head here. What is this? Netherius' head. Okay, well, that's kind of sad, man. He, he died up here, huh? 23 gold blocks, 6 iron blocks, and 4 redstone blocks. Not bad. Whoa. Whoa. Is it duplicating? What? Okay. All right, hold on. Might be a bit dangerous. Let's do it. Hey. Hey, stay back. Stay back. This one's fully decked out in netherite, man. No joke. Woo. Acts of rectitude, gifted to the strongest piglin brutes by the hidden piglin mogul. Give it to a piglin while holding a gold block in your offhand to unlock mogul trades. Whoa. Man, they, they have some scuffed beds. Let me tell you, these are some uh, not high quality beds at all. Efficiency five, mending, unbreaking three, hoe? Woo, that's the best hoe I've ever seen. 
Whoa. Woo. That's intense. Here's some gold. Oh, a lot more golden blocks. Oh, enchanted golden apple. That's great. Whoa, a netherite chest plate. You know what? That might come in handy. To upgrade this armor, I need netherite armor. So that's actually really nice. There's another netherite chest plate. So I've looted everything here. <laughs> and I got a stack and a half of blocks of gold, 10 blocks of iron, some redstone, two netherite chest plates, and this new axe that I'll be able to use to get some advanced trades, and then also ancient debris. The next building I headed to was the building that I almost died at before, but this time I had better gear. Here it is, the place that I almost died last time. Oh boy. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of loot here. Stack of iron. Woo. Okay. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this is no easier, man. Also, let me get these books. I need a better shield because I can only block once every like 10, five seconds with this one. Okay, we got something here. Uh huh. Oh. Got you. And I'm blinded. Another totem of undying. Oh man, where's the real one? Wow, this is so confusing. I'm so confused right now. Oh man. Oh wow, look. Look how many. Okay, this is my strategy, just spamming the arrows. Okay, got him. What do we got down here? A lot of gold. Acquisition, that's good. I can use that. Enchanted golden apple, it's great. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my god, look how many there are. <laughs> Blocks, I don't have that. More diamonds, either dragon eggs. Anything up here? Oh, oh. <gasps> Break all these spawners quick. This is a nightmare. Get my golden apples out, man. Look, look at all these. Oh no. <laughs> Jonathan Defying Starlight, that's a new music disc. I think I did a pretty good job of looting because I have three full bags of this stuff like all three of these bags are full Ooh, look at this it looks awesome in the night wow look at that you can really see the glass colors hold on wow you know i'm i'm really happy i'm i'm happy with how this turned out i just gotta fill this place up with things but man oh man it is looking good. Now I had adventured to the nether, I had adventured on land, and next I wanted to go adventuring underwater. I found out that I could make a ring of ocean, which gives you really good buffs underwater. So I made that using some of the materials I had gathered from the abyss. And I also made some water breathing potions. On the next day, I started adventuring and the ring of ocean made me really fast. I found these cool little underwater globes and they didn't have much on the inside, but they looked really cool. I swam through the waters for a while longer, but I wasn't finding much. So I headed up to the surface and I found this interesting dungeon, which was filled with zombies and actually gave me an enchanted golden apple. I returned home from that little trip and I wanted to finally find wither skulls to defeat the wither necks. I had no paper to make fireworks though and my sugar cane was growing very slowly. So I figured I would extend the sugar cane farm. I made sure to keep the design the same and everything was going pretty good at first, but then Something really, really bad happened. <gasps> Lucy, no, no, Lucy. <sighs> she teleported into the water. I shouldn't have let her get up, but I wanted her to be with me while I built the building. It just made her sit. Lucy teleported right into the water of the sugarcane farm and it was my fault. I should not have let her stand while I was working. I made a little memorial for her and she'll stay with us. So I was happy about that. I hope that all of you can at least learn from this with me and keep your pets safe. It's better to just keep them sitting. Anyways, I think we can continue our adventures knowing that Lucy will stay with us. And trust me, there are still many more days up ahead. So there are lots of happy times to be had. Getting back into it, I finished the sugarcane farm. And next, I started to really want to build the animal sanctuary I talked about in the first 100 days. I started clearing out the hill to make space for it. And then I realized that it's a huge project and it would be a perfect goal to complete in the next 100 days. So I 
left that alone for the time being, and I decided I would get back to adventuring. Whoa, there's stuff in here, huh? Oh, wow. Okay, this is interesting. Oh? I had actually found this dungeon a while back, and there was a boss room in here that had an altar, and if I'd place another star on it, a boss would be summoned. So, I quickly went back home to grab my nether star and headed over to the nether to fight the boss. Let's uh, summon the boss, nether keeper. Okay, doesn't look that bad. Quite slow. Uh, doesn't do that much damage unless he has some special move. That's good. Okay. It looks creepy, but I got him. I did it. All right, cool. I mean, that was a pretty cool little boss, but I got him. My gear's pretty strong. I mean, look at this sword. Excalibus. The boss fight was pretty easy, but I could use the ancient fire that I got from it to craft a really cool nether hammer, so it was definitely worth fighting. I continued on adventuring, and I found a similar dungeon. There were some wasps or something flying around that gave me glow coke when I defeated them, which is basically just coal. Then I looked on the inside of the building, and it had some tungsten ore on the inside, which I could use to make a set of gear, and when you have the full set of tungsten armor, you are immune to wither and burning effects. I spent some time collecting the ores, and then I left to continue on adventuring. The biomes in the nether are just so cool. Not only did I find this orange biome, but I found a biome called the Warp Desert, which was completely teal. I also ended up finding another piglin castle. Here is the same nether- Oh, this is a new piglin fortress, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's- that is new. Look at that. Look at that front. It's like a dragon. Uh-oh. Here we go again with the- Oh no. Crazy piglins. Oh, look at how many there are. I hope there's not a block breaker. Oh, netherite block. Just got an ancient debris block. One of them dropped it. And a lot of diamonds. Back to getting a lot of golden blocks. <gasps> Is that a wither skull? No way. <laughs> no way. Wither skeleton skull. Yes. There are wither skulls in these. Oh my god, I did not know that. That is gonna make things so much easier for spawning the wither. Wow, I hope I can find more because I'd really love to fight the wither in these 100 days. Oh, more ancient debris. They just drop ancient debris. Oh, more of you guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at how much gold there is. I mean, honestly, I, I literally think after these two towers that I've looted, I won't need any more gold ever. Okay, I have eight golden blocks to start with. Let's see how many I get from mining all of this. These giant dudes are so, so cool. I kind of just want to try to fight one to see how strong they are, but I kind of don't want to risk it right now. You know, I'm kind of enjoying my uh, 300. Oh, TNT. Oh, you. Wow. That was a nice trap. Now I'm paranoid. Are there more traps? Oh, ancient debris just sitting here. How many? Two? Wow, okay. So that gave me about 56 blocks of gold. Just about, 55. Gotcha. <gasps> Two more ancient debris in there. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Wow. These are intense. Woo. Oh, man. Oh, three of these potion guys at the same time. Oh, I'm eating an, uh, an enchanted golden apple. I can't risk it. I can't risk it. There's so many of them. Wow, they just, they're so difficult to defeat. Oh, and there are more. Where? Oh, <laughs> it's this guy. At this point, I might just start building with blocks of gold. Because <laughs> I don't have any blocks, and honestly, I can afford to use blocks of gold at this point. <laughs> Not having blocks is a recipe for failure. Big time. There we go. I have 51. All right. Well, this had, okay, two pieces of ancient debris and more ores. A lot of barrels. Oh, I should not have broken that, actually. <laughs> okay. Good thing there's not too many. Wait. <gasps> Wither skull. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Second one. One more, one more. I, I did not expect to find one here. I thought, I thought that the mission was over. Oh, they have my head. <laughs> what? Hey, you can't. That's a, that's. A, they cloned my head. They cloned my head. Unbelievable. And they were shooting target practice with 
my head right next to it. That's unbelievable. I guess it's fitting given that I'm raiding their whole castle, taking it over. Got a jail here. Look at that. Got some, uh, some blood it looks like. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go in there. I'm gonna get out. I started heading to the other piglin castle to see if I could find any more wither skulls. And on the way there, I realized that a lot of these twisting vines grow in the nether and you can make paper with them. So my problems with paper were gone. I made it to the first piglin castle and I looked around for a wither skull, but I didn't find one. I did find this room though. Oh, ancient debris. I don't like this. This looks like a trap. What's going on here? Uh-uh, I don't like it. What is this? I don't understand this, but whatever it is, I don't like it. But what happens when the trap occurs? Because I don't see any TNT or anything. Well, either way, give me the ancient debris. Probably more here, right? I mean, here it is again. Okay, it's kind of scary. Ah! I left with no wither skull and started heading back home, but... As I was going home, I ended up finding a nether fortress, and after running around and farming wither skeletons for a bit, I found three wither skeletons at once, and to my luck, one of them dropped a wither skull. I returned home, and now I could finally summon the wither. I got prepared, but when I placed everything, it would not summon. It turned out that I had to defeat this boss called the Awful Ghast before I could fight the Wither. Thing is, to summon the Awful Ghast, I had to have a nether crystal, so I needed to find a way of getting one. After looking around in my quest book, it turned out that I could get one by defeating the Yurgast from the Twilight Forest dimension, and with that, a new adventure began. I created the Twilight Forest portal by digging out a 2x2, two two, surrounding it in flowers, filling it with water, and then throwing in a diamond, and then boom, the Twilight Forest portal was created. And so, I entered into the new dimension. Look at that, some big trees here. Cool. These trees look really cool because of these fireflies that are on them. Oh, I think this is a main... Yes, Naga. Okay, this is what I was looking for. There's the Naga. <laughs> I don't exactly know how this fight goes. Um, I'm gonna drink a potion of... <gasps> okay, I drink a potion of night vision. Oh, it's a crazy Naga. Oh, okay, it's not damaging me. My, my armor is really good. It's exploding everything. It's going crazy. Oh, oh this looks crazy. <laughs> Whatever it is, I got it. That Naga was glitchy and didn't have a body like it was supposed to, so I turned off Optifine and fought another one with its body this time. I got a Naga head trophy and some Naga scales, so I had some pretty cool rewards to take home with me. This was only the beginning of my adventure in the Twilight Forest because I still had a lot more bosses to defeat and a lot more adventuring to do. And the next boss that I needed to find was the Twilight Lich, so I searched for its tower for a bit and I was able to find it in the midst of a forest. This might be the Lich building. How do we start? From the top? Yeah, from right from the top. Oh, Twilight Lich. You teleported up here? How do I kill you? Unfortunately, the Lich fight was glitched at this tower and I couldn't hit it, so I headed to a different tower and I fought the Lich there instead. Uh, is this the Lich Tower? Or is this a different one? Could be the Lich Tower. Hold on. Yes, it is the Lich Tower. Oh, wait, it's taking damage. It's taking damage. It took damage. Okay, wait, there's hope. There's hope. Oh, yes! I broke a shield. Come here. Oh, it's summoning zombies. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, I got him. Oh, let's go. I got him. I got a scepter of life draining and a trophy as the rewards. And I tested out the scepter to see how its life stealing was. And it was pretty decent. After defeating the Twilight Lich, my next challenge was to defeat the Minish Room. And the Minish Room is located in Hidden Labyrinth. So I had to go searching for one. While searching, I found a dungeon that had the coolest door. And I was actually able to pick it up. So I'll be able to use it for a future build of mine. I also found a Rainbow Forest while searching, which was awesome. Awesome. And after that, I was able to find a labyrinth. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I found it. I found one. Woo! All right, let's do it. Oh, oh, oh. We got a cow person. Oh. Okay, you're not friendly and you look very scary. Ooh, Minotaur. Minotaur. Hey, Minotaur. You look cool. Stylish, but I gotta fight you. I'm sorry. You know, I actually don't really want to fight any of you. I just want to kind of make it to the boss and defeat him. Deal leave. I think this can make. Oh! 
Oh my god. <laughs> that was not cool. Oh, here we got something. Alright, what do we got? Steely Farmer. Cool. I would love to get a full set of this to add to my collection. Let's check it out. Oh, wait, is this is this is this him? I think this is him. Oh, hold on. That's him. <gasps> okay. <laughs> That's him. Let's go. Whew. All right. The mini shroom box gave me a minotaur axe and a trophy, which I would definitely add to my collection. The quest book ended up not registering me defeating the mini shroom or the lich, which was pretty strange. I had to go into the configuration and I was able to fix it. From the mini shroom, I got a Mario red mushroom as the reward and it ended up giving me absorption 10. So that was pretty cool. The next boss that I needed to defeat was the Hydra. I found it, but when I did, it was surrounded by these yellow particles and I wasn't able to hit it. It took me a while to figure out why that was. I even went over and fought the next boss, which was the Phantom Knight to see if that would do anything. Okay, right here, I put the head, boom. Okay, there we go, it worked. Okay, I'm gonna go down. What do we got in here? Some diamonds and stuff, that's cool. I don't really need diamonds to be honest, but I can actually just fall down here maybe. This place is eerily empty. Oh, oh, I think that's a, uh, that is a phantom. I think both of them are, or no? What are these? No, I don't think these are the phantoms. I don't know what they are. They're kind of freaking me out. Armor shard, armor shard cluster, night metal. Ooh, look at that. That looks pretty cool. Oh yeah. Oh, I'd love to make a set of armor with that. <laughs> I, I just like making sets of armor with all this stuff. Oh, look, night metal shield. That would be a cool shield to have because it's pretty unique. Okay, got some slime throwers. Huh. Oh, what are you, buddy? Oh man, all of these mazes in the Twilight Forest have me really lost. Yeah, this is a new area. This looks promising. Oh. <laughs> Aha, here it is, here it is, here it is. Yes, okay, found it. Oh boy, all right, here's the boss. I should be able to handle it. Let's go. Oh, okay. You're going in the walls. I think this might be the last one. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Whew. Is that it? Did I do it? I think I did it. It's never lost on death. Okay, well, that doesn't really help my predicament, but that's a cool helmet. Look at that. I got their helmet on. Oh, yeah. Um, chest. Ooh, phantom chest plate. Hold on. This stuff's looking cool. Night phantom trophy. Night metal pickaxe. Night metal axe. I'll take a night metal axe. It took me all the way to day 293 to finally realize that I needed to eat the Meef stroganoff that the Minishroom boss drops, and that adapts you to the fire swamp climate. Hydra, buddy. Yes, there's no things going on. I can finally fight it. Night vision. Okay, let's go. Finally. Oh, oh, I didn't bring arrows. Oh, that's, uh, that's awkward. Who needs arrows, am I right? Who needs arrows? Okay, uh, arrows might have been a good idea. Ugh. Take that. Take that. Oh, wow. Oh, it's taking damage. Go, go, go. I need to hit the mouth that's open, I think. Get him. Go, go, go. Which head do I hit? Ah! What's going on? Oh, I, I killed the head. Okay. Oh, it regenerated the head. Go, go, go. Go. Yes, yes. Got it. Hydra trophy. Hydra chop. The filling meal. Oh, yeah. Nine hunger. Fiery blood. Ooh, I can make some cool armor with this. Burns attackers. Hmm. Now I can fight the Night Phantom again. I already knew what to expect with the Night Phantom fight, so I was able to take him on, and this time the quest completed, which was a good sign. Okay, now I can kill the Yurgast and get the Nether Star finally. Okay, the Yurgast should be somewhere here. Come on, Yurgast, buddy. Oh yeah, it's definitely here, right? Oh yeah, there we, oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, look at that thing, look at this thing. <laughs> This thing is massive. I don't have any arrows, so it's all melee hits for me. This is so creepy. This is so creepy. <laughs> Can I get arrows somehow? Please give me an arrow, please. Yes. Can I shoot you? No, I need to fight its babies. It's making me fight the babies. Oh, I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. I'm doing damage. I'm actually doing damage right now. Okay, I'm just kind of chilling. Oh, okay. Baby gas. Okay, I'm just kind of sitting here shooting. Kind of, kind of pretty chill. Oh, baby guests. Right in the 
Yes. Got it. Okay, nice. Trophy, fiery tears. Carmenite. I don't know what this is. Whoa, block of carmenite. That's like a jigsaw. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got the nether stuff. <laughs> yes. Wait. Oh, whew. I thought I thought it could have fell in the lava if my inventory had one more thing. One more thing. It could have fell in the fire. Oh, yes. I got the nether star. It took so, so many things I had to go through. I, I, I did it. Yes. With the Yurgas defeated, I had a nether star and I could go summon the awful gas. Aha. Here we go. Here we go. I can spawn it. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, whew. okay. And uh, well, it looks like I can just sit here and shoot at this, but I do want to get the loot from it. So let me see if I can get it out. Okay, awful gas. Well, you are quite feisty, aren't you? Whoa, I can't use my bow? What just happened? Can't use my bow anymore. Oh, can't use my, I can't use anything. I'm getting it, I'm getting it, come on. Come on, get it, got it. Oh, I, I got, I got the stuff from it. Oh, good thing I brought fire resistance because I would have died. That's pretty intense. But I got it. Nice. Okay, wait, what did I get? Awful gun. Shoot awful gassed fireball. Oh. Nice. Got a little bit of durability on it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me, yo. Oh. What is this? Hi, ghost. Hey, maybe he's a friendly... No, he's not a friendly ghost. But I just... I always thought from ghosts were kind of un misunderstood, you know? Soul bead. Right click to release a soul in the direction of the nearest nether fortress. Oh, this will find, this will find nether fortresses. So I'll actually use that. I also got awful crystals. So I can make an awful dagger. Okay, cool. And what do I get from the quest achievements? So nether, okay, I get another star and now I can kill the wither. One, two, drink my strength potion. Uh, what's up weather? Come on. Oh boy. Okay, maybe spawning him right next to my base was a bad idea. It might blow some stuff up. Shoot this way. Okay, it's not doing much damage. My hearts are okay. I'm okay. I'm alright. Oh, it's doing a bit of damage. It's fine. Alright, let's go, Wither. Let's go. Okay, got him. Got him. So what is this? Core shard. Good old friend. Click on nether reactor structure with a beacon as a core to start Pigman Legion event. Event ends once you die or when you click with this item again. <laughs> Okay, well, quite the event then. And I got another star as well. I also got a witherite bow, which is awesome. I had defeated the wither, but I hadn't completed my adventures in the twilight forest. So I figured I'd head back in and hunt for some more bosses. The first boss was the alpha yeti. Let's check it out. Got my golden apples in hand. Alpha Yeti. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's my guy. Oh no, my bow does so much. I just kind of want to see what he does. Okay, hold on. I'm not going to kill him yet. Okay, what do you do, man? What do you do? Like, what happens if I walk up to you? Are you sweating or? Oh, you picked me up. You have picked me up. Okay, I have Elytra. The, ske the skeleton's helping me. Thank you, skeleton. All right. Well, hello there, man. <laughs> You're so, you're so nice, man. I'm sorry, man. I, all right, well, that was, uh, it was not bad at all. It was uh, quite, quite simple because of my gear. Again, it, it's probably very difficult if I didn't have my gear, so. Alpha Yeti, Alpha Yeti fur, really cool. I can make some armor with that. And, okay, skeletons, really skeletons, hold on. All right, if I look at the quest, I got a horned helm. Nice, look at that. <laughs> yes, I am Yeti Swev. By the way, my name is pronounced Swev. Some people don't know it's uh, pronounced Swev. And just, uh, just so you know, it's a unique name. It's pretty cool. I like it. Snow Queen I need to defeat next. So let's do that. I think the Snow Queen's in here. Wow, this is quite the building. Look at that. Hold on. Let's get a further look. Wow. Oh, yeah. That is <laughs> quite the building. Okay, this is definitely the Snow Queen one. Oh, okay. Snow Queen? Oh, okay, here it is. Hi, Snow Queen. Hello. I'm gonna enter with you. There's a bunch of monsters here. Defeat all them. Let's see what the Snow Queen does. So she's walking towards me. Oh, she's melee hitting me. Okay. Come on, Snow Queen. Do some stuff, Snow Queen. Oh no, the Snow Queen's not doing anything. Well, okay. Is that it? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that was a snow queen. Tribo. Whoa, hold on. I can enchant this. Whoa. Fire three arrows vertically. Only consumes one durability and one arrow per shot. Hmm, this is a cool bow. Maybe I'll try it out. What if I use this and then I put multi shot on it as well? 
How, how overpowered would that be? I need to test that out. So another ice dragon egg. Now I need to kill the giant miner. Oh, oh, what? oh my God. Oh my God, it's giant me's. No, this has not happened. What happens if they come close to me? Can they hit me and like, I don't die? Okay, that's cool. I don't die. Wait, I don't want to kill myself. Are you kidding me? Hold on guys. I really just, I would rather not die to myself. You know, I can kill, I can kill one of myself, but not all of me. Apparently I have cousins. This is a, uh, this is what happened after I started doing YouTube. Basically I had all these people phone call me. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Kill a giant miner. Uh, I have done it. Okay, giant's pickaxe. Oh yes. That is a giant's pickaxe. That is a giant's pickaxe. Boom. <gasps> what? That is overpowered. That is overpowered. Ooh. So, all right. Um, is there any more stuff? Giants? No, I think that's it. So I got the pickaxe and a sword. You know, I probably shouldn't kill any more of these giants. Well, Ooh, here we go. <gasps> I, I used my elytra, but it... I fell to half a heart? No way, that j I can't, I can't believe that just, I cannot believe that just happened. I used my elytra, but I, I, I didn't go far enough to the side. Wow, okay. That was very, very close. After defeating a giant, there was one more mission that I needed to do, and that was to complete the questing ram's quest. To complete its quest, I had to bring it nine different colors of wool, but I didn't have anything with me at the time, so that's a quest I'll have to complete at a later time. I returned home, and now that I was finished adventuring, I wanted to celebrate my accomplishments. I played around with changing the design of the trophy room for a bit. I ended up adding glowstone to the top and bottom of the room, and I think it made it feel more special. After that, I decided to quickly randomly make one more upgrade to my gear, which was to make a prismarite shield, mostly just because it looked great with the rest of my gear. And lastly, I named our pets using suggestions from the comments on the last video. All right, for the tortoise, we got Tsuki. There we go. Tsuki. Tsuki is a good girl. It means moon in Japanese. It was suggested by Nexus, so thank you for that suggestion. And then for our ender dragon, we got Kinos, suggested by Archivo. So thank you for that suggestion. There we go. Kinos. Looking good, Kinos. We still need a name for our nether dragon too, so let me know what name you think we should give it. And that's it for these 100 days, 400 days to come. Isn't that right, Suki? Isn't that right? In this video, I survived 400 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is yet, it's a mod pack that adds tons of new features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we built a huge new base and did a ton of adventuring and exploring. In these 100 days, my goal is to build a huge new animal sanctuary and bring in animals from all around the world. While doing so, I also want to do a lot of adventuring and exploring. There are so many new animals and creatures that we encounter along the way, including the new mobs from the mob boat, so you are definitely in for a treat. With that being said, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I survive 400 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. Starting out on day 301, we uh, we had some problems. My base looks like it got hit by a hurricane because I had to update my world to solve some issues with lag and it was worth it. I wanna give a huge thank you to Sharky, the creator of the Better Minecraft mod pack because he helped me fix all of my lag issues and without him, I could not have done it. And I think we should all show him some support for making these amazing mod packs. So I'll leave his links down below and he also has a link that gives you 25% off of Minecraft server hosting, so if you want, you can check that out as well. Anyways, now it's time to get to work. I had to fix the dragon shelter, my home, and create a new storage system. So there was a lot of fixing, building, and crafting that I needed to do. I got to crafting the pieces of the new storage system and the materials I needed were simple. The only problem was finding them because they were all over the place behind glass. Fortunately though, I did manage to find them all pretty quickly and I 
I crafted all of the pieces to the storage system. I started wiring the system up and at first I tried to only connect the wiring to one chest and see if the system would detect all of the other chests like that. But nope, I had to connect all of the wires to all the chests and boom, the system was all set up and working. I quickly added slabs all along the chest so that the wires wouldn't be visible and my storage room was now finished. I came back up and the first thing I did is name our nether dragon. The most liked name was Jehenna and this was suggested by Mithivo. So thank you for that suggestion. It fits our nether dragon really well. We also have a new dragon to name later on in this video, but we'll get to that in a bit. I fixed my house a bit, went around chopping down trees that were in the sky and placed the new door that I had gotten in the last one 100 days, which looked amazing. After that, I made something really useful. I crafted a crafting remote that lets me access my storage from anywhere. Oh, crafting remote. There we go. Now, how do I bind it? <gasps> it's bound. Now I can just access this from anywhere. <gasps> Look at that. It's so much better. Can I be all the way out here? This is amazing. Oh my God, I love this. It lets me put in my items from anywhere. Awesome, I love this new storage mod. Yes. I made some final additions to my base and was happy with how it looked. Next, I began working on the Dragon Monastery. Now, the last version of this thing did not look so great, so I was happy to be redoing it. I created an outline with oak logs and then made dragon pens out of stone brick walls like I had initially. I also placed a ghost dragon egg and we need a name for this one, so I'll look at your suggestions in the comments and pick out a name in the next video. I started building out the roof with wooden slabs and then added strips of glowstone to brighten it up. I also added support beams made out of stone brick to make the build more solid. And while I was doing that, my new ghost dragon grew, so I fished up some food and tamed it. I got some more wood after that and continued building the roof into the next day. I ended up running out of glowstone along the way, so I entered into the nether. I think there's a new nether because there were new nether mods added and it had to get reset. Yeah, okay. Oh wow, look. We got a cool glowstone, glowstone stalactite. Nice, so I can just place that? Oh, that's interesting. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we got over here? Is this a uh, cincinnasite? Whoa, what is this? Whoa, there's like blur in the background when I zoom. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh man, I did not know. Oh, what is this? Another new ore. Nether ruby. Oh, nether ruby gear. Cool. I want to collect every set of gear. So I'm collecting all of these ores and I'm just going to have them all on armor stands. All right. We got a lot of glowstone here. Whoa. What is that? Look at that. Whoa. This is cool. Yeah. I think this is a fly, which is kind of disgusting. Oh, firefly. Oh, I picked it up by shift right clicking. Oh, I'm taking you home with me. I'm taking you home. How do I get back home? I don't like the noise that it makes because it sounds just like a, like a mosquito, like a fly, which is just disgusting, but it looks really cool. I mean, come on, look at this thing. I have to take it home. Okay, you can be in here for now. Oh, uh, look at you. Okay, uh, it might, it might just fly away. So I have to keep it safe. Okay, hold on. Up here, boom. No, wait, that's gonna be annoying. Okay, I changed my mind. It's, it's a disgusting sound. I hate the, the sound of mosquitoes. All right, I'm going back. Whoa, look at that. I want to check that out. This place looks cool. Very fancy. Umbral wart block. That's cool. White wood. That's pretty cool. Wow. This place is really cool. Look at all this. I returned home with all of the glowstone I needed and I got back to work on the monastery. I finished placing wooden slabs and then added a strip of glass to the middle of the building and my new dragon monastery was completed and I have to say I like this one a lot more than the first version. Next I decided I would finally make a new mob farm because I had been using my broken one for way too long. I crafted everything I needed, mined up stone, repaired my tools and went out into the deep ocean to start working 
on my mob farm. First thing I did was set up a chest system, then I got the first floor outlined and layered and added water all around it. After that, I started working on the next layer, which was a smaller circle with a dropper and observer in the middle, and I made 10 of these layers. I added a redstone clock, fixed some stuff up, and by day 319, my mob farm was completed and it worked so well. I mean, I almost got two stacks of gunpowder just from like five minutes of AFKing, and this was a really nice change from my older one, which was just terrible. I also added soul campfires to it on day 320 so that the super powered mobs that can spawn would die after falling because sometimes they would fall and just not die. After that, it was finally time to start working on the animal sanctuary that I talked about all the way back in the first 100 days. I repaired my shovel and started clearing out the big hill beside my base to make room for the new build, but then I remembered the giant's pickaxe I had gotten in the previous 100 days and I tested this thing out. Yes, <laughs> it does work. Only on cobblestone, I think, but that is so good. <laughs> yes, that is, that's gonna make it so much faster. Oh, wow. The giant's pickaxe is overpowered. And honestly, I don't even know if it should be in this mod pack, but I took full advantage of the fact that it is, and I decided I would enchant it to use on the hill. Just when I thought things couldn't get any crazier, I actually got the vein mining enchantment on it, which I ended up removing from the game later on because it's just crazy. But uh, right now, this was what I needed. I enchanted books to get on breaking three for a while after that, and once I got it, I tested out the pickaxe. All right, uh, I'm kind of regretting even getting this pickaxe because it just feels like it's not even better Minecraft at this point. It's just ultra supreme crazy Minecraft, but let's do it. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know, but <laughs> this is so overpowered. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Oh my god. Yeah, no, Bane Miner is enabled. Yep. Can I do it? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so crazy. <laughs> You know, I'm not even that mad at it, honestly. This thing is just crazy, and I was taking full advantage of it while I could, so I headed out to get a mending book on it as well, and while looking for a mending trade, I made a new friend. Wait, what color eyes is that? Is it, does it have orange eyes? Oh, that's so cool, it's, it's a Halloween cat. You are very unique. Yes, yes, oh, you're so cool. Oh, you are such a cool cat. Oh my god. I love this cat. I forgot. Can I color its collar? Hold on. Um, dye? Uh, let's say purple because we're probably good here. Can I? Oh, yes. Oh, you are so cool. Oh, there we go. Okay. What do I name you? Come on, Eleanor? Yes. 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 Thank you to whoever said I could use a boat and a waystone. Yes. Welcome, come on. Welcome to your new home. It's really cozy, as you can see here we got our dragons. Come on in. Oh, jumping from excitement. She is Laddern. Laddern's a random name. I got it from Lantern. I think Laddern is good. That's your name. After that, I was able to find my mending trade and I actually saw in a comment that I could transport villagers by using a boat and waypoint and it worked. So I was really happy about that and brought our friend Yolando to the new base to set him up in a hut. I enchanted the second giant's pickaxe I had after that and I was all set to clear out the hill for our sanctuary. While mining, I made it a big oopsie and I broke one of my giant's pickaxe. Taxes. I was not too bothered about it though because they are really overpowered anyway So I figured it would be fair if I would just finish out using their durability and then remove them from the pack So I could not get them again on the next day I finished out the durability on my other giants pickaxe and now I was back to mining like normal and honestly This felt much more natural to me. I basically just continued mining chopping trees and clearing out dirt all the way until day 337. Then I started filling in all of the ground with grass for the animal sanctuary, and it took me four full days of filling in the ground because I had to collect dirt, repair my shovel, and just place a bunch of blocks. It looked really solid, and next, I wanted to build a border for the sanctuary, and I decided I would use this starlit wood. Funny enough, I got the starlit wood confused with some wood that I saw in the nether before, so 
I ended up going into the nether and I got this umbral wood instead of that starlit wood. It looks really similar though and I was happy with it so I built a huge border with it. I planted down a frosty blossom tree to start adding some detail to the sanctuary and then I went around and added a second layer to the border. After that I wanted a way to light up the place but I did not want to use torches because that just would not look so great. So I figured I would use glowstone with glass over top of it. I started digging out the holes for the glowstone and then started filling them all in once I was done with that and it was looking really nice but I ran out of glowstone so I headed back into the nether and mined there for a couple of days. I returned home from my little mining trip and was able to complete all of the lighting in the sanctuary. Oh, there are butterflies here. Hello. <laughs> My first members of the sanctuary. Hello. <laughs> I guess maybe glowstone attracts them or something. I don't know. But hello there. You are free to fly around. Is that a neon butterfly? Ooh, that's cool. I really liked the look of it. So I figured I would do it for my sheep and cow farms as well. And I was able to get them all done by the following day. I also checked on our dragons and the ghost dragon had finished growing by now. Ooh. Wow. Look at that. I'm actually curious, which dragon is your guys' favorite? Because we have, I mean, what, seven at this point? We have six. Oh, okay, we have six dragons. So which one out of these is your favorite? The Aether Dragon, the Water Dragon, the Bone Dragon, the Ender Dragon, the Nether Dragon, or the frost dragon. Whichever one of these is your favorite, let me know. With the foundation of the sanctuary completed, I wanted to get some animals in there, so I went searching. Oh, here we have a bear. Okay, I don't know if I can tame a bear. Okay, I need an animal dictionary. Hold on. <gasps> animal dictionary. Okay, wait, I have, I have one of these. Feeding a grizzly bear salmon after it has eaten honey could result in gaining the beast's trust, although few survive. Okay, I'm gonna keep my eye out for beehives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks nice. Look at that. All lit up. No issues with monsters. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Do I want to add raccoons to my animal sanctuary? You know what? Let's get two raccoons. Yes, I can pick them up. All right. Two raccoons are coming with me. So, the first members of animal sanctuary. Here you go. Here you go. What? What is this? What is this? No. No, I need to bring you home. What are you? It's a rainbow sheep. Get away. Get away from the rainbow sheep. Okay, I'm taking rainbow sheep home. Let's go. Let's go. Eleanor, I'm gonna put you in the sanctuary because you are quite the rare species, buddy. Rainbow sheep. Boom. Rainbow sheep, you are now safe. Yes, rainbow sheep. Woo! Oh yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I know. It's a good day. Oh, elephants, elephants. Hey. Oh, I, I can't, can't cage him. Can I pick you up? Oh, I can pick up the baby. Acacia blossom. I think I need to feed it. Oh, I got it. Acacia blossom. Wait, where's the baby? Oh. Oh, I tamed you! Yes! Yes, Stampy! Oh. Hi! Hi! I can't pick you up anymore! Oh, it's following me. Follow me, buddy. Okay, let's go. Oh, let's go, everyone, everyone. Let's go, we're all going to my sanctuary. Let's go. Oh yeah, they love this acacia blossom stuff. They are really going for it. No, 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 no. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, come back. No, tell me you can- Yes! Yes! I'm getting about- Yeah! Let's go! Eleanor, we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, gazelles, right? These are gazelles? Hello. Oh, I can pick you up. Boom. Okay. There we go. There we go. We're slowly- We're slowly but surely filling this place up. With a decent amount of animals retrieved to the animal sanctuary, I realized that it would be a good idea to make a separate sanctuary for birds so that they could fly around in it and be free. And so an extension to the animal sanctuary project began and I started clearing out another mountain so I would have a good spot to put a glass dome for the bird sanctuary. I continued mining for the next few days and by day 356, I finished flattening out the mountain. I spent a couple of days even 
evening out the floor with dirt after that and then collected sand so that I would have enough glass to make a dome for the sanctuary. I started smelting the glass and while I waited for that to finish, I figured I would work on my new house some more. So I headed over there and when I arrived, the villagers were missing. I don't really know how that happened, but I guess I needed to protect the villagers more. I figured I would transport new villagers in later on. And in the meantime, I started working on the second floor of the base. I started by creating an outline with spruce, filled it with planks, and then started adding glowstone to it. But I ended up running out of glowstone again, so I went into the nether and got five stacks to make sure that I wouldn't have to go back to the nether again for a while. I finished up on the flooring and the interior was kind of starting to look like a mall, so I figured I would also fill in the middle part of it later on. By now, all of my glass was smelted, so I grabbed an inventory full and headed to the hill to start working on the glass dome. I started by creating an outline made out of netherrack because I wanted to make sure that this dome would be symmetrical unlike my aquarium and I replaced it all with glass on the next day. With the outline finished I was ready to start building the dome itself. I went around building up the sides and by the next day I finished the dome and added a sweet glass door to it as well. The dome isn't anything too special but I think on the inside it looks pretty cool. With the dome finished I wanted to bring my first guests over so I went over to the birds and owls that always sit on my greenhouse and brought them over let's go come with me let's go and Dorsey boom there we go Dorsey we got you in here I added glowstone lighting to the dome as well and then transported two of each bird to the sanctuary in total then I found out that I could actually shear the rainbow sheep and get rainbow wool to make a rainbow bed which was pretty cool with my sanctuaries complete I went out to look for more animals to bring home I found these new birds called peafowls and brought two types of them to the bird dome I also found a bee nest and honey which meant that I could try to tame the bears I saw earlier so I headed back home to fish up some salmon and went over to tame the bears. I fed them honey by throwing it down on the ground and then tried to feed them salmon but I didn't realize for some reason that I should also throw the salmon at them rather than right click it on them so it didn't end up working out. I left that alone for the time being and I also brought kangaroos home which I actually tamed and they have a pouch with nine inventory slots I can access. I can also make them follow, stay, or wander which is pretty cool. I felt like I had brought a good amount of animals over to the sanctuary for the time being, so I figured I would take a break on looking for animals and work on the base some more. I had the idea to bone meal the grass in the sanctuary, which actually made a big difference, I think, and then I headed over to my new base where I made a new set of stairs and filled in the center of the second floor. I filled in all of the flooring on the first floor as well, and I think that the foundation of my build really came together nicely. With the second floor complete, I figured I would make use of my newly built property and build an armory room. Now I didn't have any special design ideas for the room just yet, but what I did do is place an assortment of the gear that I had gotten throughout all of my adventures on some armor stands. It was really cool to see all of the armor I had gotten throughout my adventures all laid out in front of me, and there are even more armor sets to be collected. I looked at my quest book and I had a bunch of new rewards because the update added even more rewards to the questing system. I collected them all and I saw this new Pigman Legion event quest which was dangerous but I decided uh, I would take it on and I'm not sure it was the smartest idea okay well let's try this so one two three um will this work oh, oh okay okay it worked it worked oh my god oh I did not put my shield on okay wow that is intense Okay, let's go. Oh! No. This is terrible. Oh, man. This is crazy. Should have brought fire resistance. Juke this hog thing. 
that one too. No, 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 I did not think about that. Oh, that was, this is a bad idea. I, I'm burning down my whole forest. That is so bad. That is, oh my God, I did not think about this at all. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Why, 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 why is that happening? Oh my God, I can't stop it. No! What? What? Oh my god. Oh my god, my animal sanctuary. No. What do I do? No! Okay. Oh my god, I need to defeat the, the pigmen. The piglins. I need to end this thing. Oh, and they're gone. No, they're here. Die, you invaders. Ah! do so much damage. I haven't been using my shield enough. Oh. Did my forest just all burn, man. No. Oh. Get away. Oh, man. Come on. Oh. Oh, I'm so close. I'm so close. Come on. Yeah? Did I do it? I did it. There's a... There's another star. I defeated it. All of these blazes, man, they're not going away. They've burned everything. They've burned everything. No. Oh, <gasps> no, no, no. Did, I, did you survive? Yes, you survived. Okay, wait, I got my sheep. I got one gazelle, one raccoon, one more gazelle, one more raccoon, two kangaroos. I think everyone's here. Everyone is here. I did not lose any of the animals. <sighs> what about the birds? The birds are safe, right? Yeah. Okay, birds are okay. How do I stop this? How, how do I stop it? Is that gonna help? I don't even know what to do at this point. Come on. Oh! No. No! Okay, this I actually don't mind if that burns. Oh my god. No! No! What did I get? Blazing Quill? Blazing Journal? Whoa, this got a bunch of stuff going on. Okay, Hoglin's Hide. I can make a slingshot, a hog whip. Marauder's Helm. Marauder's Leggings. Interesting, I can make some armor. All right, time to fix up this place. Starting the Pigmen Legion event next to my base was a terrible idea. Over the next couple of days, I had to go into rebuilding. I repaired my animal sanctuary, repaired my house, and fixed up the dragon shelter. I was able to fix up everything, but my front door was missing, so I had to go back into the Twilight Forest to get a new one. It took me a little bit of flying, but I was able to find three of the dungeon doors that I needed, and this way I had one for my little base, and two for my big one. And my next mission was to fight a boss called the Shelterer. You can only defeat this boss with TNT, so I headed over to my mob farm and AFK'd all the way until day 376 to finally get enough TNT for the boss. With that, I headed into the end to fight this very interesting boss. Okay, here we are, here we are. We got a, one of these dungeons. Um. Yeah, it's got some cool stuff. Nothing that I need, though, really. Yeah, I mean, name tags are nice. Bomb. Whoa. Okay, bomb. Well, that's nice. I mean, I'll grab those. Hey, they use this portal. Cool. Oh, what are you? Ow. That actually hurts. What are you? <gasps> oh. Hey. Oh, what is this? Oh, I think this might be the dungeon for the shelter. Ooh, I think this is the shelter boss. Oh, what do we got here? 
Oh, we got his minions. One on head? I can put this on head? What? What? Why can't I put this on head? That does not make... Ha! <laughs> oh, there's spawners here. Alright, gotta break these. Here's a spawner. Got it. Looks like that's it. I think now I can I can just summon the boss. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is going to be fairly easy. Okay. Oh. There we go. So now I just TNT. Right? Yeah, I just TNT this thing. This is the boss. Because I can't hit it. Alright. So, I just TNT it. Okay. And... Boom. The shelter was an easy fight, but it did give me void crystals, which I was able to use to make the teleporter core and teleporter, and I set these things up so that I could teleport between my small and big bases by using them. Now that adventuring was on my mind, I figured I would go and hunt some phantoms in the abyss to try to get enough phantom essence to make a full set of phantom gear. Okay, so I need to fight more phantoms. Nether fire ingot, right. You wanted a nether fire ingot. Okay, another that and then get another right ingot cool fire gem another fire ingot give that to you and you give me another right chest plate whoa die phantom nice dropped a phantom soul I hunted phantoms in the abyss for quite a while and was able to get enough phantom ingots for my full set of gear. The only problem was that I broke my unknown pickaxe while I was mining earlier on, so I couldn't upgrade one to a phantom pickaxe yet. So I headed into the abyss to quickly mine up six unknown gems and returned home to finally forge my new armor. Whoa, this gives me resistance and fire resistance. No way. No way, I have fire resistance with this on. Oh man, look at me. I'm the most overpowered ever. Are you serious? Oh man. Woohoo! Yeah! I enchanted and farmed levels over the next couple of days, and by the end of all of that grinding, I had an incredible set of gear. When I returned to the sanctuary, an idea hit me, which was to decorate the animal sanctuary with different biomes. The first biome I wanted to add was a savanna biome because I had a lot of animals from there already. I chopped down some acacia trees, planted some down, changed the fences to ones out of acacia wood, and created a border. I made some finishing touches on the area, and then an accident happened. Oh! I did not mean to hit you. No! What have I started? Oh, what have I started? What have I started? No, 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 <gasps> like what? I didn't think a warfare would occur just because I accidentally hit an elephant. Oh man, I'm just, I, I was trying to clear out the, these plants, man. And then the, 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 oh man, come on, come on. That is very sad. I went out to find a new elephant after that. And along the way, I found this new animal called a Jolly Llama. What? What is this? What? What is this? What is that? What? Are these like reindeer or something? Oh my god. What do I need to feed you? Like sweet berries or something? I don't know what they eat though. That's a problem. Can I eventually tame you with this? No. Oh! Okay, it loves me. We're friends. Come on. There we go. Nice. Woo! Alright. And for that, you get a treat. You get an acacia blossom. There we go. Eat up. And after that, uh, another, oop another oopsie happened. What are you eating? I don't even know. Oh, no, no, no. I did not mean to hit you. I did not mean to hit you. No, 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 no. Oh my god, they kill things from- Oh my god. The elephants kill stuff for me. 
Dude, I'm just killing more animals than I'm saving. This is so sad. It's so... Uh, I'm so bad. I found a new gazelle and brought it over, and I vowed from that point on, I would be extremely careful with animals and make sure to keep them safe. After that, I removed some of the vegetation in the sanctuary and then started working on the next biome I wanted to add, which was the nether. I cleared out the surface, replaced it with netherrack, and then added some details like soul sand and little mounds of burning netherrack. I wanted to change the fences in the area to nether brick ones, but I did didn't have enough nether brick, so I quickly went into the nether and mined a bunch of netherrack to smelt. While that smelted, I got to work on the next region of the sanctuary, which would be the snow biome. I needed snow first and foremost, so I repaired my silk touch pickaxe and then went out to collect snow blocks. The carpet snow blocks I was getting from the overworld were just melting, so I needed to get solid snow blocks. And I remembered that the twilight forest had a lot of them in its snow biome, so I headed into there and I started farming up snow. While I was doing that, I encountered a couple of friendly creatures. Oh, it's little penguins. Hi. You are so cute. Hi. I oh, yes. I can cage the penguins. <laughs> penguin, penguin. Oh, hi, penguins. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's a glare. Glare. How do I tame the glare? No, I can't cage the glare. Put you on a lead. Hi, glare. Ah, I'll find a glare in another place. It's fine. When I return and place down the snow I got, it turned out not to be enough. So I headed back into the twilight forest and this time made sure to get enough to last me for a long time. I came back and placed down the final pieces of snow and the base of my snow region was done. After that, I went over, grabbed some sand and created a desert region as well. I also checked up on the furnaces and the nether brick was done smelting. So I made some pillars with them and I think that they turned out great, but someone else did not really think so. Well, can kangaroo, what are, like, what are you doing? Like, why would you go to the one place that's dangerous and jump towards it? What, what are you doing? Stop, stop, just stop that, stop that. I literally made it h high enough so nothing could touch it and the one thing that can jump like 80 million feet in the air, stop, okay, stop. Wow, you look angry. Are you trying, oh my God, I think this kangaroo is trying to die. I also added glaciers to the snowy region after that and left the desert area empty for the time being. I AFK'd for gunpowder for a couple of days after that to make more fireworks and then remembered to place the penguins that I had found in the twilight forest into the sanctuary. Oh, he's so cute. Hold on. Oh, look at him. They're so cute. <laughs> look at how they walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next, I figured that I wanted to find the new alley mob from the mob vote because I hadn't seen it yet and I really wanted to see it in game. Look at that. That is what? Is that's a is that called a killer whale? Is that what it is? Oh my god. Wow. That thing is massive. It it is massive. What is that? Whoa, what is that? Whoa. <gasps> cage. No, I can't cage it. <gasps> what is that? Uh. Uh. Sunbird. Uh, the sunbird is a mythical crane. Uh. uh, uh da, 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 da. Hold on. Uh. Uh. uh teleport. Te te telep. Okay. Uh, I need a lead quick. Yeah. Eleanor? Oh! Oh! Look, it's giving me Sunbird's blessing. Get away. My Sunbird. Can you get in? Get, get in. Get in, get in, get in. Get in. Get in. No! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where? It flew so fast. Wait, is it gone? 
No, 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 no. It flew away. But you know what? It wanted to fly away. You know, it did not want to enter the sanctuary. I didn't manage to find the alley yet, but I do later, as you'll see. Before that, though, I decided I would do a little tour of everything that we've done in this world so far. So first, we got our house, okay? We got our house. We've seen many improvements over the days, but it's still pretty simple, pretty, pretty nice. We got our trophy room up here with Tsuki. We got ladder and our cat, our rainbow beds. These are new additions. And then down here we have a storage room, which we kind of updated in these 100 days, but I've had this for a bit. And over here is the aquarium that was built. We got the greenhouse with all of our crops. This is a really nice build. We got our farms with the cows and the sheep, the sugarcane farm, also the dragon shelter, let's not forget. But this actually is way better than it was. I'm glad that it got reset because of the update because it looks way better. We got our new huge home. I'll probably still keep my storage and stuff at that one, but you know, I'm gonna slowly start kind of moving some stuff into this one. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I really like, I really like how we put the two doors here. This is so nice. It makes the entrance way more epic. And then we got the sanctuary. I think this is looking really nice, you know, especially from where we started. I'm proud, I'm proud of it. Here's the mob farm, it's the new one. I have the old one still somewhere, but this one works really well. I'm really glad I made a new one. Oh yeah, and I didn't say anything about this. We got the bird sanctuary, not to mention the other dimensions where I've done a bunch of stuff. We got the Everbright, the Abyss, Nether, and Twilight Forest and the end. With one more day left, I figured I would test my luck at finding the alley or glare from the Minecraft mob vote one more time. I wasn't successful though, and it turned out that it was because the spawn rates were really, really low in the mod pack. So Sharky actually helped me and added a crafting recipe for the alley, and I was able to see what it does. Let me do this, that, that, alley, spawn egg. Okay, okay, boom. Oh, look at it. Look at it. It's, oh, it's so cool. Wait, wait, wait. I need to tame you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ale, Ale, Ale. Oh, okay. I tamed you. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Um, whoa. Okay, so if I give it, like, an item, it'll look for that item. So, how does this work? So, if I drop dirt there, does it pick it up, or what happens? I don't know how this works. Oh, look at that. It picked up the dirt and it throws it to me. Ah, he's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ally, buddy. You can give me the dirt. <laughs> you can stop looking for the dirt. In this video, I survived 500 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is yet, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we built a huge animal sanctuary, did a lot of adventuring, and discovered a lot of new creatures. In these 100 days, we build a secret base, add a lot of cool features to our home and further explore new dimensions. If you haven't seen the previous 400 days yet, make sure to go watch them so you're all caught up with the series. And other than that, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I survive 500 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. On day 401, I had some fixing up to do because something happened to my fences. Oh, my fences are gone. Oh, no. Oh, man. I need to do some repairing. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh, no. I need to fence this place in. I needed to replace the fences, and what I wanted to do is match the fences to the biome they were in. So, for the snow biome, I used spruce fences, and for the sand biome, I used aspen wood, which matched perfectly. After that, I also wanted to add in nether brick fences to the nether biome, and I didn't have any nether brick. So, I headed into the nether to mine up a bunch of nether rack, and while doing so, I ran into this little guy. Oh, hey, buddy. Uh... Are you mean or not? Oh, are you not mean? Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? 
I headed back into the overworld and as I was flying to my house, I saw my base in the nighttime and it just looked beautiful. I slept off the night and on the next day, I started smelting all of the netherrack I'd gotten. I made some nether brick fences, started building out the nether border and the desert border and while I waited for more nether brick to smelt, I decided I would name our ghost dragon that we hatched in the previous 100 days. The most liked suggestion by all of you was the snivy one two three suggestion of Lucy in remembrance of our cat because this is a ghost dragon and I think that this fits perfectly. I got to placing some more fencing after that and on the next day I started separating the biomes from each other so that I could put animals in each of them and this was a suggestion I actually got from all of you in the comments which I think is a really great idea so thank you for that suggestion. It took me a while but I was finished by the next day and then I moved each of the animals to the region they were originally from. After I was done with that, the animal sanctuary was complete, and now all that's left for me is to just find more animals to bring to it. With that being done, I wanted to do some more work on my home, or as it's called, Eleanor. In the last 100 days, I mentioned making a CD room for all of the music discs I collect, and that's exactly what I started working on. I already had a perfect place to put it because of the huge base we made in the 200 days video, so now I just needed to figure out a design for it. I took out the flooring and figured I would try making the floor out of jukeboxes, which cost one diamond each, but they were perfect for the music theme of the room. As I was thinking about that though, a blue moon occurred and this thing makes you lucky, which I wasn't sure what that meant. On the next day, I made a lot of jukeboxes and started filling in the flooring. I decided to do a checkerboard design, which was just perfect. And then I thought of filling in the empty spots with different colors of wool to make the room have a kind of disco theme to it. So I sheared enough sheep to get two stacks of wool, made a bunch of different colored wools, and started placing them all down. And I gotta say, the design turned out really good. I needed to go out in search of more flowers though, so I would have enough dyes to finish it. And by the next day, I returned home and filled in the rest of the floor with different colored walls. After I was done with that, I started to want to make a disco ball because I felt like it would complete the music disc room. At first, I tried making it out of wool, but it just looked like a Rubik's cube. So instead, I made it out of lamps and the design looked pretty good. Next, I started to figure out the walls of the room and I ended up choosing to make them completely out of jukeboxes, which definitely just bankrupted my diamonds because each block cost one, but it fit well. I actually ended up running out of wood and diamonds, so I had to mine for both of those for a bit, but after I did, I was able to finish the walls. I fixed the disco ball to make it centered, which made it look way better, and after that, I added item frames and a diagonal pattern on the walls. And after taking some time to place item frames all along the walls, the CD collection room was finished. The wall is finished. Yes, <laughs> my wall of CDs is done. In celebration, I will play a CD. Let me see this one. All right, let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a good room to play discs in. With all of that base work done, I wanted to go adventuring. So my mission was to head into the Everbright dimension and defeat all of the bosses there. I got all of my pyro gear on, which is more effective than normal gear in the Everbright dimension. And on the next day, I headed in. Right away, an ice zombie came at me, but I was able to take it out before I did any damage. Before fighting any bosses though, I needed to get better gear. So I headed down into a cave in search of new ores. I found this purple ore called Falcite and it it can't be used for armor or anything, but it can be used to make some magical items. I also found this blue ore called Aquite as well, and this was equivalent in strength to my Pyrup gear, so it wasn't anything that special. The caves in the Everbright Dimension are really cool, by the way. They're covered in ice, and it was really cool to adventure through them. I returned home to quickly make some new pieces of gear, and then I headed back in to look for some better ores. I found this new pink ore, but when I mined it with my Pyro pickaxe, it didn't give me any anything. So I made a pickaxe made out of aquite instead and tried mining with that and it worked. I got this ore called Charoit Ore, which is like diamond in the Everbright dimension, but 
it was only one piece. While searching for more Charoite ore, I found this green ore which is called Diopside as well and this ore is like diamonds too. I continued searching for ores throughout the day until I was finally able to find enough for a full set of gear and it looked pretty cool. Now I just needed to find the Tower of the Summoner, the first boss that I needed to defeat. While flying around in search of it, I found this huge green structure and I thought that this might be where the alchemist was. Oh man. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I ah, some kind of a hole there. Okay, I cannot go here yet. Okay, message received. <laughs> message received. I need to look for the tower. That's what I need to find. Okay. I continued searching for the summoner's tower and along the way I found a new purple plains biome and a biome with white trees, which was pretty cool. While exploring, I also found this little guy. Oh, hi. Oh, it's a little baby. <laughs> Oh, what are you? <laughs> wow, you make interesting <laughs> sounds. <gasps> Can I take you to my animal sanctuary? <gasps> what? Oh, wait, can I tame it? Reindeer. The reindeer is one of the most useful animals I found in the Everbright. They can be tamed using pine fruit and equipped with a saddle. Oh, I need to tame one of these. Okay, I'm gonna need to return with some pine fruit. Okay, I marked the coordinates and I'm just gonna have to return here. I made plans to tame two of the reindeer, but first I had to complete my mission of defeating the summoner. Aha, here we go. Here's the tower I'm looking for, okay. Let's see if I can go in here. Yeah, I think I'm good. I've entered and I have not died. Nothing going on here so far. I don't like how this is a maze thing. Ooh, there's a chest. Is it, I feel like it's gonna be trapped. But, you know, I gotta risk it. Okay. Oh, blinding dungeon key. I need that. That's good. There were three more dungeon keys that I needed to find. One was guarded by some illagers that I took out who were also keeping some villagers captive, but I unfortunately couldn't free them. The second one was in a bedroom with a cat, which was pretty cute. And the last one was in a witch's brewing room in one of the brewing stands. With that, I headed to the top of the tower and I prepared to fight the summoner. And uh, oh yeah, here we go. <sighs> It's time to fight the summoner boss. Um, I'm gonna keep my fireworks ready so maybe I can escape through a window if I have to, but here we go. Okay. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Can I shoot at you? Okay. I'm just gonna sword it down. Oh, wow, that's a lot of minions. Ooh, whoa. Okay, let me heal up. Oh, I'm doing damage. Okay, that's good. Oh, see, like stuff like that. I don't know what's going on there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A lot of minions. Whoa. Whoa, levitation. Ah. That is scary. That's so loud. Oh. Defeat these minions. Okay, I'm levitating. Oh, I should not get that close to him. Oh. That was like an upgraded minion. It was red. Oh. Uh-oh. I don't like these. Oh, no, 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 no. Get away. Oh, get away, get away. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. I'm eating a golden apple. I'm eating a golden apple. No way. That is scary. I gotta defeat these minions. Oh. Okay, get him. Oh, I'm doing a lot of damage. Oh, no. He's summoned a lot of minions. Ow. Take that. Oh. Stop healing. I'm just going for him. I'm just going for him. I got him. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. Okay, summoner loot bag. Summoner trophy. I can add that to my trophy room. Ethereal arc. Ooh, grants a 15% movement speed boost. Oh, I'm pretty sure I can put it here. Nice. <laughs> that just gives me 15% movement speed. That actually feels really nice. Soul bound spear has built in loyalty. Eight attack damage, and I can throw it here. So I think that's like the bow of this dimension. So it's only it's only fitting that I use this. Oh, nice. What else? I got a music disc to add to my CD collection. That's all I got, and it's pretty good. With the summoner boss defeated, I left the tower and I headed over to the green temple in search of the starlight crusher next. Yes, okay, it's not giving me the bad effect anymore. Nice. Okay, this is gonna be my next fight. I need to defeat this boss with an ax, I think. So I'm gonna make a chero white ax. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's spawners. Oh, break those. Oh, what are you guys? Oh. 
Get away from me. Get away. Get away. Some type of rock golems. Chaos rock golems. I don't know what these are, but they're not friendly, so I'm gonna break their spawners. Well, what do we got in here? Some ores. That's all right. Oh, I can't build. Oh. Oh. I have to parkour. Parkour. Oh, whoa. Whoa, it's cutting me up. Whoa, it does a lot of damage. Ah. I continued adventuring through the temple in search of stairs to the next floor or a key, but I was not finding anything for the longest time. After a while of searching, I finally found the first nature dungeon key, and on the next day, I finally found the second level to the dungeon. This level was just like the first, so I adventured around, found the second key, and after searching for another day, I made it up to the third level of the temple. I found the third key, but at this point, my gear was getting really close to breaking because of all of the monsters that were in this temple, and I was considering going back, but honestly, I was just so far in and I, I couldn't break out, so I decided that I would go through with it. I found the last key, and on the next day, I approached the Starlit Crusher. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh uh, boy. Uh, here it goes. I don't know. The better thing to do would be to just leave and repair my gear and enchant in and stuff, but... Okay, oh, oh, I, I think I need, I need to attack this guy with my axe. Oh, okay. Um, oh, oh, okay, oh. Wow, we're getting right into- oh. Wow, okay. Yeah, I can only attack this guy with my axe. Uh, I, I should also have my spear with me. That's good. Okay, attack the wall. Okay, I can stun him. Oh, ow. Okay, good. Attack. 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 Oh. Is he gonna- Oh. Summoning these little guys. Oh, he's doing a spinning thing. Okay, go. Attack. Okay. Oh, stun him. Nice. Damage. Go, 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 go. Oh. Okay. Break the wall. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. This is bad. Ow. Stun him. Oh. 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 Ow. He does a lot of damage. Go, go, go. Oh. Boom. Okay, good. Doing a lot of damage. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ow. I can't. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Ah. Wow. Wow, he does a lot of damage. Ow. Oh, man. My gear's about to break, too. Oh. That, that's not good. This is not good. Break this. Okay, boom. Nice. Okay, and I'm running. And I'm enchanted golden apple. Because I'm scared. Uh. Oh, stun him. Go, go, go. Okay, run. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Oh. Okay. Stun. Okay. Run. I've used up all of my enchanted golden apples and my regular golden apples. Oh. Go. 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 No. Oh. I was so close. One more hit. Oh. No. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Not healing enough. Okay. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Oh. Stun him. Go for it. Yes. Oh. Did I do it? Yes. <laughs> I had two hearts. Oh. oh. I just used some loot bag. Oh, wow. 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 One durability. One durability. <laughs> I, 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 I honestly thought I might die. I, I thought I might die. Crushing hammer slams the ground to hurt surrounding mobs and send them flying. I think I equipped, yeah, nature arc provides two extra hearts. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's why I have two teal hearts now. Wait, that's really cool because I get to keep those in the regular world too, I think. Nice. I got a, a music disc as well. Some cryo root. I get a quest reward. 
kill the Starlet Crusher. Nether Star. Oh, okay. I'll take it and collect all four dungeon keys, get some experience. Wow. I barely defeated the Starlet Crusher. It was a really close fight. I headed back home with the trophies of my victory and I placed them in my trophy room. I wasn't done with my adventures yet though, because the next dimension that I needed to go into was the Ever Dawn dimension, the counterpart to Everbright. So I made the portal and I headed in. This one's orange. That's cool. Okay, let's check it out. I don't know how far I'm gonna adventure into this yet. Ooh, okay, it's kind of dark here. This place is looking cool. It is the opposite, complete opposite of the Everbright dimension. While I wanted to actually start adventuring around, I realized that I couldn't yet because I barely had any fireworks left. So I headed back over to my mob farm and farmed gunpowder for the rest of the day there. By the next day, I made a ton of fireworks and I entered the Everdawn dimension once more on the next day. I saw these plants called Lucent Tree when I entered and I could make a wreath from them, which I didn't have any use for, but it was still really cool. So I put it on. I continued traveling and I found this purple biome, which had an eerie feeling to it as well as this white purple mixed biome that had this bug in it oh you look really really nasty ah get away ow set me on fire you're mean ow not cool not cool bug guts ew ew i can get emeralds for that not worth it oh it's a huge huge mountain oh what is that whoa 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 what is this what is this? Ew! Ew! My ability did not work. Oh, take that. Earthquake. Oh, the things here are not friendly and they... They they are scary. Are you friendly? Oh, you're friendly. See, we can be friends. It's cool. Yeah. Can I, like, pick you up and bring you to my animal sanctuary? No. After I was done exploring for a bit, I dug down and I searched for more ore to replenish my gear with. I found these sunstone crystals while mining, which act as coal in the Everdawn dimension, and I also found this flower called a blaze bud, which can actually be smelted. I found an ore called horizonite as well, which wasn't any stronger than iron, but it could auto smelt things. I then ended up finding this huge lava filled cave, and it had a spider in it that started shooting its venom at me, which actually did a lot of damage, but I was able to take it down using my new soulbound spear. I eventually found more diopside and cherowite, and by the next day, I had enough to replenish my full set of gear with it. With that, I returned to the surface, and I began my search for the alchemist. I covered a lot of land, and I eventually found his tower. The layout of this tower was identical to that of the summoners, but it was much more dangerous. I found all four keys that I needed to unlock access into the alchemist's chamber, and began the fight. And... Let's go. Alright. Oh boy. What? Oh. Rocks in the sky. Oh, he's blinding me. Oh no, no, no. I don't like that. Oh no, no. Oh, I don't like that. Oh. That is dangerous. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Dodge that. Okay. I can hit it. I, I can hit him with my spear. That's good. <gasps> oh, that's bad. That's, that's bad. <laughs> ah. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, this is tough. Oh boy. This is, this is not good. This is not good. I can't go in the poison. If I go in the poison, I'm done for. Hit him with the spear, hit him with the spear. It does a lot of damage. Oh, he's healing now. Rock. Okay, dodge that. Oh, fire arrows. Okay, good thing there's water here. <gasps> Wait, it turned into lava? Oh! What? That was not good. Ow. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, man. Um. Um. Oh, man. Why didn't I dodge? Oh. I found a, I found a nice little spot here. Okay. Oh. Okay, come on. Okay, I'm close. I'm close. Eat, eat, eat. I'm blinded. Come on. Oh! Oh, got hit by it. Go! Yes! Woo! Yes! <laughs> oh, yes. 
The alchemist is down. Okay, I got a rare alchemist loot bag. I got the trophy and I get my quest reward too. Let's see what I got from that. I got the experience and alchemy scroll drops decaying spikes in a line from above the player. Whoa, okay. Dusk arc grants invisibility while sneaking without smoke. Okay. Oh, and I got a spike shield. Ooh. Nice, I got a unique shield. That's awesome. Oops, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. Okay, I got a, I got a cool unique shield. And it, I think it does damage to enemies when I block with it. Because it has a damage scale so that might be one of the best shields i can even get in the game <laughs> so that's cool um and also i should equip this arc boom nice what else alchemy table i got two of these Ooh, i can do cool stuff with this i, I can transform blocks into other blocks so that's nice i had defeated the alchemist and now there was one boss left for me to defeat here the erach narc while searching for it i found this all white biome with some camels walking around and there were also some crystals lying around which i broke and i found out that i could use them to make a new type of shield while traveling I realized midway that I should definitely stock up on some golden apples before fighting the final boss. So I headed back home and I searched for a villager with an apple trade until day 423 when I finally got it and I made 57 golden apples in total. I spent the rest of the day trying to make steak and potatoes like I had before because they're an amazing food source that not only give you a ton of saturation but also end up healing you a lot more when you eat them but it was harder to grow them now because rice was kind of weird to farm and it would take a while to get everything I needed. So I left that behind for now and I headed into the Everdawn dimension to find the Arashnar. I searched for a while and eventually I found this tree which signified the entrance to Arachnark's dungeon. The dungeon was some sort of purple crypt and it had spider webs all over the place which made it really hard to navigate through. Going through this place was no joke. I mean, it had a lot of spider spawners and the spiders did a lot of damage because they were all poisonous and it was really hard to dodge their shots. I still made my way through though, collected all the keys, and made my way down to a Ratchnark's lair. <sighs> all right, it is time and let's go. Oh boy, here it is. Our Arachnark or Arachnarch or Arachnark, I don't know, but it looks creepy. It's charging up. Oh, okay. Okay. So it charges up. Okay. Dodge. Okay. Oh, now it's on the ceiling. Attack it. No. Ah. Take a second, sir. Ooh. Okay. I don't want to get hit by whatever that is. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good. It's like a bull. It's charging. Ow. Oh. Ow. 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 My totem of undying. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I was trying to dodge those. Okay, dodge, please. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's hard to dodge it. Dude. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that. Oh, man. I'm almost dead. Oh, boy. Okay, how do I dodge this? <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. Get away. Get away from me. Get away from me. Stop it. Okay. Oh boy. Oh no. Dodge. <gasps> Baby spiders. No, no, no. What is that? Ah, what is this? Can I shockwave them? Take that. Get away. Okay. Ah. 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 Oh, I'm definitely dead. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, I dodged it. No, I can't dodge it again. Oh, thank God it did not go for me again. Oh, okay. It's going to go for me. Jump. Hit. Hit. And jump. Nope, that did not work. Okay. 
Oh, nice. It's gonna summon spiders again. I bet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Missed me. Ah, uh, did not miss me. Did not miss me. Jump. Jump. Ah, uh, did not miss me. Okay. Oh boy. I'm just scared at this point. Oh. Wait. No, I didn't mean to run right into it. No. Okay. It kind of worked. It's fine. Crushing hammer. Oh. See that? That's right. Oh. 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 Ow. Got it. Yes. Oh. I need to heal just in case. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Take that spider. That's that's what you get. Oh, uh, I got a loot bag and a trophy. Ooh, that I came close to dying. I was very close. I have no more totems of undying either. What I get? Poisonous arc. Increases damage dealt by one when poisoned. Oh, well, that's interesting. Defeating a Ratchnark was not easy at all, but I managed to do it. I flew back home and I placed down all of the new trophies I got in order with the additional items I got from all of the bosses above them. Now I was finished adventuring in the Everbright and Everdawn dimensions, but I was not done adventuring in other places. There were new bosses in the Nether and the End that I had to defeat, and the first one I decided that I would take on was the Netherite Monstrosity in the nether. I headed in to begin my search and along the way I found this temple which was surrounded by lava and on the inside it had some pieces of ancient debris which when I mined actually activated a lava trap but fortunately my armor gave me fire resistance so I was completely safe and got away with all of the ancient debris. And so I searched and searched for the netherite monstrosity over the next two days until I finally found a strange structure. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh my god. There's two. I don't think that's supposed to happen. That is definitely not supposed to happen. Oh man. Look at him. Look at him go. Look at him go. Oh, they're crazy. Look at him. They look so cool. Hi. Wait, let me golden apple and go in there. Okay, come on. What happens if I... Oh. Oh. Okay, they don't do that much damage. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of good. Oh, it's hard to dodge him though. I'm just gonna bow him down. I can melee them down. I can do it. Come here. Oh. Okay, lava's coming down, but I have fire resistance. What's up? What's up? You guys are really cool. I'm sorry to have to kill you. One down. Let's go. I took on I took on your brother already. Oh, there's something on the I just picked something up. Hold on, I want to try that out. I got a new weapon. What is this? Infernal Forge. When in main hand, you can hit the block with the right click to cause wide area damage. Whoa, wait. Whoa. Pretty cool. This is a good trophy weapon. I like it. Look at that. Look at this weapon. Take that. I gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Wow. Cata monstrous Horn. Monstrous Horn. What can I do with Monstrous Horn? Whoa, netherite helmet plus, plus monstrous horn equals monstrous helm. If you fall below half of your HP while wearing it, you will push nearby monsters. Combine that and that. Boom, monstrous helm. Let me put that on. Ooh, ooh, that looks kind of cool. I like it. Ooh, I'm looking, I'm looking real cool. What's up? Don't mess with me. I returned back home and placed my trophies down to add to my collection, which was really growing. With all of that boss hunting done, I wanted to take a break from fighting for a bit and work on my base because I really hadn't worked on it much in these past 400 days. The first idea that came to mind was to add a bridge from my house to the hill that the bird sanctuary is on because I kept having to swim across to it every time I wanted to go there. I started with a simple design and just kind of let it come out as it would. And it wasn't a perfect looking bridge, but it was my bridge and I was happy with that. To spice things up a bit, I added some ender lanterns to it, which I really liked. And then to take it a step further, I wanted to make a roof out of some unique wood. So 
I headed into the end where there is an abundance of unique woods. I found a lot of new wood types in the end and I made sure to get logs and saplings from as many of them as I could. I found these cool flying swordfish things as well, which were not friendly. Oh, oh, it's a jellyfish hive thing or something. Hey, up. It's like swordfish. Sword and fish. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Okay. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> By the next day, I returned home and began working on the bridge again. First, I added this purple wood called poise to the tops of the logs, and then I began connecting everything on each side. On the next day, I finished the outline with poise slabs and wanted to fill it in with a different type of wood. I ended up using other planks, which complemented the purple really nicely, and I slowly started filling in the roof. I ended up having to go to the end to get some more of it and then returned to finish up the bridge, and I was really happy with how it looked. Next, I made a little staircase on the hill going up to my house and while doing this I got the idea to add a secret staircase under it that could go to a secret underground base. I didn't start working on it yet and in the meantime I added a stone brick pathway connecting to the bridge and I did some fencing as well. I continued the pathway to my house and then continued working on a track to my greenhouse and other farms. I used oak planks at first, but I then ended up taking them out and used stone bricks instead because I think it looked more solid. I made a path to the animal sanctuary as well, and I was happy with the progress I'd made so far. The next thing I wanted to do is make a secret piston door in the staircase going up to my house. And then on the inside, I wanted to make a secret base, so I thought it would be really cool. Now at first, First, I wasn't really sure where exactly I wanted to place the pistons, so I spent a while trying to figure that out. The first design I made just did not work very well, and the second one didn't either because you could see the pistons. Finally, I figured that I could push the two rows of stairs on the bottom one block back and then have a staircase going down there. On the next day, I also made a wall with a special design that made it so you can't see the lever that's behind it but the lever was really hard to press. So I moved it slightly and then everything worked perfectly. Finally, I had a design that made it so that the lever was pretty much invisible and at the same time, really easy to press. After opening the secret entrance, I started working on a staircase going down into where the secret base would be. And just because of how mysterious the whole thing was, I also decided to add these unique turquoise stone bricks on the inside, which I think fit really nicely. I then added a lever on the inside as well, and I connected it to the redstone so that I could reclose the secret room after I would go inside. After I was done with setting up the entrance to the secret room, I wanted to take a break from working on it just because it took me so long to figure out. Next, I was thinking of what else I should add to my base, and I had the idea to build a statue next to my bird sanctuary, and I have no idea where the idea came from. I wanted to make an eagle statue to symbolize the bird sanctuary, so I started by making some legs out of oak wood and then started adding some wings to the sides, and then to make the statue have a cool kind of tribal look to it, I added some colored woods as well. After that, I worked on the second half of the body. I made a head, made some feet, and then by complete accident, I realized that the statue could literally hold the beacon above it. I, I, I swear to you that I did not think of that at all all when I was making the statue. It was just a complete accident. To continue with the random creativity, I thought it would be cool to make a pathway to the bird sanctuary out of purple brick. So I headed over to a Badlands biome, mined terracotta into the next day, and then I made some magenta bricks, which looked really nice, and I think they fit the area perfectly. I also added a sign in front of the statue that said, the spirit of Amaku who guards these lands, which I thought was pretty cool, and it made sense because Amaku the statue holds Holds the beacon. Next, I wanted to plant some trees around the place, and I wanted to plant starlit trees at first, but I wanted to find more types of trees, so I ventured out on the next day to collect new tree saplings, and while doing that, I also found this cool new biome. Oh, so many flowers. Wait, this is really, really nice, actually. Boom, purple, amaranth, amaranth, yellow. There's all different colors, and I can turn them all into dye. Oh, it's orange. So many colors. Whoa, okay, that's awesome. It's a little bird, hey, you wanna come to my sanctuary? You're coming with me, pigeon, let's go. I just built a cool statue, you're gonna be protected. It's a good, good time for you to live, pigeon, all right? Good time for you to live, buddy. Look at how happy the pigeon is. So happy. <laughs> pigeon, let's go, buddy. 
Welcome, welcome to your new home. And now I can use the bridge to get across. In you go, there we go, pigeon. Nice, we got a new member. <laughs> All right. I planted all of the new tree types I'd gotten, but I ended up just sticking with using the starlet and cherry tree types, and I think that they looked really nice. After that, I placed some lampposts, and the area was done, and I think it turned out really nicely. Next, I started working on a guardrail for my road, which I made out of oak slabs, and I continued the railing all the way to the animal sanctuary. I then furthered the pathway to my big house and extended a pathway to the sugarcane farm as well. The next thing that I started started working on was extending my portal room so that the waypoint that I had would be kept indoors as well. And the only reason why I needed extra space in the first place is because I take my dragons with me when I teleport and if they don't have enough space they start taking damage. I built out a circular outline and while working on this I found out that I could make quartz bricks which I really like the look of so I used them for the next two layers of the walls. After that I used more quartz pillars and then chiseled quartz for the final layer of the wall. I began working on the ceiling after that but I ran out of quartz so I had to head into to the nether and collect some more. I returned home and started finishing up on the build, but I barely didn't have enough quartz again, so I headed into the nether and this time made sure that I got enough quartz. I returned on the next day and finally finished the building, which I was really happy with. Next, I began working on a pathway from the portal room to my base, which I was able to finish the foundation for by the next day, but when I was finished with it, I felt like it needed more detail, so I wanted to add more wood types to it. The Twilight Forest had a lot of wood types similar to oak planks that would look good in combination with it, so that's where I decided I would head to. I went around and collected Twilight Oak, Canopy, and Darkwood, and after I got the new wood types, I figured that since I was in the Twilight Forest already, I should finally finish the final quest in the Twilight Forest, which was to deliver every colored wool to the questing ramp. So I headed over to its enclosure. Aha, here you are. Hello. Ooh, so cool. Missing ram. Here you go. Ooh, there we go. Cyan. No, 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 don't leave. Oh, can I just right click this on you? Oh, there we go. Black wool. Purple. Blue. Light blue. Brown. Orange. Light gray. White. Um, gray. Whoa. <laughs> it is really long now. Not to oh, there we go. I took the pink. How many more you need? Pink, you don't have the red. Ooh, there we go. Yellow wool. Boom. Oh, you need more? Oh, no. There we go. Green. <laughs> wow, you are getting strangely long. It's kind of creepy. You really love your wools. Okay, there's another one. Okay, boom. Okay. Oh, it's got all the particles. <gasps> yes. Oh, what did I get? I got a bunch of stuff. Oh, whoa. Okay. I just got... Iron, diamond, lapis, gold, only one of each. Crumble horn, though, and the questing ram trophy. What is this for? That's interesting. Oh, wow. I returned home and placed my new trophies in the trophy room, which were really nice. After that, I broke random holes in the pathway that I had made and filled them in with the new wood types that I'd gotten, and the pathway was complete. I really liked how all the new woods made it unique, and I think it's cool that I'm using blocks from all of the new dimensions. Now at this point, I had done a lot of base work, so I figured it was time to go adventuring once more. And the next boss that was on my list was the Ender Golem. So I headed into the end and I began my search for its base. I flew by some really cool biomes along the way, like this cool fiery biome, which I had never seen before. And it looked like the whole biome was up in flames. I actually stopped by one of them to grab some of the new plants in the area so that I could use them for design if I ever needed to. I also found an ender temple which had some pretty decent enchanted books on the bottom so that was a cool find and I found this dark purple biome as well and in this biome I found what I was looking for. Ooh. Oh 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 yes I found it this is what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh there there's one of the go oh no it's already trying to bite me. What are these blocks? Whoa. They're like redstone. Void stone. Ooh. These look really, really cool. I love these. Okay. Ooh. I have slowness. Whoa. There's chests in here, though. Ooh. This is pretty good stuff, but honestly, I don't even need it. Ooh. Christmas present. Woo! 
What do we got? Oh, music disc. Pig step. I already got pig step. Oh, holiday. Holiday music misc. Mi <laughs> I can't talk. Boo. I needed stacks and stacks of diamonds. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. No. Wait, wait. Golden apples. Hi, man. So you're floating too, huh? It's just... <laughs> Both of us are floating. That's fun. Oh, and you're dead. Wow, that was an ender golem. Nice. I thought that was the, the other one, but that's perfect. When right click, you can summon void rune. Whoa. Hyro piglin spawn egg and experience as a reward. Oh. Oh, cool. I can do void spike thingies. What do we got here? Oh, whoa. I just, that's a lot of shulker boxes. <laughs> what do I got from this present? Oh, it's a redstone block. <laughs> Pyro Piglin Spawnic. I don't... Do I want to spawn this? Or, like, do I not want to spawn this? I don't know if I want to spawn this. Pyro Piglin. I guess I'll have to find out. Whoa! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay, Pyro Piglin. <laughs> okay, I got him. That was interesting. He had a flamethrower. Okay. I made my way further down the labyrinth, looting more chests and defeating more ender golems until I finally made it to these trap doors. Ooh, okay, here we go. Next level. But there's... I I don't know where... There's no lever. I'm just gonna break in. Um, I, Maybe I was supposed to get get a lever, but... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, boy. He's pulling me in. He's pulling me in. Oh, man. He's jumping at me. Oh. 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 Oh, no. Let's go. Let's go. Take that. Oh, oh. Oh, he's redirecting my bullets, man. Ah, get away. Shoot him. No, I can't shoot him. That's right. Ow. Oh, he broke me down. Take take that. I'm good. Oh, why did I drop that? That was that was bad. Okay. And dead. Got him. Okay. Nice. <laughs> That's a really cool boss. Really cool. Ender Guardian. Got him. Ooh, what is that? Gauntlet of Guard. When in main hand, you can pull entity with the right click. Whoa. And a music disc. Nice. I headed back up to the surface and I tested out the new gauntlet that I got. Oh, wow. It does pull things in. Look. <laughs> Wait, how far does it pull things in from? I'm pulling it in. But it doesn't do damage. Ooh. Oh, oh, they all attack once I attack one. Oh, sorry. This thing doesn't break. That's cool. I returned home, placed my new trophies down, and jammed out to some music discs in celebration. All right, let's let's jam out. Oh, uh oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh yeah, I'm invisible when I sneak. Let me add this to my collection. Boom. Oh, oh, but, oh. Oh, wait, can I? Okay, there we go. Oh, what's up? Oh, what's up? Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh. <laughs> okay, one more, one more. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm having I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> I can sit here forever with these music discs. Seriously. Ah, uh, you cannot give me music. It's I can't. I gotta put these away now. Oh man, I'm gonna stand here for ten days just listening to music. I uh I jammed out for quite a while there. I definitely got carried away, but now it was time to get back to work. I wanted to start working on my secret base again. I added purple bricks on the inside and. While I was doing that, this happened. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, wait, this is actually really cool. Whoa, wait, maybe I can, oh, I can do something with this. Oh yeah, for sure, cave base? <laughs> Having a cave right below me meant that I could make a secret cave base, which was just 
awesome. I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to get down at first, but I figured I could make a lobby room and then make a staircase down. I placed quartz blocks all around with a glass block so that I could see what's under me, and then I started slowly building an oak plank staircase down. This work continued on over the next few days, and I made sure that the path was wide and safe to go down. And all the way on day 462, I finally finished it. Now I had to figure out what I was gonna do with the actual cave base itself, which honestly, I had no clue about. I started by building out a bridge out of glass, and then I got a bit sidetracked. Hi, we got you here. Break that so I can see you. Hi. Hello. Cave root. This is what they like, right? Here you go. Oh. Oh. You got hearts. <laughs> it's following me. All right, I need to get my cage. And hopefully I can use a cage on a cage. Here we go. Oh, no. I can't use this cage on it. No, why could I use it on the other one and not on this one? No. Oh my god, we got another one. We got two. Hi. I can't cage you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. This is amazing. I, two, two turtles? I can bring them both back. A root. Boom. In you go. Come on, come on. Please get in. Please get in the boat. Please tell me you can get in the boat. Can't get in the boat. No, I can't put a lead on it either. <gasps> what? I can't take the turtle with me. No. What do I do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can keep them down here. Uh, I'm going to give them names so they don't despawn. One, we got Torek. I think that's good. Please name me. We need a name for the other one. The white one is Torek. And then the red one we need a name for. Ooh, it's snowing. Please name me red one. Okay, please name me. <laughs> and here we got Torek. Boom. Nice. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can bring you guys. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. I can bring you to my... <gasps> ah! Oh, they didn't die. Oh, okay. Wow. Hey, get away. Get away. I need to bring these guys to my aquarium. Come on. And... Here we go. Once I was done figuring all the stuff out with the animals, I built a fence under the new bridge that I built that made my aquarium more closed in and that way I could see more of the fish that I would bring to it. I got back to working on the cave base after that and the first thing I did was start building a glass tunnel in the entrance. I completed a full dome and then started working on my first room in this base, which I wanted to be a smelting room so that I could easily drop off all of the items I need, smelt them and have them ready in a couple of minutes. While building up the room, I checked to see if there were any new glass types that I could use, and sure enough, there was a new glass called framed glass, which was perfect for me to use in the smelting room. So I headed out and collected sand for a while, and when I returned, I built out the smelters I would need using chests, then hoppers, furnaces, hoppers again, and chests. And this way, whatever I would put into the chest at the top will automatically come out smelted on the bottom. I made 10 of these smelters, mined up all of the coal ore that I had, and filled each furnace with a stack of coal, which meant that I used 20 stacks. After that, I finally started smelting all of the sand that I had, and while all of it smelted, I started working on a pathway connecting the smelting room to the lobby room. I started out just using oak, but then I added stairs, magenta bricks to the bottom, and turquoise bricks to the top. Finally, I made some finishing touches to everything, and my first room and pathway were done. Next, I wanted to head into the end to bring some enderfish to my aquarium, but I was out of fireworks, so I spent the next two days AFKing for gunpowder, and I came out with a lot of gunpowder, farmed up some sugarcane, and made a ton of fireworks. After that, I finally headed into the end in search of some endfish. I found some and got one in my boat, but unfortunately when I tried to bring it to my home, it just wouldn't teleport out of the ender, and it ended up dying instead. I, I, I was really sad that I couldn't bring the enderfish to my aquarium, but hey, animals have their natural habitats, so I understood. I headed back down to the secret cave and started working on another pathway. On the following day, I decided that I would be done working on my base for now because I had done a lot and I wanted to adventure some more and I still had a lot more to do in the abyss dimension, so that's where I headed. I made some night vision potions and entered the abyss. I searched up the next armor upgrade I could get 
and it was Unorite, which wasn't easy to get. It required me to get a lot of netherite and phantom ingots to complete a full set, so I began working at it. I flew around in search of phantoms, and while I was searching, I found this guy called Jackson who offered a reward if I gave him a ring, and when I did, he gave me this ring of fire, which burns nearby enemies, so that's pretty cool. I got back to hunting phantoms and continued my hunt over the next two days until I got 40 phantom essences, which means that I had hunted down 40 phantoms because looting doesn't actually work in the abyss dimension and neither does fortune. I returned home and I was really excited to make my new armor. I made 10 phantom ingots and then used my netherite shards mixed with some netherite scrap to make 10 netherite ingots. I had some more netherite scraps left over but I still needed 10 more netherite ingots so I had a lot of mining ahead of me before I would be able to fully upgrade my set. I sheared a bunch of sheep, headed into the nether, and made a bunch of beds to start mining for ancient debris. I ended up finding this new ore called penderite while mining, which is actually pretty cool because it can upgrade netherite armor and I didn't need it, but I could add a set of it to my armory collection later on. I continued on mining for ancient debris over the next two days until I finally had 24 pieces. I returned home, started smelting them up, and then found out that I needed more titan bones to complete the Unorite ingots, so I headed into the abyss again, mined titan bones, and returned home at night. I finally upgraded all of my gear, and after that, my full set of Unorite was complete. Okay, everything is upgraded. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now I needed to enchant all of my gear again, so I spent the next two days just enchanting and enchanting until I had the perfect set. After that I needed to get silk touch and mending on my gear, so I figured that it would be a perfect time to build a villager trading hole in my big house and then I could place a villager with a silk touch trade, mending trade, and even apple trade for my convenience in there. For the first build I stuck to a pretty simple design, building up the corners with oak wood and then connecting them with stone brick. I made the roof out of oak planks after that and then I added cyan and pink wool to the top of it and it was complete. For the next building, I wanted it to have a strange design. I started off in a similar way with the oak logs in the corners, but then I built the roof all the way from the floor up to the top, which I finished off with colored wool. I fine-tuned the house a bit and it was done by the end of the day. I then started working on the third building for which I stuck with a simpler design. I got a bit sidetracked though and I made some changes changes to the second building as well to make it look better and by the next day I finished the third market house of the trading hall. After that there was a little bit of space left on the side of the trading hall so I figured that I would just build another structure even though I wasn't really planning on using it for anything. I made it really tall, topped it off with magenta bricks and added some purple glass. I figured this could kind of be like a jail cell or something. Next I dug out the floor and started replacing it with grass but I ran out and I didn't have a silk touch shovel to get more so I figured that I should probably go out and find a villager with the silk touch trade. I waited out the blood moon that occurred collecting gunpowder at my mob farm and then started looking for the villagers I needed on the next day. I found my villager with the mending trade but I realized that I needed way more emeralds to actually be able to trade with him so I farmed up some carrots and headed into the nether to trade with some nether goblin traders which I only actually found one of and I got all the emeralds that I could from him. On day 484 I brought home a goblin trader that was in my stronghold and I named him Tinkrat. I set up a waystone in the tall structure after that and I teleported the goblin trader there so Funny enough, it ended up being a pretty useful structure after all. I then realized that I could use the Goblin Trader's Cobblestone trade to get emeralds next, and I went into the cave base, set up a beacon, and started mining out cobblestone. I mined for a while to make sure that I would get a huge number of emeralds from trading, and I went in for my first trade with the Goblin Trader, which gave me a stack and a half of emeralds. I got back to mining some more and returned for my second time on the next day, which gave me another stack of emeralds. With that, I headed over to the villager with the mending trade and got 12 mending books. I then started trying to get the silk touch trade and I was able to get it on day 488. After that, I put mending on all of my gear and silk touch on my pickaxe and my super set of armor was complete. Next, I started bringing the villagers to the trading hall, but it did not go so smoothly. I gotta go to Eleanor. Boom. Nice. Eh? Okay. There we go. Let's go, Clark. Yes. No! What? 
He's smart. He just jailbroke. He, he took the first chance he had and he ran with it. Okay, Clark, I see where you stand. Well, um, I'm gonna have to work for me. Uh, oh my God. Wow, he really goes right for the exit. Oh my God. This guy's an anarchist. Total anarchy. He went to the complete opposite, opposite corner of where I need him to go. Not cool, Clark. Not cool. Now, I have taken extra precautions, okay? Nope. Oh, no! Oh, Clark! I'm gonna get you in there, Clark, okay? We are gonna do it. Oh, got it. There we go. There you go, Clark. I brought home a farmer with an apple trade as well so that I could make more golden apples, but I didn't bring the silk touch trader just yet because I didn't really need him for now. I silk touched some grass after that, placed it down in the marketplace, and bone mealed it for some detail. And with that, I had a mini trading haul in my base. Now that I was done with that, I wanted to continue advancing my base, and something that was on my mind was connecting my base to the Dragon Monastery, since they were so close to each other. So I dug out the wall of my house that was facing the monastery, and then added some logs to the corners. I had to spend some time chopping oak wood for a bit because I was completely out, and while returning home, I had the idea to add framed glass to my big house, and I think it added some character to it. I got back to connecting my house to the monastery, and the monastery itself needed some work done to the flooring. At first, I wanted to use yellow bricks for the pathway in the center, but that didn't really fit well. As I thought of something to replace it with, I added doors and glass to the wall so that there would be a separator from the inside of the house, and I then removed the yellow brick and used stone brick with oak logs to the sides and Instead. I started replacing the flooring under the dragons with oak planks as well, which I finished by the next day. I added the final four stone bricks of the doorway, and the combination was complete. The final project that I wanted to complete for these 100 days was a garden that would have plants from every dimension and biome in it. I figured that this spot next to the house and the sugarcane farm would be a good place, so I started leveling out the area there and filling it in. I continued working on it into the next day, but as I was, I saw a wandering trader, which I usually just kill right away because they never have anything good, but he actually had a globe for sale, which is uncraftable. So I got some emeralds from my man Davida and I bought a globe. I placed it down in my bedroom and I have to say it, it was pretty cool. I could spin it around. It showed my coordinates as well. So I'm glad that I bought it. I then started building out an area for my garden. And once I filled in a large square, I started planting down some of the plants that I had gotten. I placed down these flowers called Azor buds first, which are from the end, then placed down some of these Brickon flowers from the Abyss Dimension that set you on fire when you walk on them. But while I was looking for more flowers to use, one of the Azur Buds randomly grew into a tree, which completely surprised me, but adding trees to the garden was actually a really good idea, so I kept it. I continued adding more flowers over the next days, trying to get as many different varieties as I could, and I also planted some trees as well. But when I was getting close to filling up the whole garden, I kind of realized that it was too flat and kind of boring, so I cleared out all of the flowers and I started adding some little mounds of dirt to it. And once I finished adding the layers around the garden, I started planting trees around it. I placed one tree for each color and then I slowly started planting flowers around the garden as well, matching with the color of the tree that they were next to. The enchanted trees that I got in the garden looked really cool, so I was happy that I added those. And overall, the garden was definitely coming together. Now I figured that I wanted to make a much larger garden or park next to the animal sanctuary later on, but for the time being, the little garden was good enough. Since I had a bit more time left, I figured that the next thing I could do is start working on my armory room. I went to my house, cut some flooring out of it, and then made these stone tiles to use for the flooring. I started working on the walls after that, and I kind of wanted to go for a medieval theme, so I built up pillars with spruce planks, and then I filled the walls in with white wool. The wall actually came out really nice, and it definitely had a medieval look to it. And by the time that I was done with that, the sun was up, and day 501 was here. And that marks the end of these 500 
days. If you enjoy this series and my other videos, consider subscribing so you know when I upload them. And uh, I definitely have some really cool videos on the way, so stay tuned and thank you for watching. Peace out, everyone. In this video, I'm going to try to survive 600 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. If you don't know what Better Minecraft is, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we built a secret base, fought insane bosses, and much more. In these 100 days, I create a hidden automatic brewing room, build an amazing bird sanctuary, and fight the final boss in the mod pack. With that being said, it's time to get started with today's adventure. So grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 600 days in better Minecraft hardcore. On day 501, I had my first mission in mind, which was to build an automatic potion brewer. For the automatic potion brewer, I had the idea to base the entrance off of an actual brewing stand. The first thing that I needed to build were the stone cubes at the bottom of it, and I started playing around with using some different types of stone. For the blaze rod part of the brewing stand, I found this stuff called quilted wool, which was really easy to make, just three pieces of wool and two string, and it was this textured version of wool that fit the brewing stand really nicely. Continuing on with day 502, I wanted to make some yellow quilted wool as well, but I didn't have any more yellow dyes, so I traveled in search of some yellow flowers and found some dandelions not far from my base. On the next day, I crafted yellow quilted wool with the dye that I had. Now, the next part of the brewing stand that I needed to figure out were these corner pillar things. They had a pretty dark shade to them, so I thought that basalt and deep slate would work really well for them. With all of those blocks figured out, I figured I was ready to start building the brewing stand. Before building it, I had to level out some of the grass in the area and clear out any flowers with water. I then began to work on the brewing stand, and the first thing that I needed to make were the 6x6 six six cubes at the bottom. The blocks that I used at first, though, I wasn't exactly a fan of. The cool thing, though, about these heavy stone bricks is that they place in whichever direction you're facing. So that could be useful to know in the future. After playing around with the design for a bit, I decided I would use smooth stone, stone, and heavy stone bricks for the design. I filled in all three of the squares and I was happy with how the design looked. The next part I started working on was the center blaze rod. I slowly built up the design 16 blocks high and I mixed in some normal wool as well with the quilted wool, but I wasn't really happy with how it turned out. So I took it down and I redid it, this time only using the new quilted wool. With that, I finished the blaze rod part and I had to work on some corner pillars next. I figured that deep slate and basalt would be a perfect match because they had a dark tone and I built up each of the four pillars with them. After that, I started building up the stone squares at the bottom one block higher so that they would match the design of the original brewing stand, but I was running out of smooth stone and wanted to smelt some more up but when I checked my storage room, it had some blocks missing from it. And while I was trying to fix it, something really bad happened. No, no, no. 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 Breaking new. Oh my. <sighs> That is so sad. Yeah, Reganu fell into the base because some blocks got removed and I didn't think of putting him in a water bucket. I got back to fixing up the storage room and I also figured I would add quartz to the back walls since there was just nothing behind them except for random stone and other blocks and the repairs ended up being pretty successful. When I got back up to the surface, it was nighttime and I took the chance to light up the area around the brewing stand and now it was more or less mob proof. On the next day, I finished filling in the second layers of the cubes and the last thing I needed to work on were the pillars that dropped down on the the brewing stand. So first I built a three height pillar, then a four layer pillar, and finally a pillar that dropped down with redstone. I built out this design on each of the four corners of the brewing stand and it was finished. I think I actually did it. I actually kind of did it. You know what? I could put some campfires on top or something. Boom. Place the campfires down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. 
This is looking good. Yeah, I was pretty happy with the design. Now I wanted to work on the actual automatic brewing room. The first thing I wanted to do is make a staircase going under the brewing stand. Then I added netherrack to the inside to make it look like it's an entrance to the nether and added nether brick stairs. On the next day, I added a netherrack border all around the brewing stand. I wanted to make a secret entrance to it with lava only showing and then having water underneath it so that when you jump in, you can easily cool off right away. I needed to get some lava and netherrack for this build, so I headed into the nether. Once I entered the nether, I was able to use my map to mark down where my portal was, and this is really useful because I literally get lost every single time I go into the nether. I mined up about a half inventory full of netherrack and then got a bunch of lava as well. With everything collected, I returned home, and on day 510, it was time to get to work. I placed down some signs to stop lava from flowing down and then wanted to place water under but there ended up being a ravine right under me which wasn't really optimal. I needed nether bricks to fix this up so I headed over to the furnace room that we built in the last episode and started smelting up the netherrack. With the netherrack smelting I started figuring out the layout for the room. I also added in the water so now you could enter in the room without burning. After setting up the drop down I started working on the room itself. First thing I did is clear out a large large amount of space in this room. And then picked up the nether bricks that I smelted and then collected all of the materials that I needed to create an automatic brewer. With that, I began working on the system. The first part I worked on was the input output setup for the brewing stand, which could be controlled by a lever and would essentially let you put in and take out potions. I then set up the redstone for inputting and outputting all of the ingredients that you want to use for brewing as well as selecting them. and I labeled all of the chests so it was clear what each one had. After that, the brewer was done and I just pressed the buttons in order of the ingredients that I needed and my potions were brewing. Next, I wanted to start working on designing the room. First, I wanted to set up a little netherwort farm, but I didn't have any soul sand, so I headed into the nether, dug up a couple stacks, and with that, filled in the farm. Then I started looking through my huge storage for blocks, and I found these blue bright planks, which ended up looking really nice for the flooring. For the ceiling, I tried out using this block called Lunar Stone, and it also fit in really well. I needed to collect more of both of these blocks and they were both in the blue skies dimensions. So that's where I was headed next. Before that though, I looked at the comments from the previous episode and some of you told me that axolotls literally eat other fish. So me keeping Paul and Riganu in the aquarium was a bad idea. I picked Paul up with a water bucket and my idea was to move him to a little aquarium under my bed. So I cleared out some blocks under my bed, filled it up with water and added this cool glow light glass on top, which I needed to make a bit more of. So I headed into the smeltery and while I smelted some of that up, I remembered the red turtle from our last episode, which I asked all of you to name in the comments, and the name suggestion with the most likes was Garnet, which is the name of a red gem suggested by Mithibo. so thank you for that suggestion. Really fitting since the turtle has red gems on its back. There will also be a new dragon joining us later on, so if you want to give your name suggestions for the dragon, just stick around. Anyways, after that, I finished the little aquarium on under my bed and I think it turned out nicely. And there we go. <laughs> we got Paul with us here. He's chilling. He's not gonna kill any fish and he is safe. So I think that's a pretty cool addition. Now that that was done, I got back on track with finishing the brewing room. I headed into the Everbright dimension to collect blue bright wood, which I got about a stack of. And I uh, got very, very scared to say the least. Oh, geez. Oh man, I did not expect that at all. That scared me so much. 
Oh man. But on the good side, I was able to bring a new friend to the animal sanctuary. I brought over another stardust ram and two reindeers as well. With the blue bright logs collected, I headed into the ever dawn dimension and I collected a bunch of lunar stone. With all of the bucks I needed, I headed into our hidden brewing room and I got to work on filling in the ceiling. It was really dark, so I wanted to add a layer of lighting to the ceiling and I saw that I had these shroom lights, which actually fit perfectly. I went to the nether to gather up enough shroom lights for the room and when I was heading back, I ran into this. Whoa, whoa, what is that? I've never seen a gas like that. Whoa, is that just a retextured gas? That's pretty cool. I've never seen one like that. I placed down the shroom lights along the wall and it really lit the room up. Then I mined out the floor and filled it with blue bright planks. That looks nice. Oh, whoa, I love it. I then filled in the walls with nether brick and added another layer of shroom lights, which I had just enough of. I also wanted to add another layer of lighting in a different color. And I found these cool purple shroom lights, which were in the abyss dimension. Oh, there's purple shroom lights. Whoa, that's in the abyss. Oh, maybe I should grab some of those. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Let's go. I love how many blocks there are in this mod pack. Like, it's just so fun. When I showed up to the abyss portal, it was broken, which was because it was updated, and I also had updated quest rewards. So I've killed Barack already, but now you get a blazing fishing rod from it and a golem steel brazier. Villagers and guards are historically drawn to these. Whoa, I'm not sure what the blazing fishing rod or the brazier do, so if one of you know, please tell me. I also got another star and a wand of freezing, which was pretty cool. It summoned these icicles from the sky. There were also some new quests, one that required me to defeat a new conjurer boss and another of crafting this light and dark chest, which would let me go into the new deeper dark dimension. The final reward gave me a portal frame for the abyss dimension, which looked really cool, by the way. And with that, I headed in. The first quest in the abyss was to defeat an elder, but my current goal was to find purple shroom lights. I already don't like it. I need night vision. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, luckily I have three night vision, so I'm gonna make use of that. There are a bunch of things here. Look at this. You guys mean? Oh, yes, you are. Okay, they don't do that much damage, but they are scary. They look quite cool, though. Lurker Sauber. Whoa. Whoa, infused bench? What is this? Oh, man, there are so many animals <laughs> oh this is actually really scary there are a bunch of animals here wow this place is crazy what is that oh my god what is that look at it it's crazy i'm scared is this is this mean no it's nice oh man what are these it's like mean cows go away whoa this place is crazy sabra i'm curious about what this does Lurker juice. Whoa. While flying around, I also found this altar area, and I wasn't sure of what it did at the time, but uh, you'll find out later. The abyss dimension was just beautiful while I was flying around. I mean, teal, purple biomes, they, they looked amazing, so I was enjoying myself. I ended up finding purple shroom lights in the slime forest biome and mined it up. I also defeated a slime spider and got this unstable slime, which could be used to make the stuff called slime fusion that basically lets you upgrade your gear, so maybe I would have to do that later. I also started getting attacked by slime zombies, and my screen started to have this weird fog effect. Luckily, I already had all the shroom lights I needed, so I returned turned home safely and added the purple shroom lights to the base, which it, it, it just looked so cool. I ended up going back to the abyss for more shroom lights. And while I was collecting more, this happened. I'm scared. Take care. What does that mean? I'm flying up. I'm flying up. What does that sound? What does that sound? What's going on, dude? Dude, what's the sound, man? Can you stop? Oh my God. What is that? That is freaking me out. I was blinded and everything. How, is there a way to prevent that? Oh my goodness. Dude, that is insane. The abyss is crazy, man. Get me out of here. Yeah, I was freaked out. I, I immediately left the abyss, but I did have all the purple shroom lights I needed. I also wanted more regular shroom lights, so I mined up some in the nether and finally finished the brewing room. Okay, there we go. I'm done, okay? I'm done. I'm done the brewing room. 
This uh, this has been a decently long project here, but hey, I think it's a cool addition to our base. You know, we have somewhere where we can make a bunch of potions now. It looks nice. It's secretive. I, I like it. Now that I was done with the brewing room, I wanted to start working on a new project. And from your guys' comments, I got a lot of suggestions that I should upgrade the bird sanctuary, which I think is a great idea. Also, the birds that we had disappeared because the mod pack got updated, but we'll get new ones later and it's time to take down the glass dome. The first idea that came to mind was to create the outline of the structure with jungle wood. So I headed into the jungle, mined up some jungle trees. I also got a banana while doing so, which was, uh, it was, it was legendary. I could use that to tame some monkeys later. Also, this mob called a philiath was attacking the villagers, so I helped out a bit and cleared it out. With the jungle wood, I started plotting out an outline for the base, and I wanted to keep the build symmetrical, but I, w I was not successful at that at first. I, I spent a while fixing things up to correct the shape. And by day 524, it was more so a symmetrical octagon. I built up the pillars 16 blocks each. And while doing so, I flew over to the beacon to activate jump boost. So that way I could build two blocks at a time. Once I finished building all of the pillars up, I got some more jungle logs and I connected all of the pillars together. I also connected a second layer between them so that the building would have more definition to it. I also wanted to plant different vines onto the walls and I thought I needed to get silk touch on shears and it took me a couple of days to get a villager with a silk touch trade and once I had that I tried to put silk touch on my shears but realized that it was impossible. It seems like in this pack you can't get regular vines with shears. I'm not sure if that was my fault or if there was something wrong but Honestly, this worked out for the best. Instead, I took a look at all the different new vines in this pack and I set out to collect them. A lot of them were in the blue skies dimensions, so that's where I headed first. I collected up a bunch of these pink vines and the next vines I went to collect were the ones in the ever bright dimension. I wasn't able to find any vines on the surface though. I did, however, think I might've seen vines underground before, so I mined down and I didn't find anything. There are vines underground, however, and I do find them later. For the time being, I actually headed into the end to look for more vines, and there are a lot of different types here. While I was searching, I found another fish pond also, which reminded me of a comment I got on the last video, which was that I can actually pick up end fish in buckets and bring them home to the aquarium that way. So th thank you, thank you very much for that suggestion. I really love being able to read you guys' comments. While searching for vines, I found this stuff called tail moss growing on a tree, which I thought was nasty. I mean, overall, look at these trees. They are creepy. They did have some black vines, which I collected, and I got blinded by these strange guys while doing so that I was able to defeat. I also found this little underground area from which I got some cool pink vines, and there was this weird one-eye squid thing that attacked me. While flying around, I saw these cool crystals, which I think I've got before, but I collected some more. I found these cool plants, which aren't vines, but I can place them on walls, so I took some of them with me. There were these green vines that I got, which only grow on ceilings, and I found this cool biome called the Imperious Clearing that had these nice teal plants. I saw this underground area as well that had these nice blocks called Jade Stone. I collected a bit of them, but I figured if I wanted to get more, it would be good to just come there with a beacon at some point and get a bunch of them. There was this very cool biome that I found that had some vines and a lot of different slimy blocks called tree membranes. I got some of these orange plants and with that, I finally returned home with everything on day 530. Now that I'm back, let's see if the fish will survive here in the water. Yes, it will. Oh my God, it is so beautiful. And they glow, I can still see it. I chopped down some cherry, starlet, and widow wood. And once I had enough of each, I started building the wall. I built with a pattern of two pink, green, blue, green, and blue. I switched up the design on every wall that I did. And I had to spend most of day 532 
redoing a big part of the structure because it was uneven by literally one block. On day 533, I got back to designing the walls and continued all the way until day 538. I ended up adding all types of designs to the different segments of the walls and it was pretty random, but I think it turned out well. Now that the walls were done, I wanted to add vines to the structure. I started placing pink and purple vines around the whole building and unfortunately I ran out of purple vines so I spent the rest of the day out collecting more and finished up on the next day. With the vines mostly done and growing, I started working on the roof of the sanctuary. I used jungle slabs and just made my way around the top in a circular pattern. I also switched things up and used darkwood slabs for every other two layers of the roof which added a nice variety to it. While building I stopped to take a look inside and realized that I would need to do a lot of lighting up but I figured figured that I could build the rest of the roof out of glass to make that a bit easier. So I filled it all in and while looking at the glass from the inside, I had the idea to make the glass have a heart shape because it already just about looked like one. So I reshaped it a bit and this is what I came out with. With that done, I started working on finishing up the entrance. I wanted to create a design with different colored stained glass, but I didn't have any more green dye left, so I farmed up some of my cactus, smelted it up, and made all of the glass I needed. At first the design looked like this, but I ended up changing it to this and then added some stripped logs and a glass door to it. The bird sanctuary was now looking pretty good, but I was not done yet. Next I had the idea to move my beacon that was on the statue to the bird sanctuary because it was kind of blocking vision of the park. So I found the exact middle of the structure, dug underground, and built the beacon there. I then put a piece of glass above it, and I think it turned out to have a much cleaner look. There was also another beacon I had set up a long time ago that kind of just congested the air, so I went down to my hidden base and I removed it. And I think that the base looked a lot cleaner with it removed. Next, I wanted to start addressing the issue of the sanctuary being really dark. So I placed glowstone and glass every three blocks blocks all around the floor and that solved the issue of lighting on the ground. Next I needed to figure out how to light up the walls. I searched for new types of lighting in this mod pack and I found these cool mint crystal lamps which I could actually make using the crystals I had gathered in the end earlier and these looked really cool. Plus they fit the theme of the sanctuary really well. My only concern was that they may take too much attention away from the birds but Honestly, it's worth it. I needed to grab some more from the end, but before going there, I used my automatic brewer to make some more night vision potions. I headed into the end, and while flying, I ran into these phantom looking things. I tried to ride them, but I couldn't. I, I don't know if you can do something with them. If anybody knows, please tell me. I found this like spaceship wreck or something while flying around, which they didn't really have much in it. I was able to get these blue vine lanterns, which are pretty nice, and some books. But other than that, there was nothing else. I found these cool kind of blue growing vines, which I took for the sanctuary. I also ran into this ender tower that had phantoms flying around it and had targets all over the place. I went inside the tower, and when I got to the top, it had some loot, mainly just a bunch of enchanted gear. Also, I got a new music disc to add to our collection, which was called the Ender Mosh. I found this random structure that had a chest with some plants in it. I found this cool crystal called Smaragdant, which is a pretty interesting name. I then thought I found the crystals that I've been looking for, but they ended up being just completely different and they were called Aurora Crystals. By day 548, after almost three full days of searching, I finally found the crystals that I was looking for and I collected up a bunch. Luckily, they are really easy to collect. I also collected the cobalt and rose crystals that were there just to have some extra. By the end of the day, I returned home, converted the crystals into lamps, and placed them all down. Now the inside was nicely lit up. I then placed the new leaves that I'd gotten on the walls and they were glowing. So I realized that not only could I use these on the outside, but I could use them on the inside and light up the whole sanctuary. On day 550, I went to the end to collect 
more of the glowing leaves and was able to get some new vines as well, which would fit perfectly. By the next day, I returned and placed all of my vines and leaves on the walls and ceiling. Once I was finished, the whole structure was glowing and it was just a perfect fit. With that, the bird sanctuary was ready to house some birds. So. I set out in search of them. While searching, I saw this tower, which I checked out and it had some emeralds and prismarine shards and it had a waystone. I teleported to where I was tens of thousands of blocks away from my base and here I was able to find my first bird. Here we have some birds, but what can I, can I like pick you up? Oh wait, I think I can use cages for birds, right? Cage? Cage? Yes! Woo, I got a crow, welcome. We got one more crow. They might be annoying with their crows, but you, you know, we, we accept all animals. <laughs> what is going on over here? Apple tree, huh? Cool. Butterfly. Yeah. Welcome, butterfly. Oh, oh. Bald eagle. Eagles are so cool. Oh, I can't pick it up. Oh, no. What is that? Ooh, those things are not friendly, I don't think. Hello. Are you friendly? You are friendly, aren't you? No way! Can I KJ? I want to see what its name is, first of all. Second of all, if they're friendly, I'd love to have them. Um, I kind of want to, like, kill one to see what they are. Oh, no, I think they're just ang angry naturally, huh? Oh. Oh, no, I think they're all just angry. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What is going on, man? Dude, these things are scary. These things are scary, man. What are these from? Okay, wait, I defeated some. I don't know where the loot went from that though. Let me try to find it. I got a Naga Fang from one of them, which can be used to make a Naga Fang dagger that poisons your enemies and deals double damage when you attack someone from behind. There was also a mansion next to me and I decided to check it out. There was some basic loot like iron and bread and when I got to the top of it, there were invisible skeletons that I had to fight off, which I was able to do. Once I got out of there, I looked into taming a bald eagle and I found out that you could tame them with fish oil and command them with a falconry glove. When I tried to make the glove though, it turned out that I needed hair from a bear and I didn't have any, so this is something I would need to do later. I started running really low on fireworks, so I headed to my mob farm to get some more gunpowder and stayed there until day 555. When I dropped down to the bottom though, I realized that the mob farm was not working properly. Mobs were dropping all over the water and I was not getting much loot at all. I thought that the problem was that the mobs were just funneling out to the sides instead of dropping into the campfires as they were supposed to. So I started building a funnel all the way from the bottom to where the mobs were actually getting dropped from. But when I made it to the top, I just saw floating water. And then I realized that the blocks that I had placed in the main drop area were all gone. The issue was that the blocks were updated in the pack and so the ones that I had placed there before were just removed. It actually took me a pretty long time to put everything back in place because I didn't really have much to refer to, but after a couple of days of trial and error, I figured it out. Finally, I had everything back to how it should be and I headed up to test the farm out again. And sure enough, the farm was working perfectly. I was getting all the gunpowder that I needed. The only issue was that the drowns were attacking me. Maybe I I should build out a platform here sometime so that they can't get to me. While I was flying back home, I ran into our little alley friend from our previous episodes, which I completely forgot about. Oh, no way. I forgot about you, buddy. Where have you been? Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's go. We gotta go sleep, but I went to bed and then right away on the next day I brought the alley home and put it in a safe place in my base so that I wouldn't lose it again. With the mob farm repaired and my fireworks restocked, it was time to go searching for birds again. While searching, I found this ship in the sky, which I remember finding before, but this time I actually checked it out. Oh boy. Flying man, flying man. Oh, I should put my totem of undying in my hand. Let's see what we got uh, up here. Let me break this before any more of those spawn. Oh, more of these guys. Gotcha. Oh. Hogs are not fun. This guy's very strong. Oh, okay. Okay. Come on. A lot of health on these guys. 
there was some basic loot here, some golden carrots, some nether ward, and other stuff. And in the bottom of the ship, there were more mobs, which I cleared out. And there was a double chest that had a bunch of diamonds, some diamond horse armor, but nothing too, too special. I also found this tree house dungeon that I went through and looted, and it had some basic loot. The cool thing was that I got a protection eight leather helmet from one of the zombies here, which could be pretty strong. I found a bear while exploring as well and got the item that I needed to make a foul falconry glove but the search for birds was just turning more and more into a search for dungeons because i ended up running into another big structure soon after that oh i think this is yep this is one of the buildings i've been to before it's crazy i, I remember i went here in my medieval minecraft video and let me tell you this foundry is no joke. I don't know if it's safe for me to go here. I do have better gear. I was approached by these piglins that were geared up in netherite, and I was able to fend them off, even though they had a lot of health. The chest that I found had a name tag and ancient totems of unbreaking and sharpness. And while looking through my inventory, I realized that my sword wasn't enchanted for some reason. So I headed back to the enemy farm to enchant it again, and I got sharpness five on it. The reason why it wasn't enchanted was because when I accidentally gave my sword to the alley, it took off the enchantment. So uh, yeah, do not give your sword or anything to your alley. Anyways, I am doing and looting to the new sword and I named it Apollo Reborn because its original name was Apollo and I wanted to honor that. After that, I headed back into the foundry to take it on. I was able to handle the mobs on the top layer pretty easily, but when I headed to the next level, things got much more dangerous. Okay, so I know here it gets a bit more dangerous. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a lot of damage. Need golden apples to survive here, big time. Strategy might be just breaking all the spawners. I have a really quick pickaxe. Maybe it's... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, um, this is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. How are you supposed to survive in here? I'm just running for my life. <gasps> out of fireworks? Okay. Really bad time to run out of fireworks here. Okay, I'm leaving. Uh, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Let me try to fend these guys off. There is some crazy loot in here. I got a netherite ingot and a lot of diamond blocks. I continued looting chests and defeating mobs until I had pretty much explored everything and then I headed back outside to start searching for birds again. I found these cool trees along the way which I collected some of and it was called Skyrus Wood. I ran into another ship as well, which I've looted in the past, but I just wanted to say that these are amazing for gunpowder and TNT. On the next day, I found this new animal called the Tasmanian Devil, which I was able to cage. Apparently, these guys like rotten flesh and howl to scare away monsters. I also found a deer, which was really cute. I brought the deer over to the animal sanctuary and then brought another one with its baby because I didn't want to leave it behind in the night. I found some roadrunners on the next day that I was able to cage and I found this interesting tree which ended up being a banana tree. I found a couple of emus that I brought to the normal sanctuary since they're birds but they don't fly so I just thought it would be a better fit. A bit after that I found some of my favorite animals. <gasps> monkeys! Ooh! Oh my these are the weirdest looking monkeys I've ever seen. <laughs> what are these? Oh now these are some more regular monkeys. Hey, you want a banana? Oh come on what's going on? Slipping? Oh, I'm slipping on a banana peel, apparently. Wait, 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 have I tamed it? It's following. But I don't think I've actually tamed it. I need to grow more bananas. I brought the monkeys and the apes over to the animal sanctuary after that. I brought a little turtle over as well, and I found this structure while traveling, and I activated the redstone that was on the inside, which activated a lighthouse. So it was really, really cool. I brought some little geckos over to the sanctuary as well, but my bird sanctuary was still mostly empty. Now at this point, I finally realized that I should just go ahead and add back the bird mod that got removed. So that is what I did, and now I had a long list of birds on my search panel. Right away, I started to find birds. I found seagulls and flamingos, which are just 
They're beautiful animals. I mean, I mean, look at them. They're just, they're pink. I made a bird encyclopedia that would let me learn more about birds and find out how to tame them and anything else special about them. I brought the flamingos to the sanctuary and then found cardinals, cranes, robins, a lot of different birds and animals. I continued finding new animals through to day 573. And during that time, I even found a fire dragon egg in a desert temple. And by the end of my searching, the bird sanctuary was quite quite full. Now that I had all of these birds here, I had the idea to add an outside portion to the sanctuary for the walking birds because I wanted the birds on the inside to all be flying around. Before that though, I remembered the fire dragon egg that I had gotten. So I placed it in the dragon sanctuary and we need a name for it. So leave your name suggestions in the comments as always and I will pick the name with the most likes at the next episode. Anyways, getting back to work, the first thing I did is level out the area with dirt. Once I had the mountain fairly leveled out with dirt, I started leveling out the sand. I covered any stone and I made sure that there was an even shoreline. It took me to day 575 and I had everything fairly leveled out and covered. There was this shipwreck here that kind of looked out of place, but I kept it since it looked unique. Next, I needed to build a border around the area. So I started building it from the edge of the water and I continued it through the ocean. It was really dark in the water so I made night vision potions and that way I saw perfectly while building the border underwater. I continued the fencing all the way around to the other side of the sanctuary, connected it to the hill on the right side, and the outside was now fully encased with fencing. From there I grabbed all of the ground birds with the lead, teleported them outside, brought some fish over so they'd have food, and the outside was done. Now the inside seemed kind of empty so I wanted to add some stuff to it. I planted a few trees around the area and then wanted to create a swing that would be a kind of bird toy in the sanctuary. I started by building out a little ledge and then I made these golden chains that would hold the swing itself. I then connected logs to the chains for the top of the swing and added a fence drop down with slabs at the bottom for the platform. And right away we had our first customer. I also added some light to the swing and it was finished. The next thing I wanted to do was build a bridge going across the sanctuary. I looked up if there were any bridge items in the mod, but there weren't, so I added a bridge mod called Macau's Bridges, and now I had a large variety of bridges. I decided I would go with the rope oak bridge, and I started placing it down. At first, I was having issues with getting it to align, but eventually, I figured things out and got the bridge set up. Next, I wanted to build a little pond, because I figured that the birds would appreciate some water. I terraformed out a little canvas, started filling up the pond with water, moved the lights into the ground, so they would be more hidden. And to fill the middle of the pond with water, I built a layer of dirt, which leveled out all of the water. And then I broke out the dirt and the pond was full. To top things off, I added some lily pads and mini lily pads and the pond looked beautiful. The vines in the sanctuary were now also starting to grow, which was nice. And as one final addition, I built a large ladder structure, which could be another toy for the birds. I replaced the oak planks on the sides with stripped logs to finish it off. And the room was complete. If you guys have any suggestions to improve the sanctuary, let me know. For now, I was definitely happy with it. Now I wanted to take on my final objective, which was to take on the abyss dimension, the final dimension in the mod pack. The first quest I had was to find and defeat the elder, but when I entered, this happened. Uh, okay, something's happening. Oh man, uh, get away, get away. Whoa, oh, the boss. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I was not expecting a boss right now. Um, um, okay. Abyssosaur, Abyssosaur. Get away. Okay, Abyssosaur. It doesn't look to be too strong. I'm getting it. Okay, I got it. That was just very random. Oh, uh, okay, I got it. The Abyssor wasn't a quest boss, but it was still good to have defeated it, and it was definitely very interesting. Next, I found a hidden structure. Check this out. Maybe it'll have some hint towards where I need to go next. It's got little scorpions. Oh, okay. It's got some cool loot. Okay, get away. Break that. Okay, got him. Got some weird rotten flesh. Abyss shuriken. Whoa. Ooh, enchanted golden apple. Whoa. Horus stone. Artifact of 
Afterlife, you have 20 seconds to find your body after death. If you find your body, you will come back to life. If you don't find him, you will die. I'm gonna keep that on me. I continued looting and found this cool gecko or something that was all glowing in teal. I got an enchanted golden apple and I got this item called the Amulet of Nosage and it gave me permanent resistance fire resistance, water breathing, and haste. This thing is insanely overpowered. That is insane. No way I just found that. That is so overpowered. Okay, th this that's a crazy buff because now I have permanent water breathing. I have resistance, which is a lot of protection. Fire resistance, so I don't need any more fire resistance potions. Wow. I was really happy with this item. I mean, it gave me so many good buffs. I also found this cool item called the Clock of Time, which literally lets you travel back in time to restore where you were and how much health you had, which would be really useful. And then randomly started taking damage in the abyss because of the fog effect that was on my screen, which is like a poison buildup. I tried to drink some potions to make it go away, but they did not help. I got back as soon as I could, and luckily the damaging stopped. On the next day I checked in with our dragons and the fire dragon had grown so I tamed it with fish but it was just it was sitting on the ledge of my house for some reason and the only way I could get it to move was to put a saddle on it and bring it back to the monastery next to our dragon Jehenna and they made they made good friends as I said before we need a name for this dragon so uh, make sure to let me know your suggestions taking a break from the abyss for a bit I wanted to complete some of the other final quests that I had so I wanted to head into the new deeper dark dimension. I mined down to Y0, but when I got there, there was just void and floating blocks, and I was really confused because when I was here previously, everything looked way different. It turned out that the mod was updated, and what I found out was that I had to find three pieces of this cold deep stone to get into the new deep dark. No matter how much I mined though, I was not able to find any. I even had to go to my Enderman farm to repair my pickaxe because of how much I was mining. By day 586, I was still mining and searching away, but couldn't find anything. Thankfully though, I realized on this day that the issue was that I was mining in a place that was loaded a long time ago before the mod was updated. So I needed to go to a new chunk where I hadn't been before. As I was doing that though, this happened. Oh <gasps> no, I did not just find that. Wait, hold on, this is serious. Uh. Okay, I need to set up a waystone right in the bird sanctuary right now. Waystone, place it. Okay, teleport back. I need a lead. Come on, come on, come on. I lost, I lost it in the last episode. Maybe it was two episodes ago. Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There's no way it left already, is there? Wait, this might be the one that I lost actually. Oh no, it's gone again. Please. <gasps> come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come with me. Let's go, let's go. Okay, it's still on the lead. It's still on the lead. Okay, sanctuary. <gasps> yes, yes! I brought it to the bird sanctuary. <gasps> Woo! Welcome! Oh, no way. No way. Yes, I think that's the one that we lost before. I had brought the mystical sunbird to the bird sanctuary and I was really happy. After that, I teleported out thousands of blocks using my waystone and I dug down in search of the new stone I needed. At first, I found this pretty interesting lava okay, so amber cave, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I mean, so I flew out a bit further. And when I mined down this time, I found it. Oh, there we go. I mined straight into it. Look at that. Oh, yes, finally. Okay, that took so long. <laughs> I was so confused for a long time, but I was just in the wrong spot. And this is a cool mushroom. I've seen one of these before. Glow shroom. Yes, okay, now I can go. With the blocks that I needed, I dug down, created this light and dark block, placed it down at bedrock level, put a diamond in it, and right-clicked it to enter the deeper dark. I mined to the room that I was actually supposed to spawn in in the first place, and I wanted night vision. So I headed over to my brewing room really quick. And at this point, I, I am not gonna lie to you, I literally just made six brewing stands and brewed my potions manually because it was much faster. In the future, I should probably update the automatic brewer, but for now, it can at least serve as a hidden room. When I returned with my night visions and tried to use it in the deeper dark though, it didn't work. 
Whoa, no way. Night vision doesn't work here? Wow, night vision does not work here. <laughs> okay. Torches, torches do work here, but not night vision. That's surprising, actually. Whoa, what is this? Okay, that's scary. That's scary. Okay. Those are some scary things. Nope. Okay. So... Whoa! Is that like a trap? Okay, really? Really? Not cool. Not cool. I was now stuck in the deeper dark to fend off for myself with very little vision. The mobs were really, really creepy. I mean, they were creepy crawling and the sounds that I was hearing were not good. I ended up accidentally not recording the first variant of Warden that I defeated, which was the open mouth variant. But don't worry, because I soon ran into more. I found that I had a reward for entering the deeper dark, which was a Skulko finder that did this. So this shows mobs, apparently. Whoa, whoa, okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, now I see some more mobs. Oh, whoa, okay, okay. This is some kind of like treasure room. This is what the book before was talking about, but I wasn't finding any of these. Let's go, I gotta get in here and break these spawners. There's a lot of them. Go around, break, break, break. Oh man, I'm so lucky to have such a good pickaxe. Okay, Whew. I'm happy I have such good gear. Got you. Let's see, there might be a chest here. No, just diamonds and gold, it looks like. There were only gold and diamond blocks here, so I headed out and eventually found this guy. Oh, oh boy, I'm scared to engage. The last time the warden that I fought was stuck. Oh! Okay, I'm blinded. I will leave, I will leave. Okay, okay, so this is my escape. Oh, here he comes. Oh my goodness. Oh no, nope. Oh my God. It's getting closer and closer. Okay, uh, I need golden apples. Okay, golden apples. Let me just eat one right off the bat. I'm afraid of getting one shot. Make sure to know where I gotta go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I seem safe from here. That's good. That's good. Oh, got him. Easy peasy. Okay, Whew. that was the big warden variant. So I got a golden apple and experience, and now I just have to defeat the bone warden. And for that, I'll get a netherite ingot. So my search continues. Oh. I, that's the bone warden. I saw it. Yep. That is the bone warden. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of scared because this is supposed to be the strongest one. It's the final warden boss you're supposed to defeat. Look at that. Look at that thing. Wait, 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 wait. I have to be careful. 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 Why does this have to be like a horror game, man? Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Golden apple. Golden apple. Oh. I'm not supposed to glide. Okay. Oh. Don't let it hit me. Don't let it hit me. Oh, okay. It's doing decent damage because it took all my absorption hearts. Okay. Oh, it can't get me here. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm alive. That's good. And let me take my netherite and get an experience. With that, I had defeated all of the warden bosses and returned home. Next, I headed back into the abyss and set out to defeat an elder boss. I found a very cool biome while flying and it had these abyss melons, which are even better than golden apples because they heal you up a bunch and give you regeneration. So I picked them up. Now I saw an elder boss bar on my screen, even two of them. And then I saw this house and I thought that that's where he was. So I ate a golden apple and entered. But when I did, all I encountered was this really strange villager with the name Abilazure. I couldn't trade him and he didn't say anything. It was really mysterious to me. There were ores lying around though and chests, which I took, but he didn't say anything. So I just took everything and left. After that, I kept searching for the elder, but even though I saw the boss bar, I could not find him. I did end up finding the crystal golem boss up on a tree, but I didn't want to fight it yet because I wouldn't get the quest reward for it. This did, however, give me the idea that the elder could just be spawning up on trees. And after searching for some more, I did find him. Oh, I actually found an elder. Okay. Golden apple. Let's go. Okay. He's not doing that much damage. That's why he's the first boss probably. Ooh. Okay. 
I got him. Elder Eye. I can use that to make an Eye of Abyss. What is that for? That's good news for me. Now I can progress. Defeating the Elder was pretty easy, and next I needed to defeat the Magician. While searching, I also found this animal, which I tried to bring to the Animal Sanctuary, but I tried and it, it just, it wasn't possible. I found the Roka boss up in a tree while searching, which I thought could be the Magician because it was the Roka. I fought it and it was kind of just standing there, so I was able to defeat it pretty easily. It didn't end up being the magician, but it did drop a Roka horn, which would come very much in handy later on. After a while longer of searching and a lot of researching on the internet, I literally could not find a single gram of information about the magician. I don't know if it isn't in the game yet, or if the Roka was actually supposed to be the magician and it was just labeled not properly, but I did not want to get stuck. I wanted to progress and defeat the final boss. So what I did is I edited the files and completed the quest manually. I figured that it balanced out since I did literally everything I could and defeated the Roka. Now I could progress and the next boss that I needed to defeat was the Crystal Golem. And I was able to find it pretty quickly. The Crystal Golem. Let's go. Oh, arrows do not work on it. Oh, and I have a bunch of spiders attacking me. All right, all right. All right, kite it. Oh, and I have creepers attacking me. Okay, I'm okay. Defeat the spider. Yep, yep, I'm good. And I got it. Now it was time to fight the final and strongest boss in better Minecraft, Nightshade. I made the Eye of Abyss and located an altar that I would need to summon him with a ritual. I placed a soul heart in each of the crucibles and now it was time to begin the ritual. Okay, well, it's time. Let's just go for it. I believe this is the strongest boss that I'm going to fight. This is also the point where I've been the most geared in this series. So strength to Biss Melon. Let's do it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, Nightblade. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Whoop. He does damage. He does damage. And he's teleporting me. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna eat an enchanted golden apple in case, okay? I think that is the smart thing to do. He's floating me up in the sky. He's summoning mobs. Oh, he's summoning like every mob here. Okay, enchanted golden apple is doing good for me. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna eat a powered melon just in case. Okay, now he has summoned clones. These are fake ones. These are fake ones. And I have slow fall, so I can't escape that easily. Oh boy. I, I need sweeping edge for this. Okay, I'm eating another enchanted golden apple. Okay, I can't see anything, but I am doing damage. So I've killed a clone. That's not the real one. That's not the real one. Don't get fooled by the achievement. I think the achievement just got tricked. Okay, oh man. Oh man, he's teleporting everywhere. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Oh, he's doing damage now. Okay, okay. I'm good. Oh man, I need to be careful. I don't want to get like two hit or something. Oh wow, wow. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Oh no, okay, wait, I can bow him. Nope, okay, the bows do not work on him. That is good to know. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's go, let's go. Power melon. Oh my god. Guys, you don't understand, this is scary. Oh no, I got fear. I can't see anything. Oh no, 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 no. There are so many mobs here. Okay, nope, nope, not the music. And I'm floating in the sky. I'm floating in the sky. I can't see anything. Come on. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. Come on. I got him. I got him. I got him. And he dropped his sword. Sword of Abyss. Oh. I defeated the final boss, Nightblade. And I got a bunch of rewards for it. His sword, which is the strongest sword in the game, a totem of Abyss, and some gems. Now, the only quests that I had left to do were to defeat the new Conjurer boss and to successfully defend a village, which I had failed a lot before. I wanted to do them both. Before that, though, I enchanted the new sword of Abyss that I got. And and I got Sharpness 5, Knockback 2, Fire Aspect 2, and Unbreaking 3, which wasn't bad at all. With that, I began my search for the Conjurer, which is located in a theater that's a structure that can only spawn in a dark oak biome. I managed to find a dark oak biome soon enough and looked around for a theater, but there was none here. I continued searching though, and by day 593, I found what I was looking for. 
Did I potentially find the theater? It's showtime. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Now that is what I am talking about. Ooh. Wow. Wait, this is cool. Now, this is an aquarium. That looks really nice. That gives me good ideas. I entered the main theater room, fought off some illusioners and other mobs, and then there was only one more boss that was left to conquer. The Conjurer. It looks cool, I must say. He's got a very, very cool vibe. Well, he's actually not even fighting me. I kind of feel bad attacking the guy when he's not even attacking me. Um, okay, well, that sucks. I don't really want to fight you, dude. Okay, what if I put a flower in here? There we go. It's a flower for you. For you. Nope. He is still... Okay. Well, I guess we have to fight. And, uh... Okay, he is invisible. Okay? Okay? Wow, cool guy. Oh, it's a bunny. Killer bunny. Sorry, bunny. Oh, cards! Whoa, those were cool. Those are actually, like, in-game Minecraft cards. Wow, this is a cool boss fight. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Man, what a performance indeed. That is that is the correct achievement. He's really cool. That was uh, a cool little fight. Conjurer hat. Put it on. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm real cool and fancy. I must say, though, it's kind of messed up that I had to defeat him when he wasn't even attacking me. Oh, okay. Well, this is a, this is a different case. He had a villager stuck here. Rosalind, Rosalind, you are free. You know what? Let me... Let me take Rosalind to my home and she she can be safe, you know? Oh, she became a farmer. <gasps> yeah, so the right click on my sword dashes and deals damage and I accidentally dashed right on Rosalind. Anyways, I didn't do that on purpose and it was time to go defend a village from a raid. I spent a while searching for a pillager outpost and was able to find one on day 594. Then I defeated a raid leader to get bad omen and headed to a village to start a raid. Okay, time to go to a village and raid started instantly. Okay, where's the raid coming from? Uh, I don't see. Oh, there we go. I see. <laughs> I see for sure. Now, oh, whoa, whoa, okay. That's not good. Oh, wow. They're not even going for me. They're going straight for the villagers. Get away. Okay, okay. I remember I was trying to do this before and I was having serious issues. What's going on here? You guys safe? You guys safe? Oh, the villagers are freaking out. Guys, I'm here. Go for me. Go for me. Oh, man. My sword is just so OP and I can dash. Oh, I love it. This is a good way to test out my dashing skills. Boom. Dash. I continued fighting off all the mobs in the raid successfully, but unfortunately, I still failed because I did not protect the villagers enough. But I was not just going to give up that easy. I found another village, encased some villagers this time to keep them safe, and I got Bad Omen again to start the raid one more time. You guys are coming from here. We blow them down. So hopefully the strategy will work. Oh my goodness. This guy's sliding all over the place. Boom. Okay, wave one is complete. I have no idea how many waves there are. It seems like there are a lot. I have some ability with my sword where it does like, when I attack and people don't die, it has some swinging around them. Look at that, two more, here they are. Okay, good, here we go. Just attack, just attack, come on. Please don't let them get to the villagers. I continued to clear waves for a total of eight times before I finally completed the raid. Oh yes, I did it. Wow. Wow. I actually did it. <laughs> that was insane. That was insane. That was absolutely insane. Hey, you can come out now. With that, the final quest was completed. I collected my rewards, which were a rough emerald shard and grimoire of the Lost Merchants Guild. With that done, I didn't really do much else on this day, but on the next day, I started patching up some roadways in the base, added a leaf road to our garden, and using yellow terracotta bricks, I built a pathway to the new brewing room and created a border with orange stained glass. With that, I went to sleep with Latin beside me for the final night, and I look forward to another adventure soon. In this video, I survived 700 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is yet, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we built an amazing bird sanctuary, a secret brewing room, and defeated the final boss in the mod pack. In these 100 days, I obtained the best armor in the mod pack, build an armory, and encounter a lot of cool things along the way. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 700 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. 
Starting out on day 601, before beginning my mission of obtaining ultimate gear, I wanted to clean up the vines that I placed all around the bird sanctuary because there were just too many growing all over the place. Now that that was done, I was ready to begin my mission of getting a full set of the best armor in better Minecraft, ultimate. Now ultimate doesn't have the best armor protection, but what it does have is a bonus from every other special netherite ingot type in the mod pack, meaning that it gives you features like wall climbing, double jump, water and lava walking, and more crazy things. To start, I already had three netherite ingots, 10 netherite scrap, and some netherite gear, which would make things easier for me. Still though, I would need to get about 250 pieces of ancient debris, which is just about four stacks of this stuff. The first thing that I did is get gunpowder at my mob farm, which I farmed for a few days, and then I collected sand in order to make a bunch of TNT for ancient debris farming. And so I started by digging out a tunnel, then placed down some TNT in a chain, and then got to the fun part, which was blowing it all up and once the first chain was done exploding I went around and collected all of the ancient debris that got exposed which was a total of 11 pieces so we had 1 25th of the ancient debris we needed after that I dug another tunnel placed more TNT exploded it collected ancient debris and continued doing this for the next couple days soon my pickaxe was low on durability and I was running completely out of TNT so I repaired my pickaxe at the good old enemy farm and I then had another idea for a different way of collecting ancient debris, which was to search all of the new structures in the nether. Right away, I found this kind of ruined structure, and on the bottom of it, it had two pieces of ancient debris, which I scooped right on up. I flew by this kind of nether village place as well, which I've been to before, and they usually don't have anything in them, so I didn't really enter it. I managed to find a patch of these guys, which are just so cool, and I found a tower where I had to fend off for myself, and uh, then I entered, and it had some nether wart growing on the bottom, Bottom, as well as some chests which seemed to mostly be low level stuff. There were however a lot of piglins ready to come at me so I had to fight them off. I then ran into this turquoise biome which I think I've shown off before and it had another fortress in it that I quickly went through. I found a funky tower after that which was just kind of another piglin outpost. I fought off a huge flood of piglins and looted the chests which didn't really have anything in them other than some meat and gold. Right after that I looted another one of these towers thinking that and maybe they could have some netherite, but it did not. So I, I really would not recommend looting these. After that, I hopped into more biomes. I flew past a sub-zero hypogeal biome, which uh, I think I've shown you guys before, but I just want to show it again. I then ran into another fortress, and I did actually need wither skulls for the nether stars, so I farmed up a few wither skeletons, and there was this little guy that carried a little wither skull, which is so cute, but it ended up running off the cliff or something, so I didn't get it. I then ran into this structure, which I think is like a bastion remnant or something because the place was broken up. There were a lot of mobs I had to defeat here and it was pretty dangerous, but I actually got a netherite scrap from one of the chests and the rest just had random loot and gold in them. I had it out after looting it all and I then found this. Have I seen something like this before? That's really cool. Oh, oh, it just died because of me. That's so sad. That was the coolest thing ever. I then found another one of these ruined bastion structures and this one looked a bit different and actually had two pieces of ancient debris in a chest. And so I continued looting structures, one of which was a big version of the towers I had been finding and it had four pieces of ancient debris in it, not a bad find. I also ran into another one of these huge nether mansions that I'd been to before. And before entering, I defeated one of these floating skull things, which actually dropped a wither skull. It turns out that these guys have a two 0.5% chance to drop them. I started fighting my way through the castle and one of the piglins actually dropped a piece of ancient debris, which I forgot they could do. I tried getting more ancient debris from them, but they didn't seem to drop anymore. I found a room which gives you gold blocks that I scooped up. And then when looting a barrel, I got this elixir of undying that gives you regeneration two, resistance five and absorption four really strong. I had to fight off some piglins in full netherite, which was fairly easy given my gear, and they actually dropped netherite gear. At one point, things got a bit more dangerous and I dipped to half health, 
but I was able to stay fairly safe. I found this gold room again, which I found in a previous episode, and I fully mined it up, but this time made sure to clear all the traps here because they exploded on me last time. And behind the throne room, there were two hidden pieces of ancient debris that I scooped right on up. I found this trapped room as well that literally blew up three seconds after I entered it, so yeah, good thing I was ready for that. Other than that, I didn't really find much at the castle, and so I headed out. I found this lava covered structure that I mined into, and this place had a library in it with ancient tomes, a lodestone that could be used to make a hypogeal imperium. I, I had no idea what it was, but it was made out of netherite, so I took it, and there were pieces of ancient debris here. Overall, this place appeared to be another stronghold. It looked exactly like the one I'd found in the overworld, and I found this place with cells and blazes spawning in them, and while fighting them, I got something pretty cool. Oh, obtain a piece of a wildfire shield. Ooh, wildfire shield part, wildfire shield. Oh, <laughs> I can make that? That's sick. I found another library section here and got a couple more pieces of ancient debris and some enchanted books from it. I found an armory room that didn't have much in it and then I ran into a tripwire trap that luckily didn't blow me up. Eventually, I found an ender portal. So this was another stronghold after all. I placed down ender eyes to head home and the endermen were a bit glitchy in the end, by the way. I don't know why, but anyways, I headed home and took a nice nap next to ladder. And then, uh... Some, something really bad happened. The worst thing just happened. Lattern just died. <sighs> I just logged back into the game. I pressed back to game, right clicked, just not even thinking, just kind of by accident, and I killed Lattern by dashing. I, I knew this sword was gonna be a problem and I forgot to take it off and it's completely my fault. Yeah, no, I'm burning this sword. Where can I go? Where's fire? And the nearest lava source and sword of abyss, goodbye. And so I burned the sword of abyss because I could not trust myself with it. I at least keep memory of Lattern by naming something after her later. May she rest in peace. Anyways, I had a mission to achieve and a lot of work to do, so I got back to it. I got everything needed to bed mine for ancient debris, which seems like the most efficient method, and I got to mining. I just continued exploding and mining out the area, and along the way, I remembered the shield part that I had gotten, and I created a wildfire shield. I thought that the shield might give me blast resistance because of its whole theme and name, which would make it a lot easier to bed mine, but it definitely did not. Still, a cool shield though. After mining for a while, I ran into a vain goblin trader and he has a trade that converts four ancient debris to five netherite scrap, which essentially meant I needed about 50 less ancient debris because of this guy. I continued mining like this through all the way to day 614, when I unfortunately dropped my pickaxe and fire, but I continued mining with my fortune pickaxe and even found a magma spawner. Eventually, my pickaxe was running low on durability, so I headed to the Enderman farm, and I figured it would probably be a good idea to recreate the silk touch pickaxe that I lost because I just felt like something was missing. I didn't have the resources to make it though, and I had some work to do. I mined and sheared sheep over the next couple days. I'm not sure why I didn't just get to gathering the materials right away, but on day 617 I finally headed into the abyss. I needed to drop phantoms that would drop phantom essences. The first mobs that I found though were these little glow pugs that, that were quite aggressive. I fought off mud zombies as well that were fairly weak but as mobs started stacking up I started taking some serious damage so I needed to take care here. Soon enough I started getting debuffs like nausea and slowness and I started taking automatic damage that I could not stop so I left for a moment and headed back in with no debuffs to continue my search. I'm not sure why this stuff happens. I was having no luck with the search, but I did find this guy. What are you? Like a raccoon person? What the heck? Who are you? It's like a raccoon guy. Night hunter, whoa. I searched and searched, and by day 619, I finally found a phantom. Oh, finally, I found a phantom. Oh my God. It took forever. Let me like hit it with my looting. Okay, I dropped one. 
I continued fighting phantoms until I was able to collect a total of 16 essences, then collected titan bones and was able to create the phantom ingots I needed to create a phantom pickaxe, and I upgraded it to a unirith pickaxe. I spent the start of day 621 repairing my other pickaxe and enchanting my new one, and then I also got silk touch and mending on it. To finish it off, I named it Lattern in memory of her. With my new pickaxe created, I got back to mining for ancient debris, and I continued mining for 10 days is until day 631 when I finally had all of the netherite I needed. I was then looking for a goblin trader to trade my final stack of ancient debris with when I found this cool biome. Whoa, this is a cool biome. Look at this place. It's all glowstoned out. I have the glowing effect or luminance, I guess. Whoa, wait, luminance. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm making things glow. What are these mushrooms? I think they just automatically light up when you walk next to them whoa fungus and tongue stew ew here we go my sir my good good friend vain goblin trader boom oh look at all that nether right <laughs> thank you Thank you, my friend. Now, looking at the amount of netherite I had, I thought I overdid it, but, but I actually end up using all of it, so don't you worry. Upon returning home, I was able to make over a stack and a half of netherite ingots. Now I needed to get enough wither skulls to spawn 10 withers for 10 nether stars and enough to make 10 witherite ingots. What made things easier for me is that these floating skull guys can drop wither skulls and as well as these mobs called nagas, so that's what I mainly hunted. My hunt continued on for a few days and then i found these cool guys whoa whoa they're like they are nether bats i've never seen these before they're not even mean are they what are these guys what is this oh flying pig nope can't cage them I left these fellows alone for the time being, but maybe they could fit into the sanctuary at some point. Anyways, I continued on farming for wither skulls all the way until day 640, where I got 40 wither skulls and an extra. I then collected up some soul sand and finally headed home. On the next day, I wanted to spawn and fight the withers, so I teleported far from my base and I got prepared. Let us do it. All right, let me just try three. Okay, boom, boom. Boom. All right. Three withers. No problem, all right? All right. They're going a bit crazy. Um, this is not according to plan at all. Boop. Bit, a uh, bit of a crazy one here. Okay. Melee. Let's see how melee is. I, I am taking a bit of damage. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Got one. Oh, here. Okay. Here they are. I can't hit it. Okay. And number two. This one's chilling over here. Number three. And I just have to do that seven more times. And so I spawned and defeated seven more withers to get 10 nether stars in total. Now I was ready to start getting all of the special netherite ingots I needed. Since I already had wither skulls in my inventory, I made 10 witherite ingots. Next, I made 10 goldite ingots, which were really easy to make, just gold and netherite. 10 enderite ingots, which are no problem because of my enderman farm. 10 blazerite with blaze rods, really easy as well. And 10 phantorite, which I actually barely had enough phantom membranes for. With with that, I had five out of eight of the special netherite types. Next, I wanted to make spider eye ingots using spider eyes, but I only had enough for seven. I figured I would have some more at my mob farm, so I headed there, but there were only enough for one more ingot. So in the nighttime, I had to head out and hunt for spiders. I found a spider cave as well that I'd been to before, and I farmed it until I had 16 spider eyes to make two more spiderite ingots. The final ingots I needed to get were featherite and prismarite, so that's what I focused on next. The first ones I decided to get were prismarite, so I flew over the ocean with my map looking for any signs of a temple, and soon I actually found a sea temple, which I wasn't expecting. I cleared out some drowns from which I got a turtle shell that you can make a spike turtle shell out of, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I swam down to the chests, and at first I wasn't sure if they were trapped, but I checked, and sure enough, they had some dispensers with potions in them. So I cleared them out, and one of the chests had prismarine crystals, which was exactly what I needed. I then just mined up the lamps that were in the temple, and they gave me the rest of the crystals I needed. I returned home after that, and I crafted 10 prismarite ingots. The last ingots that I needed were featherite. Needing feathers reminded me of the bird sanctuary we built in the last episode, but when I got there, I saw this. What? Oh, this, did the sunbird do this? Who did this? Oh my, no. What happened? Oh, 
What happened? The sunbird's facing in this exact direction. This is not good. I had to fix this before any birds left the sanctuary, and some birds likely already did. Well, let me correct that because one literally flew out while I was fixing it. Anyways, fortunately, that was the only one because I was able to fix it up soon after. Also, while I'm in here, I just want to say thank you for all of your comments and suggestions for the bird sanctuary on the last video. I saw a lot of suggestions for things I should add. But right now, we have the goal of getting a full set of Ultimate gear. I needed to get enough feathers for 10 ingots, meaning I would need 80. So I set out to find some chickens. After searching for a while, I figured that I could also kill some birds for feathers because there were a lot in the pack. Oh, did they not even drop anything? They don't even drop feathers. Oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. Oh, they don't even drop feathers. I just killed a bunch of birds for no reason. Oh my. Those birds did not drop any feathers and I felt bad. I hunted some bigger ones on the next day though and they did. While flying around, I ended up finding this swamp village. Oh, this is a cool village. Hello. Yvonne. This is like a swampy village. This is uh, pretty cool. Look at that. Oh, we got villager guards attending to some duty over here. What's going on, guys? Oh, alligator. Uh-oh. Let me help you out here. Okay. Got him, guys. I got him. No worries. I was getting pretty sad about having to kill birds, so I decided instead I would just start a chicken farm, and that way I would at least be a more sustainable guy. I figured that this empty spot next to the cow farm would be a pretty decent area for it, so I started building out an outline, which I made using spruce fences, and then began building out the floor. Halfway through, though, I figured I wanted to use a different wood from spruce since I had already used it a lot, and I decided to use birch wood instead. I got back to filling in the flooring and started started building up the walls on the next day. The birch pattern is a bit strong, so I stripped the wood and I think it fit nicely with the simplicity chicken coops usually have. I had to grow and chop down more trees throughout and slowly finished building the walls up. I then added a layer of stairs around the top and filled in the roof. With that, the base of the chicken coop was done, but I felt like something was missing. After researching some chicken coops, I figured I would change the design a bit. I removed one half of the structure and I started essentially working on an area where the chickens would be while the house portion could be for storage and an entrance. I added glass panes all along the walls so I could see the chickens and this looked so much nicer. I separated out the house from the chicken coop, released the chickens and began breeding them, which I would need to do a lot of. Oh yeah, this is nice. <laughs> You know what this is nice oh man originally the only thing i had in mind was a very standard chicken pen like this or chicken coop but then you know i looked at google images of real ones and it's just kind of you know this is what i came out with this is this is nice while i waited for the chickens to breed i figured i would start working on something in the meantime and i had the idea to add a crater going down into our underground base which i think would be a really cool entrance to it so slowly i started digging down a hole in a kind of random form so it wouldn't just look like a hole going straight down and by the next day i was able to reach the underground base and finish the tunnel now i would probably want to design it later but for the time being I wanted to do something else. What I'd wanted to do for a while actually is upgrade my food source to something more saturating and because of the mod called Farmer's Delight there is a huge variety of new foods. After looking through a bunch of different foods you can make I found this stuff called vegetable noodles that gives you seven saturation and an effect called nourishment when you eat it meaning it's a really good food. Keep in mind cooked steak only gives you four saturation. You can make it using carrots, cabbage, mushrooms, and noodles, all of which are fairly easy to get. I farmed up carrots and cabbage and still needed to get the other two materials. Before that, I wanted to make a room where I could actually cook the stuff since I didn't want just a random cooking pot lying around. And I just designed the room that I already had next to my storage system. I actually really liked the design that I made. I continued the glowstone border from the storage room and filled in the floor with either planks. I ended up switching the walls from quartz to deep slate and then built the ceiling out of quartz. Yeah, I made this whole room for a cooking pot and I don't regret it. <laughs> I made this whole room for this one cooking pot. Oh my goodness. It's worth it. It's worth it. Look at this legendary cooking pot. Amazing. While I was breeding the chickens on the next day, a wandering trader came by and I bought this new sapling from him called Purple Wisteria that was a pretty cool tree actually, so I was glad I bought it. After that, I started growing and chopping down mushrooms so that I could get them for the noodles I wanted to make. And while I was doing that, this happened. What is that? Why did that spawn here? Ah! 
This is a devil. This is a devil. Get away. Ah. Ah. I can't. I like I'm so I'm just I'm disgusted now. I'm so disgusted. I don't want to play. Oh my god. I hate I hate bugs. I hate bugs. Ah. That was just wow. Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Um I used water and wheat to make the pasta I needed on the next day and with all of the ingredients collected I was able to cook the vegetable noodles. While those cooked up, I figured it would be a good time to name our new fire dragon from the last episode and the most liked name suggestion was Helios, meaning the sun god in Greek mythology. This name was suggested by Crystal Geode, so thank you for that suggestion. I think it's a very fitting name. While I continued to wait for the chickens to grow in numbers, I figured I would continue to work on the base and further the idea of the crater. I had the idea to add crystals around it and I had multiple types of crystals. The first ones I used were cobalt crystals and I made my way all around covering the walls with them. I then added layers of rose crystals and amethyst but I ran out while doing so. So I took a break for a moment and on the next day I realized that it would be a good idea to add hoppers to the chicken coop to collect the chicken eggs they would drop and that way I could breed way Way more. I'm not sure why I didn't think of this right away. I also added another separation and a wool carpet along the top of the hoppers. With that done, I started looking for more amethyst and I was able to find a geode on the next day, lined it up, and got back to working on the tunnel. I ended up replacing the cobalt crystals at the top with these aurora crystals because I wanted to have a purple gradient going down instead of just random colors and this actually worked really nicely. So I headed into the end to search for more of them and while flying I flew into one of these specters that I asked you guys about in the last episode and you guys told me that you can actually use a lead on them to fly to other islands and it did work so this can be pretty good when you don't have an elytra yet. I managed to find more of the rose mint and cobalt crystals so I mined them up and I found this endermite spawner right close by which I looted and it had a pile of diamond ore that I mined up. Also while flying around I was very much enjoying the unique biomes from the better end mod. Very cool. Come on, like these bombs are just, <laughs> they're incredible. Look at that. What is this? Blossom berry. What is this? Look at that. Can I bring it in a cage? Wait, uh, hello? Oh, <gasps> I can cage it. Silk moth. You know what? Moths uh, are pretty disgusting in general. But these ones, they're okay. They're coming to the bird sanctuary. I brought them to the bird sanctuary, but I was sort of disgusted after, so I took them outside and at least they could fly around there. Eventually, I found the Aurora crystals and I mined up a good chunk of them. At first, I mined them with my fortune pickaxe on accident and they dropped these cool crystal shards that could be used to craft lanterns but I just like the crystals themselves. Anyways, I mined up the crystals and finished up filling in the top with Aurora crystals. And my goodness, it looked good. I also tested out using magma blocks around the top of the tunnel, but it did not look good. It did not look good. So I stuck with the Aurora crystals. I then added a layer of cobalt crystals. And after that, I had a lot of chickens in the chicken coop. I was finally ready to get my feathers. I made the featherite ingots I needed, and now I had 10 of each unique netherite type. With that, I made 10 ultimarite ingots. Ultimarite, let's go, boom. Wait, what? Oh, don't scare me like that. Boom. 10 ultimate ingots. I made 10 pieces of netherite gear after that and then combined each with an ultimate ingot to get a full set of ultimate gear. Finally, I spent the rest of the day enchanting the full set and by day 671, I was able to fully enchant my set of gear. I got full protection four, on breaking three, mending on everything and maxed out sharpness and power on my weapons. The stats on the gear aren't what make it good though. Check this out. Look at this, I got glowing. I can see through walls and I think this applies everywhere. If I just go somewhere, yep, look at that, anywhere. I don't know what the radius on it is, but it's pretty cool. Also, look at this. I can walk on water now. Oh yeah, I can double jump. Who doesn't like double jumping? I take no fall damage. <laughs> and check this out. This perk is not good when I'm at the Enderman farm, but my God, look at that. <laughs> I can magnetize items. If I press shift, I stop magnetizing. But if I don't do that, look at this, look at this, look at this. I mean, this is crazy. 
The auto smelting is not always going to be good, but it does work. What I can do if I don't want to auto smelt is shift, and then I can magnetize things to me. There we go. I can lava walk. Also, check this out. I need to build up there. No problem. Let me just climb a wall. Yeah. Now, for the tools, I'll mainly use my normal ones since I don't always want to auto smelt things, but I did put them in a shulker box so I can take them out whenever I need it. Now, with my new amazing set of armor acquired, I figured it would be a great time to finish the armory room that I started a few episodes ago. I started building up the side walls using the same design of a spruce outline and filling it in with white wool. I continued filling in this design along all four walls around the armory. I also realized that I had another perk from this armor, which is that I can literally walk straight up blocks without having to jump on them, and this is really nice. Using my wall climbing ability, I was able to easily fill the wall in on the top half of the walls, and with that, I finished all four. I also tried filling in the spots of wool with different types of stone because I wanted it to look more gritty, and aside from the other stone types I tried, I found this material called grimestone, which I really liked the look of, so it sent me out on a mining expedition. I was able to find find it surprisingly fast and I mined up a bunch of it. And while I was down here mining, I actually found something really cool. Whoa, look at this. This cave really was amazing. I even found this crazy area. Keep in mind, this place was pitch black too. So a lot of mobs were spawning here. I just had night vision on. But while I was here, I found this. Whoa, what is this? What is this? This is some crazy dungeon. Whoa, what is this? Are they getting bigger? What is going on here? Renee's circulation. Find a plague asylum. Ew. Ew. Wait, there's so much gunpowder in here. Look at this. What is going on here? Take that. Do these do something? No? This place is really strange. Uncraftable potion. Shadowberry jelly? What is this? And there's a skeleton skull. I can put that on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bunch of redstone stuff. More weird potions. Look at this. Strength, slowness, strength, hunger. Like, what is that? It's a baby skeleton. Ah. Oh, man. Bad Omen 5. Haste, strength, jump boost, regeneration, fire resistance, fire resistance. This was a strange place, and I was very, very creeped out. These Plague Doctor guys kept coming at me, and they are probably the creepiest mobs I have encountered in this series. To make things even creepier, there was also an underground bunker area with bedrock, and it had cells in it. It looks like this is where the doctors experimented on villagers or something. That was pretty much it, so I got out of there, and while flying, back, I found this crypt on accident that had these skulls and campfires. Terrible. I don't know what was going on with me. And then I found a wandering trader on an elephant that was offering magic beans that I bought because you never know when you might need some magic beans. Seriously though, I have no idea what these did. Anyways, I returned home after that and it was time to get back to work on the armory. I tested out the new grindstone on the walls in the polished and brick variants and I didn't like it, so I put it back to how it was before, but I tried them on the inside to see how it looked, and I think it fit perfectly. So I filled in the rest of the walls, and the foundation for the armory was looking good. I then added a second floor, and now I needed to figure out what else to add to the design to spice it up. I figured smooth stone might fit in well, so I started smelting it up, and while I waited for that, I wanted to try something. Now I had a lot of Aether Dragon Eggs, but I had no new types of Dragon Eggs. However, I did some research and it turns out you can place any dragon egg on a 5x5 five five of leaves or logs and it'll turn into a forest dragon. It didn't turn into one right away, but we'll keep an eye on it and see if it happens. I went back for the smooth stone through my newly created tunnel, picked up what I had finished smelting, and placed it all around the armory as a border. The room was looking pretty dark, and I wanted to try lighting it up using smooth glowstone, which is made by literally just smelting glowstone. Lucky for me, I have an auto smelting pickaxe now, so I just placed down all of the glowstone and broke it with the ultimate pickaxe. 
It fit pretty nicely around the corners of the room, but I needed a little more, so I headed into the nether and mined some up. The magnetization on the pickaxe was really nice because it prevented any glowstone from falling into the lava. I returned home and placed down the rest of the smooth glowstone. I then started placing down the armor stands and I also elevated the floor using stone tile slabs. I wanted another light source here and I ended up making these golden lanterns that I really liked. Now that I felt the armory room was fairly ready, I went over to the armor sets, collected them up into a shulker, and placed down all of the armor stands that I had gotten. Now looking at the room, I felt like something was missing. I played around with adding stone brick slabs, but it was pretty impractical having a block in front of the armor stands. And I then wanted to add pillars to the empty spots between armor stands, and I tested out a few different designs. What I ended up liking most were these blocks made of iron called iron plating. I added them all around the room, and I wanted to try a different light that fit them better being these Cincinnati sight lanterns, I don't know how to say that, which seemed to fit in well. Once I finally started placing the armor down though, I realized they were too close together. The different armor sets didn't feel special like this, so I needed to figure out a different way of placing them. I spread them out some more, and while testing out the new layout, I had a new idea for how I could decorate the room. I thought it would be great to match the blocks around the armor stands based on what armor was there. So for the leaf armor, I used leaves and logs. For the Naga armor, I kept it as it is because it is kind of a maze theme. And for the Arctic and Yeti armor, I used ice and snow. For the phantom armor, I thought green stained glass would be nice to give it the ghosty feel. And for ironwood armor, I placed iron blocks and jungle planks behind. I then built an area for fire themed armor across from the snowy armors. And I added lava to the floor, which was not a good idea at all. Oh no, oh no, oh no, how did I not see this? <laughs> I brought this completely upon myself. Let me climb up the walls, please. Oh my God, that spread fast. That spreads really fast. All right, so let us break this lava. Let us remove all of the lava, please. No lava. Let's not burn my whole place down, please. It took a while to build this place. Thank you. Is there more stuff burning? I think it's fine. I don't see anything else burning. Luckily, the damage was not that bad, and I got back to working on the armor stands, which were looking pretty nice. I added blue lanterns on the side of the snow armor and made magma bricks using magma blocks to redo the design on the fire side. With the first floor mostly done at this point, I started adding the foundation to the next floor with the same design. The last armor set I had was Featherite, and for the background blocks, I wanted to use this stuff called Chillu Feather Blocks. These come from a new animal called Chillers that can be found in snowy biomes, so I began my search, and I was able to find a snow biome by the end of the day with a Chillu in it. Oh, <gasps> I think this is it. I think this is a Chillu. Hi. Also, I found a snow temple right next to it, but uh, looting it did not go so well. Oh, there's a tripwire here. Oh, I did not know that there's a tripwire. No, I lost all the loot. I'm so sad. How do you even stop that one? Oh, look at this. This is so cool. Oh my God. Goodness. Oh, look at them. They're all fighting each other. This one's like covered in snow. Now that I had found a couple of chillers, I needed to wait for them to dig something up called a frozen truffle, which is one of the four items they can dig up, and those can be used to tame them. I waited for a while, just walking around with the chillu, and soon enough, it dug something up. Oh, look, he's digging. Oh, frozen truffle. Oh, I tamed the first try. Let's go. I got a chillu. Look at him. This is my new pet. This is my new pet. This is my new pet. Come on. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I can put a sweater on him too. Watch this. Orange. Oh, <laughs> oh he's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, no way. That reminds me. I need to check. Where is our... Oh, look. It actually turned into a forest dragon egg. No way. Let's go. Awesome. So now we have two new pets, the forest dragon and a chillu. I wanted to tame a second chillu after that and waited for it to dig up a truffle, but it would just not dig one up. And I realized that I didn't really want to tame it. If I wanted to get feathers, it would be more efficient for me to just 
fly around and hunt chillers. While searching for more, I found a snow leopard, which is a really cool animal, but from reading about it, it's pretty dangerous, so I did not bring it to the animal sanctuary. I found some chillers while hunting, but honestly, I felt bad about killing them, and it wasn't really worth hunting them because I already had a pet chillu, and I realized I could just make a regular feather block, not out of chillu feathers. When I returned home and checked up on the forest dragon egg, this happened. Oh! Ha ha! Hi! Raw. Raw cod. Here you go, pal. Yay! Hi. Come on over. Grow big and strong, buddy, and we're gonna need to name ya. As always, I need you guys' help with naming the new members, so leave your name suggestions in the comments below. Anyways, I made some feather blocks and placed them behind the featherite armor, and I think they fit well. The armory was looking pretty dark, so I added some pre-lit lamps around the area to light it up. And while doing this, I realized that I really needed to fix the placing of the armor stands because they were just disproportionate from each other. So, so I started fixing it up and a lot of boring work later, I was able to mostly figure it out. I detailed the second floor after that and then started working on adding a third and fourth floor as well. I started by building the walls up to the ceiling and then added a stairway. After that, I built a platform to separate the third from the fourth room. And then I noticed a problem. You see, the first floor was not of equal height to the second, which wasn't of equal height to the third and fourth. So I essentially moved everything a block down on the first floor and you know what it took some effort but it worked and it was worth it next i wanted to finish up the third and fourth floors and it was much quicker because i was able to reference the previous floors i already did the only issue i ran into was that the ceiling height was too low down on the fourth floor so what i ended up doing is taking the roof out and moving it one block higher which i was a bit hesitant to do at first because i didn't want it to look weird from the top but I figured that it wouldn't be noticeable. Once I was done with that, I filled in the room design and boom, I was finished. With the armory done, it was time for me to start filling it up with armor. I figured for the ultimate set, it would be cool to use a lapis blocks background with netherite blocks on the floor. And while placing those, I found out about this. Whoa, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I never knew that this was a thing. Oh my goodness. Wait, so when you put another right block next to a lamp, it starts doing this? This is so cool. No way. I tried to see if I could change where the lamp lit up from, but I couldn't really get it to light up from both sides. I took what I was given though, because this is really cool. I needed one more netherite block so I could have all three placed down. So I headed to the ancient debris farm to get enough netherite scrap for nine netherite ingots. While doing this, I actually took up fatal damage and my totem of undying saved me. So I had to change my armor out for my older set while I was bed mining because it gave me much more protection. Now, as you know, there's a lot of lava that falls down when you bed mine. And I remember Remembered in this pack, you can make lava vision potions using teeth dropped by bone serpents. These creatures like to lurk around in lava and to help me find them, I wanted to make something called a straddle board, which is basically like a surfboard for lava. And I needed to find stratolite from straddlers in order to make it. When I was heading over home to brew some night vision potions though, this happened. How did my nether brick stairs burn? Oh, oh no. I'm not sure what caused the wool and even my stairs to burn, but I was able to repair it quickly. I resumed searching for straddlers and eventually found some, took them down, and I found a random chest with mending when I was doing this, which I'd say is a good find. I continued to defeat them until I had four stratolite, and I then made a few netherite ingots and crafted a straddle board. I also put this enchantment on it that I had called the straddle jump, which would make it jump higher. Oh, oh. Look at this. Oh my God, I jumped so high. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> this is how you like make friends right here. Just get yourself one of these. The board was cool. And I made my way around looking for a bone serpent. By the next day, I found one and these things are scary. They just swim around in the lava and you never know when they are going to attack you. I was able to fight it off fairly easily and luckily its tooth didn't burn when it fell into the lava. I got a couple more teeth and then headed back home to brew them. But when I tried to brew them, it did not work. Turns out you need lava bottles to brew this potion. So I headed into the nether, scooped up some bottles of the stuff and brewed up the potions. With the newly created lava vision potions, I headed back to our ancient debris farm and tried it out. But when I did, 
it just didn't work. It gave the lava a tint, but I couldn't actually see through it at all. On the next day, I came to the realization that it might be because of my shaders. So I took them off and sure enough, I could see through the lava using the potion. It wasn't as easy to see through as I would have liked, but it would still help me find ancient debris because I have definitely missed out on some that was under lava or fire before. Soon enough, I realized that I could take the use of this potion to the next level. I dug up to the surface and basically just started swimming through a lava ocean. I mean, I could see everything. And I actually ended up finding ancient debris right away. Unfortunately, I didn't end up finding any more ancient debris after that. That. Maybe you guys have some ideas of how this feature can be used even more. Anyways, I was done with playing around. I finished up my ancient debris farming and made all of the netherite ingots I needed for the final netherite block. I placed it down and added another lamp as well, so the setup was now looking good. As a final touch, I placed the ultimate gear on the stand and it looked fantastic. Now, with the rest of the room not quite filled up yet, I wanted to add some more armor sets to the armory and finish it off. I had this stuff called Cincinnati. I, 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 it's so hard to say that, that I could make a set of gear with, so I set it to smelt, and while that smelted, I grabbed my sets of diopside, cheroite, and pyrope gear from the blue skies dimensions and placed them on the armor stands. With that, I had three new sets of armor in my collection. The next set of armor I wanted to create was this griefer set. The griefer set is made of creeper spores and golden ingots. And if you're wondering what creeper spores are, uh, I was too, because I checked my mob farm and I had none, and I only had 20 in my storage. So I left this alone for the time being and instead began finishing up the tunnel. I used mint crystals to fill in the last area, and I also took a quick break to smelt up some more ores, one being corundum and the other penderite. And while those smelted up, I finished placing the crystals, and the tunnel looked amazing. I think it's a great feature. Also, while collecting my smelted ores, I noticed there were glow squids right under the furnace room. I didn't want them to despawn, so I made name tags for them, including Cool Guy 1, Cool Guy 2, Cool Girl 1, and Cool Girl 2, and named all of them. And now we had the Cool Squid Squad. With my ores smelted, I made a couple pieces of a corundum gear. I couldn't make any more yet because you need a void crystal for each which drops from a boss. As for the Pendera, you need to combine it with netherite gear, and I did not especially have too much netherite at the moment. I was, however, able to make a full set of Cincinnati armor, but not the tools, because it turns out that you need the stuff called nethery to make them. I was also able to make the set of aquite gear, which is another ore found in the blue skies dimension, and I placed down all of my new armor sets. The Cincinnati, I, 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 I can't keep saying it. <laughs> this set looked really cool, by the way. After that, I hunted creepers in the night looking to collect creeper spores for that griefer set I had mentioned earlier. After looking into it, it turned out that they only drop creeper spores if they die by blowing up. So you know what that means. I had to blow them up with some TNT. Sure enough, blowing them up worked and I continued hunting them all the way until the night of the next day where I finally got all of the materials I needed to make a full set of griefer armor. Now this armor has a perk of giving you full explosive damage reduction and I wanted to test that out at my ancient debris farm, but that did not go well. Oh. It broke my helmet in one hit. I was afraid it was gonna do that. It broke it in one hit. Uh... I can't say I didn't expect that, but the good news is, is it did block all of the explosive damage. So maybe it could have some use. While I waited for nighttime to hunt more creepers and recover my set, I went into the nether to search for nether reeds so I could complete my Cincinnati site set set. While searching, I found nether rubies, which I could actually use to create a new set, but I did not find any nether reeds. I hunted creepers in the night with these bombs this time that I made, and this made things way faster. I was able to make the griefer helmet soon enough, and my set was back to normal. I also used the nether rubies that I got, and I made a full set of nether ruby armor. It turned out I couldn't get the tools for the nether ruby set without nether reeds either, but I figured that nether reeds are something that could be found another day. I spent the last of my time creating a bone armor set with titan bones from the abyss dimension, which is actually really cool. And with that, our armory was looking good and day 701 was here. Also, I want to give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. I 
I survived 800 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. This is the finale of the Better Minecraft series, and in these final 100 days, we complete more projects than we ever have before. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we obtained the best armor in the mod pack, built an armory, and encountered a lot of cool things along the way. In these final 100 days, we complete the secret underground base, make huge upgrades to the animal sanctuary, and build a special room to end off the series. This has been a crazy journey so far, and I'm so excited to return to the series for one last time. It's not the end of our adventures though, because after this series, there will be so many new adventures to go on. Other than that, as always, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy everyone as I try to survive 800 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. Starting out on day 701, I was very happy to be back in the Better Minecraft world. Oh man, I am so happy to be back in this world. Before I do anything, I'd just like to get a recap of everything that we have. So obviously we have our main house with our Chilu called Jeffrey and Tsuki's up here and the dragons, the dragons, they are looking really, really nice with the shaders currently. And on the topic of dragons, in the last episode, I asked all of you for name suggestions and the most liked comment was by Aloy, who suggested three names actually. Echo, Gaia, or Minthi. Since it was left to my personal choice, I really liked the name Minthi, and that's what I chose. Apparently, within Greek mythology, she was a nymph that lived by the underworld river Cocytus, and she was turned into the mint plant by Persephone. So that's a really cool backstory. Welcome, Minthi, to our dragon army. Now that our new dragon was named, I had to do some cleanup around our base. You see, I hadn't been on the world for a while, and there were a few updates that occurred since my last login. I checked up on the storage room, and while there were a few chests missing for some reason, overall, it looked pretty good. My aquarium was good, but when I approached the animal sanctuary, things weren't so simple. Oop, um, that's, uh, this is not good. Well then, um, okay, yep, that happened. Um, not sure what... Yeah, yeah, that was gonna need some fixing. My warehouse structures seemed to be fine, and same with my automatic brewer. And when I checked on the bird sanctuary, yeah, we, we had some issues. More specifically, random holes in the ceiling. The underground base seemed in good shape, fortunately, and now that I had done a checkup on everything, it was time to get to maintenance duty. I began by focusing my efforts towards fixing the bird sanctuary. It required me to use jungle and dark wood slabs, both of which I luckily had. While working on this, the first night of these 100 days approached, and it was time to sleep. On day 702, I finished making my way around the sanctuary, and with that, the bird sanctuary was back in good shape. Next, I got to fixing up the animal sanctuary. There was a lot of damage done here, and the animals were running rampant. First, I filled in the acacia fencing, then I progressed to the spruce for the snow biome, and finally, the aspen fencing for the desert biome, during which I saw a moose that had escaped. Once I fixed all the fencing, I worked on bringing all the animals back to their homes, and there were quite a lot that had ran off. The next night approached, so I slept off the night, and upon awakening to the next day, I brought in the last missing animals to the sanctuary. I fixed up the chests in the storage room, and then I decided to finally clear out this abandoned house next to my base, because while it was the first place I stayed at in the beginning of the series, it was time to remove it and to clean up the area. And after that was done, I came to find that my bridge had somehow been torn up. I'm not sure if there's some natural disaster that occurs and, and some fire event that breaks all of my wood, but this was becoming strange. Anyway, Anyways, all I could do was fix it up, and now that I was actually done with all of my repairs, I could now get started working on my other projects. Given that this is the final chapter of the series, I wanted to work on finishing my existing projects like the underground base and animal sanctuary. The first thing I wanted to do was work on improving the garden that I had made before. While the trees and plants on the inside were beautiful, I felt like it needed a design built around it. I started by adding an outline of stripped birch logs, which I thought would fit well because it was a very 
very neutral color and wouldn't take away from the varieties of colors from the trees. And once I finished with filling in the logs, I started adding glass to the inner layer of the garden. I figured that making a glass cube design around the garden would be an interesting design, so that's what I ended up doing. But I ran out of glass, so I went down to the smeltery room and smelted up some sand that I had. While I waited for that to smelt, I decided I would work on the underground base. I ended up spending the rest of the day trying to fix up the secret door system we had because the levers wouldn't work sometimes. I got it to work pretty well, so I left it. And on the next day, I moved past the redstone and quickly removed the random cactus farm I had because I actually build a full cactus farm later. And I began working on the entry section of the underground base. I came to the idea of using colored terracotta to replace the walls. And this way I could basically remake the cave into a multicolored cave while still keeping the stone texture of blocks. I would need to mine terracotta to continue with that, but I needed to be around my base for the glass to smelt. So I ended up finishing the crystal drop-in part of my base for the time being. I then had the idea to put some type of a liquid at the drop-in and I found this stuff called Areno, which is found in the abyss. So I decided I would collect it later. Finally, my glass was smelted up. So I got to finishing the garden. Some trees were sticking out, but I had no problem with just skimming them off a little bit. They still looked fine. And then I ran out of glass again. So again, I collected sand and there was a blood moon happening while I was doing that, which I ended up disabling later on because blood moons are so annoying. Anyways, I finished up the glass and the garden was looking pretty cool. However, I did still want to design the cube and make it look more aesthetic. I started by adding stripped birch logs to the corners. Then I covered the roof with birch slabs. I had to chop down birch wood to restock on supplies and finish the roof on the next day. The roof ended up looking flat. So to fix that, I made the outside layer of the roof have solid blocks and that looked a lot better. I figured I also needed to add some lighting on the inside of the garden. So on the next day, I looked into the different light sources available in the mod pack and I found these wicker lanterns. They required swamp reeds to be made and I remember that they could be found in swamps, which I luckily had right next to my base. Sure enough, I found swamp reeds and was able to make a lantern. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, this is kind of cool. I think it's quite interesting. I do like this. So I want to make more. I set out to collect more swamp reeds. There weren't really any more near my base. So I used a waste stone and flew around. I got attacked by an alligator once I got to a swamp, which at this point was no match for my gear. And I was able to collect all of the swamp reeds that I needed. I also ended up finding this creature in the water. Look at that. That's cool. What is this? Whoa, look at this. Ow. Why do you have to do this, pal? Okay. Alligator in name only. Encounter an alligator snapping turtle. I'd like to read about this. Hold on. While reading about these turtles, I found out that the moss that grows on them can be sheared to make a special turtle shell that gives you knockback resistance and lets you breathe underwater for longer. I now had a bit more than a stack of swamp reeds, but before returning home, I encountered this pink structure, which I had faced in the past. I figured this was a great chance to get more totems of undying and test my gear out, but I did forget just how dangerous this building is. Woo. It's like some ultra evoker or something. Oh boy. Oh, this is no joke. I could die here quite easily. The carrot is regenerating me pretty well. This is really not good. I think I killed the ultra evoker guy. Wow, that's intense. That is extremely intense. Look at that. Oh man, okay. You know what? I've had enough of that. <laughs> I got my butt out of there and soon ran into a friendly local. Hi, Tony. Tony the Armorer. Hello, Tony the Armorer. It's nice to meet you, my friend. You got a nice little home here. He's got some kids. Aw, Brenna and Odell. Oh, wow, Sherry, three kids. Busy man, Tony, busy man. By the end of the day, I returned home using my waystone and realized that I also needed something to put the lanterns onto. There were many options, including rope which i tested out and it indeed placed onto the ceiling but was way too thick so i ended up settling on making these thalassium chains because they had a unique color but were also neutral on the next day i traveled into the end to first repair all of my gear and then i headed to the outer dimension to collect the ore i needed soon enough i found it and while in search i found more cool things i found this drim rock which had a really cool dark vibe to it null stone which was really clean i found 
around this ender ore and then ran into this, which ended up being called Oddity Cactus. I also found out you could use it to craft white dye. I made my way through this scary biome and found these really cool ender lily pads. This is so cool. Look at these. Oh, can I not take them? Wow, this place looks really, really cool. It's like sea bamboo and lotus stem. A bit creepy almost, I'd say, but are these eggs? Not quite sure. What is this? Wet manger sponge. Whoa, it's a new type of sponge. I then ran into this really creepy cactus. Whoa, whoa, look at this. This is freaky. Like, this is actually freaking me out. I don't like the sight of this. Seriously. Right next to that, I found this weird structure that had a very strange monster guarding it. I made my way through the structure and there were a lot more of these guys. Luckily, my gear held up well. I found a chest and checked around it to make sure it wasn't trapped and it had some decent loot, mainly consisting of useful ores, which I snagged right up. There wasn't anything else to the structure, so I headed out and continued my search and found this end temple. Ender temple. Would you look at that? Should I just say whatever and jump down there? I'm strongly considering it, to be honest. Oh. Look at them. Look at this secret TNT. I knew it. Clever. They thought they're clever, but they're not. There's a secret chest down here. How does it feel to be outclassed? Huh? How does that feel? Not good, huh? I just broke that chest by accident. <gasps> okay. Well, it looks like I've been outclassed. I cannot believe... <laughs> I thought I broke all the TNT. How did that even happen? Yep. I, I, I deserve that. The chest didn't have much in them anyways, so I headed out and continued collecting thalasium. I saw these volcanic mountains and made my way inside one, which did damage to me, pro probably because there was also a jellyfish in there or something, so I instantly got out. I flew through this interesting biome, which I think I've been to before, and in here I found an end city, which had a really cool added design to it, including teal blocks that went really well with the purple. I got some choker boxes and got out, after which I instantly found a bunch of thalassium right next to me. It seems that this biome especially had good spawn rates for it because I found a lot. I was now ready to head home and decided to make a waystone. Do I have purple dye? Oh, I need one more purple dye. Flower? No. The purple dye. Silk, coral, sage. Oh yeah, twisted umbrella moss. Umbrella. Oh, there we go. Purple dye. And then waystone. Thank goodness all right and eleanor oh i'm very happy to be back home waking up to the morning of day 714 i was excited to get back to work on the base i smelted up the thalassium ore but unfortunately there was a bug that didn't allow me to transfer the thalassium ingots into nuggets i couldn't even make shovels in the normal way to then smelt them down into nuggets so I ended up just having to make a bunch of boots, which cost me a lot of ingots, and ultimately, I could barely make any thalassium, so I ended up deciding to mostly use regular chains. I made my way around the greenhouse, placing the lanterns, and also added some glowing plants that I had, and I landed on a fairly evenly lit design. I lit up the top of the roof with some torches, and with that, the garden was complete. There were also little butterflies flying around it, which was really cute. Now I was running out of fireworks, so I spent a couple of days AFKing at the mob farm for gunpowder, and then harvested my sugarcane farm for paper. However, I only got four stacks of sugarcane for my harvest, and I definitely needed more in the long run. So I decided I would expand my sugarcane farm, and doing so required me to move our beloved cat Lucy's grave, which I didn't want to do, but I figured I could take the flowers I planted for her, name them Lucy, and then embed them in my storage room. On the next day, I spent time filling in the area of expansion so that the sugarcane farm wouldn't just be floating. Then I got to work building the land for the sugarcane to grow on. I poured in the water, built up the walls, and followed the same pattern that I had set before. I worked on this through the night of day 719 into day 720. I then finally filled in the roof and started filling in the sides of the build, but I ran out of glowstone, so I had to head into the nether. I was able to find glowstone pretty quickly, actually, and it was a lot easier to collect than I thought it would be. I returned home in the nighttime and arose on the next day to complete building the structure of the sugarcane farm. Unfortunately, I then started having issues with filling in the water, but what's worse 
is I didn't correctly account for how many blocks wide I needed the structure to be. So I ended up tormenting myself with trying to fix things over the next few days. And I ended up finding a fix by extending out the walls beside the water on the sides by one. And finally, I figured things out by day 727. Now I wouldn't have any issues with making fireworks. Now that I was done with that, I set out to find a mesa biome so that I could collect terracotta for my base and start working on the multicolored cave. Fortunately, it didn't take me that long. And by day 728, I found not a mesa biome necessarily, but a good enough chunk of terracotta, which I happily mined up. I only got half an inventory full given that I didn't want to go overboard with the terracotta yet. And next I needed to make the dyes I wanted so I could make different colors of terracotta. And I found that the purple terracotta looked very similar to magenta bricks. I still wanted to make magenta terracotta as well, and it required blue dye, pink dye, and red dye, which I didn't have. So what I did is go to my greenhouse and bone meal some beetroot because in this pack you can craft it into a red dye, which was perfect. With that, I made a sample amount of magenta terracotta and found out that it was similar, but different from the purple variation, and they looked really nice alongside each other. Given that I also used turquoise bricks in my base, I wanted to find terracotta that could match that color. The blue terracotta looked more like purple and there weren't any other options other than light blue, which looked like violet. I decided that I would still use all four of these variants because they fit quite well into the color palette my base had. I made a bunch of the color terracotta and got to work. I started by removing the quartz in the entryway and started replacing it with the terracotta. At first I made a one-toned wall, but then I came to the idea of mixing the different colors with each other, which was very interesting. I had to spend some time farming beetroot for red dye, and on the next day I got back to working on the entryway. I found that mixing purple and magenta and then blue and light blue made for great gradients in the build. And throughout these next few days, I worked on building out the entryway all the way down to the main base. I had to remove the glass tunnel that I had made before and replace the pathway fully with terracotta. By day 734, I was done. All of this part of the cave is done. It's looking really interesting. I do want to figure out the flooring now because this is definitely not the most preferable. I didn't like how the oak looked in combination with the colors I used though, so I removed it and I tried using birch planks instead. I also tested out stone bricks and I landed on birch wood being my favorite. So I finished up with replacing everything and now I could roam around my finished entryway. Next, I wanted to work on my crystal tunnel entrance. I remembered that I wanted to find that arena liquid I found out about earlier so that I could complete it. So I headed into the abyss and immediately I did not want to be there. I ran into a plant that made me blind and then I finally found the arena liquid. I hesitantly jumped into it and I instantly found out that it sets you on fire. But given that I have an amulet that gives me permanent fire resistance, I was completely fine. And this could serve as a repellent from intruders for my base. Now, when I returned, I had the thought that I wanted to get more crystals to finish off the entrance. So I headed to my enderman farm first to repair all of my armor and elytra and then I went on a search. I saw these crystals which are very beautiful but they weren't the ones I needed. I then found this biome. Whoa, whoa, look at this. This is a very interesting biome right here. Wow, that looks crazy. Look at this. What is this? Umbra lit. Make tiles with it. This is a very, very unique looking block. It's scary. This looks like uh, like an alien planet. I found a dungeon and quickly looted it, but beside it, I found this strange area. There were these creepy Verlimian skulk tendrils all over the place, and it was just, it was really strange. On day 736, I decided to fly onto one of these stars that I'd always flew past, and I found out that it was made out of this translucent block called Emerald Ice. I really liked it and I would have collected more if it was faster to break. Then something unexpected happened. Whoa, what just happened? Explore all end biomes. Oh, I found every end biome. Oh, this is like a mushroom island end biome. Oh man, I think this is like one of the rare biomes because I've never seen this before and I've traveled a lot in the end. Cool. Wait, hold on. Amaranita cap. Interesting. I'll mark down the coordinates for sure because this uh, this is a rare biome. Does shears let me take this? <gasps> let me take the mushrooms. I collected some more blocks from the biome and one of those was mossy obsidian. I also came across this geode 
that looked like amethyst, but it was a teal variant. I tried to get the crystals, but they didn't drop and I couldn't break the blocks themselves. If anyone knows what this is, please let me know. I flew through this extremely cool slimy tree biome. I absolutely loved the blocks here. And by the end of the day, I decided I would return home. I figured that instead of spending more days looking for crystals, I could use terracotta for the bottom of the crystal tunnel instead. I got attacked by this disgusting centipede, which I, I, I just, I, I can't. And then I got to work on filling in the bottom. I made my way around the tunnel, randomly filling it in with a variety of colors I had. Soon enough, I finished building out the cave system and touched up the drop-in section by adding more variety around the ground. Then I placed a layer of dirt to pour the arena liquid onto, and I was done. I tested out falling into the arena pool, but unfortunately, I found out that it doesn't negate fall damage, which was kind of a bummer since I wanted this to be a landing area for the base, but I knew I wouldn't die of fall damage anyways, so I could deal with it. That, however, gave me an idea. I could make this a secret entrance as well. I covered up the opening with a reno, and that way you couldn't even see there was somewhere to go from the drop-in section. Since the liquid sets you on fire, I figured it would also be a good idea to add a flow of water behind the arena, since that way I could cool off after flying through the fire. The next project I wanted to finish up was my smeltery. I had the idea to essentially rebuild a cave around it using terrible terracotta blocks. The first thing I did was finish up the frame glass on the sides, and once I was done with that, it was time to start recreating this cave. And so it began, my mission of turning all the regular stone into a colorful masterpiece. After rebuilding the attached wall, I started building an outline for how I would shape the rest of the cave section. And while doing so, I found an old friend. <gasps> it's Garnet. Hi, Garnet. Oh my goodness, Garnet. We got to get you to a better spot than this. <laughs> Oh, I'm happy to see Garnet. Later on, I decided I would build a room for my turtles. Anyways, I continued my work building an outline. I also found Toric while doing this, which was pretty funny. I finished the cave outline and now it was time to build it all up. Other than getting attacked by the occasional zombie, this process went pretty smoothly. I also decided to leave in some moss around the area because it added to the cave aesthetic and contrasted fairly well with the colors I was using. By day 741, I finished the build and it was looking really good. Next, I wanted to figure out the lighting for the caving system because I had just been using torches. I ended up finding out that there were these ender torches and soul torches, both of which fit into our color palette perfectly. I was easily able to make a stack of ender torches, tested them out, and they were perfect. They emitted as much light as regular torches and fit the purple aesthetic. I also tested out the soul torches, but unfortunately they did not light up the area around them. So I decided I would just stick with the ender torches and made my way around the cave placing them down. I also lit up the smeltery and with that done, the foundation of my underground base was looking very good. Now that the foundation of the base was complete, I wanted to work on building our turtles a room. I first needed space to make that happen, so I began extending out the tunnel system. I ended up having to clear my way through some terrain and then continued on with my tunnel design, placing oak stairs, logs, and turquoise bricks. I had to take a break to chop down some wood and then I got back to work. I came to the idea that I wanted to create a main lobby area and then have branches come out of there. I built out the tunnel a little bit further and then began working on the lobby area. I kept with the theme of the base being a cave system, so I used terracotta, and by the next day, I was pretty much done. The only thing that came to mind was adding another light source around the area. I found these rose-colored lamps and they ended up fitting really well. I added these around the rest of the base, and then I had the idea to add a map to the lobby section that would hopefully show the underground. I I used my trusty sugarcane farm to farm crop for paper and make a map, but I accidentally ended up making a present. This was really sweet because it lets you wrap a present and dedicate it to someone. As a thanks to my Patreon supporters, I decided I would make an individual present for each with different colors and place them in a room later on. So thank you to Adrian Daugherty, Nixonix33, Mountain Dew24, Aaron, Norman Haynes, Corbin Bibo, Federica Delamour, and what the dog doing? I also make something special for all of you guys at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Upon activating the map underground, I found that unfortunately it does not create an underground map. I wasn't bothered though, and I created more pathways. I ended up taking a quick detour to repair all of my gear because I was paranoid of breaking anything. Getting back to it, 
but I spent some time thinking of what I was going to do for the turtle room. To get inspiration for the build, I went around visiting each of our turtles, hoping to get some ideas. The two themes I noticed were gems and an earthy tone. I paved out the entrance to the room and then got attacked by another one of these centipedes. I had enough so i decided to light up the caving system and literally remove them from the mod pack because they were really nasty i did not enjoy seeing them i got an idea for the design of the turtle room which would require normal terracotta so i collected that up essentially i wanted to make a mud room using the different variants of terracotta like shingles and bricks i figured this would fit well with the rest of the base and also fit the earthy look of all the turtles i placed some crystals down and some mint lamps as well which fit very nicely with the brown of the terracotta the crystals i ended up removing moving however since they didn't really feel like they fit well. I then grabbed some cave roots to bring the turtles to the room since nothing else could move them and as you can imagine this was a, a very very slow process. I needed to break out three wide holes for Torek to be able to fit through. I was able to do that and slowly but surely we made it. I then worked on transporting Garnet. Oh no no Garnet. I did not mean to hit you Garnet. Here, Garnet, I'm so sorry. Take a bunch of cave roots. Luckily, Garnet didn't stay mad at me, and I finished transporting her. With that, I just had to bring over Tsuki. No, 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 no. You don't want to go down there, trust me. Tsuki, stop. <laughs> Tsuki's trying to die or something. I don't know what's going on. Tsuki was the most difficult turtle to get to the base since she was above ground at first, but slowly I was able to carry Tsuki through the base and into the special room. From your comments, I also learned about something that I wanted to test out. I have heard that mining might work. Oh, it does. Look at that. There we go. Mine off all the oars. Now, with all the turtles in the room, it felt like it was still missing something, and I decided to add some oars around the place. And that's gonna be our room. I had to go back through the base and fix up all the carnage that was left behind from me transporting the turtles. And after that was done, I wanted to make a room dedicated to my Patreon supporters. And again, I do end up making something for all of my viewers later on, and it's pretty cool. I had the idea to make the room out of ore blocks, almost like a vault. So I mined some ores for a bit, mainly iron, since I didn't have a lot. And once I collected and smelted that up, I got all of my blocks of ore into my inventory and started working on the vault. I had to be very careful with how I placed these because I didn't want anything to be out of vision and go to waste. My work continued into day 754 and once I was done with the room it was time to place the presents inside. I placed each of them in randomly and I think the room turned out pretty nice. With that I was happy with the work I had done on our underground base and I blocked up the next tunnel to be continued. The next project that I wanted to work on was the animal sanctuary to make it the creation that I always wanted it to be. As I was planning that out this happened. How did the monkeys get out? Oh my god, they're climbing the fences. No, no, no. They can climb fences. Oh my god, he just took my sword. He just took my sword. This monkey just took my sword. And now this one took my sword. Okay. My goodness. Look, I'm all about protecting animals, but when they start plotting against me, it's game over. No regrets. Now, the monkey is stealing my sword did remind me of the fact that I threw out the overpowered sword of abyss I got on the last 100 days because I accidentally killed Ladder with it. And in my YouTube community tab, I promised you guys I would get it back since a lot of you guys were commenting asking why I threw it away. So, that's what I plan to do. But... To do that, I would need to summon the final boss, Nightblade, again. And to do that, I needed to make an Eye of Abyss. This required loot drops from each of the bosses in the Abyss Dimension. I did have the Roka Horn, so that would speed things up, but I still had to defeat an Elder and Crystal Golem. So I headed into the Abyss and began my journey. I turned on my minimap for the search, and after a bit of flying around, I actually managed to find the Elder, and using my fortified gear, was able to take it out fairly quickly. Now I just needed to find the crystal golem, which could be found in the slime forest biome. While searching, I got blinded again, which wasn't very assuring, but a little bit of time passed and I found the crystal golem. I went all in, guns a blazing, but I did start taking more damage than I thought I would have. Eventually, I was able to chunk its health down and defeat it to get the crystal hand. And after that, I headed to an altar where I could summon the boss, but it didn't work. You see, I completely forgot you needed to light up the surrounding pillars with soul hearts to summon the boss. To get those, I needed to defeat some soul guards, so I went out on a search and I quickly was 
was attacked by soul guards who I easily took down and they dropped two soul hearts each. I was also curious as to what would happen if I attacked one of these large whale things and nothing, N nothing happened, but it did have a lot of health. So I just, I just felt bad for killing an innocent creature, if anything. Anyways, I returned to the altar and this time lit it up using soul hearts. After which with the golden apple eaten and enchanted golden carrots ready, I summoned Nightblade. I'm scared, I'm not gonna lie. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Where's the boss? There. There's Nightblade. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm eating an enchanted golden carrot. This is a good use. Okay. I have no idea what's going on right now. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna chug away at my golden apples. That's what I'm gonna do. My gear is taking severe damage too. And so the fight went. This was not easy at all. Nightblade was a relentless boss, chasing me down, summoning me into the air, and confusing me with his clones. On top of that, my gear was breaking at a fast rate. I started getting attacked by two Nightblade variants at one point, and my health was tanking fast. But in the end, I was finally able to isolate Nightblade and take him down, giving me the Sword of Abyss. I headed back for home, but as I was looking for the portal, I started taking damage because fear had built up too high in this dimension. I was at risk of dying, so I had to eat golden apples, but fortunately, through the darkness, I was able to find my portal home. I made use of the Sword of Abyss, which lets you dash around, and I do something really cool with the sword later on, but for now, I decided I would place it into the trophy room, which seemed to have a couple of trophies removed from the update, but that was fine. After all of the damage that had been done to my gear, I went to the Enderman farm to repair it up. Once I had everything back to its full durability, I returned home to begin work on the animal sanctuary. After literally thinking about this for the rest of the day, I had the idea that I would build walls around the sanctuary correlating to the biome. The first biome I wanted to do was the nether, and for that, I wanted to get nether bricks, so I started smelting up netherrack. While that was smelting up, I started figuring out what materials I would need for the rest of the biomes. For the desert biome, I wanted to use sandstone, so I headed to a desert with a waystone. This desert was different from the normal type. It was from the atmospheric mod. The sand from this biome could be used to create sandstone that looked a little different. I decided I would just get all of the variants of sand so that in case I needed it, I would have different options. I also found this wood while collecting sand called Yuga wood, so I collected some of it up. After getting a good amount of this arid sand, I decided I would leave and get some regular sand. I was able to find a normal desert and I wanted to find sandstone directly, so I I mine downwards. Now, while I didn't find any sandstone, I did come to find a good strategy for farming sand. The torch strategy wasn't especially the greatest, but mining out sand at its bottom was very efficient because it kept refreshing. I was able to get stacks and stacks of sand from this, and I kept to my strategy. By the end of the night, I was fulfilled on sand and now wanted to find snow for the snowy portion of the sanctuary. I repaired my shovel before doing anything else and then had it out on a search. I found a snowy mountain by but it didn't have any diggable snow, so I had to fly past it. While flying, I saw a collection of blocks that were unfamiliar. After looking into it, I found out that it was red rock. I figured this could potentially be useful for my desert biome, so I spent some time collecting this up. After I got an inventory full of it, I continued my search for snow, and I ran into this interesting tree, which was called a sunny blossom tree. Close by, I also found an orange blossom tree, so I took a sapling from there. And while flying, I also saw a ship, and for old time's sake, I decided to plunder and loot it. In the beginning, these skeletons could bully me, but that was no longer the case. I looted the barrels, which gave me a good amount of gunpowder, and I headed out. I found this interesting looking rock, which I dug inside to see if I could find anything, and nope, there was, there was nothing there. After that, I found this huge structure, and I've been to one of these before, but this time, I had an elytra and could easily fly around. I made my way through, breaking the spawners and looting the chests, which had a lot of ores actually. The mobs had a lot of health, but my gear was strong enough to let me battle through, and I came out with a lot of loot. I continued my adventures into the next day, and I found a ruined portal, which I looted the chests of, and I got this shimmering passion fruit, which had interesting effects to say the least. Spitting. Whoa. Interesting. <laughs> 
interesting i found an abandoned mine shaft so i headed in as one normally does and there were cave spiders at the bottom which i absolutely hate i looted a couple chests here and scouted the area i found amber lying around which could be used to make resin and ropes pretty cool and i also found a skillet in one of the chests which was uh it was pretty funny after exploring around for a little bit more i headed outside and continued my search for snow i decided i would craft a nature's compass which would essentially locate biomes for me and help me find snow I set it to find a snowy beach and headed towards it. Now, you might be asking why I hadn't used this before. Well, frankly, I didn't want to use something that lets me find any biome, but uh, I also didn't want to spend days and days just looking for snow. However, upon finding it, it seemed that there was no collectible snow anywhere. Fortunately, after some searching, I was able to find a mountain peak with solid snow. I spent the next day farming it up. While doing this, I found out that you can make ice cream blocks and also snow bricks, which I plan to use in my build. These look similar similar to regular snow, but have a bit of added texture. I was able to collect a total of 6,000 blocks of snow and was satisfied with that. And I headed to a savanna biome next to farm up some acacia wood and also leaves because I wanted to implement those into the savanna biome design. I continued farming these trees into the following day and gathering leaves was not an easy task because a lot of them would disintegrate as I would break them. I finished farming the trees by the end of the day and finally returned home on day 765 and collected my smelted nether bricks. With that, I was able to make a bunch of nether well, nether bricks, and I looked into other nether blocks that you can make, and I found out that I could make blue nether bricks, which would be very cool, but it would take too long to make them given you need blue wart blocks. I continued with preparing all of the materials I needed for the animal sanctuary, and a part of that was creating dyed glasses for it. One of the colors I needed was brown, which could be made using cattail, and additionally, it could be bone meal. So I made a little cattail farm, only to find out that the cattail I had harvested Interested was from the environmental mod, which couldn't be turned into brown dye. Thankfully, the cattail from the Terra Incognita mod could be turned into brown dye, and I was also able to bone meal it in a much easier way, might I add. This gave me a lot of brown dye. I had to go collect more sand because of all of the glass I was making. I smelted it right up, and this would last me for a long time. I needed to make green dye next, which would require cactus, so I wanted to make a cactus farm. At first, I planned on making this in my underground base, so I started started building out a tunnel which would lead to the farm. I fully completed this tunnel and then started working on a room for the cactus farm. After trying to map this out for a little bit of time, I quickly realized that building the cactus farm underground wouldn't be the best option. So I flew out to an empty area next to my base and I started clearing the area out. There were quite a lot of trees in the area so it took me until the end of the day to chop them all down and then on the next day I began leveling out the ground. I finished digging out the heightened chunks and filled in the rest of the area. With this leveling out complete, I was ready to begin working on the cactus farm. I first had to build a 21 by 21 block outline and I chose to use pink glass for it because I thought it would look really nice with the yellowy white and green colors that the farm would have. The next step was building out a checkerboard pattern with sand, which is where the cactus would go. I then had to make holes and lines from the center point, added and opened fence gates above them, and then had to create an underground section expanding to each corner of the farm. Once I had a perfect underground area cleared out, I started mapping out the lanes that the cactus would drop into. I had to add glass around these lanes as well to contain the items, and I placed down water for each item lane. I then worked on the item collection area, during which I noticed that you could make golden hoppers, which seemed pretty cool. Soon enough, I was done with the collection area. All I had left to do was placing fences between the sand, water, and finally the cactus, which I ran out of and I had to go to the desert to collect some. I made sure to get a lot and smelted up the extra I had for green dye. With that, the cactus farm was completed and I had collected all of the resources needed to work on the animal sanctuary. I began by working on the nether biome. I found out that I could make polished netherrack and I decided I would use it in the build. I started with creating an outline of nether bricks and then I replaced the fences every five blocks to create nether brick pillars. I built the nether brick pillars up six blocks high. Then I played around with filling in the gaps with nether brick fencing and I compared this to a design alternate 
alternating between polished netherrack and red stained glass. I like the second variant more, so I took down the fencing and filled in the rest of the wall with polished netherrack and red stained glass. I completed the design by wrapping it in nether brick, and the first biome segment was looking good. Before building the second layer of walling, I wanted to build the first layer of walls for every biome. The next biome I began work on was the plains. I built a layer of oak logs, leaving a space for the entrance. I then built out the pillars every five blocks. I then was trying to figure out a block to use on the inside layer, and I found out about these vertical planks. They had the exact same design as regular planks, just rotated, and I really liked their upward design. I built these up, and to fill up the gaps, used brown stained glass. This added a really nice touch to the walls and was subtle at the same time. And finally, I wrapped the top of the wall with oak logs. I then began trying to create an entryway for the sanctuary, but none of the designs really worked, so I just settled with keeping it as it was. On the next day, I began work on our savanna biome. We had a little lizard escapee while I was working on the logs, but I was able to pick it up and bring it back to its home. I got back to work on the walls, and I really, really liked the design I picked for these. However, glass panes didn't connect to the leaves. Fortunately, I was able to use full stained glass to fix this, and it looked really nice. I finished off the build by adding an acacia wrap, and the first layer of the savanna biome was completed. Look at what we're making, guys! Woo! Oh! <laughs> oh, man! Okay. Now it was time to work on the snow biome. I compared three ice choices and liked polished packed ice the most. I ended up finding a large ice temple while flying and this turned out to be a gold mine for packed ice. I spent the rest of the day mining this up and as I was flying back home on the next day, I was trying to find the boss Frost Maw and found these smaller yetis instead. It was pretty easy to take them out and they dropped yeti fur, which didn't have any use, but the yeti antlers could be used to make bone meal. I followed through with defeating Frostmaw and I kind of felt bad after that because neither Frostmaw or the Yetis attacked me and I attacked them first. Anyways, I returned home and tried out using an outline of polished packed ice instead of snow bricks, but I did end up sticking with the snow brick outline. With that, I finished the design of the snow biome walls. I then compared white stained glass to blue stained glass, which looked fairly similar, but I prefer the white stained glass look. Now it was time to work on the final biome, the desert. This one took me a little bit of time to figure out. I used regular sandstone for the pillars, and at one point I used red arid sandstone on the sides with orange orange stained glass. I spent the next day fixing my gear because it was on the cusp of breaking, and I was able to find the design I liked on day 785, which was smooth sandstone on the sides and yellow stained glass in the gaps. This inspired me to make changes to the snow biome in which I removed the polished packed ice and replaced it with regular snow. I was now done with all the walls for the first layer of the biomes, and in the preparation of the second layer, I grew oak trees and chopped them down, getting way too much wood if I'm honest. I began working on the second layer for the savanna biome and I decided I would push it one block in and not include a base layer on the bottom so I carried the design right on over. After mapping out the bottom I went back through and extended the walls a total of seven blocks high. I came to a good pattern of filling in three blocks at a time and by the next day I completed the savanna biome's second layer. The mix of glass and leaves had a very nice translucent look to it. I slowly filled in the plains biome in the same way and finished by the next day. I also added a wrapping on the top of the plains biome and for the savanna as well. Repeating this pattern, I filled in the walls for the nether, desert, and snow biomes. With that, the second layer of the sanctuary was complete and all that was left was the roof. I had to spend a while thinking about how I was going to do this. I settled on making things simple, but not necessarily typical. I decided I would use full blocks indented in by one and correlate them to their correct biomes. Using the fencing that I had built on the inside, I was actually easy easily able to build the outline of the roof for each section. All that I had to do after that was just fill everything in, and I was able to complete the nether, plains, savanna, snow, and finally desert biome. And I have to say, it looked amazing. Except it was missing something on the top outer layer. I tested out placing smooth glowstone on the top, and I liked it. It fit really well. I didn't have any more glowstone left though, so I headed into the nether, and I mined a lot of it. All the way into 
the next day. I got a total of nine stacks, and with that, I smelted everything up in our smeltery room. Once that was done, I filled in all of the roof with smooth glowstone. I wasn't done there, though. Instead of leaving torches on the roof, I wanted to create a lighting pattern with the smooth glowstone, so I went through placing it every five blocks, which took a while, and by the end of day 797, everything was complete. The inside looked gorgeous as well, and I was really happy with it. On the next day, I decided that I would spend the final moments of the series making a room dedicated to all of you. I wanted it to be purple themed given my logo's purple color. I made some purple terracotta bricks and built out an exterior with them. After that, I added purple carpet to the front and shroom lights to the edges. For the flooring, I wanted to use a block that was see-through like these purple bulbous shell blocks, but I didn't have any, so I figured I'd find some in the end. I was running low on time, so I had to be quick. While on the search, I found these purple trees, which I liked, so I harvested some leaves and logs from them. And while here, I found this very strange purple slime. It was aggressive, and it attacked me, but I was able to fend it off. It just dropped some normal slime balls, though, so nothing out of the ordinary. I continued on on my search and found these pods, which had transparent purple blocks. Little did I know, these blocks start flying up in the air when you try to mine them, and the only way to get them is by attacking them. These blocks were very strange, to say the least, but I decided to collect them because they would fit the aesthetic of the room very well. I also collected the wood that these pods were on top of, and while I was collecting it, this happened. Oh my goodness, what is that? Look at that thing. That's freaky. That's freaky too. I know what that is though, but I don't know what this one is. That is so freaky. Oh my goodness. I don't even feel like letting this thing hit me. I just want to kill it. Oh, I killed it. Booflu. It's a booflu. Booflu vest. Interesting. Okay, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, these things aren't even mean. Oh, it's just so creepy. Okay, now I kind of feel bad for killing it, but like at the same time, it's really creepy. What are they doing? I don't know what's going on there. I just don't want, well, I don't want to know. Yeah, that was freaky. I collected some more blocks that I thought would fit our theme. And once I collected all of those, I returned back home. I got right to work on the flooring, filling in our transparent blocks. You could see too much of the cave underneath though. So I placed some leaves down below. And I also found out that fire working on the transparent blocks makes you float. Anyways, I could still see the cave system with the leaves underneath. So I decided I would add an additional layer of Pythadendron planks. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tongue twister. With that, the floor was no longer transparent, but you know what? I, I took what I was given. I used poise stems for the walls, which also had a glowing variant that worked perfectly. I used purple blocks on the corners and put purple jelly shroom cap blocks in front of them, which looked really interesting. The next day came and it was now day 800, which means I barely had any time left, but I still needed to get additional wood. So I headed into the end and was fortunately able to find it very quickly. I ended up removing the layer of leaves below the ground to make it look more transparent. And I replaced the terracotta bricks with purple blocks, which I think looks a lot better. I worked on the ceiling with the purple planks I had, but I needed to extend the walls up one and I had run out of purple blocks. I rushed into the end, hoping to quickly find some, which I did. And with that, I was able to finish the fourth layer of the walls. I then finished up the roof and added more glowing wood to the walls. I also needed two more purple shroom lights to light up the ceiling. So I quickly headed into the end. To my great fortune, I was quickly able to find them inside of these blue globes. So I collected them up and headed back to the purple room to place them down. To finish things off, I crafted a purple present, grabbed the Sword of Abyss, the strongest sword in the mod pack, and wrapped the present in dedication to all of you. To finish things off, I placed some of the glowing wood as a pedestal and made a sign thanking all of you. With that, the purple room was complete. Okay. Wow. Okay, we've done it, everybody. That is the completion of the Better Minecraft series, 800 days. 801, if we're really being exact. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. If you're worried that that's the end of our incredible adventures, don't worry because we're gonna go on so many more. Leave your comments down below as to your thoughts on this series and what you think I should do next. I always read your comments. Also, feel free to join my Discord community. It's linked in the description and you guys can chat with each other, leave me suggestions, and I'm often in there. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in another video soon.
I survived 100 days in hardcore Better Minecraft. You guys really enjoyed the first season of my Better Minecraft series, so we're back in a new world. If you haven't heard of Better Minecraft yet, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In these 100 days, I adventure through a bunch of new structures, build my starter house, and fight some of the most challenging bosses I've ever had to face. Huge thank you to Sharky for making this amazing mod pack and if you guys want to see a part two to this series leave a like if we can get to 45,000 likes I'll upload 200 days anyways without further ado everybody grab your favorite snacks relax and enjoy as I try to survive 100 days in hardcore better minecraft Starting out, I was really excited to be back for a new episode of Better Minecraft Hardcore. Okay, a new world. I'm really excited. Uh, what is that? A squirrel? <laughs> As I got up to the top of the mountain, I found a village here, which was the perfect start to our new world. I mingled with the villagers, which were named Napo Kigli, the beekeeper, and Kui Queen... La Mota, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I pronounced this correctly. I found a waystone in the village, which was really nice to see. I would be able to use these to teleport to other waystones all around the world. I then checked my inventory out and this thing looked awesome. I love the glass feature behind the character and there were a lot of new item slots to fill up. So that's really exciting. I finally looked down at my inventory and saw that I had a quest book and biomepedia, which I check out more later. Later. I used the roughly enough items mod that lets you look through all the items in the mod pack and there were a lot 212 rows in fact so I'm really excited to explore everything in this mod pack anyways I also have a map in this pack and a mini map as well which I turn on later it's really helpful so I'm glad that it's in this pack I humbly borrowed a yellow bed and ventured further to find this interesting building which contains some crates with basic loot I got raw salmon and an egg as well as tomato seeds. I also saw meat and a knife planted into wood, which I picked up. I also found this stuff that looked like ladders on the wall, and it turned out to be rope, which was good to know. I continued on to venture into a few houses. One of them had a bunch of apples and an onion. I saw this little baby villager, which was really cute. And after that, I finally started grabbing some wood. I made a pickaxe and mined cobblestone from the edges of the houses to make a full set of stone tools. I made a hoe as well so that I could collect up all of the hay in the village and once I was done with that I checked out a bit more of the village found a library which gave me some books I crafted myself a bunch of wheat and bread from the hay I had gathered and with that I left the village and was ready to set out on a journey in hopes of finding a place to build my home I found this interesting chicken which I thought was strange because it looked like it had a tint from the ender thinking that this was like an ender chicken disguised or something I took it out but it was just a regular chicken, so I felt kind of bad about that. I saw the building and volcano I'd seen on the map before, so I started approaching them, and I saw a little raft beside them as well. The first thing I approached was the house, and on the inside I found a fish man, just like in my roguelike adventures and dungeons 100 days. So I quickly took him out, and the loot here mainly consisted of raw fish. I also noticed I got a broken spawner when I broke the spawner here, meaning that you could recreate spawners in this pack, which I really like and would like to do in the future. I hopped right back into my boat and headed to the raft. When I got to it, it didn't seem to have anything in it, so I started heading towards the volcano. But as I was doing that, I noticed another ship that I couldn't help but approach. And as I made it on board, I found two villagers here. It was a nice little fisher boat. It was nighttime by this point, so I quickly slept and proceeded to borrow some of the fish from this ship. Look, I, I protect villagers all the time. I totally deserve this. Anyways, I finally boated to the volcano and saw that there was a lone villager sitting here. Before I could approach him though, I thought I saw iron on the floor and when I mined it up, I got a pebble, which I'm not sure what it's used for. Not only that, but I found a seashell on the floor, which could be used to craft bone meal. Pretty cool. I approached the villager and found out that his name was Hazel Bailiff. I ventured to the top of this volcanic island, and as you'd expect, there was lava on the inside, but nothing more. So I headed out and 
unfortunately leaving Hazal to his own future. Hopefully, he would survive. I found some sugarcane, which I grabbed right up, and this would be important for a level 30 enchanting table. I also found this palm tree with coconut falling from it, which I thought was very nice. As I continued to travel, the beauty in this world was not lacking. The shaders and additions of tons of new biomes and items added so much to the visual aspect of this game. I saw this interesting little structure in the distance, and when I came up to it, I realized that it was just a well and didn't have anything inside of it. I ran forward for a bit more and then found an area that could be perfect for our home. This is a uh, pretty unique, I'd say, and I think it'll do the trick. Look at that. That looks really beautiful. This place was covered with new birch trees and rainbow eucalyptus trees, and I really liked the idea of building my first house on the center island. With the location decided upon, I got to chopping trees for wood. These trees were really tall, so chopping them down was no easy feat. Better Minecraft usually has a mod that lets you destroy trees in one hit, but I figured that that was way too overpowered, so I stuck to the vanilla vanilla version of chopping trees down. With some trees chopped, I had enough wood to craft chests and placed a few birch chests down. At this time, I finally took a moment to check out the biomepedia. There was a lot to read through and a lot to explore. I also checked out the quest book, which took me through a short tutorial, and I got rewards along the way. One of those was a charm of life, which I equipped, and I had no idea what it was used for at the time, but you guys will find out later. I completed reading the tutorial and there were a lot more quests ahead of me, including defeating a lot of new bosses and creatures. I found out that there were plushies in this mod pack, which was pretty funny, and I would like to collect all of them in the future. How many plushies are there? Oh my god! That's so amazing! Panda plushie! I need to get one. Slime plushie is very cute. Now, with a location set for my home, it was time to level up my gear. Before heading out to mine, I went to the map and marked a waypoint for my home, which would let me easily find my way back. I saw what seemed to be a massive cave entrance nearby. And as I was swimming over, I noticed that my character looked really cool in this mod pack. I looked 3D, and I really liked my new skin. Anyways, I made it to the cave and I could see a lot of coal around it, which I definitely needed. I mined a few veins and made sure to make torches so that I could see everything going on around me. As I made my way further down the cave, I found this interesting substance called lichen moss and also a bowl lichen, which seemed to be a mushroom. There was one opening in this cave that I slowly made my way into. A couple of skeletons and I could easily die here, so I had to be really careful. I progressed through the cave and soon found iron, which was exactly what I was here for. Lucky for me, this was a huge, huge vein of iron. I continued getting coal as well because I knew that if I made it to the lower levels, there wouldn't be any coal to collect. I found some lapis and with that, I came to a dead end. So I headed back up and I probably should have smelted some iron up at this point, but I continued adventuring to find a new cave. And during that, I finally activated my mini map. I soon found this narrow opening and funny enough as I progressed through it, it just went deeper and deeper and deeper. I finally stopped to craft a furnace and smelt my iron up. And while I waited on that, I moved forward, but right away I was approached by a zombie and a skeleton, which was not a good combo at this time. I used my iron to craft a shield, leggings, and boots. With that, I had newfound confidence to adventure further. I finally found an opening that was really dark and there was a skeleton, but using my shield, I was able to successfully block off its shots and take it out. Things did not get easier though because I was approached by a lot more mobs after that. I even got approached by a baby spider. Yeah, that's right, not a cave spider. There are a lot of new baby mobs in this mod pack and uh, they are troublesome, but I was able to take it out as well as a lot of other mobs and finally got to mining. I was soon able to craft myself all the other pieces of iron gear that I needed. I continued mining like this and eventually got down to the lower depths where I found some of this silver ore, which didn't seem to have much use to me at the time. I found some redstone and gold as well, and eventually I found my first diamond, which was guarded by a lot of creepers that I turned against each other and defeated them. I also saw 
saw a baby creeper in the corner stuck because of water, which uh, that was a good thing. And yes, the diamond that I found was indeed an individual diamond, but I was still happy with the find. A lot of glow squids passed out around me, which gave me a good amount of glowing ink sacks and squid meat, which was random, but came in handy. As I continued to explore, I came upon this jar, which I broke and it dropped some antique ink, which is actually useful to me later on. I broke a couple more jars, which dropped amethyst and iron nuggets. These jars are a really nice addition to caving. I continued mining through to day five, and once I was done, I mined back up to the surface, which felt really refreshing. I set all my iron to smelt and finished making a full set of iron gear. Now that I was situated, I wanted to spend some time adventuring above ground. I found this biome called the Prairie, which looked really peaceful, and I found some new sheep variants. Look at these sheep. These are really interesting. These are a lot different. Are they blinking? They're blinking. No way. And look at this. This is really interesting. I then found this abandoned house and on the inside, it was exactly that. There didn't seem to be any loot here. I then ran into this. Hello, is this like a village? <gasps> oh, it's a pillager encampment, isn't it? Okay, now this is a bit dangerous. If I approach it quite carefully though, I might be able to do something. We got a pumpkin farm. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try to sneak up on these guys. I only see one on the map. Oh, he's definitely not friendly. I'll tell you that much. Let me just bone back. Oh my goodness. Get away from me. Okay, the water is definitely going to help me. Got him. Is there a spawner here? Let me break that. I don't know. I don't see a spawner. Might have only been one guy. There was just a bunch of bread and wheat here. Nothing else. That is until I looted the top chest that had an iron sword with unbreaking one and comb cutter, which essentially lets you mine bee-related things faster. As I continued venturing forward, I ran into these ruins, which didn't seem to have anything within them. And soon I found a little village, which was nice to see and explored around it for a bit. I found this thing, which spouted out what seemed to be XP particles. And when I picked it up, it turned out to be an enchanted basin that gives villagers the occultist profession. I found a waystone down on the mountainside, which was great because it gave me a link back to my home. And moving onwards, I found a couple of interesting things. Hello, oh, look at this elephant. Look at that. Look at its trunk. It has it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. These guys, hello. Whoa, these guys are crazy. Hi, <laughs> they're making little trunk noises. Okay, what do we got in here? Oh, aerial affinity. Oh, okay, bones, that's all good. I just equipped something? What did I just do? Where did that book go? Oh, I placed it down. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. I continued looting the rest of this abandoned building and it ended up being a church. I went inside and the chest at the front gave me an efficiency four book, which was a really good find at this stage of my world. As I left the church, I found more animals. Look at that. Holy, these are so cool. Oh man, all these animals are so cool. Unbelievable. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, can I pick you up? Oh, I can't pick you up. Hello. <gasps> it's lines. I probably should not get close to those. They may kill me very quickly. Oh man, look at that. They look pretty friendly, but I don't trust those faces. Oh, I almost fell into that. Okay, we're gonna continue chugging along here. I found another village after that, which I gladly marked the waystone of. There was also a bunch of haystacks to collect. On the next day, I found another one of these abandoned church buildings, and the loot on the inside did not disappoint because I got an item called a bundle, which lets you store items inside of it, and my inventory was packed, so this was great to have. I found a ruined portal in the distance, and it had some okay golden loot on the inside. I soon found another village, and this one was a bit different. This village was interesting, to say the least. Yes, electricity, hello. Wait, can I pick this up? <gasps> oh, that counted as me hitting it. Oh, it's alive. Oh, okay, wait, I feel like... Oh, the alchemist. Oh, this guy monitors this stuff. I'm gonna steal your soul. I'm gonna steal your netherware and your soul sand, my friend. Alchemist table, that's cool. Just candles. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> it's a mini iron golem. Advanced emergency machine. Okay, I won't be I won't be messing with that. I left content and found another ruined portal that was bigger this time. I got the golden blocks here, or at least one of them, and continued onward. I was too tempted to get close up to the lions this time and 
I found out that they were friendly, they didn't attack me at all. After that, I used my waystone to teleport home, and used the wrong teleport at first, but tele figured it out afterwards. I returned home successfully, dropped off all my loot, and the next step was to build a house. I began by leveling out all of the ground on the main island. There wasn't too much clearing I had to do, but I did make a diamond shovel because it was inexpensive and would be worth it in the long run. Soon, I finished clearing everything out, and the island was looking smooth. I then chopped down a couple of trees that were too close to the center and I decided I would keep the rest of the trees bordering the island because it gave it a cool secluded feeling. Now mobs were spawning all around the island so I knew that I needed to light all of the island up. While doing so I found this block that looked like a liquid but it was actually just silt that had been rained on so it turned muddy. I also found fireflies flying around which was beautiful and I slept the night off before any more mobs could spawn. I woke up to a zombie trying to kill me, which wasn't the most pleasant way to start a day, but I defeated it. I lit up more of the island in the sunlight and then got sidetracked by a miracle. Oh, it's a rainbow. Are you kidding me? No way. It's a rainbow. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Hold on. Oh yeah. Let me get a screenshot with that. Is it gone already? Oh, Rainbow's already gone. Well, that was fun. I finished lighting the area up and it was now ready to start building. First, I needed to figure out which blocks I wanted to use, which I thought about for a bit. While looking around for inspiration, I figured that I could mix birch and eucalyptus wood together to make a unique and beautiful house. That way I could easily gather the resources for it and it would fit into its surroundings. With that decision made, I got to chopping trees. Interestingly, breaking into the inside of the eucalyptus tree gave me a different texture of wood. Towards the top, I did find the normal log texture though, so that was good. While I was chopping more trees on the next day, I ran into this. Look at that. Hello. Are you kidding me? That was like a, that's like a Trojan horse. That's what just happened. They can float over water? What is happening? I was ambushed by the skeleton horsemen. All of these guys fell into the water, which made it easier to survive and isolate them one by one. One of the skeletons got isolated outside of the water, and with some crit hits, I was able to take it out. It dropped a protection one helmet, which I equipped, and then moved on to fighting the second horseman. As long as I kept my shield up, I stayed safe, and with a couple of hits, I was able to take it out. It also dropped a protection one helmet, so I would be able to combine this with my other helmet later. With that, I approached the final horseman and took him out. I kept the undead horses alive because I would be able to tame them later. I crafted an anvil and using that, I put efficiency four on my axe, combined my two protection one helmets and repaired it. I also put sharpness two on my unbreaking sword. With all of that done, I got back to chopping trees and on day 12, I was ready to start working on the house. I began by building the outline pillars with birch logs and I then started working on building a ground level outline. However, I was struggling with the eucalyptus logs I had gotten. This stuff was placing completely randomly and I did not like it. I was able to make it look nicer on the outside and then I came to the decision to strip all of the logs, which I actually really, really liked and decided I would keep. I was then clearing out my inventory when I made a little friend. Oh, hello, duck. You like bread? Yes, you do. <gasps> Is it my pet now? No. Wait, can I make it sit? Cuteness overload. Indeed. Wait, I can't make it sit. I can pet it though. Aw. Oh. <laughs> that was really cute. I didn't have a name tag, so I couldn't name it, but I knew I made a friend in this world. Now, I needed more iron to repair my axe, so I decided I would go adventuring in search of resources. Before that, though, I noticed that I had some quest rewards, which I collected, and one of them was this charged ender pearl. This thing was crazy. Later on, I even ended up putting it away because I want to know your guys' opinion on if I should even have something like this in the series. So please do let me know based off what you see. Anyways, I continued on to begin my search. The charged ender pearl made it much easier to travel at a quick rate, and I didn't take damage upon falling. On the next day, I found this little structure, which I approached, and there seemed to just be a spawner in here and nothing else. While I was checking that out, I right-clicked a stone brick by accident, 
and it cracked it while dropping an individual stone brick, which was unexpected. I dug down and there wasn't anything underneath, so I decided to break the spawner and continue on my way. While I continued venturing on, I saw these huge, huge spruce trees that looked crazy. I soon approached another one of these spawner structures, which I decided not to break for now and mark the coordinates of. I also ran into these purple trees in a biome called the Jacaranda Forest. I broke off a log from a tree and checked out what its planks looked like, and they had a very brick-like texture. As I ran through a snowy biome, I started getting affected by the cold, and my hearts were freezing up. This was not something I expected to face at all, and rushed to get out of the cold weather. With that, I started warming up for the time being, and I was safe for now. Soon, I came up to this structure. This is looking like it's some dungeon. Look at that, that's so cool. Look at that orange mushroom. We all lift together, advancement made. Okay, this guy has a shovel. Let's see how fighting him goes. Okay, not bad. My shield's almost broken, I just realized, but... Oh, and I'm getting attacked from behind, which is not good. Okay, hold on. We gotta be careful here. These guys take uh, a lot of damage and do not die. As I made my way further into this mysterious mushroom-filled building, I was met with skeletons. These guys were not normal, however, as they were in full armor and had little mushrooms on top of their heads, which was pretty funny. I was able to take them out though and wanted to adventure further, however, my shield was extremely close to breaking and I knew that progressing without a shield would be very dangerous. So I headed out in search of a place to mine when I ran into this guy. Hello? Hello? Are you running away? for me. Aw, look at this guy. Hi, I'm not gonna kill you, buddy. We're friends, okay? I'd feed you if you'd like to eat something that I had, like a golden apple. You want this? The deer did not want my golden apple. I looted the ruined portal, and it gave me enough iron to make a shield. With that, I had newfound confidence in approaching this building, which I definitely shouldn't have had. I slept off the night to make things a bit safer for me, but right on the next day, I was attacked by a baby zombie. Baby zombies are my nightmare. I was doing really good until I got attacked from behind and my hearts dropped to two. Oh my goodness. Run, run. Okay, I'm not adventuring. I'm done. Yeah, there was no way I was going back there until I had better gear. I decided I would go mining, so I began digging down. I was able to find a cave opening soon enough and carefully ender pearled down. The cavern was not safe at all, but I was able to use the water near me to my advantage and took out the mobs slowly. Things got pretty dangerous when I was approached by a baby spider and a skeleton, so I was forced to ender pearl away from them. I searched for a new cave system that would be a bit safer. I managed to find one and got to my mining ores. I ran into a goblin trader while down here who actually had some really good trades like an emerald for an ender pearl and raw iron for two iron ingots which was really good and landed me 36 iron ingots easy as that. I continued mining getting all kinds of ores into the following day however I was still struggling to find any diamonds. Finally towards the end of day 15 I found a small patch which I was really happy about but still I had a lot of work to do. I ran into Skulk, but a warden was not something I was ready to face, so I remained extremely careful. On the next day, I entered a little underwater cave section, and I found some diamonds. It turns out that these underwater caves have a lot of ores in them, so moving forward, I realized I should always enter them. Eventually, I returned to the surface, only with five diamonds in hand, but I did manage to get a bunch of other ores. I saw these cherim blossom trees right away, which made for a beautiful beautiful forest. While getting back home, I ran into these friendly creatures. <gasps> it's giraffes. Oh my goodness. Hi guys. Hi. Oh, you're so cool. Hi. <laughs> It's so funny. Look at its long neck. Hello, buddy. <laughs> I was very happy to have found giraffes. I ended up finding a rhino, which I thought could be the desert rhino that I needed to defeat as a part of my quest line. I turned on my tool tip, and when I looked at it, it seemed to just be a regular rhino. To make sure that I wasn't missing out on my quest, however, I defeated it 
and it unfortunately turned out just to be a regular rhino. May it rest in peace. As I continued adventuring, I ended up running into this. Whoa, whoa, look at this. Is this all a cave? Oh my goodness. This is a cave opening. Whoa, that's so cool. Oh, that is unbelievable. Look at this. It's like I found the crater of the earth. This would be a really, really cool base. Take a screenshot of that. I had found an incredible, incredible, Incredible cave and I marked down the coordinates in case I wanted to make it into a project later on. I would be glad to see any suggestions from you guys as to what I could do with it so make sure to leave your comments below. I soon found a village which was great because I could use a waystone to teleport back home. It was very nice to be back in my home sweet home. By this point I had collected four pieces of obsidian so I crafted an enchanting table and enchanted all of my gear with level one enchants just to become a little bit stronger. I set all of my iron to smelt and after that got back to work on the house. I noticed that the eucalyptus logs I was using looked weird on the inside. Using a different variant however I was able to make it look the same all over. Something that I didn't mention is whenever I would strip the logs I got pieces of bark which can be used to make paper so that was a cool little addition. I created a little outline at the front of the base which I filled in with eucalyptus logs and it looked really cool. I then spent more time chopping trees down and from what I realized the normal eucalyptus logs were at the top of the tree only. I bone wheeled another one of these and quickly learned that these four wide trees will always have the weird log type in the middle of them so I would not want to mine them anymore. I also broke my uh, efficiency four axe. I saw it coming. Anyways I made a new one and then I continued chopping down eucalyptus wood into the next day but this time bone mealed the trees in a row so that they would only have the regular logs. This this worked perfectly and with a row of trees broken I was ready to get back to outlining the base. I stripped all of the logs and made a diamond axe while doing so because I knew I would have a lot more chopping to do. You guys can't get mad at me okay I was just trying to finish this home faster. The outline was looking pretty good. I would need to add height and different variations to the size of the walls but I liked the colors and the configuration of the house so far. I added in a little window frame and started building up the walls. I decided to fill in the walls with birch planks which worked really well. For the side walls, I decided I would fully fill them in with eucalyptus logs and figured this would add some nice variation to the build. I then had the idea to strip all of the logs, which was actually perfect because it made them look a lot simpler and the walls fit very well with each other. Because a lot of the eucalyptus wood I collected was unusable, I had to go back to farming more of it up. I know, I know, jumping a lot between collecting resources and building, but I did not know that I would need this many materials to work on this house. Eventually I got back to building and I added a little pop out square to the side of the base. This would give the base more variety and I could turn this room into something unique. I continued my work on the walls and came out with a very nice layout. There was still a lot of work to do, but I was happy with the progress I had made. I turned all of the weird looking logs into planks, which I would need, and I ended up making changes to one of the walls in which I removed the eucalyptus and replaced it with birch planks because that way it felt a lot more balanced. Balanced. I took out the bottom outline as well, which was just eucalyptus logs, and changed it to fit the block it was under. After that, I was back to chopping down more trees. Yeah, I could probably get better at planning builds. I awoke on day 23 to a rainbow, which was a nice sight, and continued on with my work cutting down trees. I finished up the additional box I added, and then added a rectangle to another side of the base, which I was planning to just add as another section of the house, but then came to the idea of making it a little garden area. I had a lot more to play around with on the outside of the house, but I took a pause on that for now and started working on the flooring of the first level. I dug out all of the grass on the inside and then had the job of filling everything in. I started out by building an outline of rainbow eucalyptus planks. I really liked how this looked and I think it fit really well with the rest of the base. Now I needed to figure out what to fill this in with. My first attempt was to try regular stone. Of course, this did not fit very well, so I did some searching for something else. 
I found that there were these cobblestone bricks, which I thought were perfect. I crafted them up and placed them down. And while I could see these bricks working with the rest of the base, I didn't really think they fit the vibe of it because they were a bit too solid looking. The next block I found out about was this stuff called Rocky Stone, which is created by mixing stone and cobblestone. And I was able to make a lot of this stuff and fill in a decent chunk of the base. And the rock stone looked pretty good. It was a lighter shade, making it fit in with the birch and eucalyptus. I decided I would use it, so I needed to get more stone and cobblestone and headed out to go mining. I decided I would use this as a chance to make a little mine shaft for myself. And so I continued mining a two wide staircase downwards. There were a lot of different block variations I kept running into while doing this, which made it a bit harder to consistently get stone, but never Nevertheless, by the next day, I had all of the stone and cobblestone I needed to create a bunch of rocky stone and filled in the flooring. I built up a staircase to what would be the second floor and filled in the ceiling with eucalyptus slabs. I then outlined the floor for the second level and from there I would be ready to begin working on another floor. Before that though, I decided that it was time to pursue getting better gear, resources, and tools so I could get things done faster. I enchanted all of my gear, crafted some arrows, and put them into the this quiver that I had gotten from a skeleton I had defeated before, and this item just lets you easily store all of your arrows in one slot. Now on the topic of inventory space, I wanted to craft a backpack. For that, I needed leather, so I headed out and hunted some cows, even though I didn't want to. And with eight leather, I was able to create a backpack. I then turned it into a plated backpack with iron and a gilded backpack with gold. The next level was a bejeweled backpack, but I would need to wait to have enough materials to craft that. I opened it using the keybind B, and it gave me three more rows of inventory. I was now ready to go adventuring. I soon came across an illager encampment, and using my Ender Pearl, I was able to teleport to the top of it pretty quickly. From there, I had to be very careful with these pillagers and hold my shield up constantly. I was able to approach them and take them down one by one, and soon enough, I had cleared out the entire encampment. The chest at the top was filled with some basic loot, and with that looted, I headed out. I soon ran into this very strange biome called the White Mangrove Marshes. Getting through here was very difficult because it was just filled with trees, water, and vines, and the trees were were very large. Eventually I got out of here and ran through the alum fields biome in which I saw this little tower. I might have the cobblestone below it to see if I could find anything underneath, but there didn't seem to be anything there. So I ended pearled up to the top of the tower and here I found some living supplies and a chest full of potatoes. There wasn't much else, so I headed out and I ran through a biome called the prairie, which was filled with crops that looked like wheat. As I was traveling, I saw this interesting beach area on the map. It seemed to be completely secluded by mountains, so I ender pearled up, and on the inside, I found this little tropical pond that was completely isolated from everything around it. I figure that in the future, I can definitely build some type of getaway resort up here. So let me know what you guys think, and if you guys have any suggestions. As I went over to the other side of the mountain, however, I found this. Look at those. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we got some enemies around here. This is definitely not a safe place. People are strange. Find an illager campsite. Whoa, this is really, really cool. Let's see what's going on here. I like your guys' choice of color. Oh my goodness. I fought the pillagers from this little spot that I had dug out for myself and it worked really well. After I cleared everyone out, I made my way inside by breaking a skeleton head, which wasn't very assuring, but the chest on the inside had some pretty good loot, including enchanted gear and a fire aspect one sword. I headed back outside and there was definitely no shortage of pillagers here. I found some gold ore lying around and a crate that had a bunch of farm supplies. I looted the chest inside Side, and this one also had enchanted iron gear, as well as the Encyclopedia of Eden, which is a guidebook for a new dimension in this mod pack called Eden Ring. That's a place I would definitely like to visit and conquer in the future. Making my way outside, I was approached by a ton more pillagers, which were harder to handle because they weren't contained. They ended up shooting each other a lot though, so I was able to come down and take the rest of them out easily. I found some more farm loot in barrels and found a protect 
Section 2 Respiration 1 Helmet in a chest, which was perfect because mine was running really low on durability and I needed a new one. I continued progressing through the camp and down low I noticed that there were Vindicators, which were a lot more dangerous, so I took them out from a range. There were a lot more Pillagers and I mistakenly got hit down to them, which was extremely dangerous. Fortunately though, I was able to run off and Ender Pearl back up. However, I ended up getting knocked down again, so I had to make a run for it. Moving forward, I took out each pillager that came my way. It was definitely close, but I was mostly prepared for anything they would throw at me. Underneath the hill, I found this little campfire section in the dark, which was cool, and I used one of the anvils here to combine my fire aspect and sharpness swords together. I also found this chest with campfires and blocks of coal around it, which was pretty nice, and the loot of the chest itself was similar to the other chests in the camp. I found protection two leggings, which I I gladly took. I also checked out the buffalo looking cows, which turned out to be friendly, which I didn't think there would be. And there was a zombie villager locked in a cage here, but uh, I didn't really want to deal with transforming it. With that, I was done looting the pillager camp and headed out. I found these little cute onion looking things that were jumping around, and I thought they were very funny. Moving forward, I found this interesting tent and I approached the inside. It seemed to be really safe. In fact, the chest inside was packed with ores and it had an enchanted golden moss clump, which seemed to be similar to an enchanted golden apple. It also contained a globe, which is a cool little collector's item you can rarely find in this mod pack. There wasn't much else here, so I headed out, but I was very happy with that find. I then ran into this cabin in the woods, which was a great find, but I unfortunately started a raid because I had the bad omen effect. As I made my way inside, I ended up getting attacked by an illusioner. Fighting the illusioner was very confusing, but I was able to set it on fire, and with that, I took it down. While the next wave of the raid spawned, I quickly headed inside of the house, and the chest there had a power three flame one bow. I headed up the stairs that led to the attic, and the barrels here gave me some emeralds and books. With all that looted, I headed back out, and as I tried to leave, I was attacked by the raid. But running and jumping, I was able to get away. I was not having any shortage of exploration because soon enough, I found this interesting wooden structure. It turned out to essentially be a jungle temple. So I broke into the secret compartment that was on the other side of the wall and the chest inside gave me a bunch of iron, gold, and diamond horse armor. The other chest gave me a diamond, a protection three book, and more diamond horse armor, as well as iron. On the other side of the temple, I figured there would be another chest, so I broke through the wooden minecart, and sure enough, on the other side, there was a chest with a dispenser over top of it, which I broke, and the chest gave me more gold and iron. With that, I headed out of the temple. I found a hot air balloon in the sky, which I was hesitant to go up to at first, but my curiosity got the best of me and I couldn't help myself but to go up. And when I got to the top, which took me over a stack of blocks, I was not disappointed. I've made it. Oh, oh, wait, this is actually pretty good stuff. Sharpness three, protection three. I mean, that already made it pretty worth it. So that was good. Boop, pearl back down. I continued traveling and soon ran into this. Oh, okay. I, f I have found a building. What is this? Okay, okay, okay. Finally, I found something. Oh my god, look at this. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. That's amazing. I was very close to running out of food with four bread remaining, so I had to go hunting some animals, which I didn't really want to do, but it had to be done. I replaced all of my gear with fresh pieces and ran towards the mysterious structure. I got the achievement, the lighthouse. I slowly made my way inside and up a ladder and came up to a floor that had a lot of bookshelves, which I mined up, but seemingly nothing more. As I went up the ladder to the next floor, I found a room that had a bunch of note blocks as well as a furnace. After looking around here, I went up the stairs to the next level, still cautious of potential monsters, where I found a chest with some measly loot. There was one more ladder that I went up and here, there was a bunch of redstone. I pressed a button that was on the ground and it started lighting up all of the redstone lamps around me. I found an opening to a balcony and watched as 
the lights carried around in a circle. I then enter Pearl down and watch the tower in all of its glory from a distance. It was very cool. I continued onwards and found another one of these watchtowers, which I looted, and got a few emeralds from it. I then ran into these glowing trees, which I had grown in our garden in the first Better Minecraft series. I got the saplings from both trees because they were a rare find. And this took a while, actually. I ran through this biome that definitely looks like it belonged in the nether, and I also ran into these little red birds that were really cute. I soon ran into a village and realized that adventuring most definitely didn't bring me that much loot. However, it was a lot of fun and was only a glimpse of what this mod pack had to offer. I headed for home, but as I was on my way, I ran into these signs. Tracing the signs' directions, I realized that I had passed by a jungle temple earlier on, so I headed over and went inside. But I soon ran into a spawner and didn't have any torches, so I decided I would return later. I got back home and cleared out my inventory. I placed down my globe, which is a really nice item. But to make it even more rare and unique, I combined it with the antique ink I had gotten from one of the jars in the caves, and I got this sepia globe, which was completely decolored and a bit strange, but I liked it because of how uncommon it was. I headed back to the temple, and with torches, was now confident in exploring it. I broke the spawner at the bottom and slowly lurked through the halls, within which I instantly found a tripwire trap, which I fortunately didn't fall for. As I made my way up some stairs, I found another spawner which I broke and then saw this button. I didn't trust it, however, so I dug into the wall and ended up tracing the redstone that led up to it. I discovered more parts of the temple as I was doing this and got jump scared by a husk while doing this. Eventually, I found this piston door and when I went to the other side of it, I found a bunker with two double chests covered in water. I was very cautious and figured these were trapped, but they didn't have anything around them. With that, I was safe to loot them and the first chest gave me a bunch of gold, but the second one, which it looks like I'm the one who filled it up, but I didn't, uh, had an enchanted golden moss clump, as well as a heart of the sea, both of which were great finds. I checked around to see if this temple had any other loot, but other than a chest with some basic loot, there was nothing else here. I headed back home and I, uh... I got back to chopping trees again. I then went back to mining from days 35 to 37, and I did have some luck. In fact, I found a vein of 11 diamonds in an underwater cave. This is why you should definitely explore these whenever you can. I ended up finding a spawner as well and found a golden apple here. I then found this ore, which I couldn't break with my iron pickaxe, and given that I had 11 newfound diamonds, I figured I would make a diamond pickaxe since I needed one anyways. Even this, however, did not allow me to break the ore, and I believe it was an ore called salt ore, which I didn't really need at this time anyways, so I moved on. I found another three diamonds, which compensated me right back, and on the next day, a skeleton that I defeated dropped this soul star, which can be used to summon a boss in the future. I was happy with the mining I had done over the last few days, so I headed back up to the surface. When I got back home, I decided I would make a level 30 enchanting table, and the thing is that it perfectly fit into the little quadrant that I added to the side of the house. With the table built, I socketed in my pickaxe to see what I could get, and it was fortune too. Not that bad, but I ended up also getting efficiency four and unbreaking three on it, which was just the perfect first enchantment. With that done, I got back to working on the base, and I filled in the floor on the second level. I then started building up the walls to the second level and started filling them in from there. I kept the design the same as it was in the first half, and as I was looking at my inventory, I noticed that there was a season's calendar which showed what season it was. So it was good to know that there are seasons in this mod pack. Hopefully it wouldn't affect my house. I continued with my work which was a very long process and this continued into the night. I took the darkness as a chance to light the house up and more of the island as well. I needed more bones for bone meal so I hunted for skeletons. I continued hunting all throughout the night into the morning of the next day. With that, guess what I did. Yep, I got back to chopping trees. I continued this throughout most of the day and then got back to building. Building continued into day 40, and once I was done with the walls of the second floor, I added this new rectangular section to the base. I finished the framework of the build, and there was a tree right next to it, so I purled up to it and took it down. I didn't like the design that I came out with at first, but I then stripped the logs, and I was more so okay with this result. I started adding a layer of eucalyptus slabs to see what it 
it would look like. I liked how it was looking, but the base itself was looking a bit flat and didn't have dimension to it. So I needed to figure that out. I came to the idea of literally cutting out one of the corners of the house and that's what I ended up doing. I added a new pillar and then removed the section of the wall that was in front of it. Once I was done with that, I added slabs around the edges and then started thinking about what I wanted to fill the inner walls in with. I settled on glass and more particularly purple stained glass. I also changed out the flooring here to birch planks, which I think looked a lot better. I went out and collected sand, which carried on into day 42. I smelted all the sand up and while that was in the works, I wanted to get purple dye. I quickly learned that the flower hours outside of my base did not provide any, so my plan was to head to the pillager camp site we found earlier and get purple dye there. While traveling, I ended up finding these amaranth fields, which contained a lot of flowers, including purple amaranths, and this was exactly what I needed. I made sure to feed and pet another duck when I returned home because it was a must, and then I crafted my purple stained glass. I transformed it into panes and got to filling the walls in. I topped them off with slabs and this corner section was really, really good. It added a lot of dimension to the base. I also got the idea to pop out the left side of the front by one, and I followed through with it. So I broke out this side, which was sad, but it had to be done. And then I started building the wall up, which took some work and went well. But uh, my computer ended up crashing and I lost footage all the way until day 47. Yeah. I was pretty sad about that, but you guys didn't miss too much. I ended up popping the wall out and it looked great. I don't know why I didn't show more of it here, but you'll see it more later. Anyways, the new segment I had been working on was the garden. Now, I don't want to talk about it, okay? It was not going great. I had bone mealed the crops and added some flowers and played around with adding purple leaves as well as windows to the wall. I was still trying to figure it out. I added slabs to the top of the windows and removed most of the leaves, but it still looked strange. Until until I came to a realization. Kind of looks like eyes. Huh. What if I just emulate my face? I don't know, it's not the worst idea. If I just put a nose here? This was an interesting idea, and you know what? I liked it. I took out some soapstone for my nose, and for my eyes, I needed yellow, orange, and white dye. I collected the dyes I needed and crafted stained glass. While doing so, I found out you can craft aquariums. That's so nice, you can probably put fish in there. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> this was a really nice feature. I really, really liked it. I added a nose with the soapstone, which looked okay. I switched out the glass to make it look like my eyes, and once I was done doing that, I could definitely find similarities to my character. I mean, look at this. That's that's pretty good. I added purple leaves to the wall again and had to farm another one of these jacaranda trees, which it's actually good I did because this time I can show you what that process looked like. Once I had enough leaves, I tried to emulate the rest of my face and filled it in some more, and this is what I came out with. You know what? It's not a pecan Picasso painting, but at least it was unique and I put in the effort. I am glad I made this. If you guys have any suggestions, please have some suggestions. Uh, leave them in the comments below. Also, if you want to make your own version of this and share it, feel free to join my Discord server. The link's in the description and you can share your builds there. Now I wanted to do some base work on the inside and the first thing I wanted to make was a storage room. I really, really needed one. I started out by clearing a section of the rocky flooring and replacing it with eucalyptus. From there, I crafted a bunch of chests and found a configuration that worked well within the space. I stacked more chests on top of the ones I had placed, and with that done, I had to spend some time moving my current chests over so that I would have space to finish working on my storage area. Now that I had everything cleared out and the chests placed down for the storage room, I thought about how I wanted to proceed. I placed some eucalyptus stairs going up because I figured I could build a second level. I then placed the ceiling, or also the floor, for the next layer using birch slabs. And guess what, everyone? After that, I chopped down more trees because I was out of wood again. Yeah, I know, you guys love it. Things went a bit wrong, however, when I broke a beehive. Uh, yeah, I got stung and it was not pleasant. I had to defeat the perpetrating bees and then I got back chopping trees again. This continued on for the next 10 days. No, I'm kidding. Fortunately, by the morning of the next day, I was done with that. 
for now at least. I got back to working on the storage. The first thing I did was place birch pillars and I also added stairs to the other side of the storage. I was trying to figure out what block I wanted to use to cover the wall here. I tried using birch logs and then stripped them and you know what, it looked pretty good actually. I added a layer of stairs bordering the chests and it was looking smooth. I then added mini pillars of birch logs to separate out each double chest and that was looking really great. Then I added two layers of double chests on the second floor of the storage. I was adding eucalyptus pillars between the chests and then decided to move the chest back one so that I would have more space here. This was definitely a good decision. It felt a lot less cramped. I changed the birch logs into eucalyptus logs, which made the storage look more interesting. I then looked to see if there was a big sign variant in this mod pack and sure enough you could craft a hanging sign so I did exactly that and placed it on the side of the pillar and right after I accidentally placed my sword inside which it was really cool to know that you can place items in these as well. Anyways I typed Suev's amazing storage here which I dyed purple and added a glow to. It was looking good except it was a bit hard to see unless I zoomed in, but you know what? That's a problem I'm not gonna worry about. The next thing I did was craft some lanterns and use these to light up areas around the base. These make things look a lot nicer. Now with all that done, it was time to organize. I wanted to use item frames to categorize the chests and I needed more leather. So I had to go out hunting some animals, which is never very fun. And you know what? I should probably build some farms up in a future episode. Once I was done with all that, I crafted up some item frames and placed them all along the pillars. I then began working on organizing everything. This was a pretty long process and I did my due diligence with sorting items to their designated chests. And I gotta tell ya, it felt good. Once I was done all this, which took me till day 55 to complete, I wanted to do more work on the inside of the base to make my day-to-day -day living in this world easier. Before that, looking around, I, I felt like something needed to change. More specifically, the floor. While the rocky stone did its part, I felt that changing it to birch planks would look better and fit more nicely within the theme. I've gotta say, I was liking the new look a lot more. I started working on my bedroom. I placed two beds. I added a bedside table as well, and and placed my globe and aquarium on it. I added a temporary section with an anvil and crafting table, which I work more on later. I combined the two Protection 2 helmets I had to create a Protection 3 helmet and repaired all of my gear. And with everything done, I wanted to head into the nether to start adventuring. I started mining out to find lava so that I could get obsidian. And while doing so, a goblin trader approached me. This guy had a plethora of amazing deals, including doubling iron, increasing copper, cobblestone for emeralds and one emerald for eight sponges, all of which I took. I found a cave eventually, which I made my way down into. I was struggling to find an actual pool of lava here, but eventually managed and scooped up some obsidian. And with that done, I ventured around the cave to see if I could find any more diamonds. While I was looking for those, this crazy thing happened. Emeralds. 61 emeralds? Holy moly. That's in. Wait, I just got 60 emeralds from that. I got 60 emerald i love these vases whatever mod adds them i'm in love yeah that was an insane find i was not expecting this luck at all. I returned home in the night, which looked amazing. I placed another portal on this island beside my house, which would hopefully prevent any chance of it causing my house to burn down somehow. I was a bit scared to head into the nether because I didn't have full diamond, I'm not gonna lie. My spawn was a mixed bag. On one end, I was surrounded with lava right off the bat, but on the other hand, I spawned right next to another fortress, which was really nice. The nether in this mod pack was looking crazy. I decided I would build a little safety box, so I headed back to my house and grabbed more blocks to build it out with. I then built a small cube around the nether portal and that way I would be a lot safer when getting in and out of this dimension. Once I was done with that, I was ready to adventure further. Still though, I needed to be very careful. I soon approached my first blaze, which I was able to take down using my shield. Instantly, I was attacked by a wither skeleton, but using my overpowered power three flame one bow, I took it out quickly. Things slowly started heating up as more blazes attacked me uh, and I found this nether by I am really, really difficult to navigate. Look at this stuff. Vines, mushrooms, lava, no shortage of things blocking your path. And I did not trust myself in the nether yet. So I decided I would head back for now. Don't worry though, I, I returned later 
and it ends up being one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do. I checked out my quest rewards and I got this lingering potion of fire resistance. I also looked at the quests I had to do and the first one was to defeat a shaman which are found in swamps. I searched my map for swamps and found a place that looked like it contained one so I headed towards it. This was a long trip and as I traveled I kept my eyes out for the other bosses I needed to defeat for my quest line which can be found in some other biomes. As I was traveling I found these crazy looking trees that I had never seen before. I chopped a log down and this stuff was called witch hazel. I checked out what the planks looked like and they looked really nice. I loved this tree and uh, instantly made sure to get a sapling so I could use it for a future build. I admired the beautiful sunset in front of me and then saw something really interesting which was a little skull on a mountainside. I came closer and I don't think that this generation was on accident because it looked very much like a skull and I don't think Minecraft can normally generate that type of thing. On the inside there was even a lava stream flowing which was just a perfect fit. I was attacked by a baby frozen zombie which wasn't the best experience but I took it down so take that baby zombie and I then found this thing which honestly very weird looking animal very weird if this exists in real life please let me know because um yeah I have no words I found this interesting looking zombie with a spear that was like an ice man so that was pretty cool and as I was running I noticed how beautiful the sky looked this pack uses complementary shaders and they're really nice. I ended up running into another one of these illusioner cabins, which I found a power to and breaking bow inside and some night vision potions. The attic had leather and emeralds, so I looted those as well. I defeated the illusioner, which if you think about it, I came into this guy's home, robbed him, defeated him, and then ran away. Yeah, not not the best look for me. I mean, you could also look at it as I'm fighting off villains. That's definitely what happened. Did I then randomly come to the conclusion that I want to go mining for emeralds? Absolutely. Never let anybody predict your next move. So I dug right down and uh, I found an amethyst cluster, which usually I wouldn't care too much about. But uh, in this mod pack, I needed to defeat a crystal golem for my quest line. So I needed to get lucky and have one spawn inside. I continued mining and as I did, uh, a goblin trader fell right into lava. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little guy. I eventually found a cave, and I did in fact find an individual diamond, which I turned into three thanks to my fortune too. I then found these weird looking things, which were shards, and it turns out they can be turned into cryo marble, which can then be combined with iron gear to upgrade it. So this was uh, pretty cool stuff. I found a couple more diamonds, which got me to nine. And soon after, I found some icicles hanging from the ceiling, which was, was kind of scary. I swam through a frozen lake, which could have made me freeze to death according to my hearts, but I ended up being okay. And I then mined into the sewage system, which was interesting. It had skulls lying around, which wasn't the most comforting thing, but I didn't really end up finding anything here, so I headed out. I found more of the cryo marble shards and then a few more veins of diamonds. I got attacked by a lot of monsters, including this miner zombie that kind of scared me. I got a total of 25 diamonds and with that headed for the surface. I headed home and as I was running about, I found a woodland mansion, which is a very important place for me as you'll see later. But at this time, I most definitely was not ready to explore it. I soon found a village and used the waystone here to teleport home. As I returned, I saw my beautiful, fabulous, fantastic self-portrait, which I just loved. <laughs> uh, it felt good to be back home with a, with a storage system, may I add. <laughs> Anyways, uh, with my newly collected diamonds, I finally crafted a full set of diamond gear. I enchanted my shovel and sword, both of which got pretty decent enchantments. Now at this point, I decided I would redesign my bedroom because that part of the house wasn't looking as great as I'd like it to. I also wanted to set up some more useful things on the ground level of my base. I started with a smeltery, which I actually really needed. I set up a wall of furnaces, added birch logs to the sides, and also added a crafting bench and anvil. I added the bedroom to the corner and everything fit really well. I had extra space above the furnaces, so I added a second layer for any other utilities I would want to place. I needed food, so I used my smeltery for the first time and smelted up some raw cod. While I waited for that to smelt, I headed out to do more lumberjacking, but as I did, I noticed the color of the leaves here was changing, so that was very cool. With more wood, I was able to finish up the second layer, which looked great, and with all 
that done, I headed into the nether to adventure. I was much more confident now that I had diamond gear. While doing that though, I fell straight into a hidden pocket of lava and I could not get out. I had to use an enchanted moss clump and it fortunately saved me. I started adventuring anyways and this biome was really hard to get out of. The overview of this place looked crazy crazy and i found this really interesting looking tree which i built to it was called an anchor tree and was green on the inside which was unexpected i then mined this yellow looking mushroom block and it gave me a glowstone pile which could then be used to make glowstone dust which can then be used to make glowstone so i thought that was pretty funny i continued onwards and things continued to surprise me in the nether i found these things emitting smoke which were called smokers I then found a zombie pigman spawner and the chest on the inside gave me an enchanted golden apple, which was really good to have at this stage. I then saw this view, which was just amazing. Look, look at that. As I moved forward, I almost fell into lava again. I collected some logs from a willow tree and also noticed that it dropped some of these willow torches, which were actually really, really cool. I found another spawner, which had some decent loot, mainly a name tag and music discs. I was then mining when I ran right into lava and it almost killed me but i had my enchanted golden apple which saved my life lava was not being friendly to me on this trip and it was my fault after that i returned back to the fortress near my portal and ran into a blaze guardian which is an upgraded variant of the blaze and can be quite dangerous i shot at it from around the corner and while it deflected a lot of my shots some of them got through and i was able to defeat it this also completed one of my quests so that was great. I got some blaze rods and then returned back home. I collected my quest reward from defeating the blaze guardian from which I got brimstone nectar that can be used to reset nearby boss structures. In this mod pack there are a lot of bosses to defeat so this would definitely come in handy. I wanted to pursue completing more of my quests so I would keep an eye on them and I headed out to explore more of the overworld and hopefully find some larger structures. And as I was running around I found this little guy. Oh it's a baby turtle. Look at at it look at it hello hi buddy <laughs> can i pick it up can i put it in a bucket i can't it's so cute on the morning of the next day i found this pink mansion this is a really dangerous structure there were a lot of mobs i slowly took this chunk of pillagers out which had a lot of health considering i had sharpness three diamond eventually i took them out and carefully entered the building i was soon approached by one pillager which then turned into multiple which then turned into a lot from all directions this was insane to say the least i took the second group of pillagers down and progressed forwards but then all of a sudden a huge group of vindicators came down and got me down to half a heart i was practically dead here i paused the game and planned to reset which would give me a couple of seconds of invincibility upon loading in and with that i just had to pray <sighs> okay oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh there's no archers oh Oh my goodness. Blocking the Vindicators off definitely didn't go to plan, but I was barely able to block myself upwards. I carefully mined out with the Vindicators still trailing me and got away. That was an experience. If I wouldn't have gotten that charm of life from the quest reward in the beginning, I would have been dead. I soon ran into a new tower that would hopefully be a lot safer than the mansion I just faced. On the outside, I saw a couple of black wolves, which I unfortunately didn't have any bones to tame. As I when inside, this building looked fairly safe. I looted the chest in front of me and it had a golden apple, enchanted book, and coal. Another one had a bunch of emeralds and a diamond hoe, and the last one had books and paper. I made my way up a ladder and here I met a couple of villagers who were very friendly, especially given the fact that they let me loot their chests. One of the chests had a bunch of music discs, which was a pretty cool find actually, and I also snagged the paintings that were here. I made my way up another floor where there were a bunch of more villagers, one of which I accidentally hit. There was a bunch of hay here and I had a diamond hoe that I looted from before, so I used that to mine it up. There was a chest with some food and as I broke more hay, I uncovered a barrel with gold. I uncovered the entrance to another floor as well and this looked mostly the same. However, the barrels that I looted on this floor gave me six and then another six diamonds, which was absolutely amazing in the best loot I had gotten from any structure so far. 
that appeared to be it for this amazing house. So I headed out and made sure to cover the hole back up to protect the villagers. I found another one of these watchtowers and this one had a pretty decently sized pile of ore right beside it, which was actually a great find. I made my way through a Coco Nino meadow biome. I was then running through this forest filled with red and white trees when I came across an angry bear who I had to defeat. I thought I was good until I got approached by another one all of a sudden, but I stayed healthy. I shortly found another one of these wooden temples and the loot on the inside was wonderful with efficiency four ores and two protection three books. I came across a mine shaft that was sticking out to the surface, but I did not want to adventure underground at the time, so I headed out. As I made my way up a frozen peak, I ran into a snow leopard. I checked to see if it was aggressive and it was friendly. I tried to feed it fish, but it didn't seem to want any. However, being near, it gave me the buff Leopard Strength 5, which boosts your speed. I did some research and found out that you can tame these guys by using mutton. I headed out to find sheep, but as I did, my game ended up crashing. When I loaded back, it only reset me back to the snow, fortunately, but it also removed my shaders, which I only noticed later on. So you guys are gonna have to deal with no shaders for now. Eventually, I got to a normal biome and I was almost frozen. Fortunately, I found this campfire structure, which I approached and it started heating me up. Once I was heated up, I broke the campfires for their coal and chopped down some wood so that I could craft a campfire myself. I hunted the mutton that I needed and once I had a decent amount, headed back to the leopard who I was able to tame. In fact, I was able to tame two of them. But as I did, I started freezing to death. Fortunately, I had the campfire that I had crafted earlier and it heated me up. What was amazing was that these leopards were actually loyal to me and followed me around. They did seem to be a bit bugged in how they did so, but they were still cool to have been found nevertheless. Now, I hit a sheep to test if they would attack it, but it didn't work. I believe they are supposed to attack mobs for you, but it's okay, I could deal with not having that. I continued running along and I found this really fascinating beach segment that looked really cool on the map and in game too. Anyways, adventuring into the next day, I found something amazing. Oh, look at that. What is this? Holy moly, holy moly. This is insane. Wow. What is that? seashell. This rock formation looked crazy and I'm really glad I ran into it. I later found a cemetery which had some secret chests hidden throughout it. The loot here was mostly basic but there were some nice items planted here and there. I found chests hidden in most graves and I got some fairly decent enchanted books from them. Once I fully looted the cemetery I made my way out. I found this cool looking house and as I approached it I found that there was a vindicator on the inside so I carefully broke in and defeated him him from range. I headed in and looted the area. One of the barrels had rabbit hide, which is actually pretty hard to get, so that was a decent find. I headed up a ladder, and there was another floor with a chest that contained some loot as well. That was about it for this house, so I headed out and ventured forward. I ended up finding a woodland mansion with a village right next to it, which was a very good find, and the mansion looked really, really interesting. I teleported using the waystone and picked up the one I usually use to get home, since I could just place it right inside of my house. And at this point, I turned my shaders back on. I named the waystone Eleonoria in honor of our season one base. And I then went to place a painting in my house when this happened. Place a painting here. Oh my goodness. I can select my painting. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Whoa, that's insane. Holy moly. Let's go with this one. And above that, we'll go for this one. That's really cool that I can do that. Wow, that's amazing. I love it. Wow. That was a really cool feature to discover. I liked it a lot. I was at level 30, so I enchanted my helmet and I got protection three. I felt that I was now ready to progress towards fighting the Ender Dragon. I needed Eyes of Ender, so I teleported out and got ready to mine underground to find Enderman. Just before I did that though, I found a ship out in the sea that intrigued me. I crafted a boat and went out to sea. And when I got into the boat, I ran into a villager and checked out the loot here that contained a lot of oceanic related things. After that, I started heading down and soon found a cave. As I was running around, I kept a close eye on my minimap for Enderman. And as I was doing that, I noticed a golem looking face within an amethyst cluster. I thought that that could be the amethyst golem I was looking for. I quickly mined my way to it. And at first it turned out that I didn't see anything, but soon enough, this happened.
I do hear... Oh, that's the golem. Okay. Oh, no. That was not supposed to happen. Okay. Mine away, mine away, mine away. It can hit me through walls. Yes, it can. Woo, wow. A skeleton and crystal golem were not a good combo. I got back up higher and through a little opening was able to defeat the amethyst golem to complete my quest. My reward was some experience. I got back to looking for Enderman and as I was, I found a spawner. I got an enchantment called Soul Reaper 3, which I tried to research but couldn't find out what it does. And also an enchanted golden apple, which was a perfect find. If anyone knows what the Soul Reaper enchantment does, please let me know in the comments. I ended up luckily finding diamonds while looking for a larger cave so that was nice and then a goblin trader spawned in with the perfect trade it gave me one ender pearl for every emerald and lucky for me i was carrying 16 emeralds in my backpack with that i had all the pearls i needed to find and activate the end portal i made my way out through the ocean and as i was heading home i saw a summoner that was stuck in a mushroom and this was perfect since i was easily able to defeat it and complete my quest. Its minions then came after me, which was a bit troublesome, but I was able to take them out. I checked the spot where I defeated the summoner, and it dropped an enchanted book, which I picked up, and it ended up being a sharpness three book. That was really good. The reward I got was a soul star, which would get me closer to being able to summon the night lich boss. Coming back home, I added some extra chests because I wanted to have a place to put my loot and not have to organize all the time. I enchanted my chest plate and leggings, both of which I got fire protection on, but it was better than nothing. I combined the sharpness three book with my sword to get sharpness four and repaired my bow as well. The next thing I wanted to do is head into the nether to mine for quartz and get levels to get better enchantments on my gear than what I had. I mined out instead of running through the typical lava covered path and came out to this beautiful view that was absolutely breathtaking. I found my first vein of quartz and got straight to mining it up. After that, I ran into a bath remnant. I entered and found a chest that didn't really have anything. I started getting chased, so I ran out and saw this stuff called the Bloodstone, which I just thought was a cool and scary looking block. I ventured onward and collected more quartz. I ended up entering another part of the nether fortress that's close to the portal, which I defeated a whole gang of wither skeletons in, and uh, some more blazes as well, which gave me blaze rods. With nine blaze rods collected, I headed for home. Upon returning, I crafted up the eye of Ender, re-enchanted my chest plate, and unfortunately just got Unbreaking 3. And I crafted more golden apples. I then remembered I had a bunch of enchanted books, so I grabbed all of them. I put Protection 3 on my chest plate, and then Protection 3 on my helmet and chest plate again to make them both Protection 4. I now had full protection other than my leggings, but that was all good. I crafted some more arrows as well, which would be very important, and I headed out. I figured I would tame one of the skeleton horses near my base to make the search faster and with that I placed a saddle on it and began my search. I realized that skeletal horses do better underwater than normal horses so that would be very useful and my eyes of ender led back in the direction of spawn. Unfortunately I ended up needing to head out to the ocean and say goodbye to our horse. I placed him in a safe hole and could come back for him at a later time. As I boated across the ocean this happened. Oh it's a stranded villager. Hey buddy. Oh no. Is this like a oh and this is just like a little raft or something. Something. Oh, hey, Cyril Bran Dimitrov. Okay, hey, buddy, I'll take you with me. How about that? Get in the boat. Perfect. Meanwhile, I'm definitely going to look inside what's inside your chest. Okay, let's go. Let's get this guy to land. I brought the villager with me as I traveled to find land. In the nighttime, I found some and tried to get the villager to stay, but he seemed to prefer the water, which was not my problem. As I traveled through the night, I began to get cold, but I placed a torch, which successfully kept me warm. I ran into another church while on my way and got a few decent things from it, including a feather falling for a book. On the next day, I got attacked by a couple of spiders and got the achievement Cobweb Entanglement, which stated I had found a spider cave. Before entering, I approached the village near me and took the waystone from it so that I could teleport home whenever I wanted. With that, I headed back to where I was and entered the spider cave. 
As I looked down, there were a lot of cave spiders in here. I know, fitting, right? I was able to take them out with my powerful bow and bridged over to this wool piece in the center of the cave. I made some shears and broke through the wool quickly to find a spawner, which I instantly broke. I progressed further through the cave and there were a lot of spiders here to fight off. I made it to a room that was pretty much identical to the one I had been to and it had a lot of spiders too, one of which almost poisoned me. I broke the spawner here, and as I progressed, I broke a couple more. I wasn't able to find any loot in here though, so I left mostly disappointed. While in the village, I found some zebras, and better yet, I found out that you can ride them. I tamed one of these guys and then teleported home, grabbed a saddle, and I had a new mount with a really cool looking saddle. I adventured forwards, and soon the Eye of Ender started taking me back from where I came, which meant that I had ran past the stronghold. I followed it backwards for a bit, and soon found where the stronghold was. I kept the zebra safe in a little hole and I should definitely return for both of our horses in the next episode. And also if you guys have two name suggestions for each of the horses, leave them in the comments below and I'll select the top rated comment. I mined down and soon ran into a cave which wasn't very promising, but I then got the achievement I spy which meant that I had found a stronghold and after mining down a few blocks, I dug straight into it. Now this was an upgraded stronghold, so it was much larger than the typical one. I spent some time exploring around and found a trap chest which had a sharpness 3 sword inside. Using my mini map, I was able to find the actual portal area. I set a waystone here and after breaking the silverfish spawner, activated the portal. With that, I headed into the end. I bridged over to the island and started mining up. As I was mining, I found this ender ore that dropped ender shards that could be used to make some eternal crystal. I, I don't know, it was some crazy looking stuff. I got up to the surface and before fighting the ender dragon, I built a little hut for myself and farmed some endermen for ender pearls. You never know when you might need these, so this was a good thing to do. They ended up uh, picking up a block and breaching my defenses as I was doing this, but I was able to repair it and take them out. Now it was time to fight the Ender Dragon. I started by shooting out all of the crystals, which didn't take me too long, and then I just had to take a bunch of shots at the Ender Dragon. Doing this was fairly manageable because I had a very powerful bow, and with a final shot, I took the Ender Dragon out. I jumped into the portal and returned home victorious. I took a look at my rewards, and one of them was a Dragon Saddle, which I looked into, and it would allow me to ride an Ender Dragon in the future. There was just a whole process you had to do with growing it as a baby and such. Maybe we can do that in a future episode. I used the extra levels to re enchant my gear, which took a few tries, but in the end I got protection 3 on my leggings, and efficiency 4 on breaking 3 axe, protection 4 boots, and now I felt like I was ready to get back to adventuring. The first place I headed was the wooden mansion, where I also found my two snow leopards. I went inside, and I had to be very, very careful. I put everything I might need on my hotbar, and I started by adventuring through some lighter rooms on the bottom, and everything was quite empty and quiet. I wasn't finding any chests or anything, but soon enough, I found the first Vindicator, which I was able to take out quickly, and as I progressed further, I found more and more of them. I looted a chest with a diamond hoe and music disc, and ran into this room with a bunch of blue will. I found this prison room, and when I broke the wall, I found alleys. There were a lot of these guys here, five in total, and I tamed all of them by giving them random items. This was a mistake because I had way too many things following me around, but uh, you know what, it is what it is. I continued making my way through the different rooms and looting chests, but my purpose of being here was really just to defeat the evokers and obtain totems of undying. With that in mind, I searched for the stairs to the second floor as I fought through Vindicators, but then something really bad happened. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What was that? How did that just happen? A bunch of Vindicators just dropped on my head and were all burning. So it seems like lava might have caused a fire in the mansion. Now that I had space on the Vindicators, I was able to take them out, but that was not something that I wanted to happen again. They continued falling from the same hole and I realized that the mansion was burning at a very fast rate. I had to stop the fire immediately if I still wanted to defeat some evokers here. And as I was building up, I faced one of them that I took out, but 
but its vex knocked me down and put me in a pretty dangerous situation. I got to clearing out the fire as soon as I could, which was not easy because I still had mobs chasing me and knocking me down. I found another evoker on the second floor that I quickly defeated, and this gave me my first totem of undying. It also dropped this Elunite shard that looked like amethyst but was different and could be used to craft some interesting items. I still needed to remove the burning, but running into mobs made it difficult. Eventually, I was able to cool everything off and defeated some more evokers. I left with a total of six totems of undying, one of which I had equipped in a slot for charms, and I was really happy with that. As I traveled through a wooded badlands biome, I saw an iguana, which was cool. And shortly after, I ran into this town that gave me the achievement Ye Haunted, which said I had entered a ghost town. That was not very comforting, so I carefully looked around. These buildings had a cool western theme, and the loot seemed to mostly be empty. I did, however, find a cowboy hat. Woo! I just got myself a cowboy hat. Can I put it on there? No, I can't. Yeah, yeah, there's a new sheriff in town. All right, all right there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sorry you guys had to hear that. What I didn't expect is I saw a being floating around in this town, and as I got closer, I found out it was a ghost villager. I tried to interact with it, but nothing happened, and it flew through the walls. I'm not sure what the story behind this villager was, but it was a pretty sad sight seeing it float around on its own. I continued my adventures, and on the morning of the next day, I found this very interesting village that definitely would have some enemies on the inside. There was also another ghost town beside it, but I didn't loot it because I had just seen one. I carefully approached the other village while on the lookout for any enemies, and sure enough, these weird husks started approaching me from all directions. I got the achievement Rusted Root, which said I had entered into a bandit village. I quickly ran to break the spawner in the center and defeated the hoglin and husk with it. I entered one of the houses here and it seemed pretty normal. As I got to the top, I found a chest that had some gold in it, which was nice. I purled over to another tower nearby and defeated the watch guard on the inside. I was out of arrows at this point, so I needed to stay careful. I looted each of the towers, which had some ores, and with that, continued onwards. As I was traveling, I found another really cool cave opening that I thought I would show. I saw these things running around that were called scuttlers and I took one out which dropped a scuttler tail and this can be used to make a poison antidote. On the next day, I found this interesting looking structure. On the inside, there was a spawner and these mushroom guys who walked really slowly but took no knockback, so I needed to be really careful and walk backwards as I fought them. I broke the spawner and headed upwards. There was another mushroom cow awaiting me, which I took out and ventured forward to find another spawner and a chest with mediocre loot. The mushrooms came at me in groups, but given that I stuck to my game plan, I was able to take them out safely. I found another spawner and chest that had some slightly better loot and continued up another ladder. This seemed to be the top of the tower and I was ambushed by some mushrooms that I took out. These guys dropped me three gilded blackstone shards which would get me three quarters of the way to summoning the blackstone golem boss which I do later in the video and it's quite a scary boss. I looted the chest up here and got a bunch of apples, ender pearls, and an unknown map which was a bit suspicious but maybe I would advise venture over there later. I looted the barrels on this floor and checked out the top of the building before leaving. I ran up to a friendly looking home that had a fisherman inside. The barrels were filled with decent loot, but as I got up to the top, the chest here had a protection to knock back to Infinity Book, which was really, really good. I grabbed that and continued on with my travels in search of a challenge. And I got exactly that when I ran into this huge castle structure. I got an achievement saying I had located something called a Bastille. I ran around the corner and found an entrance, on the other side of which was a Vindicator type mob with an even scarier look. The mobs did not let up and I was literally approached from all angles. I knew my gear could hold up, but I ran out to recover and take the mobs out more manageably. These pillagers had some really good aim and it was hard to keep up with them while multiple were shooting at me. I ate a golden apple and charged forward. I continued rushing at each of the mobs until I was able to defeat all of the ones that were chasing me. I placed an anvil down and put infinity on my bow because I knew I would need to take a lot of shots if I wanted to take this castle down. Finally, I entered back inside and instantly had a witch drop a poison potion on me 
while getting attacked by other mobs. Heavy damage was not going to be avoidable within this castle. I got to a place where I could loot one of the chests here, and the loot was pretty average. I decided I would clear the mobs out before looting anymore. I ran through an area with a few tents and had to defeat more pillagers that were in my way. I then ran through to an area with a couple of prison cells that I opened, and after defeating another one of these knights, I saw that on the inside, there were two golems. One of them was called the Terminator, and it looked different than the typical type of iron golem, and then the other one was called Programmed Neutralization Technology. This thing instantly went to work and it was powerful. It was flinging the pillagers around like they were thin air and I made sure to repair it to keep it alive. Now everything seemed fine, but when I entered a fenced in area, I got approached by melee mobs from all directions and they got me down to one heart as I tried to get away. Fortunately, I was able to build out, but that was close to using up my first totem of undying. I entered a building, and after making my way up to the second floor, I found chests that gave me some farm supplies. I fought off more mobs, and they seemed to be never-ending. My gear was now close to being broken, but a lot of chests were now free to loot. The loot didn't seem to get any better though, which was a bit disappointing. I found some stairs and made my way up to a watchtower. I can see that there were mobs still around the castle, and took some out with my bow. And as I was scouting for more enemies, I heard a pillager behind me that just about knocked me off the tower, but I blocked him off in time. I walked around the top of the tower, defeating pillagers for a bit more, but there didn't seem to be any loot here. This was definitely an interesting structure and a challenge to fight through, but I figured it was now time to return home and repair my gear. As I was running to find a waystone, I ran into a horse stable and tamed a horse so that I could get back quicker. My journey on this horse continued on into the next day, and while I wanted to be back home, I was tempted with more adventure when I ran into these huge mushrooms. I tied my horse to a fence post and and approached this area. There were houses here, and on the inside I found some great loot. One of the items I found was a galaxy starfish, which can be used to make aquatic astral stew, which seemed interesting, so I grabbed it. I headed into the building in the center and broke a spawner. I was approached by multiple mushrooms right away, and I had to fight them off with care. As I made my way through, I found this to be a full living room. So the mushrooms were living well. I noticed that in this campfire section, there was a mushroom, which I took out, and there were a bunch of campfires and coal to collect here. I made it up to the next floor and was this time shot by a mushroom with a crossbow. I looted the barrel here and got a matrix fish, which as it turns out can be used to make an end crystal if you get two of them, so that was really good. As I made my way outside, I was attacked by a small raid, and when I took it out, I got a raid horn, which I'm not sure what it does, but it looked cool. I started making my way up the center mushroom where I was attacked by some pretty strong mushroom jousters and when I made it, I took out a spawner and mushroom and found a chest with a little bit of iron as well as a gold block that had a sign saying, if you walk with fungus, you'll never be out of spores. I wasn't sure if this was a riddle or what it meant, so I just grabbed the golden block and found this little room with some ores before carrying on. My helmet was hits away from breaking, so I took it off at this point, but <laughs> I couldn't help to adventure more when I found a little witch encampment. I stayed at a distance while fighting the witches off, and uh, witches are definitely one of my least favorite mobs in Minecraft. I looted the chests here, and they had a bunch of witch-like loot, potion supplies and such, but they also contained a witch hat, which I actually needed because my helmet was out of durability, so I was happy to become a witch for now. I found this lightning bug in a bottle, which was a very shocking light source to find. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I continued forwards, and uh, Nope, I did not return home. Instead, I, I I found some kind of a ruin, which I checked out, and it had nothing really. In the night, though, I found these two insanely big structures. I was not fit to adventure with the state that my gear was in, though. I checked to see if I could make a waystone, and sure enough, it ended up being that I had all of the materials needed to craft one. All I needed was a couple of pieces of flint, which I dug up, and one of the unique variants of stone, like andesite, which I found right next to me. With that, I crafted myself a waystone and finally returned home. I repaired my bow and only had three diamonds, so I repaired everything except my helmet for now. I returned back to the Colosseum I found and headed inside. I dug in and it turned out that this thing was filled with water, which I don't believe is a normal thing. I started getting shot at by a skeleton on the outskirts 
and then got attacked by a skeleton on a phantom that made me levitate and did a lot of damage. The phantom had a crazy amount of health because I kept taking shots at it and it was not dying. Eventually I took it out and then noticed that the skeleton was in the water below me. I had a height advantage and was able to safely take shots at it and I took it out and saw that it dropped diamonds so I went down to pick them up and it turned out to be nine. This was the perfect chance for me to return home and repair my helmet. I then returned back to the Colosseum and fought more of the skeletons on the outskirts in hopes of getting more loot. They still had dangerous arrows so I had to be careful but with my full set of diamond gear equipped I stayed safe and took them all out. As I explored through the rest of this Colosseum though I didn't really find anything else except for the spawner in the middle. I waited into the nighttime to see if the phantom rider would spawn again but even though I waited here for a few minutes nothing happened. So I broke the spawner and continued on to adventure through the large towers I had seen. These were large and looked intimidating. I got the achievement Guns and Roses which said I had found the Thornborn Towers. I entered into one of the towers and the moment I jumped down I was attacked by a dangerous looking skeleton. Even though I went down however I was attacked by more of them. I took a couple of them out and broke the spawner here and then made a run for it so I could block the rest off. I took them out from the little trap I set up and then headed up to the next floor. I was faced with another spawner that I broke immediately and then defeated a skeleton that approached me but realized that I needed to be careful with my gear because it could break soon. I got some loot which consisted of iron and slime balls and moving on to the next floor I found a small garden. I then progressed through a typical spawner area and made it to one of the top layers where I was faced with a flood of skeletons. There were a lot of beehives in this area which I made sure not to anger and I made it up to the next floor which had a chest full of iron and a diamond that I was really happy about. I then got to the balcony area where I noticed the skeletons were stronger. I even went further up and went outside to be faced with a bunch of skeletons on phantoms shooting at me. I tried to fight back but had to retreat when their shots kept on hitting. My armor was very close to breaking but I didn't want to leave which gave me the idea to craft an anvil and repair it right here. This worked really well and I was now in the clear to keep progressing. I made it to the structure that had phantoms and was knocked around. I sheltered myself on the staircase though and was able to take them out from here. I looted the chest here and got 10 diamonds, name tags, and an enchanted book. I got to another tower that also had the phantom spawner and got more great loot from there. I looted another chest which gave me a bunch of iron and used an ender pearl to get to another tower which I cleared out and got a ton more iron from. With all of the towers looted and explored I placed a water bucket down and tried to teleport home on my horse but this did not work and glitched the game. I tried teleporting with the horse on a lead but that didn't work and I tried placing it in a boat but that didn't work either. Unfortunately the only way to bring the horse back home would be to manually transport it and at the time I did not have much time to work on doing that so I decided I would leave the horse there for the time being. Now, from my adventures, I had collected four gilded blackstone shards. This meant that I could now summon the blackstone golem boss. All I had to do was build its altar, which just consisted of blackstone, so building it would be easy enough. And in search of blackstone, I entered the nether. It wasn't long before I found a little piglin hideout made out of blackstone, which was great. I mined up all of the blackstone that I needed, and as I was doing that, I started getting shot at by some piglins that I took out. I noticed that there was a little hidden compartment with hoglins inside that I shot at and I took them all out. I noticed that on the inside there were golden blocks. After that I went down and started looting what was here. I instantly got rammed by a hoglin but survived that and the chest here had diamond gear including leggings with mending which was a great find. I picked up another golden block and then found a place to set up the altar. I pressed visualize in my guidebook which I outlined all of the blocks I needed to place, so it was a lot easier to do. Now I thought I had done it. I thought I built out the ritual space, but when I went to place the shards, they got thrown instead. 
I didn't think much of it and threw three of them total, but that's when I realized that something was off and found out that they need to be placed into specific stone holders, not just black stone. These can be crafted using a stone cutter, so that wasn't a problem but I now needed to regain the shards that I had lost. I tried fighting piglins, hoping they would drop some, and while doing that, I jumped into another underground area of the piglin hideout. I was met with a bunch of blazes, and fighting them all off at once was pretty overwhelming, but thanks to my gear, I was able to take them out. I looted the chest down here, which just had some basic gold loot, and then collected the golden box. I attacked more piglins to find the shards I needed, but uh, as I was running back from a group of them, I fell right into a hole and they all jumped on me. I was in huge trouble and chugged down golden apples to try and survive. To my joy, I was fortunately able to get up to the high ground and took out the piglin group. I defeated more of these guys but wasn't getting the luck I needed with the shards. I found another hidden sector which I also cleared out and entered to find gold blocks and ancient debris. I mined everything out and left two pieces of ancient debris richer. As I left this area, I saw this crazy crazy looking piglin mob and went up close to find out what it was called, which was very risky, but I found out it was called a piglin beast. I bowed at it from a range and given its speed was able to take it out. It turned out that this was a part of my quest book, so that was just another quest done. And my rewards were a golden apple and a block of gold. As I traveled, I saw this crazy mob in the distance, which looked really, really cool. And then as I was running around, this happened. Oh my, holy moly, look at that, it explodes, jeez, Ooh, that gave me a little heart attack, oh man, okay, wow, Ooh. that was intense, running into these problem plants or even touching them was an absolute no-go. I found a temple in the lava, which I bridged to, and it was the same as the one I had found in the jungle previously. I broke through to the chests and got a netherite scrap, which was unexpected. For some reason, I had this sudden urge to use my guidebook to learn more about the gilded blackstone shard. And I found out that they can be gotten from piglin bartering, which made me realize I could have gotten them easily this whole time. Now, it wasn't all to waste though, because the other chest here had a bunch of gold, and with all of that looted, I went out to search for a a piglin to trade with. I found one soon enough, and using the gold I had looted, I had a long supply for trading. The first item it dropped was this soul compost, then blue weeping obsidian, which was actually pretty cool, and it then dropped a shard, which was great. I now just needed one more, which was taking some time, and I accidentally gave it my boots during that time. Soon, it finally dropped the last shard, and uh, I unfortunately had to defeat it to get my boots back. Now I was ready to summon the black stone golem. But I needed to repair my gear and reorganize myself before starting the fight. I headed back for home and this was a long journey. I ran into this place while traveling, which was interesting and had a couple of wither skulls that I scooped up. As I approached the nether portal, I ran into this very, very stellar altar with a statue in the center. When I right clicked it, it gave me the message that I needed four glowstone to set my respawn point here. I picked it up and hopefully I can use this somehow in the future, without dying that is. I made it home by the morning of the next day and placed our newly found statue outside as a warning to any monsters that would approach. I repaired my gear and created the black stone holder I needed. I was now ready to fight the black stone golem. I traveled back to the altar that I had previously built and soon found it. I then had to replace the outer blocks with the new holders. I placed two of the shards, but before continuing, I made sure to set up my inventory fully. Once I was done with that, I was ready to fight the black stone golem. Oh, oh, something's happening. Something is happening. Oh, there it is. Blackstone Golem. Okay, wait, I don't have as much space as I would like here. Uh, I'm not able to hit it yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh my God. Holy moly, I did not expect that. Okay, I cannot let it get close to me. I have got to run. Oh my goodness. Okay, if it gets close to me, it might just two shot or one shot me. So I would rather run far away. Oh my goodness. Okay, keep taking shots. It's stuck. It's stuck. Oh, wait, it's not stuck. Oh, it's oh, it's going faster. Oh, it's going faster. Oh, good thing I have space here. I have a good sight on it. Okay, it's missing me. It is really fast. My boat. 
Oh, I have a zombie on me now. Oh, no. Okay, I have gone too far to let it hit me. Oh, man. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. I took out the mini golems, and with that, I had defeated the black stone golem. I got approached by these zombies called the burned and took them out, but one of them managed to set me on fire. I checked my rewards and saw that I got a gilded netherite fragment that could upgrade my netherite gear and a piece of ancient debris as well as a netherite scrap. I collected my quest rewards, which were several more netherite fragments, an enchanted golden apple, and this crate, which I opened and got a lot lava bucket, some black stone, and a black stone golem heart, which read, replace your own heart with it. I did, and it ended up giving me two extra hearts with an effect called a black stone, which was actually a really nice perk. Now, the next boss that I wanted to defeat was the nether gauntlet. This boss ended up being insanely strong. Its altar was located underground in rare structures, so I began my search for it. Now, on this day, I played around with my shader settings and made the brightness a lot higher in the nether. Let me know what you guys think about this, but uh, it made it a lot easier for me to see, which uh, also makes it easier for you guys to see, so I thought it might be more enjoyable, but I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. Before fighting the nether gauntlet, I had to prepare myself, so I headed back for home. I made it back by the next day, and uh, my game was brighter here too, so again, I'm curious as to what you guys think, and uh, I'm open to suggestions. Anyways, now that I was back home, I crafted up some brewing stands and placed these on the empty space I had created before. The brewing HUD showed all the different kind of potions that can be made, which was useful. I made some bottles, filled them with water, and brewed up some fire resistance potions for 8 minutes. And with a full set of diamond gear, golden apples, and fire resistance potions, I headed in to the nether to search for the nether gauntlet's altar. I found this structure in the lava, which turned out to be a mine shaft, so I didn't really want to deal with it, and I've gotten lost in these one too many times. As I traveled, I ended up running through this really, really cool biome called the Sulfuric Bone Reef. This biome looked like no other biome I had ever seen before, and I was definitely astonished by it. I traveled through another very cool, very colorful biome where I was attacked by jungle skeletons. I ran through this cool biome called the Weeping Mire as well. And on day 91, I found this seemingly hoglin village and they were aggressive towards me. So I had to take them out. It was very convenient that I was on the top of a tower because it let me rain shots down onto them from above. I checked inside one of the houses here and it seemed to have blood and a chainsaw on the floor without any actual loot. It was a uh, pretty disturbing. I entered another house here and it was just as empty. However, I was very pleasantly surprised when I came across something else. Oh, it's actually a village. Oh my goodness. It's a waystone. Are you kidding me? Ooh. It's a waystone. Uh, oh man. Oh man. Taking this with me. Nice. This meant that whenever I would find the nether gauntlet altar, I would be able to return home with these and resituate. And as you'll see later, this waystone is very important. I adventured through a bastion remnant for a bit where I found myself a golden apple and some smoked ham. I then found this little hut uh, where I went inside and found a villager sleeping on the bed, which is illegal in the nether but that's besides the point. There was a chest right here with apples and I could use those to turn them into golden ones. There was also a bunch of random wood starter gear. Right besides this villager's home, I found a mushroom biome, which must be a rare addition to this pack because I've never seen one in the nether before. I ran through many different types of mushrooms and came up to the large mushrooms to get a closer look. There was a wither skeleton spawner here, which I cleared out and the double chest inside had some enchanted gear as well as a diamond, which was nice. I came up to this really really cool blue part of the mushroom biome that contrasted with the red and I had never seen anything like this before. I then found some giant mold here which was absolutely disgusting. After exploring that, I ran out, still in search of the nether gauntlet's altar, and eventually I ran into this structure which I thought could just be a bastion remnant, but I purled in and checked what's inside. Oh, <gasps> this is it. Oh my goodness, I found it. Oh, as I have nice some smoked ham, that's pretty good. I cannot believe I found this. Th this took so long. Oh, I'm so happy. Before fighting the boss, I placed my waystone and returned home. 
I cleared out my inventory and harvested carrots so that I could make a stack of golden carrots as my new food source. Food would actually be really important in this fight so that I could stay saturated and keep my health regenerating. I made an extra shield as well, and with that, I had everything ready to fight the nether gauntlet. So I went back into the altar room and went for it. It's time for this fight. Let's load up on fire resistance. I'm also going to use this uncraftable potion and break this eye. Okay. Okay, okay. It seems like my bow is not working. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Dealing damage to the gauntlet was difficult because it only gives you small periods of time to attack it. Timing my hits well, I was able to get two good hits off on it. After that though, the fight started getting more challenging and it started getting more hits on me. It also started using a laser beam to attack from range, which I had to run from to avoid. However, running away from the gauntlet started to become more and more difficult because it kept making more holes in the ground. I got to half health and then it went really really high in the sky to the point where I didn't know where it was until it started laser beaming me from up above. This fight was getting harder and harder and I was really struggling to get damage onto the gauntlet. And then all of a sudden, this happened. What is going on? This is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to happen. How am I supposed to fight it? Oh my goodness. This is really bad for me. Oh my God. Oh my god! I quickly equipped another totem, but things only got worse. I ate an enchanted golden apple to make things more manageable, but all of a sudden, I had eyes pop up on my screen and I got blinded. Not only that, but my boots were broken and I hadn't realized that up until now. I tried to get hits on the gauntlet, but it wouldn't take damage and was moving at a very quick pace. I was in huge danger now and was getting really close to dying. This fight was much more difficult than I could have possibly imagined and in a saving grace I decided I would teleport home using the waste stone where I would hopefully have time to get new gear and jump back into the fight so that the gauntlet wouldn't regenerate all of its health. I had diamond boots in my backpack that I equipped and grabbed the diamond off my item frame to repair my chest plate. I quickly headed back into the altar room hoping the gauntlet wouldn't regenerate its health but it went back to three-fourths of its total health. It spared no time in attacking me once more and I still found it very difficult to land hits on it. I hit it once and then again and then again and I used my shield to block off its beam and purled away. The gauntlet beamed me into a hole though and broke my shield and helmet. There was just no way I could defeat it like this. I made a run for my waystone in a panic and thankfully I was barely able to get home in time. My gear was all busted up and honestly I was just going to quit at this point. However, my conscience wouldn't allow me to do that. I decided I would go mining and repair all of my gear so that that I could fight the gauntlet once more. I mined through to day 94 and decided to keep my brightness on, so let me know what you think about that. I repaired my existing pieces of gear and needed to enchant a new helmet, so I wanted to head into the nether to mine quartz for levels. However, I not so smartly teleported to the waystone I had near the boss without thinking, and I didn't have the experience to teleport back. Fortunately though, I was able to mine out and get away. I mined quartz in the nether for a while, and it took me until the next day to get level 30. I spent time getting to level 36, just in case I needed to re-enchant the helmet and headed back for home. I found these really cool crystal shards and there was obsidian here, meaning I could mine some up and make a portal back to the overworld. The portal landed me in a cave where I started taking a lot of damage from mobs, including a zombie miner with a diamond pickaxe who dropped a diamond on death. And while down here, I ended up finding this really cool area. Wow. Wow, look at this. Block of Alurite. This stuff is crazy. This looks so cool. I then hunted for Enderman, who gave me the Ender Pearl I needed to create a waystone and head home. The first enchant I got on my helmet was okay, and same with a pair of extra boots. I re-enchanted them and got blast protection, which would be pretty useful in this fight. I had a netherite ingot as well, which I used to upgrade my leggings and added the gilded shard on them as well to upgrade them further. I made an anvil as well, so I would be able to repair my gear during the fight if I needed to, 
and they headed in to fight the nether gauntlet once more. I started off the fight very confident. Already knowing how it attacks, I aimed straight at it and took shots. Again though, hitting it was no easy feat, not to mention it had regenerated to full health by now. It even redirected an arrow at me, but after I was able to find an opening to hit it twice. However, as it charged its laser, it did an insane amount of damage and popped another one of my totems of undying. Once again, I put a new one on and continued running. I got a few hits in, which was really good and continued on the momentum, hitting two more times and another time, and I was feeling good, but that didn't mean that dodging its attacks was any easier. It soon hit me with a very powerful strike taking out half my health and I was able to hit it twice afterwards again. It was now in the stage where it could blind me and slow me down and this was the phase that I had issues with previously. The truth is that I didn't know I should be bowing it down during this phase, so most of the time I couldn't get hits on it. And soon my lack of momentum started to show. It got more and more hits on me without me doing any damage in return. Things were not going my way. It hit me twice in a row to get me to half a heart, but thankfully it didn't trigger my totem of undying. I got another hit on it, and then one more, which was good progress, but then, well, I'll, I'll just let the gameplay speak for itself. Oh my god, dude. My helmet's gonna break. Dude, I cannot hit it. I'm telling you, man, it's impossible. My helmet has broken. Okay, I hit it again. I hurry to mine through the wall and try to repair my gear, but it instantly knocked out all of my health. I was down to one totem of undying. I repaired my chest plate, which was mostly useless by this point as my helmet and boots were both broken, and worse yet, the gauntlet healed back up to full health. I quickly ran for the waystone and headed home, but I was in shock. It, I, I, I need to bring two sets of armor. I need to bring two sets of armor. It's impossible. I need to go mining again. Oh my God. Okay, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm getting my diamonds. I'm getting my two sets of armor and I'm coming back and I'm defeating this boss, okay? I will not quit. Here I already have leggings, so I don't need another pair of those. I don't need that many more diamonds. In fact, all I need is seven more diamonds for a chest plate. That's it. I repaired my gear and headed down to mine again. I was in a rush because I did not have much more time to defeat the nether gauntlet, but I was actually getting some decent luck with diamonds now. I non-stop mined into day 98 at a record pace of getting diamonds for myself, and I returned home with 36. With that, I went to the nether and mined quartz for levels. I had to continue into day 99 and then return home to enchant my gear. The enchants were mostly good enough, but I needed to head back into the nether one more time to make sure I was well enchanted. I returned with 36 levels and re-enchanted my gear. I had unbreak on mostly all my pieces and they almost all had a good version of protection on them. As much as I wanted to jump right into the fight, I couldn't yet because I needed to stock back up on Totems of Undying. I remembered a woodland mansion I had found before and after searching on my map, I found exactly where it was. I ran over to it and arrived on day 100. Found the mansion. This is, I barely have any time left. Let's head in here, defeat some evokers and get out. For the evokers, we'll have to go to the second floor right away. So I'll just break in right here all right let's get it just gonna take two shots with three two shots there we go there we go number one i defeated another one but now i had a ton of vexes flying at me and it was very difficult to handle them all at once so much so that i easily could die while doing this i definitely should have ran away at this point but i defeated another evoker and my gear was getting dangerously low from the vexes i had been doing mostly okay up until this point but when i ran into some vindicators as well i was in trouble Goodness gracious. These are crazy, man. This is crazy. Oh my God, man. 
Even though I tried to defeat them all, they got me to half health and they kept on coming. It was extremely overwhelming. Another totem of Undying got used. This was insane. I headed outside, defeating the Vexes, but when I went back in, things got worse. Oh my god, dude. I once again had to pause the game and reboot to try to save myself. That's how I survive. That's how I survive, baby. That's how I survive, baby. That's how I do it. My helmet broke and I had to leave. I only had two totems. This trip was a complete failure. I went home and repaired some gear. I used my potions of enchanting and repaired another piece and headed back to the mansion with a full set of fresh gear. This was day 101, but in Minecraft time, it was technically still day 100 since Minecraft time starts with day zero. So I don't care. I'm counting this as me having one more day. I reset all of the mobs in the mansion by heading far out and then coming back. And after that, I went inside defeated two evokers and left with four totems of undying total. I was in a rush. I teleported home and then wanted to quickly get levels for repair in the nether by teleporting to the boss waystone. This was a risky move, but uh, I got away and this was just a bad idea. I didn't want to lose the easy access to the boss, so I placed the waystone back down and went through the portal to find quartz. I didn't need many levels, so at 16, I returned home, repaired my boots and chest plate, and I made an iron helmet enchanted it with whatever I could and that would have to do for my second set of armor. With that, I drank a fire resistance potion and headed in for the fight. It's time. This is my last opportunity to defeat this boss. Where are you, buddy? Gonna hit it in the eye. Oh yeah. This time I decided I would shoot at the nether gauntlet way more and this made the fight 10 times easier. My bow hits did so much damage and it made it easier to prevent the boss from getting close to me. The gauntlet did however land a strong laser beam on me and then exploded me getting my health dangerously low. Continuing on with melee hits and shots, I built momentum and started getting really close to getting the gauntlet down. It was still getting some explosive hits on me but it wasn't stacking damage as it did before. I had to carry blocks to try by this point because of how much the floor was broken and with two more shots I was able to finally take it out just on the edge of day 101 ending. It dropped a few pieces of ancient debris around it. I got some gilded blackstone shards as a reward and that was it. And on that note everybody thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. I'm gonna try to survive 200 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. In the first 100 days, we built our starter house, adventured through tons of new structures, and defeated some insanely difficult bosses like the Nether Gauntlet. In these next 100 days, we continue our adventures and gearing up, build some very cool and useful structures, including a horse stable and new storage. And I've gotta say, surviving these 200 days is not an easy task. In fact, it's my goal to defeat defeat the Obsidolith, one of the most difficult bosses in this mod pack. But hey, if you uh, you hit that subscribe button, it'll, it'll give me some luck. Anyways, relax, grab your favorite snacks, and enjoy as I try to survive 200 days in better Minecraft hardcore. Woo, okay, we're back in the world. 200 days. First, oh my goodness. Wait, what is happening? <laughs> oh no. Wait, there's icicles growing on my roof. Hold on. What I'd really like to do is get an experience farm. And the one we're gonna build is a gold farm. That's because this will give us gold and experience, which is great. Now to do that, I'm gonna need to get a bunch of materials. And while I wanna start collecting them right away, I think it would be a lot easier if we have a shulker box. So let's head into the end and... Ooh, Ooh, this is a bit scary and let's see if we can find an end city and get some shulkers and along the way maybe we'll get some luck and find an elytra oh and i never picked up these dragon scales wow this is cool stuff wow okay dragon sword look at that thing that's very cool i want to get full dragon armor in the future here we go let's bridge over now is there a totem of void undying yes there is i should definitely make one of these in fact it wouldn't be the worst idea to make one of them now there we go Boom, and two eyes of Ender. All that's left is the chorus fruit. I love these waystones, they are so useful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I just had a heart attack. I'm not gonna lie. These things look scary. Look at their teeth and eyes. I think they're friendly. Oh my god. That is terrifying. And I forgot to grab blocks. How many times is this that I've gone back and forth? Look at this. You know what? There we go. I just grabbed like five sacks of, of dirt. Okay. I've built myself a little safety platform. I'm curling in. Oh, no. Oh. Whew. Okay. I'm good. The end for dummies. Well, thank you for that. I don't appreciate being called a dummy. Look at this beautiful, beautiful dimension. We got this red fire, cryptic stone. Okay, I gotta stay focused. Oh my goodness, look at this stuff. Oh my goodness, I just got levitation. Oh no. <laughs> Does this just keep giving you levitation? What if I grow this? Oh! oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And I've angered an enderman apparently. Ender warthog. That was a quest. Kill an ender warthog. Cool, I got some stuff from that. So far, my visit to the end has not been very safe. This looks crazy. Like, this just looks extremely demonic. I'm not gonna lie to you. What is going on? Look at this stuff. This is crazy. Oh, that's another one of these guys. So it charges, but it, it doesn't stop once it charges, which is good to know. Good. Did it drop anything? It did. Oh, two of these to make a netherite scrap? Whoa, I do actually need netherite armor. That's a pretty good way to get netherite. Mm, I should get some more ender pearls. <laughs> Okay, I got eight ender pearls. <gasps> oh, oh, I thought that was an end city, but it seems like something else. In fact, it seems a bit scary because I feel like a boss is in there. Oh man, I'm burning. That's ender pearl. So it's completely in the air. Before approaching it, I'd probably like to make that totem of void undying, and I see course fruit over there. Hello, boom, totem of void undying. Now I'm good and I won't die from the void. I believe it'll teleport me to the surface. And I'll head up here. Why is there an obsidian pillar with a crystal there? Wait, hold on. So am I supposed to destroy this? I feel like I might've made an oopsie. Like, I feel like that's like I was supposed to use that somehow. Nothing, you know, maybe you guys know because I'm pretty lost. Make my way up. Hello? I'm mining in. Don't see anything yet. What if this is just all a solid tower? I'm so confused. Look at this. Outside, this literally has nothing except for this at the top which is an obsidian altar, and this is a boss altar. Okay, <laughs> I'm not finding a boss right now. No, thank you. Obsidolith, that might be what this is. I will mark down the coordinates, and we shall return. I see something pretty weird in the distance. It seems like a ship, and also this tree, which has shulkers growing on it. Wait, hold on. This is an interesting obsidian tree here. Thank you. That is two shulker shells. Not bad. Ooh, that's a dragon head. I wonder if there's an elytra here. I need to be careful, though. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Thank you. Anvils. Two fresh anvils. Four fresh anvils. Thank you. We got bookshelves, which I'll take. You know, why not? These aren't trapped, are they? I don't think they are. We got potions. Nothing good, though. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Have I been scammed? No. Well, that's pretty sad. Oh, here's another structure. This is like a temple. Is there something in here? Yes, there is. Oh, and we got a shulker. Thank you for your shell. This is uh, some interesting building. And, ooh, lapis, emeralds. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I do have a quest to defeat one of these whales. If anything, I'll ender pearl away. It's not doing anything, and I killed it. Okay, I should probably feel bad about that, to be honest. I'm just gonna collect my rewards. <laughs> oh, there are a lot of these guys, which is crazy. Oh, endermite powder. And there's something up there. Look at that, there's some ore. That looks really cool. I'd like to head up there. One problem, there's phantoms everywhere. They can easily knock me off. While I'm doing this, I'll equip my totem of undying. A metron ore. What is this? It looks very cool. A metron wolf armor. There are clusters. Gives you a lot of experience, actually. Is there anything else here? Oh, there's a lot of those guys there. That's like a little netherite farm. Oh, man, they're knocking each other off. Oh, wait, that's actually good. Because they're all falling down there. Oh, I'm up to seven. Well, I found this here. Lock, ender pearls, not bad. End city map. Ooh. Oh, and there's another chest in here. Oh, yes. Take me to the end city. What's going on here? Something here. Oh, there's a chest. Oh, music discs. And a void totem of undying. That's good. Ah, I found it. Oh, my goodness. Holy moly. Oh, yeah, the map's activating now. I gotta be careful. I'm very excited. Oh, what is this? Look at that. Ender lily. Whoa, that's so cool. Look at that. Ah, I love it. Hello. Ooh. This is what we've been looking for, my friends. There are a lot of these guys. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's one down. Is that a mini shulker? No way. Gimme, gimme. Oh, there's one under. In fact, there are two under. Oh, and they've successfully made me float. I'm at seven shells, and I got hit again. Guys, stop. It's not fun, okay? I don't appreciate it. Oh my goodness. I'm inside the building. 
<laughs> These guys love shooting me, don't they? They just love it. You guys love this, huh? You guys just sit here all day? That's fine. I'm not angry at all. I think I've cleared this section out. Parkour, parkour. Oh, and a bunch of shulkers. Yes. Thank you. That's perfect. Don't you dare hit me. This one's like buffed up. Oh my goodness. Stop. Stop it. Stop trying to hit me. Oh man. Okay, this is terrible. Take that, take that, take that. Okay. Gotcha. And gotcha. And loot this area. It's not a terrible sword. Let's go up to the top here. Break the spawner. And let's defeat you. That's that. And four more shulkers, just like that. I've gotten to the point where I'm out of inventory space. Okay, I'm satisfied. I'm leaving. Great view from up here. Levitate up 50 blocks from the attacks of a shulker. Yes, that's I did that. And with shulker boxes collected, I think I'm good to head home. Wow, look at how many there are. That's that's actually crazy. Oh my god. Wow. I was looking at my map. Thank goodness. Wow. Wow. Ooh. I had a heart attack. It didn't actually save me from falling. It just saved me from dying in it. Oh my goodness. My helmet broke. What am I doing? Just letting my gear break like a noob. I'm back. Holy moly. Okay, I'm gonna unenchant this pickaxe. Hopefully... Oh, another fortune two book. That works just fine. There we go. And now we have fortune three. So I've mostly sorted everything out. My backpack and these six junk chests. But there's a problem. My storage is very full. I know for sure we're gonna have to do something with the new storage system later on. So now that I'm done that, I wanna go mining so that I can make a new helmet and we can fix up our gear. Okay, negative 55. I feel like I've went way too low to not have found a cave yet. It's a bit worrying. Ha, a cave. Hello, beautiful. Okay, let's get to mining and hopefully I can get some luck. Oh, oh, that one scared me a bit. This is a zombie spawner. Given that spawners drop themselves, I don't need to keep that there. Oh, enchanted golden apple. That's nice. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I keep thinking that that silver ore is diamond, but it's not. I have finally found some diamonds. And so hopefully my luck streak will begin. That was eight. Hello. Okay, this looks like one of those huge mine shafts. Oh, and that's a undead miner. Oh, thank you for the diamond. More diamonds. Oh, another diamond. What do we got going on in here? What happens if I go down? Oh, that's not good. Okay, I see what this was. This was a setup. Let's see if there's some good loot here. Curse of Vanishing? Mm, no, thank you. Two more diamonds. I see a TNT minecart. Oh, wow, that instantly blew up and did a lot of damage. Half my health. Holy moly. Diamond vein number three, four, number five, number six, another minecart chest, a diamond, golden apple, number eight, I think. That was a big one. Whoa, this is an interesting looking mine shaft. Look at this. I've not seen something like this ever. I'm going to return home. My armor is busted up and I have 53 diamonds. Oh, it's a gift. Oh, Candy canes. Well, that's nice. From Yancey Ballow, the leather worker. Aha, Eleonoria. Home sweet home. Protection unbreaking. That's good enough for me. I'm gonna repair this guy and these. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get 5,708 magma blocks. I'll grab a few shulkers and let's go get everything we need. And according to my calculations, I'm gonna need just over three shulker boxes. So we have some work to do. Now, I don't believe I've run into the best biome to find magma blocks in. I see some over there, so I'll go and see what we got. Oh my goodness. Okay, I don't know how I'm running on the lava right now, but I just did that. How did I just run on lava? How is that possible? How am I doing this? Oh, I have Hellstrider. That's what it is. That let me walk on lava. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I did some research. People say that you should just mine at Y30. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Holy moly. I should have brought fire resistance, I'll tell you that much. That is a lot of magma. I've dedicated my inventory to magma blocks and now it's just time to get to work. That is one shulker box. That's two shulker boxes. Here we go, three shulkers. That should be enough. If there was an enderman around me, that would be perfect. Ooh, okay. Well, hello. Here's another fortress. Oh, I saw an enderman. It's gonna drop it, yes. And bam, waystone, perfect. Eleonoria, I need to repair my gear again. 
And I cannot repair my chest plate. Oh, I can repair this one. There we go. Okay, so we got all the magma blocks. And next, we'll need about a shulker box and a half full of glass. And I have no glass. I don't even have any sand. So we're going to need to do some collecting. Here, we can get to work. But I see a ship over there. What do we got in here? Chest. There's a spawner here for skeletons. Break that. And that's it. There's also turtle eggs. I don't think I can pick these up without silk touch, right? Yeah, I'm not going to risk it. Okay, now we can get to work. And as much as I'd like to keep going, my shovel is almost broken. We're going to need to fix that. And I think the best way is to just get mending right now. And I'm just going to have to sit here for a while doing this. Smite five. <laughs> oh, I just hit the villager. Do all villagers hate me now or what happened? Ah, mending. <laughs> Finally. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five mending books is already pretty good. Also, I have a quest reward. Now got an enchanted basin and I have enough emeralds for one more mending book. Six mending books is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So let's put mending on that on the shovel. I do want to put mending on all of this stuff. Boom. Full set of mending armor. Let's head to the nether to actually mend my gear with the nether quartz. I've got an idea. While we're down here, why don't we mine for some netherite because i have a lot of pieces of ancient debris and i could make a full set of netherite gear if i just mine for a bit more because i think i will find quartz while doing this as well so i'll still be able to repair my gear and we're at y15 Oh, ancient debris. Thank you very much. That did not take long at all. Now I can have mending on both of my pickaxes. And now I can repair my shovel. Oh, ancient debris. This is the second little vein. Here we go. Three. More ancient debris. Number four. Five. Oh my goodness. This is really fast. And always make sure to mine around them because you never know how much ancient debris is hidden. Number six. And that's seven. And I've repaired my shovel fully while doing this. And number eight, I believe. Back to home we go. <gasps> no, you didn't do that to me, game. You evil, evil. Now, I do have Magma Walker, but it appears I'm struggling to place blocks under Golden Apple. And there we go. That was not very polite game. And bam, finally. It's looking like we have 23 pieces. And pick it up. Boom. Six netherite ingots. And we place that in there. Bam. And bam. Full netherite armor. And I also have the special gilded fragments we got from defeating bosses in the last video. So we can upgrade our gear even more. And there we go fully gilded netherite armor okay cool so now i can just activate fire resistance look at that that's looking cool Woo! now i can also upgrade my pickaxe sword and shovel so we are way stronger now okay and you know what i should get our horse back and here's the netherrack yes our horse is still here let's collect all the sand we need And that should be good enough. We need to smelt up all of this sand. I'd also like to get purple dye to make the glass stained purple. And I know that we have the amaranth fields close by, which have a bunch of flowers. I think they were around here. All right, here we are. I need purple in specific. I'm wondering how else you can make purple dye. Red and blue. And is amaranth red? Oh, it is. The red's good because I can mix that with lapis. So I'm just going to collect everything I I get my eyes on. That should be enough. I got a stack of red amaranth with this. Make blue dye, red dye, and combine those for two stacks of purple. And I know I collected flowers before, so yep. And there we go. There we go. No, I need more than that. <laughs> oh boy. And that should be enough. Bam, that's all the purple dye we need. Now I'm gonna have to wait for all this. While that smelts, I'll make the other resources that I need. And I'm gonna need more wood. Okay, I've got six stacks, that should do. And those are all the trapdoors I need. I need bamboo. There is a jungle. I need two stacks of this stuff. Scaffolding, bam. And this glass is finished, but I'm out of coal. That's not good. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna need some more coal. Oh, underground. And let's get to collecting some coal. Fill these up with coal. Now I need 96 minecarts, apparently. 
I did not know what I signed up for when I started making this farm. Oh my goodness, I can't even carry all of these in my inventory. How many shulkers am I gonna need? I need 60 snow. And by the way, after looking through the comments on the first 100 days, I got the same name suggestion three times. And that name was Skelly. So here we go, Skelly. The skeleton horse. Up the mountain we go. And I should just be able to, yes, mine this. What is this? Permafrost. Oh, man, that's already a full inventory. I will just convert this into snow blocks. Oh, and I already have the stack that I need. Back home we go. Snow collected. Okay, so I finally collected all of these resources. Then we have this glass that I just need to turn into purple stained glass. There we go. There's another eight stacks. Okay, all of the materials collected. That took a long time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is head into the nether and get on top of the bedrock. To do that, we're going to need to make a bedrock breaker. And the last thing I need is ender pearls. Eight ender pearls will do. Oh, even nine. And I actually need some obsidian as well. So I will grab this. And I have 24 pieces, which should be good enough. Okay, with that, I'm ready. First thing we gotta do is mine up to the bedrock layer. And here we are. Now, all I should have to do is ladder and ender pearl. And there we go, voila. Now, to break the bedrock, what we're gonna do is make a contraption. We're gonna make it like this. Place two TNT here, lever, trap door, and piston. And then, we're gonna stand here and spam click this corner. And I failed. And boom. Did it work? No. Here we go. It worked, but it only brought us one layer lower, which isn't good. And we'll set this up again. It worked, but again, there's a double layer here. I'm gonna need to head back to get more TNT. Let's do that real quick. Good thing I brought a nether portal with me. I need gunpowder. I'm going to go underground and hunt for some creepers. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I had feather falling. <laughs> I also had a totem of a dying, but wow. <laughs> and this is what I came here for. Okay, that's 10 so far. Thank you. More vases. A lot more. <gasps> oh, hold on. It dropped diamond boots. That's the first time. Curse of suffocation. Mending. Unbreaking. They're actually not bad. Oh, I actually needed that creeper not to explode. I'm getting more diamonds now than I've gotten when I'm actually looking for diamonds. 20, 30. And that's 64 gunpowder. We can make 12 TNT with that. And now let's try this again. It broke a hole, but again, it's in a bad place, so I can't actually get down. Okay, so what I think I can do is go back under the bedrock, find a spot that is guaranteed to be only one layer of bedrock, and then mark the coordinates so that I can break it there. Oh, and my nether portal now goes up here. I'm gonna have to make a new portal, so let's head out. Oh! Who is this guy? Ivo Zax, the wandering trader. Well, hello. He's got like grape and wines and he has mules. Can I ride them? Oh, I can't. Okay. Anyways, let's head out and we can build a portal here, I think. And that's a pretty good teleport. It's actually right next to our other portal so I can easily make our way back up. Okay, so... Oh. Here's a little segment that could be accessible. Yes, this should be a good block to break, I believe. So if I just mark down that X and Z, this is the block we need to break. Therefore, we should place the obsidian like so and a piston there. And I just need the TNT again. Let me check if I have looting real quick. No, it doesn't seem like it. I'm going to try some level two enchantments real quick, but I'm not getting any luck. Let's head into the nether so we can get some levels and hopefully I can get the looting enchantment so we can get more gunpowder. This is gonna make it easier to get some quartz really quickly. As we can see, we already have a bunch here. Oh my goodness. And that is level 36, meaning I can do three 
Level 30 enchantments. So we got looting two. Oh, it's literally just looting two. Another level 30. That was also not good. Looting one. Looting two. Book. Okay. This is a cool little biome. Look at this. Look at these cactuses here. This is called a gravel desert. Let me just mine this quartz up. And I'm level 31. With that, we can get this looting two book. I'm going to do that. Let's go out to hunt some creepers. Here we go. Let's test our luck on the first creeper two gunpowder and we're up to 10 i'm already up to 30 and it hasn't been that long oh and that one tried to sneak up on me 43 gunpowder and the day is just coming back up and tnt so tnt and i'm ready didn't work didn't work that didn't work okay and i have to get gunpowder again i'm going crazy um and then i ended up losing some footage but i did hunt down the creepers broke the hole and i was now ready to finally build the gold farm okay so i need to make this over another wastes biome now my map will make it easier to go right above one we have another waste biome right here here and we should build this thing right here first we'll build up with scaffolding 107 blocks and that should be 107 blocks of scaffolding right there okay i'm going to redo this and move it closer to the actual center of the lava pool from here we're going to do that same thing there we go we're at 235 y level and now i should just place glass first thing we're doing is making a seven by seven box there we go just gotta place these hoppers one two three like that now we'll place ladders for the lobby more glass hopper mine carts and we have to stack 20 mine carts on each side i think this is uh the killing machine for zombie pigmen. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm, I'm just following the tutorial. I'm now adding grindstones here and uh, I also don't know why, why I'm doing this. I then begin working on a glass circle for the base of the farm. Uh oh, one of these burn zombies spawned up here, which is not supposed to happen. This would not be a problem in vanilla Minecraft, I'll tell you that much. Oh man, I think that's all my glass. There's the nether portal. Okay, looking at my comments, I've gotten a lot of you guys saying that I should just use the charged ender pearl, like a lot, a lot of you. So I'm just gonna use it. Check this thing out. Ooh, boom. There we go. Okie dokie. Oh, look how that's looking. Holy moly. There we go, and the circle is complete. Now I have to build out with magma blocks and make another circle. Now I just have to fill it in. Oh my goodness, it's two of these baby burn zombies. I can't even talk. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me activate my fire resistance. That's right, what you gonna do now? That's what I thought. I love this armor. Oh no, not the gas, not the gas! Oh, the gas are starting to spawn, that's bad. Oh no you don't, no you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, my goodness. Stop. Stop it. Oh, man. Oh, not the gas, man. Oh, come on, man. I need my bow. I need my bow. Oh, my goodness. Everything's going bad right now. I'm going to go make invisibility potions. This is not good for me at all. Okay, so I need night vision potions, but then I need fermented spider eyes. Combine all of those. Fermented spider eyes. Just add redstone. And there we go. And let's place the waystone down here for now. We'll rename it Gold Farm. I'm gonna drink an invisibility. Anyways, let's finish filling this first layer in. Okay, that is the first layer complete. Now we need to start working on the next one. I continued my work on the farm, filling in the second, third, and fourth layers of the magma. Oh, there we go. Filled up. Now it's time to do the glass section. And that is all of the glass built. Now I'm gonna go around and break all of this. And that is it for the glass. Now I just gotta add trap doors all around the edge of this fourth layer. Now I gotta close all of these. Okay, now I need to get a piglin into each corner. First, I'll build each of the corners out. Um, can I push you over, sir? Would you mind? Go there. Okay, really guys? You're ruining it. Stop it. 
and perfect. Now we just gotta name them. And just as a thank you to my Patreon supporters, I'm gonna name each of the piglin one of my patrons. There we go. Now I just gotta get the rest of the pigmen in the corners. These burn zombies are insane. They are never ending. Let's push you over and there we go and give you a name. There we go. You can have a name. That is our fourth and final pigman. And with that, it's just time to finish the storage. And there we go. That's one. And I'll just do the others. Add a chest behind. Add the hoppers. And extend it. Hoppers again. And then just a double chest. That's the third one. And that's the fourth one. There we go. Okay, with that, I think we're done the farm. And all that I should have to do is make sure my render distance is on 16, which it is. And then I just need to shoot a pigman. Oh boy, this better work. Oh, wait, okay. Uh, they're falling in. They're falling in. And I think it's working. Oh my goodness, this is this is scary. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and the XP is coming in. Oh, this is crazy. The gold's already getting transported. And maybe I just need to shoot them again as well. Oh, no, 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 no. I shot the two ones that were in corners. Oh, my goodness. I messed up so bad. Okay. There we go. Okay. Fixed. Hopefully for that to never happen again. Yes, everybody come. Come at me. We finally did it. I can't believe it. This was a, a long process. <laughs> well, you know what? It's done. What's done is done. I'm gonna AFK here for a bit and see how many more levels I can get. Okay, kind of bad news. These burned are messing with the farm, but if I bow them, let's see if that makes it a bit better, which it seems like it is because now they're all aggroed onto me. So it looks like this is also gonna be a magma cream farm. I got up to level 56 while AFKing, which is pretty good. Oh, look at all these guys flood down. <laughs> <laughs> so this turned into a double farm and you know what that's just what happens in better minecraft I guess now that we're done with that. I really 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 need a storage I mean this is rough my chest is just not built to handle all of this and I was looking through the comments on our last episode and you guys really like the idea of turning that cave into a base and building things there and there's just so many things we can build in that space ah here's Skelly let's go Skelly I do wish Skelly was faster and uh, on that topic I'm still gonna need to get all of our other animals back okay I've made it oh there it is that's the crazy opening look at this thing Oh my goodness. Okay, you know what? If you think that I'm gonna go down there without an elytra and fireworks to fly around, you're crazy, because I'm not doing it. I need to get an elytra. And I'm also gonna need a bunch of fireworks, which means we're gonna need to get a way of making a bunch of them. And we have the waystone here, so I can't teleport on our horse, can I? No. Okay, before we proceed, we need to find all of our animals and bring them back. I believe we have five in total. Skelly is gonna be our first one look at this this is so beautiful orchard and we're back the first animal has successfully been brought home now we just need to bring the leopards the zebra and our horse now it's kind of hide and seek for the other animals because i don't exactly remember where they are so we'll go down the list of teleports that we have nope not this one no, not this one. There is a woodland mansion there, though. Mm, no, definitely not this one. Oh, nope. That's the nether gauntlet, which has spawned again, apparently. <laughs> Let's continue going. I found them. We found them. My snow leopards are back. Well, we're just going to have to run all the way back with them. That's a pretty far distance, but it's okay. We'll get through it. There is a lot of bamboo here. Oh, that's not a good thing to run into. It's a panda. Hello! Whoa, look at this! This is like a generated island. Look at this, hold on. Look at this, it's a, like a tropical island. Indian paintbrush. Ooh, this is cool. Look at that, there's a few volcanoes. I like these, jungle palm leaves. And we are home. Now the question is, can I make them sit? And I think I can. Okay, so we're done that. Now we just have two more animals. Our zebra and horse. Haha. -ha. And here we go. We got our zebra. Let us head back home now. There is a house here. What is that? An ant? Hello. Oh, my leopards. 
teleported to me. Okay, and we brought our zebra home. So now we just need to bring our horse back and it should be, yes, adventure right here. Um, And my leopard somehow came with me. How did that happen? I have no idea how the leopard teleported. I try to make them stay, but they're uncontrollable. I have a lot of running back to do. I need to run back like 9,000 blocks. So this isn't gonna be the funnest experience. Whoa, look at these turtles. Hello. Whoa, it's blue and then this one's blue and green. Oh my goodness. Wow, you guys look really cool. I've never seen a blue turtle. Whoa, look at this. Holy moly. <laughs> look at that generation. <laughs> look at this. Look at this hippo. Hello. Oh my goodness. It's aggressive. Hey. What the heck? That was unexpected. We've done it. <laughs> we have returned all of our animals back. Welcome back, everybody. Now, for our leopards, I have an idea that I want to try. Let's try this. Leopard number two, bam. So we have two guarding leopards. And this way, hopefully, they won't follow me around at least, which uh, would be kind of better. And for our horses, we need to make a stable. How can I build this stable? I think it serves its purpose being close by, so we can build it here. A lot of you guys said that I should use the tree chopping mod that lets me one chop trees because at first I removed it from the pack because I thought it was too overpowered. But after spending so much time chopping trees, you know what? These trees can get chopped. I don't care. Bam! Now, we can build up the stable here, and it's time to get to work. Okay, I'm breaking it and redoing it. That looks a lot better. Need another type of wood here. Let's try this jacaranda. I need to get more jacaranda wood. This is uh, pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. This tree chopper mod is a huge improvement. And I think it's kind of fair because of how big the trees in this mod pack are. Now we can get back to work. I'm adding barrels around to have some variety. There we go. That's looking really nice. Hmm, what if I use these? Ooh, I'm liking that. Hold on. This is working real well. Ooh, that fits really well. Look at that. I'll leave the link to the stable I used for inspiration in the description. And let's make some lanterns. Cryptic lantern. Let's see if this does a good job. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks scary, but it definitely can fit. Boom. That's looking all right. And do this. And we'll fill the floor in with those. There we go. So that's filled in. And there we go. Let's pile up these leaves around the sides. And I need hay as well. There we go. I have 64. Flowers as well. This is looking good. I'm happy with our horse stable. This turned out amazing. Now let's gather up all of our horses. Bring you in here. Oh, and it just left using the hay. Okay, we're going to need to fix that. Maybe if I do this. Here's Skelly. In we go. And here we go. Zebra in. Here we go, everyone. We got you the horse stable. It's looking good. I did ask you guys for names for our other two horses in the last episode. For our zebra, I saw the name suggestion Zwev, which I thought was really clever. So we now have Zwev. There we go. And for our regular horse, I just saw a comment that said Bob. And you know what? I don't even know what horse that was from or what was going on there, but I thought that was pretty funny just because this is the most basic animal we 
we have. Now, I have no hate against Bob. I love Bob, but I think it's a perfect name for him. So there we go. We have Skelly, Bob, and Zwev. Now that all that's done, it's time to get our Elytra. Finally. This time with the charged Ender Pearl, it's going to be way easier. Oh, but you know what? I'm going to make a... There we go. A Waystone. That's going to be good to have. And you know what? I'm going to put my Totem of Void Undying on for sure. Let us head in. Now, I would like to go in an opposite direction of where we went last time, which would be upwards. So let's do that. And I wish I would have brought my powder that helps me find end cities. In fact, why don't I just do that now? Endermite powder. Perfect. Let's just test it here to see... Oh, it's bringing me upwards, which is different from the other end city I found. Hello, please guide me to the end city and hopefully an elytra. Oh, there's an end gate here. That's good to know, I guess. If there, you know what? If there were alien mobs in this mod pack within this biome, that would be really, really scary, but also really cool. Before the end of the episode, I would like to fight that boss. But first, we will stick to our mission of getting our elytra, which speaking of, there's an end city. What's the best way of getting there? It seems like kind of need to go around the right side oh wow that was on the edge <laughs> okay let's slowly try to make our way over <gasps> yeah that's that's gonna use my totem of void undying okay <laughs> that's really not good well i'm gonna have to be much more careful now whoa look at that oh those are so cool oh my goodness Ooh, I can get these blocks quite easily. Glow shroom caps. Maybe we can build something out of this stuff. I mean, honestly, it's a really nice building addition. This seems to be a very, very, very small end city. And take them out one by one. Okay, there's no chests here. So let's just continue going upwards. I can just pearl like so. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm getting rocked around. Oh, here we go, chests. Okay break that. I was gonna say, I'm not sure if pickaxes do more damage to shulkers or not, because it seems like my sword's doing a lot of damage to them. Oh, totem of void undying. Nice. Break the fourth spawner. There we go. Let me loot this stuff. Some decent stuff. Gas tier, which isn't bad. Gold. Some music discs. I think I have all of those. Uh, sharpness four, backstabbing three, looting three. Knife, which seems like it could be pretty good. And one more chest. Strange and alien. I don't know if I have that music disc, so I'll take it. Let's make our way up. Oh, there's another floor of loot. Oh my goodness. Oh, silk touch pickaxe. I actually needed that. And more shulker boxes don't hurt. And that seems to be. Oh, never mind. Oh, we got that. That's good. And that's okay. Void totem again. So that seems to be it for this place. But that was really, really good. Well, I guess we continue our search in hopes of finding an elytra. Now I have totems of void undying. So that's good. And I think I see the end city. Unfortunately, this seems like another small one, but let's check it out. Um, okay. So there's no loot. <laughs> let's get out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Get away from me. Whoa, this one has a flower on top of its head. I've found these slimes before. They've never had a flower like that. Okay, let's use this powder again. Oh my goodness, here we go. That's a huge end city. Look at that. And it has this hot air balloon thing. I don't know. I hope that has the elytra. It should, right? <laughs> I hope so, because I'm very happy if, if that's the case. And this is quite the epic end city, honestly. Oh my goodness. Okay, I don't really care about the shulkers. Let's just forget about them. Here are the chests. Let's see what's in these chests. Diamonds and an unbreaking pickaxe. Totem avoid undying. A <laughs> mini shulker. Look at this thing. Thank you. Ooh, diamonds. Ooh, this one is nice. There's a lot of diamonds here. Holy moly. More diamonds. 26 already. That's a good chest plate. It's a good pickaxe. How's that shovel? That's a really good shovel. <laughs> Let's pearl on top of everything. And you know what? I want to make it over to this blimp. Bridge over carefully. Oh, man, I'm levitating. But you know what? That's okay, because I'm going to pearl. There we go. Let us check out what is here, please. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, it's not empty. It has an elytra. Woo! We found an elytra, everybody. Yes. Sky's limit already has on breaking and mending. Oh, my goodness. Equipable in the cape slot. There we go. We already have an elytra. And there's an ender chest. 
That was a long journey, but we finally found it. Okay, well with that, I mean, I'm teleporting home right away. Now that we have done this, all we need is a way to keep getting fireworks. And to get fireworks, we're gonna need to build both a sugarcane farm for paper and a mob farm for gunpowder. I wanna build a sugarcane farm that's actually gonna last us for a while. And so I wanna make it an automatic one. This is gonna be a big farm. I'm thinking the best spot to put it is gonna be right around here because then I can have my mob farm close by. Now let me check if I have any gunpowder so I can make at least a little bit of fireworks. Ooh, that feels good. Okay, yeah, so I think this would be a great spot for the farm. First of all, we should probably stop this forest fire. Take all of the fire out. And there we go. Now I'm gonna need to clear the area out and wow, it is really foggy right now. <laughs> so let's get to work on doing that. Okay, so I've cleared out the area and now we can get to work. But that work is gonna have to start with gathering the materials for the farm. Gotta grab a bunch of dirt. And fortunately, I kept a lot of what we dug up. And I'm gonna need to smelt some sand up as well. And I'm gonna make a silk touch pickaxe. There we go. Mm, I don't have enough rails. And I don't really have any more iron. So we're gonna have to do our favorite thing and go mining. All right, let's teleport uh, out randomly <laughs> and let's mine straight down. I'm too impatient to actually find a cave, so I'm digging straight down. Okay, that is definitely uh, a big cave. Yes, indeed. a seal. Hello. <laughs> I think this trip was very successful. That is everything we got. It doesn't look like a lot, but it'll definitely do the trick. I'm gonna need a bunch of slime blocks. That means I need to find a bunch of slimes. Well, let's go down and see if any slimes are spawning. And I just realized that my leopard is following me. Again, I'm not finding any slimes. Now, if I could find a swamp biome, I could definitely try going to the end and farming those end slimes. And in that case, let me stock up on some fireworks. And I need... Oh my goodness. My leopard is gonna die like that. Leopard, you cannot be here so bad and with just over a stack of fireworks we can adventure in the end for a bit let's see if we can have any luck is that a new end city i think it is hello another elytra that's not bad at all and i can break those spawners oh here's another end city wow those were very close together and this is gonna give us another elytra i think oh a lot of diamonds this is how i can get loot holy moly and a third elytra. I mean, the end cities are great and all, but I don't think that we're actually going to find any end slimes. And with the gate right here, I think I'll just head home. Yeah, let's return and find slimes the normal way. In fact, we can go adventuring for a bit. Let's see what we can do. If I can just find a pure swamp on the way, that would be great. There also might be slime balls in some of the chests of the structures I loot, so I'll have to keep an eye out on that. Ooh, what is this? Huh, it's a, some type of a witch hut. This could have slime balls in it. Oh, yes it does. Now I definitely need more than that, but that's progress. Oh man, that's a witch. Man, that's a black cat. I'm sorry, cat. I don't want to hurt you. Oh, more slime balls. Wait, so this is a swamp and swiftness potions. Why not? So this is called a cypress swamp. And uh, well, it seems like it has everything we need. That's a huge pile of sugarcane there. That's like 32 just in one area. Okay, now we hope that slimes start spawning. Oh, wait, it's slimes. I'm going to farm up all of these slimes. And bam, 64 slime balls. That's already nine slime blocks. And I only needed 18, I believe. Oh, a firefly has landed on my head, apparently. Oh, I can only make 13 slime blocks. So I need five more. That is a stack of slime balls, which should already be enough. And that is two stacks. 
Okay, that's three stacks. Three and a half stacks. Okay, let's craft up these slime balls. There we go. 20 slime blocks, that'll do. And my netherite sword is getting close to breaking from all of this farming, so let's go get a mending book. He actually will not let me do the trade. I need two more emeralds. Let me see if I can mend that real quick. I need a composter. Here we go, composter. Here we go, guys. One of you become a farmer, please. You want to become a farmer. You know it. Yes, you do. Corn cob. Carrot trade. That's not bad. Okay, just sitting here farming these carrots. So we got just over six stacks. Thank you, thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. I'd also like to re-enchant the sword to get looting three on it and make it stronger. Sharpness, looting, soul reaper. And I can put fire aspect on it like this. Yes. And then I just need an unbreaking book. Combine that with unbreaking, get mending on there as well. And we have a nice sword. And we're finally done with that. We can get back on track. Put our sugar cane in the chest. We need redstone torches, a lot of hoppers, and good thing we got a bunch of iron. Okay, there we go. There we go, sticky pistons, redstone dust. Just gotta make a bunch of these hopper mine carts and with all of that we are ready to start this build first i'm gonna need to clear out a 20 by 40 block hole that's two blocks deep and it would help if i had a beacon but i do not yet now hold on if i have three wither skulls i'll do it oh i have four. Oh my goodness okay oh man i already got a quest completed for defeating the wither even though i have not done that yet i'm just curious what the reward is i won't collect it oh three to five another right scrap okay let's do it real quick uh, i'm pretty confident in defeating the wither my gear is pretty maxed out so yeah now it would be good for me to just get power four on my bow there we go two power four books can only do one but that's okay let's go spawn the wither and i'll just do it up on this mountain i think it's very foggy let's summon the wither on this very very rainy day okay come at me let's go you know maybe doing it on the hill right next to my base wasn't a good idea because now it's kind of going to be ugly, but, uh, well, it's too late for that, my friends. Okay, it's coming in for the kill. So am I. And it's gone. Nice. Yeah, this, uh, this wasn't the best idea, but I am glad that we defeated the Wither, and now I can create a beacon. And you know what that'll do. When the grass grows back in, it'll look pretty natural. Beacon. And as for the ores, do I have enough? Ooh. The answer might be no. Mm, nope. <laughs> That's not gonna be enough. Yay. Well, you know what? It was a good try. Now at least I have that beacon and I can also collect my reward from which I got four in the right scrap. Anyways, let's let's get back to work here. There we go. We're done clearing this out. First, we're building the storage system. So we'll add hoppers to it. There we go. Now we'll make a little entrance. Now we'll add a 2D pole here. We'll do another one here. Now we'll add redstone torches. Now we'll place these rails. Ooh, not like that though. I also need to place regular rails. <laughs> Look at that. That looks really cool. And now I can finish placing the blocks here. Now the rest we fill in with dirt. And there we go. All filled in. It's time to place the slabs down. And there we go. The slabs are done. Now we gotta add water to all of them. Bam, that's the last one. All the water has been filled in. Now we'll build the automatic sugarcane harvester. And trap door there. And it's going. The machine has started. It should return back. Perfect. Now we just gotta place down the sugarcane. Uh, 
That should be all the pieces done. Now we need to build a glass wall all around. I'll add some jungle logs as the border. And I think you guys don't always love my block choices, but I don't know. I like doing interesting things. So you guys are gonna have to deal with these weird exotic woods. There we go. Let's fill this wall up too high. And it is already day 180, which is crazy. Glass is done. And I'm supposed to add five stacks of blocks into this hopper. And this should automatically work whenever that clock runs out, I believe. There we go. And it's going. Beautiful. Our creation is working. <laughs> and it stops. And let's see how much sugar cane we got just from that first harvest, which was about five minutes. And as you can see, we got quite a lot. And you know what? I'm too tempted to add lighting and a roof. And if I do this, we get the glowstone lamps. Before I add it to the farm, I want to add it around the base. You know what? It looks okay. I think we could find something that would fit better. But honestly, having something is better than nothing right now because uh, the torches, they're not doing it. They are not doing it for me. That'll do for now. Now, as for our sugarcane farm, I think these will actually work perfectly. So I'll go through and add little layers like so. Okay, I've added the lamps and I'll get to work. Gonna need some more deep slate. Head into the mine shaft, and I'm just gonna mine down lower this way. There we go. We got deep slate, and I'll just mine a little bit of this, not too much. Okay, and that should be all we need. Oh, I do need some gunpowder for fireworks. Hello, friends. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's a full stack of gunpowder. What is that? Oh my goodness. Some orc. I don't even want to get hit by it. Move, skeletons. I'm getting chased by some being. Uh, move, guys. I'm not getting hit by that. <laughs> I've never seen that. Oh, it was it was an orc. He just dropped orc skin, which can be used to make a dragon saddle. It's daytime. I got a stack and a half of gunpowder, which is pretty good. Let us make our slabs. That should be all the polished deep slate I need. And that's three stacks of fireworks. Hello. And there we go. It's all done. That is our completed sugarcane farm. And we are now all good on sugarcane. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Two stacks here, and it's still coming in. Another stack there. Nice. Okay, now let's start working on the storage system. So, first I made a storage terminal. I accidentally had my recording paused, but I made one of these. This is gonna be like the front face of the storage and where we can right-click to access all of our chests. And now we're gonna need to make the inventory connector, which actually connects all of the chests together. And that's what we're gonna put the storage terminal on and I think that's all we need for now on that front now we can also make a wireless terminal which will require a spyglass and glowstone which we can get do I have any amethyst I have not really been collecting any mm, I don't think I have amethyst let's quickly fly down to our mine shaft is there any amethyst cluster here yes there is I see it on the map let's dig over there oh here it goes 12 amethyst shards. Was that just from one? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was. Holy moly. I didn't know that. Thank you. Thank you. And that is a stack of amethyst shards really quick. Let's craft the spyglass and a piece of glowstone. And let's craft the wireless terminal. I can also make the advanced terminal. It's definitely going to be worth making an advanced version. Here we go. Netherite scrap. Combine that with gold. There we go. This allows you to make the storage accessible from anywhere, which will be really great. If I have that, and then I combine chests with it. Chest, chest, chest. Does that work? 432 slots. What if I go up? It should still be 432. Yes, it is. Let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm excited to use this storage, but we need to put it in its place. So let us head to our cave base. Here it is. 
is the crazy, crazy game. Where to even start with a place like this? I mean, it's it's honestly crazy. For the storage, we would build it over here. First thing I gotta do is most definitely light the area up. Otherwise, we're gonna have a lot of mobs, including these baby witches and baby zombies. Kinda got it lit up. Oh, see, that's a really cool effect. Now, I'm gonna need to kind of even this out and that means i'm gonna have to break a lot of stone let's clear this area out i might as well just set up the storage now and we can move it later if we want and then let's place the chests okay and now if i just put all of this stuff in here it should hold it just fine and yes it does look at that now if i bind that now i can use this terminal while i'm here which is really nice and i can collect all of this cobblestone boom and put it in that's so amazing have cleared out a pretty decent amount and have gotten a lot of cobblestone while doing so. This gives us a pretty good chunk of space to work with. And I can build the controller here, I think. There we go. Add the chests. And it's time to carry over all of our loot. Now the terminal is out of range. Oh, if there's a beacon in an eight block radius of the terminal, it'll work. I've been wanting to make a beacon so long and now it turns out that it's actually important to make it. So you know what? I will take this opportunity to make one. We're going to need to do some mining, though. So uh, let's get to work. I've got four stacks of ore. I'm going to need 18 in total. I think I'm done mining. I've gotten about 15 stacks of ores or so. And on top of that, I just remembered the fact that we have ores in our gold farm. It seems like we have a decent amount. Before I actually loot that, let's head to our cave base and we'll drop off all of the stuff we got. And it is so easy to do. I love it. So let's grab all that. It's looking like a pretty decent amount of gold. Actually, more than I thought there would be. So, I mean, that's a decent amount of gold. Another stack and a quarter. So that's what we got from AFKing at the gold farm, which is really nice. Okay, now I have a bunch of ore to smelt. Okay, let's collect all of these stacks of iron ingots and gold. Now let's craft this up into blocks. That's a stack of iron blocks. That's 24 more. Can also make a bunch of golden blocks. I have more. With that, I think I have enough for a beacon. We need to build this beacon within an eight block radius. I'm just gonna put it here. Okay, let's dig out an area. Bam, now I just need to dig upwards. There we go. Let me break back down. There we go. With that, I'll, I'll just activate haste two here. Oh, why is that not working? I might have not done this correctly. Yeah, this is wrong. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, let's fix this up. There we go. And I have to build the next layer here, it turns out. And oh, no. Oh my goodness. Everything just went wrong. <laughs> Done. That should now activate a level four beacon. Yes. Boom. We now have haste two. Yes, we did it. <laughs> Ooh, this cave is gonna look good. Now that we have all that set up, we should easily be able to transfer our items. And I press my advanced terminal. It lets me access it and I can put items in. If I do this, I can easily put all my items in. Let's get to carrying everything over. Oh, and apparently I can put it in my belt trinket slot. Boom. Okay, everything has been cleared out. Awesome. Now we need to make this look nice. I have the idea to border it with coal blocks. You know what? An even better idea might be using obsidian because this is kind of like a vault, huh? And there is some really cool obsidian in this pack, actually. Like we've got this blue weeping obsidian, for example. I'm gonna have to head into the nether and find a place that has this obsidian again, which I found one time. I don't know if I still have a port there though. Maybe, yes. This was the one where the portal was nearby. Oh, here's the portal. Wait, I want to see if this is the one. Ah, yes it is. 
Nice. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let's get some more of this blue obsidian because this is cool stuff. In fact, while we're doing this, I want to make something because I figure that it's a pretty good idea. Dragon scale, smithing table, and that's a dragon scale pickaxe. Now, let's see if that's faster. I don't know if it's a lot faster, but uh, well, it, it, it should be a bit faster. <laughs> let's collect this up. There's also blue obsidian glass. So if this works like glass, I can place it where the beacon is, which would be perfect. Okay, I've gotten a decent amount of blue obsidian. Let's see what this is going to look like. Break all this coal. That's what it's looking like currently. I'd say it's looking pretty good. I could also end up filling this in with this blue obsidian glass, which is a pretty cool look actually. So we're gonna need more of that glass. So I'd like to design it, but before that, let's finish the actual full, full chest layout and let's just chop down a bunch, bunch, bunch of trees. And that is a lot of stacks of wood. That's a stack of chests, that's two stacks, and that is three stacks. This is insane. I think that'll do for now. And then we'll expand it if we need to later. So let's just fill up on more of these blue obsidian type blocks. Okay, I have a good lump amount of obsidian. Leopard, we're gonna need you to move over here. There we go, cover this up. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go, that's good progress. Now we still have a lot to add in here. Blue obsidian tile, bricks, that. They all look really similar to each other. They're no easier to break, I'll tell you that much. I figure we'll add glass on the side here and then continue on with this design. Mm -hmm. I would like to add glass all along here as well. So I need to mine up a bunch more of this obsidian glass. Oh, you can make glass panes out of this? Are you kidding me? I'd like to test that. Ooh, mine up a bunch more. Okay, almost two stacks of glass. And let me make one set of panes and see how that looks. Mm-hmm. Oh, but that's too easy to break. Can't have that. We need indestructible glass. There we go. That is all filled in. And now let's add the slabs on top. Finish that. And then I'll do a ring around like so. Ooh, does the beacon make it through a slab? I think it does, which is pretty nice. Boom. And with that, our vault is about done here. Just need to fill in the bottom flooring here. Yeah, we're gonna need to change all these blocks underneath. Efficiency four. There we go. Efficiency four to make efficiency five. And oh, this is so much better. Okay. Hmm, I don't know how much I like these tiles. I don't think it works for the top very well. Is it looking better like that? We'll leave it like that for now. And I am gonna use the slabs on the bottom. Okay, now this is looking good, but the area around it is very, very empty. We need to kind of spruce the area around it up. And I'm thinking we could do that by adding a bunch of nether type blocks. Let's head into the nether and try to find the blocks that we want. There are a lot of cool blocks that can be found in the nether. And I gotta make sure that I'm collecting them with silk touch. Ooh, yes, and I can grab the exact type of block as well, which is nice. And there's also this fairly weird biome that these pillars usually spawn in actually, which is called magma land. I can grab a bit of this stuff and maybe we can try to kind of recreate this biome. And in fact, I should put shears in my inventory so that I can get some of these more unique types of blocks. Okay, ooh, overgrown netherrack. Unfortunately, I can't get this purple variant. Whoa, look at this, wart forest. This looks crazy, soul lily. Can I pick this up with my shears no with my axe no i can just get the sapling oh we got wart log 
Look at this. Look at these trees. Here we have this biome, which is really cool. Sub-Zero Hypogeal. I'm going to grab this Travertine as well. That's this biome collected. Let's see what else we can find. And in fact, I would like some sources of light. This looks like an interesting one. So let's grab these Sub-Zero Crystal Blocks. That's a good amount of this stuff. And can I mine these? Yes, I can. Nice. This is another biome we can add. I think I have enough blocks for the time being. So let's head back and let's get to work on, oop, let's get to work on adding in these biomes. And I'm going to need some more of this stuff. Oh boy. I did not calculate at all. Oh Hot tourist destinations and a glorious past. Find an abandoned nether city. Abandoned nether city. What do we have? Go oh, I'm sorry, netherman. Oh, or not netherman, enderman. Um, okay. Now, the structures here look absolutely amazing. This kind of reminds me of Atlantis City, except like a nether version of it, which is really, really cool. I'm wondering if there's actually any loot here. Uh, there does seem to be blocks of gold in the middle. I mean, just the look of itself is worth finding this, but some loot as an added bonus would be nice. I'm afraid there's no loot. Look at this glass. Framed quartz glass pane. That looks nice. Mm, let's fly on in here. Mm, oh, well, this isn't a part of the village, I don't think. This is just a tower. Take them all out. Yeah, well, we got netherite scrap. Oh, there's two more chasing me down. Oh, and a third one. Gold, some pork chop. And other than that, it's just basic loot here. Chest of drawers? How does this work? Oh, I don't know. This is just a chest, but it's a drawer. Well, I'll mark down the coordinates, and if we need this for anything in the future, I have them ready. Oh, can I collect this purple block? No, I can't. Mm. Oh, well, I have a silk touch shovel here. I'd rather use that, actually. Yes, and it does work. That's nice. Okay, I got 64 of this whaling nylium, which I'm happy with because it's pretty hard to collect, and I definitely need more of this stuff. Can get some more bone block. These trees are very cool looking. Ooh, and this blue netherrack is a great block to collect. There are so many strange blocks around. I think I've collected enough of a variety of blocks. Now I'm just going to make sure that I have enough netherrack. So I'm just going to mine. I am ready. Time to get to work transforming this. So first, I'll finish the Sepian region. I've added a bit of netherrack here as well, just to kind of meld into this biome. So that's how this is looking now. I think that this biome mainly had the bone blocks going for it. So we can add some of those. It's a bit weird, but it kind of adds. There we go. We're gonna leave that biome as it is for now. And we'll move on to the next one. Black bush. Can add some of those smokers there we go that's done on the back we can add the blue netherrack section so that's the orange bit added and then to add some blue netherrack we can do that on the walls build into the back of the wall further. Add some clusters of ember here, I think. And I'll leave a bit of stone in every now and then, just because that'll help me start to blend this in with the rest of the cave. Slowly filling all of this in. And I need to get black stone, so I'll head into the nether again. And it looks like I'm already in the biome, so that's perfect. Gimme, gimme. And that's enough. I'll head home. And we'll slowly start adding in the plain black stone. Now I gotta add lava here. And lava. Back to the cave base. Actually, we should give this place a name. Wolf Den. Okay, that's the name. The Wolf Den. Let's add our lava. Let's 
Let me grab all of these variants of things. Bone mushroom spores. Oh, interesting. We'll do that. Bone grass. Crimson would go over here. Uh -huh. Wall red mushroom. Those look nice like that. There we go. Jellyfish mushroom sapling. Just place some regular mushrooms. Stalactite. Play some of that, like so. Interesting, interesting. Can add some more of these stalactites here. Okay. Crimson fungus. We want that for sure. There's two biomes I forgot. Oh my goodness. Okay, I want to add this sub-zero biome as the kind of top area here to fill this in. just about out of fireworks so i need to fight some creepers off and this is actually a good opportunity to explore more of the cave that we're going to be building in look at this more creepers what is in here oh a bone to pick professional dungeoneer explore all of the better dungeons oh a diamond diamond and now that i have fireworks i can head into the nether set temporary waypoint oh what is this hold on hold on hold on hello this isn't just another fortress, is it? This is some kind of a special wither skeleton fortress. And look at that, it's like a wither statue. Uh, interesting place here that I've found. Gunpowder and some random enchanted loot. Whoa, Echonite Rod. Holy moly. I don't know what this stuff is, but it looks rare and I'm picking it all up. Oh, I don't have much time left at all. Now hold on there, I just realized we have like literally not even a day left. Hold on. Ooh, let's uh, let's rush over to the Sub-Zero Hyper. What is this? What is this though? Oh my goodness. It's like a special. Oh my goodness. There's so... Oh, I'm angering the whole world. Holy moly. Okay, I don't have time for this. Okay, it's like a piglin fortress, but I literally I don't have time. I need to finish this project. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, collect this up. Okay, really? Oh my goodness. Go away go to the wolf den and work on quickly finishing this okay how is that looking it's looking pretty good it's looking pretty good and you know what i really don't need to do much more than that got a big chunk of space here oh yeah look at that now if i want i can also add some shroom lights and glowstone oh yeah look at that so it is currently the night of day 200. We're gonna go and fight that boss, the Epsidolith. I feel pretty ready in terms of my gear and I just need to make sure I have my golden apples on me. We don't have much time. Let's go fight the Epsidolith. Where was the boss room? There it is. Oh man, we, we barely have any time. We're pretty geared and in that I have confidence. Okay. We're here. Oh boy. Uh, I have Ender. That's going to activate it. Other than that, I'm eating my golden apple right away because I'm not 100% sure what I'm walking into. And... Okay. Yeah, it's spawned. Um, I'm just... Oh, okay. I, I know for a fact that I should not get hit by things like that. Oh, no. Oh, man. I forgot to put my bow on my bar. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I used my fire resistance on my armor, but I'm still getting hits on it. We're doing good. It has a lot of health. Ooh, okay, it's it deals damage. This is only phase one. Okay, I I've gotten it into phase two, I think, because we've... Oh boy, it, it's not coming back. Okay, I think I'm supposed to break these runes. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, okay. Now I know that the ender charge ender pearl is gonna come in handy for this boss fight. Huh. Break this. This is like the Ender Dragon where you have to break the things that heal it. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. It drops your health really fast. <gasps> oh. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay, I got my other totem on. Holy moly. Oh, I was panicked. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. I w <sighs> I'm out of words. I was not expecting it to one-shot me like that. Wow, I'm really scared of this boss now. Okay. I'm, get I'm about to get it to phase three, I think. What is it doing? Okay, it's in phase three. Oh my goodness. It almost did it to me again. Oh! Oh, I dodged it. 
Holy smokes. Okay, I broke another one. I think there's only one rune left. <gasps> Ooh, okay. This pearl is coming so in handy. Oh, that did not feel good. I can damage it now. I'm gonna eat a golden apple and I'm still ready to pearl as soon as I might need to. That's not good. Oh, that's not good. Good thing I have an elytra. Oh, oh my goodness. That knocks you really high up. Oh no. Woo! We dodged it. I can hear where it's placing the ice crystals, so I'm able to dodge them like that. And I think we got it into its final tier. Because I defeated the last circle. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Doing a lot of the ice things. Oh, no. <sighs> Every time it does that, my heart stops. Okay. Break this. Last rune. And... Oh, it's no longer invulnerable. Just got to keep landing hits. It's at 80 health. Dodge that. Dodge that. Woo! We did it! <laughs> Obsidian Obliterator. We defeated the Obsidolith. Oh my goodness. What's up here? Oh yes. Okay. It is technically the morning of day 201, but in Minecraft time it's day 200 because it starts on day zero. So I don't care. I'm doing the same thing as the last episode and technically exactly 100 days past. So I'm actually happy with that. Woo. Okay. Well, first of all, let me look at my quest reward. <laughs> oh, that was a fun boss fight. I got a dragon pickaxe again, which I already have one that I made this episode and a bunch of obsidian it seems. Okay. Oh man. Um, looks like uh, some basic loot other than this obsidian heart, which I want to check out what that does. What is this for? Obsidian heart. Ooh, staff of suppression. And grants short range teleport through solid blocks. Okay, everybody, we have done it. I think we did great. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.